Good morning to you. Thank you so much for waking up with us here on Live Now from Fox. I'm Jean Nate Francine waking up with you on this Monday morning. It is April 8th. We have so many top stories and headlines to share with you. So let's go ahead and get started right now. I want to give you a live look out in The Hague, Netherlands. This as half a year into the war, preliminary hearings open today at the United Nations top court in a case seeking an end to German military and other aid to Israel. Now, all all of this is based on claims that Berlin is enabling acts of genocide and breaches of international humanitarian law regarding to the Israel-Hamas war in Gaza. We will have more on this story later today, but really quickly, I want to give you all a live look out in New York City, a beautiful skyline shot, and you can see that the sun is starting to rise and peak over those skyscrapers. We're actually heading out to New York because one of the top stories for many of you all this morning, one that's top of mind, is that total solar eclipse. One of the locations where the solar eclipse can be viewed in totality is actually out in New York. I want to show you all a map uh, giving you a better view of the locations where the total solar solar eclipse can be viewed in totality today. Right now, I want to check in live with our content partners over at Fox 5 New York and see all of the preparations underway for today's big event. Let's take a look. Thanks for starting your morning with us. Let's get you up to speed and out the door. Taking a live look outside on this eclipse Monday morning. Right now, we're uh, hoping the clouds stay away as New Yorkers gear up for today's solar eclipse. Mike will have the full details on our forecast. And as we get ready for this afternoon's historic eclipse, we'll look at how it's impacting traffic and what's happening in the tri-state area. Former President Donald Trump set to make a major policy announcement as we head into the election season, how it could turn the tide in the presidential race. Plus, work is underway to clear containers from the cargo ship that struck the Baltimore Bridge. We'll have the latest on all that repair work coming ahead. Of course, everyone, though, is talking about what's going to be happening with the eclipse. You look pretty cool. This is all right. I don't I don't feel Hi. cool, but uh, I'll be looking up at the sun, looking up at the lights for now. I was being generous, Dan. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, hard, these are hard to get these days. I know, they I'm going to steal his. I think I still have mine from the last eclipse 2017? from 2017. Wow. That's, That's how much of a hoarder I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know my place is a mess. <laughs> anyway, anyways, yeah, get your eclipse glasses, whatever it is, your device to help you out. Make sure you get the proper ones, too, because if they don't do the right job, put your eyes in danger. You don't want that. We've got a clear sky right now. Do we keep it around for the entire day? Well, we're going to drift in a few clouds, but I don't think it's going to ruin our eclipse experience here in the tri-state. Good news for us out to the north and west a mm, lot more shaky we've got 43 degrees out at central park right now 40 in newark uh, 29 degrees in sussex winds are real light and variable but uh, yeah we've got a warm front drifting toward the northeast we've got showers coming through places like buffalo out toward cleveland uh, they're coming in right now but hopefully they can kind of rain themselves out and get some breaks in that cloud cover uh, during the peak of the whole eclipse thing later on this afternoon because right now looking shady uh, for folks there here we're going to see some clouds coming through through. I don't expect it to obscure the eclipse viewing uh, by any means, but it will filter that sun a little bit, which is good news in a way because it just kind of takes down uh, the UV potential, but still uh, make sure you use the glasses as that thing comes on by. It's a long event, but it peaks out at 325 and it's a beautiful day, high of 65. Let's bring in Inez and see how we are doing at this point uh, with our commute. Good morning. Good morning, Mike. Uh, problems for sure. 78 right now. Tractor trailer flipped over, striking that median. So eastbound, we have two lanes closed. They are all lanes subject to closure on the westbound side. Left lane closed. So a bit of a mess, especially if you're heading towards Route 24 there. And then over on the Pulaski Skyway heading towards the Holland Tunnel. That's moving slow this morning. This is right by the tunnel circle. You can see those delays there inbound. That's because of an accident underneath the covered roadway 139. You have a lane block there eastbound. Then on the westbound side around the same area, you have a down traffic signal. As far as the Gowanus, looks pretty good. We've had some earlier problems on the Gowanus Canal, an accident, and then by Canon Plaza. All of that has been cleared away. As for the rails, everything running on or close to schedule. Dan and Tashani, back to you.
Inez, thank you very much. All right, well, this afternoon, here we go. Millions of people will be outside to catch a glimpse of today's solar eclipse. And while the tri-state area won't see a complete totality, it hasn't stopped New Yorkers from traveling to check it out, including Good Day's Robert Moses. He is live all the way up in Stowe, Vermont, where we begin our team coverage. Good morning, Robert. Tishani and Dan, good morning to you. People are already arriving here at Mount Mansfield, which is Vermont's highest peak to get a good parking spot. And we are expecting just spectacular conditions here. We will experience three minutes of totality from 326 to 329 this afternoon. Today, much of the country will unite to just stop and watch. Are you geeking out over this? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, Even though NASA scientist Georgia DiNolfo is way smarter than me, she let me geek out right along with her. The total solar eclipse happens about a, every year and a half somewhere on the planet. This time, it's our turn. About 31 million people in the U.S. already have front row seats for today's show since they live in the path of totality. Millions more will take up temporary residence to watch the moon align perfectly with the Earth and the sun. Those who aren't in the path of totality still receive a celestial slice. A little crescent-shaped piece of the sun is what you will see. The U.S. last saw a total solar eclipse back in 2017. Dinolfo is looking forward to this one more for a few reasons. The shadow will be wider, so the eclipse itself will last longer. More people are in the path of totality. And then, frankly, we're heading into solar maximum conditions. So that atmosphere is going to have a lot of structure, and we might even be able to see an eruption. Wear the proper glasses, of course, to protect your eyes. There's only one time that you can take those glasses off, and that's during totality. You can actually look with your bare eyes at the atmosphere of the sun during totality. But again, remember, the New York City area will not experience totality, so it will not be safe to remove your glasses at any point. During the eclipse, pay attention not just to the sun. Nature is going to respond to the fact that the light is dimming, uh, so it'll feel like dusk. It may get colder. Um, you know, nature itself may respond to that. Sometimes we have crickets, you know, that start chirping. Maybe the birds will go back to their nests. Maybe you'll see bees going back to their hives. The nation is abuzz for this rare spectacle. Enjoy it because it won't happen again for a while. The next time that we will have a total solar eclipse is actually over Alaska in 2033. And then the next time that we'll have a total solar eclipse over contiguous, over the whole country, you know, like we've had for 2017 and 2024, is 20 years from now. For a nation divided, things might just be looking up if only temporarily. It's a wonderful unifying experience, and I think we need it. It's a great time to commune together as a, as a nation. Robert Moses, Good Day New York. And NASA is using this as an opportunity for study. The agency will launch three rockets to look at how the sudden loss of sunlight will affect the upper atmosphere. We're live in Stowe, Vermont this morning. Dan, back to you. All right, Robert, thank you very much. One of those few times we can all kind of come together and take a look at one thing. All right, well, here at home, as people head out to check out the eclipse, you may want to leave the car at home if you can. Those roads are expected to be pretty crowded with people trying to get the best view. Good day's Briella Tomasetti is live outside the Intrepid Museum. That's on the west side, of course, with what you need to know. Briella, good morning. Yeah, Dan, good morning to you. And for a Monday, there are so many things going on in and around the city. For example, if you come here to the Intrepid to view the solar eclipse, you will be able to watch the whole thing unfold right from the flight deck, which is an awesome experience. Now, the event is free with museum admission, of course, but you will want to get here as early as possible because they are letting people in on a first-come, first-serve basis. Now, if you haven't snagged a pair of those viewing glasses yet, they are pretty much gone everywhere you turn. But if you come here, they'll be provided, too. I'm very excited. I did make a plan to try to watch it from New York. It's supposed to look like Twilight is what I've heard. No matter where you're from or what brought you here, today you've got a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. There's a lot going on in the world, so we just hope that, you know, the eclipse, if anything, just changes the energy to people and just make everything go, be good going forward. 
The solar eclipse is estimated to attract about a million enthusiasts right here to New York State, something Governor Hochul is welcoming with open arms. The small businesses, the restaurants, the diners, the bakery, everybody's getting ready to prepare special eclipse-themed food. The rare event drawing so much hype, local museums and public libraries have nearly run out of viewing glasses. I don't have the glasses yet. I've, I've heard if they've been around, but I haven't been able to get some myself. They're giving them out at my college. New York City won't be in the path of totality, but will still get a pretty impressive show so long as the weather cooperates. The celestial event special enough to freeze life as we know it. Well, sort of. Traffic in and around the city will be brought to a grinding halt this afternoon. The gridlock expected to be so intense, AAA Northeast says getting around will be just about as difficult as it is during the holidays. Make sure that you give yourself plenty of extra time. I mean, even double the amount of time as usual. Eclipse mania will also impact the skies. The Federal Aviation Administration has warned flyers to brace for delays because the root of the eclipse could force some planes into holding patterns. And if you're preparing for a day at the ballpark, the Yankees have bumped back their home game against the Miami Marlins from 2.05 to 6.05. The gates will still open at 3, and the first 15,000 fans will get a free Solar Eclipse t-shirt. Yeah, and if you can't make it here, do not fret. There are so many things to do across the five boroughs. And here in Manhattan, you can check out the eclipse from the edge uh, observation deck. You can also go to Summit 1 Vanderbilt. You will, of course, have to buy tickets for those decks to get on and watch this thing unfold. But Tavern on the Green in Central Park is offering an event that is free to the public. You can also go out there and just lay out a towel. It is going to be gorgeous out, it appears. You can go to a, a rooftop, uh, you can check it out at a restaurant. I mean, everyone's going to have the same view up in the sky. So at the end of the day, this is just a really cool thing to be a part of. And we're here in the best city in the world doing it. For now, we're live, though, outside the Intrepid. Dan and Tashani, back to you. All right, Briella, thank you very much. A lot of those kids out there also begging to be pulled out of class a little early today. We want to sure. hear from you. Do you plan to take a break from work? Is your boss going to give you a break to look at that solar eclipse? Just take your lunch break at that time. <laughs> Martin Sapol is now live on our homepage. Head over there, fox5ny.com, to cast your vote. And also, stay up to date with all of our top stories, including the weather. Well, this morning, police are searching for three men they say were involved. All right, and we appreciate Fox 5 New York as they are previewing today's total solar eclipse. And don't forget, right here on Live Now from Fox, we have our own total solar eclipse coverage today. Live coverage starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Time presented by Nissan. My colleague Josh Breslow will be in the host seat guiding you through today's events. It's something so spectacular you definitely don't want to miss it. The time now 610 on the East Coast right now giving you a live look again out in New York City. Since we first came on the air uh, five minutes before the top of the hour, you couldn't really see the sun coming up, but now you see more of the sun peeking over the skyscrapers in the distance. Let's go ahead and go to our first two minute commercial break of the hour and when we come back uh, checking in with New York's governor Kathy Hochul as she had a uh, media availability giving an update previewing what people can expect as they head out to the Big Apple to take part in today's solar eclipse. We'll be right back with more details.
Welcome back to Live Now from Fox, giving you a live look out in New York City. And we know New York's governor, Kathy Hochul, held a presser as thousands upon thousands of people are flocking to the Big Apple to take part in today's total solar eclipse. Let's take a listen. Governor of New York, Kathy Hochul. Governor. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, so delighted to get started. We're, we've been waiting such a long time. Uh, really sorry I can't make it there today. I thought I could be there in person, but uh, we're here in Albany. We're hard at work on the state budget. But finally, the countdown has begun to the first total solar eclipse over New York in over 99 years, and it's just 24 hours away. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to witness the majesty of God's creation as the eyes from the earth look to the heavens, it'll be breathtaking to see the sun covered in its totality, leaving us mere mortals in darkness for over three minutes. First of all, Commissioner Bray, I want to thank you and your whole team at the Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services for the preparations, uh, the intent, seriousness of which we've brought to this, treating it like it's one of the big blizzards, as we've treated it as if it's one of the big storms. And so we want to make sure that we keep people safe. Also, our Acting Commissioner Randy Simons of Office of Parks and Recreation, you'll be hearing from him to talk about how our state parks, including the one and only Niagara Falls State Park, are re ready for this rare event. Uh, Jessica DeSerce, she doesn't want to be called this, but we're going to call her anyhow, the Eclipse Czar. She's done an amazing job, and I thank her and all the representatives that she's worked with from Parks Police, State Police, and we are literally over the moon to welcome over one million people to our state for this once in a generation moment. Some people across the state have traveled hundreds of miles, others from out of town have traveled thousands of miles to come. And for one good reason, the stars are truly aligned for New York. We'll have incredible visibility here. This total eclipse will pass through some of the most beautiful backdrops our state has to offer. From Letchworth State Park to the gorgeous Adirondack Mountains, the shores of Lake Erie, Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, and of course, breathtaking Niagara Falls, which has been selected by NASA to launch their Eclipse headquarters. So we'll be joining them tomorrow. We've partnered with their brilliant team to host a series of exhibitions at our state park and these are free and give people really a deeper understanding of the science behind this incredible spectacle that we'll be experiencing tomorrow. So make sure everybody checks those out. And if you're bringing the kids, these educational events are a great way to spark an interest in science that can last a lifetime and can take them anywhere, literally anywhere. The other day I had the opportunity to speak virtually with Dr. Jeanette Epps a young woman from Syracuse, Syracuse born and raised. She was at the International Space Station as a trained astronaut who at age nine decided she wanted to venture into the possibility of becoming an astronaut someday. So the kids are not too young to get inspired by this event. We also had an overwhelming response from students who sent in questions for Dr. Epps ahead of our event. So she's an inspiration to all of us and she'll not just be exciting the kids, but she'll be one of the first astronauts to be able to witness a total solar eclipse from space. So we had a chance to talk to her about that. Check that out. Another exciting dynamic is welcoming all these visitors. Our small businesses are basking in the limelight. They're going to be welcoming people from all over as people see how our hidden gems are scattered all across the state, the small businesses, the rest restaurants, the diners, the bakery, everybody's getting ready to prepare special eclipse themed food. So you have to check that out. And we know that those who are visiting for the first time will definitely want to come back. Now, remember, the full eclipse will only last for just a few minutes. And our team has spent over 17 months preparing for this event to make sure that you can experience it safely and enjoyably. I want to go over just a few tips to make sure you have the best possible viewing experience. First of all, many, many of you have traveled and figured this out. For those of you who are staying home, know where you want to watch this. And in fact, the safest, easiest pace may be your own backyard if you're living in western New York or anywhere else across the state. But in New York, we know that the path of totality goes through Jamestown, Rochester, Buffalo, Niagara Falls, and on to Plattsburgh. You can go to ilovenewyork.com eclipse for a calendar 
of our events all across the state, and there's still many more today and tomorrow. You can also find out the exact times that the eclipse will be passing through each city on its path so you're ready and looking up at the right time. A second tip is keep an eye on the forecast and the conditions in the area you're going to. Some of our areas, particularly in the North Country, had an unprecedented snowfall just a short time ago. The ground is wet. There could be still some rough conditions. If you're planning on going in the back country, there may be some areas that are not accessible to you. So you really want to check all this out in advance. But uh, overall, we're looking for good conditions across the state. But perhaps one of the most important, build in lots of travel time. We are warning everyone. The roads can only handle so much, and we're expecting a high, high volume of traffic before and after the event as people go to the destinations they want to visit, like I said, our state parks, the waterfronts, the mountains, uh, all the way over to Niagara Falls, where I hope to be if we can make some progress here. So with this huge influx of visitors, especially in some of the remote parts of our state, truly you need to expect extended traffic delays. So pack your patience along with snacks and water and make sure you have a full tank of gas. We've been in communication with our gas stations all across New York. Be ready, fill up in advance. You do not want to run out of fuel in the middle of a jam-packed roadway, as has happened in past experiences across the country. We've taken a lot of lessons. When last time there was a major event like this, there were 10-hour delays, people stranded in their vehicles out west. And so we just want people to know that can happen, so be aware of it and plan accordingly. And as you're traveling, I know you'll be tempted to pull off the side of the road and, and look up to the heavens from the shoulder. Please don't do that. If we need emergency vehicles to get through, our first responders will use that as the best place for them to get to, possibly you and your family quickly. So, so let's make sure we're cognizant of that as well. And take proper precautions during the eclipse. Don't be blinded by the light. In anticipation, we have these incredibly cool glasses. These are going to be a collector's item after this date. Pass them on to your children and grandchildren through generations. These are very exciting, and people have been wanting these. They are definitely a hot commodity. Make sure that you protect your eyes from the light. Staring at the sun during the eclipse without proper eye protection can literally do permanent damage to your vision. And so to make sure you're doing that, they have to be not just your ordinary sunglasses, but special solar eclipsed solar filters have to be involved here. So make sure that you're prepared with the right glasses. Now, in conclusion, we are so excited to welcome people from all across the country and indeed the world to witness the wonders of our universe at hand. Tomorrow will be a very special and unforgettable day for all of us, a once in a century event. It'll be beautiful and profound. And for one brief moment, New Yorkers and our visitors, people all across this great country, will be bonded in a shared experience that we'll be telling our children and grandchildren about for the rest of their lives. So don't rush. Take your time. Everybody's excited, so be courteous to each other. Prioritize your safety and the safety of your family, and everyone have a spectacular time. Thank you very much, and let me turn it back to Commissioner Jackie Bray. Thank you, Governor. We appreciate that. And, and I, I also want to thank Justice Sirs, who is, who is right here, our, our, um, our Eclipse Czar. And I want to take a second to thank Jen Waka, who has been leading public safety planning for the Eclipse as well. Let me start by just reiterating a handful of safety tips, and then I'm going to talk through our preparation. As the Governor said, we do expect traffic. One really good resource in New York State is 511NY. Uh, there's an Apple and an Android app that you can download today uh, that can help you have real-time information and also help you see alternative routes uh, to places that are um, blocked. As, she, as the governor said, make sure that you top up your fuel, make sure that you have a full charge, make sure that you bring snacks and water. Uh, I want to take a second to talk to folks that are going to the eastern northeast part of our state, particularly in the Adirondacks. It is mud season. Uh, it is really wet. Uh, the backcountry is going to be hazardous, so we're asking folks to try to stay out of the backcountry, stay on well-marked trails, uh, and really, really only park uh, in designated parking areas at the trailheads. 
Um, as the governor said, parking it, parking's a big deal for us, so please do not park on the side of the roads. I want to reiterate, we will be ticketing and towing rapidly tomorrow morning, particularly up in the North Country. So if you are up in the North Country, if you are on uh, two-lane roads, we will be ticketing you, we will be towing you, uh, and that's really uh, simply because it's a public safety hazard for us to not be able to move emergency vehicles through. Let me talk a little bit about prep. We started prepping for this in October of 2022. Uh, 20, we've been prepping along with 29 counties who are uh, within the, have a portion within the um, path of totality. Uh, we are organizing ourselves tomorrow. There'll be a, the State Operations Center in Albany is opening at 8 a.m. We're opening a regional operations center in the Lake Placid area and a regional operations center in the Buffalo area. In addition, we'll be opening the Fire Operations Center also at 8 a.m. Uh, in terms of our road preparations, we have 100 help trucks uh, ready to go. Help trucks will be on state roads and the thruway, uh, moving any disabled vehicles over and doing that quickly. They'll have uh, fuel in case people run out of gas. They'll have water. Uh, they'll have things that can quickly fix a flat tire if, if we need that, um, all in the uh, uh, service of keeping traffic moving. Uh, some of those help trucks will also uh, be able to recharge an electric vehicle uh, if folks lose a charge. We will have over four dozen tow trucks uh, pre-positioned uh, in order to quickly move uh, any vehicles that are disabled or that run out of gas or run out of charge. The New York State Police will have four strike teams, or four, uh, will have strike teams uh, across four different of their troop areas. Those teams will be able to deploy to roadways that get particularly congested or particularly dangerous. Uh, in addition, between the Department of Environmental Conservation, the Parks Department, State Police, State Fire, we have ATVs, UTVs, uh, and motorcycles uh, that will be uh, deploying in order to get to hard to reach uh, individuals and um, roads. Uh, our state fire team is deploying two task forces. Task forces have technical rescue capability, including swift water rescue capability, uh, and they have unmanned um, aerial systems drones uh, in order to assist, along with large refueling tankers. We will be sending a wireless emergency alert in the Adirondack area to remind people not to park on the sides of the roads tomorrow morning uh, and to let folks know that we will be ticketing and towing. We have over two dozen boats uh, that we're deploying uh, between our Parks Department and our Division of Environmental Conservation in order to get ahead of any uh, maritime issues. Those boats will be in Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, Seneca Lake, Oneida Lake, Cayuga Lake, Lake Champlain, the Old Forge area, the St. Lawrence River, the Fairhaven Beach State Park, Buffalo's Outer Harbor, and the Upper Niagara River. We are deploying our aviation assets. Those include both fixed wings and rotary uh, aircraft for emergency response, along with over a dozen drones to give us real-time traffic information and real-time looks uh, at roads that we don't have uh, cameras on or access to. The State Department of Health is deploying 20 ambulances strategically placed across the state uh, in anticipation of potentially needing additional uh, EMS capacity. And uh, last but not least, I just want to touch on the weather. Uh, it is going to be a dry day tomorrow in New York. Uh, the temperatures will be mild, so we'll have highs in the mid-60s, low in the mid-40s. Uh, we do anticipate some cloud cover out west, uh, extending to the western edge of the Adirondacks. Uh, that seems to be getting more and more likely uh, that there'll be additional cloud cover. We do expect a very minimal cloud cover in the Plattsburgh area and the sort of northeast of our state. And with that, I'm going to introduce Randy Simons, our Acting Parks Commissioner. Good afternoon. Thank you, Governor. Commissioner, it's always a pleasure to stand with you. And I've never been in a room with eclipse czar, so this is a, this is a first for, for a lot of us. I get to talk about all the fun stuff uh, and also just to emphasize our readiness on, on the state park side. Look, we're one day away, right, from the universe putting on the show of shows, right? It's going to be a great cosmic display. 
And New York State is really the center stage for a lot of this. You heard the governor everywhere from Western New York, Finger Lakes, Allegheny, Central New York, the Adirondacks, North Country, Thousand Islands. And think about all the awe-inspiring locations within those regions. You're going to hear me talk about a lot of state parks. That's what I'm paid to do. Well, Buffalo Harbor State Park, Niagara Falls, I mean, can you think of a better backdrop uh, than right here? Allegheny State Park, Letchworth, you heard the governor. Uh, you have Green Lakes, Fairhaven, Southwick, uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, so with all those, uh, some of those awe-inspiring backdrops, millions are going to descend on New York specifically in the path of totality, uh, but really all across uh, New York State. Uh, and, and I want to emphasize the readiness that we are here at State Parks. And while this uh, experience will be unforgettable uh, for all, uh, it also is reliant on our visitors uh, and their readiness as well. So at State Parks, what are we doing? Uh, you know, to uh, increase accommodation uh, all across the state, especially in the path of totality. Uh, we opened up a lot of campgrounds early this year. Uh, proud to say we're 100 percent occupied uh, on tonight. Uh, and really what's equally uh, nice to hear is tomorrow night we're 93 percent occupied. So what does that tell us? that people are heeding the warning, right? They're coming, they're not just going to witness the eclipse and leave, uh, but they're going to stay. They're gonna make an experience out of it, and that will certainly help us out on the traffic side as well. Uh, we are increasing presence at all our parks uh, in the path of totality and outside the totality. Uh, park police, uh, park rangers, uh, and our park staff, we're a thousand strong just at the parks in the path of totality and thousands more uh, in, in, in parks outside the uh, path, uh, you know, because obviously 100% you know, is where you want to be, uh, but still the experience uh, will be a quite incredible uh, in, in areas outside the path of totality as well. Uh, all parks, uh, you know, within the path of totality, uh, you know, I want to emphasize uh, at many of our parks, uh, parking, uh, we're expecting it will fill to capacity really early. Now, this is not uncommon, uh, you know, at our parks on a great summer day, you know, on a weekend or, or weekday, uh, we do fill pretty quickly. Uh, so some tips for you all. Uh, for our visitors, uh, get here early, right? Stay late, you've heard that. But also just have an alternative plan, another location that you may want to experience the eclipse. And also GPS oftentimes uh, will take you to one parking lot within a park and just know like at Niagara Falls, it takes you to the main parking area, but there are other parking lots uh, within the park that you are going to. So really just be uh, familiar uh, with sort of the park footprint or the footprint or where you're visiting uh, at any location. You heard the commissioner, right? We're encouraging visitors uh, to stay in the safe spots to witness the eclipse. You know, avoid the backcountry, as you heard. Uh, avoid going off trail. You're not going to find a better experience by doing that uh, within the park confines or within sort of these safe designated areas. Uh, you'll get the full experience of the eclipse. Uh, in addition to 511, our state parks explore app. We're going to be doing push notifications all day long. You're going to get the latest on parking. You're going to get the latest on sort of park closures. Uh, you know, if we do fill the capacity uh, and all the park information that you'll need to know. So that's the readiness uh, and now the fun part. I mean, we've packed in sort of, uh, you know, in addition to packing the patients, we've packed in plenty of fun over uh, the next few days. Uh, you know, and how about NASA, right? NASA being here at Niagara Falls. Uh, I want to also mention the Canadian Space Agency. They have multiple days of science, public education, and more. Uh, you know, downstairs, uh, I went through the experience uh, in, in about a, a half hour to an hour, and I'll tell you, it was incredible. Uh, you're going to uh, have plenty of opportunities to meet and greet astronauts and, and, and space engineers. Uh, uh, the Canadian Space Agency brought out a virtual reality experience. It's about an eight-minute experience, and it literally puts you on the International Space Station. You can appreciate, obviously, you know, you know what is out there with the infrastructure and the technology. Uh, and, and I learned about Artemis too, right? This is uh, this is set to go up in 2025 uh, to, to circle the moon, which is ultimately will lead to Artemis three in 2028, which will put the first woman on the moon uh, in history. So again, all of this that we're learning, this education, it, it, it's deepening and connecting our experience to what we'll see tomorrow. Uh, I'm pretty thrilled to have NASA and the Canadian. Space Agency here. Uh, so with that special programming across our parks, 
uh, both inside the path of totality and outside, uh, you know, in, in music, games, food, fun, festivals, and more. Uh, 84 million visitors uh, visit our parks each year. We're expecting much more in the centennial year, uh, and our teams, uh, you know, certainly stand at the ready. So if visitors come prepared uh, as well tomorrow, uh, they will have an unforgettable experience. Uh, so with that, with our centennial tagline, I'll leave you. We'll see you out there. <laughs> Yay. Uh, any questions? When you said uh, 100% of the park, did you mean like all the parks in New York or in the path of totality? What, what is that? What is that talk? What does that mean? So as far as security or readiness? 100% um, occupancy. Occupancy. So, so we open campgrounds. So typically campgrounds open up in the May uh, in the path of totality because of the uh, sort of the onslaught of uh, accommodations that they were seeking. We opened up uh, uh, dozens of campgrounds within the path of totality, Western New York, Finger Lakes, up through uh, Central and the North Country, South of Thousand Islands. Uh, so those campgrounds are at 100%. So everything you've opened basically in the path of totality. On, on tonight, they are 100%, and then 93, and then drops like 90%. So people are staying for a few days, even a week. So is, yeah. is Plattsburgh, is that, that's where you gotta be? I mean. Uh... <laughs> Here's what I will say, you know, um, uh, we do, you know, Plattsburgh will have the least cloud cover. There, there's no sort of, um, you know, uh, question about that. Um, we expect a, somewhere between 60 and 80 percent cloud cover out here uh, what we don't have uh, you know what we won't know is how high those clouds are if the higher the clouds are the better shot we all have at um, sort of all of the bells and whistles of an eclipse but no matter what this is going to be an experience no matter what it's going to get you know it will be midnight dark uh, you know, within minutes, uh, no matter what, you'll see, you know, the wildlife will go quiet um, and, and it will be an experience regardless of where you are. Uh, but yeah, tomorrow, Plattsburgh will have the least cloud cover. Uh, what, if anything, has been done as far as uh, security concerns, especially at the Niagara Falls with another people and the potential for disruption to cell service? Yeah. Absolutely. So let me just say that if there is disruption to cell service, 911 will continue to work. Uh, we have been in regular touch with AT&T and Verizon uh, about maintaining um, both 911 specifically and, and broader cell coverage. There is a Wi-Fi network in Niagara Park, or State Park, which will help offset some of the volume. But I won't. I would not be surprised if cellular circuits are overloaded during different points of the day. Um, it, you know, if that happens, make sure that you are only calling 911 in the event of an emergency. Uh, being stuck on the road without cell re reception, if you are okay, is not an emergency. Um, in addition, we have moved some assets, they're called cults, uh, into certain strategic locations. Uh, those provide even more robust cell coverage, uh, but they do it over a pretty narrow area. Uh, so there, you know, the safety operations will have backup cell coverage tomorrow. And if I can, I would like to point out, certainly uh, Park Police, we've uh, increased the presence by 200% here at Niagara Falls, uh, additional park rangers and park staff. Uh, and then when we look at our partnerships with state police and local law enforcement, uh, you'll be hard pressed to sort of, you know, turn in a, in a full 360, at least in Niagara Falls, and not to see, you know, sort of some presence. And, and, and knowing that these, uh, these uh, you know, individuals uh, are, are also points of information as well. They can assist you uh, with any needs or questions you have in the parks as well. Thanks so much. So that was the New York governor and other officials out in New York City speaking ahead of today's total solar eclipse. And on the left side of your screen, other top stories we're following this morning right here on Live Now from Fox. And a quick reminder for you right here on Live Now from Fox, today's total solar eclipse coverage starting at 1 p.m. Eastern time presented by Nissan. My colleague Josh Breslow will be in the hosting seat, giving you some exclusive interviews and some pretty cool images. Right now at 630 on the East Coast, I want to give you a live look at our XRAP system. And this is what we use to see the very latest of weather related events. And I know there were some concerns from you all about cloud cover in many areas. And just wanting to give you a live look at what cloud cover looks like now at 637 on the East Coast as you make your plans for later today of the total 
eclipse. So we'll go ahead and go to a quick two minute commercial break. And when we come back, more live events, top stories and headlines of your Monday morning. We'll be right back in just two quick minutes. Welcome back to Live Now from Fox, and good morning to you. If you're just now tuning in, I'm Jeannie Francine, waking up with you on this Monday morning. It is April 8th. As we continue to give you top stories and headlines of the day, we know this total solar eclipse is top of mind for many of you. People across the country will be looking up to witness the total solar eclipse that'll move across the country from Texas to the Northeast, and you can see that with the map I provided you on your screen. Now, while Metro Atlanta is not in the past, Path of totality, you'll still get a fantastic view. Fox 5 Atlanta's Caitlin Pratt is live at the Fernbank Science Center, one of the best spectator spots. Caitlin, good morning to you. Good morning to you. Yes, and all the events start here around noon today. That's because the real action will start at 145 here in the Atlanta metro area. And uh, school systems in the area have already prepared for this. Uh, DeKalb County, the county where I am right now, they actually don't have a school at campus today. There's a, a independent learning day at home while other uh, counties in the area are releasing kids early. until the sun and the moon align. The peach date is not in the path of totality and will only see a partial solar eclipse. That's why Atlanta and Trevor Jones hit the road. I want to experience it unobstructed as much as possible. I already drove about 10 and a half hours just to get here. For those of us staying put, there are numerous eclipse events in the metro area. So when we say this is once in a generation, we really mean it. 
with school out in DeKalb County for an independent learning day in Cobb County releasing students early, our little ones will want to partake in this once in a generation event. As exciting as this will be, safety is key. Solar eclipse glasses are 100,000 times darker than your regular sunglasses. Regular sunglasses absolutely cannot be used. If you can't get your hands on a pair of protective eyewear, no worries. This is where you and your kids get to do an art project and make your own solar eclipse projector. You're going to take your box and put it on the white paper, and you're going to trace out a little square that fits the bottom. Poke one small hole through, just like that. And with your back facing the sun, aim the pinhole at the sky. I'm not so great at arts and crafts, so I'm gonna try to rummage up some, uh, <laughs> some glasses of my own for the event today. And in case you're wondering, in case you're here in the uh, metro area watching at home, the next time we'll actually see a full total solar eclipse here in the Atlanta area is 2078. So there you go. That's the latest here in DeKalb County. I'm Caitlin Pratt, back to you. Caitlin, always a pleasure having you here with us on Live Now from Fox. And I'm among that group that doesn't have a pair of the glasses, so I got to find a local cereal box uh, in my cabinet and try to get some scissors and make my own. But hey, at least we know what to do if we don't have the glasses so we can view the eclipse in a safe manner. Caitlin, thank you so much for joining us this morning on Live Now from Fox. You enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Thank you so much. And as we continue to further our coverage, don't forget live now from Fox's total solar eclipse coverage presented by Nissan, our live coverage all day long, but the action really taking off at 1 p.m. Eastern time with my colleague Josh Breslow. You don't want to miss it. The time now 644 on the East Coast. Let's go to a quick two minute commercial break. And when we come back, more live events, top stories and headlines of your Monday morning. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Live Now from Fox. I'm Gene Francine. As we continue to give you that total solar eclipse coverage and look ahead to our own coverage later on at 1 p.m. Eastern time, we do want to give you other top stories we are following of the day. Right now at 647 on the East Coast, giving you a live look out in Gaza. We know the Israeli military says it has withdrawn its ground forces from Khan Yunus in southern Gaza. This as Sunday marked six months 
months since the October 7th massacre. Fox News correspondent Trey Yanks joins us now with the very latest on this conflict. It's been six months since the October 7th massacre. We sat down with one woman who was released as part of the November ceasefire deal. She describes what life was like as a hostage. I am Chen Almon Goldstein, and for the past few years, I've lived in Kibbutz Kfar Aza. Nadav, my husband, they shot him at point blank range in the chest. There were two or three gunshot wounds, I remember. And he was lying on the floor like that quietly. I remember him with his legs folded and lying quietly. And straight away, there were five terrorists inside the Mama, the safe rooms, with weapons opening the closet there and telling us to get dressed. We were naked, we were in our pajamas, and they demanded that we dress up. What's going through your mind in that moment? Terrible fear, fright, and shock. We got out in a line. The boys were already going out, and then Yam followed. Before that, one of the terrorists saw Yam's uniform shirt. He opened it like that. I remember his big green eyes, and he screamed at me in Arabic. And I don't understand what he's asking me. So you're, you're driven into Gaza uh, with your children. What are those first few hours and days like? It took us seven minutes to get to Gaza and seven weeks to return. When we came back from Gaza, the unbearable ease of how it all happened was unbearable. At first, when we arrived, we reached the tunnel. We were there for two days. What were the interactions with Hamas like when you were held in these locations? Actually, in an absurd way, they guarded us, protected us, sometimes even with their bodies, from the Israeli Air Force strikes. We talked about this absurdity. We talked about this absurdity several times. And they also made sure to point it out, like, we protect you from the Air Force attack. That is the word absurdity. The reason Hamas wanted to keep these hostages safe is to exchange them as part of a larger ceasefire deal for Palestinian prisoners. In Tel Aviv, Trey Yankst, Fox News. All right, Trey, we appreciate that detailed report. Now at 6.50 on the East Coast, giving you another live look out in Gaza. We're going to go ahead and take our final two-minute commercial break of the hour. And when we come back, heading out to Brussels, Belgium, getting an update from the EU High Representative for Foreign Policy, Joseph Borrell. He has an update about the Houthis and the conflict out in the Red Sea. We'll be right back in just two quick minutes.
Welcome back to Live Now from Fox. I'm G May Francine. We do have the very latest of your total solar eclipse coverage this morning, but we're also covering other top stories and headlines of the day. Before the break, I gave you the very latest information of the Israel Hamas war. And right now, I want to actually take you out to Brussels, Belgium. You see on your screen the EU High Representative for Foreign Policy, Joseph Borrell. He's joined alongside the Operation Commander Rear Admiral. They're holding a news conference regarding maritime security in the Red Sea as it relates to the Houthis and what they're doing out there in the Red Sea. Let's listen in, and I'll also pop up boxes on your screen of other top stories we're following this morning right here on Live Now from Fox. Since it's uh, the launch of Aspidus on the 19th of February. HRVP, you have the, the floor. Thank you. It's uh, my great pleasure to be here with you with the Rear Admiral Griparis, Operation Commander of this new naval Navy Operation Aspidus. You know what does it mean in, in ancient Greek? This operation was a clear and fast response by the European Union to the deteriorating situation in the Red Sea and on the Gulf of Aden that was having a negative impact on our commercial shippings and regional stability. You know that the Houthis has been attacking with drones and missiles on commercial ships, violating international law and freedom of navigation. On doing so, they threat maritime security, they jeopardize international trade, and put regional peace and security at stakes. They create uh, significant damage and cost people's life. They affect negatively the environment, security, and regional economics. This increases cost. The cost of ship goods are affected. Even the population in Yemen are paying the consequences because they are further deprived from life-saving assistance. It increases the cost of food upon the economies in the region, which were already affected by the consequences of the Russia war of aggression against Ukraine. Uh, I want to just, uh, before giving the floor to the operation commander, illustrate uh, the reasons of this mission with some figures. The Houthis attacks on the maritime traffic that has to be redirected around the Cape of Good Hope, and you may have a look at that through any Google application. This is 10 to 14 days more of traveling. The cost of a container transported from China to Europe has doubled. It costs twice. And the insurance, the insurance shipping has increased by 60%. Before the crisis, 13% of world trade transited through the Red Sea. Annually, 13% of the world traffic was passing by these waters. Today, only half of the 70 ships that were passing daily still use the Suez Canal. So it was necessary to intervene. And I am very proud that we were able to launch the operation Aspides only one month after the first discussions took place among member states. In one month, the operation was launched, has become operational very quickly, and is fulfilling the three mandates this mission has. Protect ships under attack, accompany vessels, and reinforce maritime security awareness. The Red Admiral will give more operational details, but let me just emphasize 
that as today, four member states have been deploying frigates for the mission, and 19 member states are contributing with personnel in the operational headquarters and the force headquarters. In less than two months since the operation was launched, the operation has escorted 68 vessels and has repelled 11 attacks. So it's a mission which has a certain and important level of uh, engagement and risk. But it has a defensive mandate. We are not engaged in any operations against the Houthis on land. Our vessels operate in self-defense and to protect targeted ships. It has to be clearly stated because transparency and openness to regional actors has been our priority since we started preparing this operation. We have exchanged with regional states to discuss and communicate on NASPIDES mandate and we will continue doing so. Our mission is actively interacting with other partners engaged in reestablishing safety and security in the region. We cooperate closely with the French-led Operation Agenor. We have uh, regular talks with the U.S.-led uh, Operation Prosperity Guardian. I am very proud also that our two EU maritime operations, Aspides and Atalanta, are cooperating closely and sharing the support of the Maritime Security Center in Brest. To conclude, before giving the floor to the Red Admiral, this mission is a clear evidence of our will and our capacity to strengthen international security, to protect global public goods, to protect transportation routes, to defend the European Union interests, is a concrete example of the European Union acting as a maritime security provider. And now, Commander, it's over to you for more detailed information about the concrete actions of SPDS. Thank you. Rear Admiral Griparis, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. High Representative Borrell. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the commander of Operation Aspides, Rear Admiral Vasilios Griparis from Hellenic Navy. It is a privilege and, of course, an honor to address to you and inform you about the ongoing UNAF for Operation Aspides. On the 12th February, the Council has nominated me as the Operation Commander, and on the 19th of February, as you are very well known, the operation officially started. The Force Commander is Rear Admiral Italian Navy Stefano Constantino. He's afloat with his force uh, headquarters on board the ITS Gaio Duilio. The initial operation capability of the headquarters has already been declared from the 23rd of February, and this was uh, within the first uh, also week when uh, the operation was launched. Even from the very first day, the very few assets assigned began performing protection duties to support the freedom of navigation and the rights of the global community as derived from the international law and corresponding UN regulations and resolutions. This was a safety defensive reaction to the unlawful attacks conducted against the merchant vessels in the Red Sea, in the Gulf of Aden, and the Arabian Sea. As the High Representative also mentioned, these attacks will have grave consequences not only for the safety of the seafarers, but also uh, for the maritime and regional security, and they threaten the trade via the strategic maritime corridor, hampering the economies of many countries. The area of operation encompasses the Red Sea, the Gulf of Aden, the Arabian Sea, the Sea of Oman, the Gulf, and also the northwest uh, part of the Indian Ocean. As you can uh, understand, the whole uh, landmass is twice as big as uh, the landmass of our 27 member states. For better understanding, just a single transit of one of our ships between the two larger distances in the area might take about 10 days, and also to cross uh, the high-risk area takes almost two days. 
taking into account the number of the assets in place, the size of the operation, and also the order to provide immediate effects, our priority to focus was the high-risk area where against the majority of these unlawful attacks took place. Along with our presence in the operational domain, we had also to speed up and build up uh, command and control networks and also a robust uh, logistical architecture and then a reliable reach out and a confidence build up procedure for the maritime community and the shipping industry. In parallel, we are working with uh, like-minded stakeholders in the area to inform them about our mission as well as the neighboring countries. The mission of Operation Aspidas, of course, is to contribute to the freedom of navigation, maritime security, and decrease any escalation in the area. So in order to, de to do that, we are accompanying vessels, we are protecting vessels against attacks, including multi-domain attacks, maintaining the defensive mandate that any response will always come as a consequence of an attack and be necessary, proportional, and limited to international sea and airspace. The area has been seen multiple attacks in the past months from intimidation and threats to one-way drones, saturation attempts, complex attacks, including shore, air, and sea-based assets, drones, and ballistic missiles. Aspides is proud to say that so far all protected vessels have been successfully safeguarded throughout these attacks and that all ships that requested protection have been escorted. Then we have also to build up a thorough maritime situational awareness in the area of operation. In other words, understanding what is happening at sea and mostly what could impact the security, safety, economy and the environment in the area. Based on the current uh, Houthi military capabilities, they pose a threat to both moving vessels and static targets. You will also recall their ability to save ships at sea, as last year's hijack of the car carrier Galaxy Leader on the 19th of November of 23, and cause extensive damages, like the sinking of Ruby Mar, and also the hit of true confidence with three fatalities and four injuries. The Houthi leadership has claimed responsibility for dozens of attacks and they have managed to discourage normal maritime traffic, which caused a decline of maritime traffic through the Red Sea by about 50% compared to the equivalent before crisis levels. As the High Representative message, we are cooperating with and coordinating with like-minded actors in the area of operation as follows. Of course, with EU NAFOR cooperation at Atalanta, complementing each other's actions and activities, and with a mission, European Maritime Awareness in the Strait of Hormuz, and specifically its military pillar, uh, pillar which is uh, Operation Azinor. Further, we are coordinating with the Operation Prosperity Guardian, since we are operating in a very con congested uh, area, and we exchange information in order to avoid fratricide firings and also incoming threats. Aspides has a solely defensive stance there and any response of Aspides will always come as a consequence of an attack following the principles of necessity and proportionality. proportionality sorry. Moreover, our operation will not conduct any attack on land. During the seven uh, weeks of the operation, Haspides has achieved the close protection of 68 vessels, contributing to the freedom of uh, navigation and the restoration of confidence to the shipping industry and to make them return to the Red Sea and the Suez Canal trading routes. As the High Representative also mentioned, that our ships have shot down nine unmanned aerial vehicles, one unmanned surface vessel, and four anti-ship ballistic missiles. Of course, for all of this, we have to give the appropriate credit to our crews on board the ships that provide the protection. We are extending our engagement with the maritime industry and their response is overwhelmingly positive. I'm confident that Aspides is making an important contribution to maritime security in the area and that the operation supports the EU's efforts in protecting global common goods 
upholding freedom of navigation and contributing to the regional peace and security. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. And uh, we start with the questions. I see a lot of uh, hand raised. I will start with Irini. Thank you, Nabila. Uh, um, high Representative, I'd like to ask, are you satisfied with the results delivered till now by this operation? And should we expect more developments, more decisions, action regarding the operation? And uh, Admiral, Greece participates, has a triple role in this operation. And uh, besides, in case the situation worsens, in, uh, in case there is an escalation from the part of Houthi, is this operation ready to respond with uh, more means, for example? Thank you. Well, as I said, the operation was launched in a record time. It was a quick answer. And once the mission has been deployed, it has been working in a very satisfactory manner. The figures that uh, the Real Admiral and myself have been presented to you show how necessary this mission was. And at the same time, the level of engagement that they are having, the number of vessels being protected, the number of attacks that they have rebuilt. Uh, we, are not, uh, we are not talking about a game. Eh? They are rejecting attacks, re real fire. They have to shut down um, missiles who are being addressed against the vessels that they are escorting. And we are very much aware that this is a mission that uh, brings or comes with a level of risk. We have to increase our capacity. Now we have uh, four ships and occasional cooperation with others. But uh, the Admiral knows very well that we are trying to work in order to increase the logistic support that the mission needs in, on land and also medical uh, capacities uh, just in case. But certainly, until now, the performance is very good. And I thank the Admiral for that. Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, we are constantly uh, looking into every day's actions. And uh, now we are uh, uh, under a, a condition where we plan again and we try to uh, make better our operational plan. Uh, we have estimated about uh, the worsening conditions in the area and we are dealing with it. So we are reporting to the corresponding EU bodies in order to be aware what uh, is actually the situation in the operational field and we have asked specific assets to be in place. So we are dealing also for any possible misfortunate actions that might take place. So then this is a part of my, my work so far uh, during my visits in uh, local countries, I have uh, also contacted uh, countries in order to receive the best possible solutions uh, considering the logistics, medical treatment, and also the member states are willing to contribute to that. So there is also on the 19th of April uh, the global conference uh, for the fourth generation, and I have already addressed to the member states the necessary assets to support the mission and cover any future needs. Maria. Hello, from my part, Maria Psara with Euronews. I have two questions as well. The first is for the Admiral. Uh, you said that the area you are covering is twice... The micro close. The, the area you are covering is twice uh, the land of the 27 member states, right? Yes. So, um, can you cover all this area with the vessels you have already? And uh, for the scope, the three purposes that uh, High Representative has de described. And the, and the second question for both of you, but mainly for High Representative, uh, which is the contribution of the merchant shipping companies to this operation? Because mainly it's done for them, for the... Uh, um, for the merchant, for the industry for the of... Merchants. What's happening with the merchants? Yes, if they, if they contribute to this operation and how. 
happened. Right, right. Now. Yes, thank you. Um, the area, as I said, is extremely vast. So we have also been ordered to provide immediate effects. And I, as I've already uh, told you in my introduction, we have focused on the high-risk area. Since the number one problem was the attacks in the high-risk area and the reduction of about 50% of the, the volume of the shipping uh, through the Red Sea. So PSC and the UMC all the, and all the other necessary EU bodies are aware of my intent there and they agreed so far. And so we are focusing on that area and giving our, uh, and conducting our operations directly there. So it is very early, though, to jump to any conclusion that if we are achieving anything so far, uh, but we have to be patient and see. But anyway, this is the way ahead. So we have shown, at least with the number of assets that we have, what we can do. And then if we increase the number of assets and our presence, then we might be able in the near future to, accept, uh, to deploy the assets also to the rest of the area of operation. Uh, well, uh, as I said, this is a, a security provider. And we have to balance the cost of action with the cost of uh, non-action. The Council has allocated 8 million euros for the common cost to be borne by member states for the initial one-year mandate of the operation. This 8 million doesn't uh, include uh, national born uh, cost, like the salaries. But compare this cost with, uh, with uh, which would be the cost, or we do nothing. As I said, the Babel mandate is being crossed for 30% of the global containers and 21 of the global energy transit is a vital uh, arteria, is a vital vein for us. We cannot let this part of the world without protection. It is our strategic interest and we act as a security provider. And the cost for the for the budget of the European Union, for the budget of the, our military operations allocated by the Council is the 8 million euros for the first year. Um. Good morning, sirs. My name is Uwe Mergener. I'm writing for European Def Security and Defence, a German defence outlet. And uh, my history, I'm a former Navy captain. So my questions are a little bit nasty. Um, first, I want to know if you elude the vast area and you have a high risk area. So I assume the high risk area is the Red Sea. I, am I correct? The southern part of Red Sea, yes. The southern part of the Red Where Sea. How is the tasking done? Is it on request by the merchant vessels or is it uh, done like, uh, I just want to imagine how is our procedure as a maritime security provider? Or are we, uh, are we uh, going into boxes? And if I come down to um, then the operation, what are our ideas of sustainability? I know the mandate is now for one year. How do we want to uh, go along with it? And what would be, in worst case, our exit strategy? They are so, no, much better than I. How do they engage? I can tell you about uh, how long the mission will be. I hope that the shorter possible, but uh, it not depends on me. <laughs> I mean, so, thank you. Uh, you know that we have the Maritime Security Center Horn of Africa, uh, which is in place for more than 15 years. So the shipping industry is very aware of the procedures followed within there. So there was no necessity for me endorsing a new, let's say, process. So we drive all the, the shipping industry to uh, use uh, the appropriate site uh, for the Maritime Security Center and uh, state that they're willing to pass uh, from the area. And this has to be done about 72 hours earlier. Then a second request should be made by these companies 
uh, if they ha uh, require protection, then this uh, whole list of the ships is going down according to a criteria list with that we have already drafted uh, to the force commander and according to the forces he has in place and the time and space, he decides how to protect and give the protection and the, uh, the escort of all the ships. So far, the requests that we received have all, all covered. So anybody who seeks our protection has already received it. But if uh, the maritime uh, industry is convinced and they increase the number, that means also for us that it might be the case that we have to increase the assets available in the operational area. Good morning, I'm Nordin Fridi from the Arabian News Channel. I have a question to Mr. Borel. Is there any political exit from this uh, tense situation in the Red Sea? Uh, you know, any political it, what? Exit. exit. Any political exit from this crisis in the Red Sea, having in mind, of course, uh, the, uh, the Houthi argument, etc., and the situation in Gaza. Did you see any kind of uh, political solution to get out of this tense situation. And my question to the Admiral, uh, what is your assessment since you start the, the mission, in situation being still very tense, or because maybe you yourself and other uh, fleets in the area are deterring the Houthis? Do, do, do you see the situation still very tense, or it is Let's say they are less threatening, less threatening because they are, they are the language. Look, uh, let me clarify that uh, this initiative, this Navy mission, is not meant to be an, a respond to the situation in Gaza no to the Israel response to Hamas uh, uh, 7th October attack. We have a strategic objective. It is to protect the life of sailors, to ensure freedom of navigation, and secure international trade. And this mission will be key to protect uh, the maritime sea lines on the strategic corridor on the attack. But it has nothing uh, to do, it's not an answer, it's not related with uh, uh, Iran and the Houthis or the war in Gaza. This is something that certainly worries and concerns us a lot. But uh, we are there in order to protect uh, the ships, the lives of the sailors, and our strategic interest. Thank you. Uh, very yes, it's uh, very early to say if uh, our operations there have impacted the Houthis attacks. Uh, okay, in absolute numbers, let's say it might uh, we might see a noticeable small reduction, but you have to bear in mind that uh, they have the capability to choose always the time and place. So we are still very vigilant and very focused on what we are doing. And uh, we have to wait and uh, see uh, about uh, the next outcomes while we operate in the area. but with two aspects, one political and the other operational, because Russia uh, has sent its uh, warships uh, to Red Sea and they started drills there. So my question to you, how does it impact the situation? Uh, is it uh, an asset or uh, it's a problem? Well, freedom of navigation is freedom of navigation. It's also for Russia. Russia can send uh, their ships. Uh, we have rules of engagement. Uh, there are a lot of procedures to be followed by the different navies in order to coexist on the same geographical situation. So I don't see any connection so far. So they are doing uh, their own operations. Uh, they are not interfering in ours. 
and we are providing the freedom of navigation to anybody who asks for it. Associated with this. Just a uh, question How uh, good is your contact uh, with the Houthis and is that helping to, to mitigate any of the things that are going on? And I wonder what impact the uh, attack on the uh, embassy in, uh, in Damascus might be having on Red Sea traffic. Has that slowed anything down? Has that become a great concern? So it concerns me. I don't have any connections with the Houthis because I'm uh, on the, the level of connections that I'm allowed to have. I don't have any connections with the Houthis directly. So, of course, we are following the overall political situation and all the strategic, uh, let's say, or we, we want to have the strategic awareness of the whole area. We are considering what this might cause, but we are there vigilant and waiting. We are not attacking them. Though we could, uh, let's say, but we have a different mandate. So if you see it on the military perspective, that, that we, uh, what we are doing is the worst case, let's say. It's the more difficult part. We have to wait all the time, being shot at. So you have to bear that in mind. So we are patient and we are stick uh, to our mandate. Yes, the admiral was very clear. They have to wait to be shot at in order to react. If you have any contact direct or indirect with the Houthi, if not, what is your message today to them? If not, what? What is your message? What is your message to the Houthis if you are not in contact direct from them? No, we don't have. A, uh, we follow the situation in this part of the world. Uh, we know that uh, there is a relationship uh, between the different actors in the region, and we have condemned, for example, the the attack against the Iranian consulate. We have uh, an executive area which excludes uh, the north of the Muscat and the Arabian Sea and the Gulf. We don't have a direct contact with uh, the Houthis, but, uh, you know, uh, we have an embassy in, uh, in, in Yemen and we follow everything that happens in the regions. We want to keep channels of communication open with Iran. We call on Iran to show restraint and to use its influence to avoid escalation, and in particular with relation to the, to the Houthis. Thank you. And last question goes to Simba. But I don't think Iran has a, a full control on the Houthis decision making. They have become quite autonomous. You said that to, you clarified earlier the Navy mission is not meant to be a response to the situation in Gaza, yet the Houthis have linked both. Do you think that if the war in Gaza ends tomorrow, the attacks will stop? I mean, just to be clear on that, do you think there, is, there will be an end to the attacks against ships if tomorrow we find a political solution to the war? And for Rear Admiral, um, one month ago there was a significant escalation in the Red Sea. We had the first fatalities and the last, to my knowledge, and there was also a famous incident with a German drone and a US drone, I believe. Um, what's happened since? Because we haven't heard of any significant escalation since. Has there been a better communication? Is this a sign of the success, uh, the fact that we don't hear uh, about what's going on so much? Is this a sign of success? What has changed, maybe, in the last month that you could tell us about? Thank you. Look, uh, following the start of the war in Palestine, the Israel-Hamas war, the Houthis clearly positioned themselves, it's not a secret, as uh, defenders of the Palestinian cause. And this uh, certainly has given them uh, increased popularity in the wide uh, Muslim world. On the 19th of October, they started flying drones 
against commercial ships which uh, they label, they label, link to Israel interest. They started on the 19th of October saying, I'm going to attack ships related with the Israel interest. Today, however, they attack commercial ships in the Red Sea and the Arabian Sea indiscriminately who the link with the Israel or American interest, who knows? Uh, they are coordinated with Iran. Well, they have a partnership of convenience, but uh, the control of the Houthis decision-making power is something that uh, we don't know. Certainly, the Houthis has been gaining capacity and autonomy and now uh, 80 attacks, 80 attacks have been reported today. In response, since October, there has been 30 military actions carried out by the US or UK. Since February, the Houthis have extended the scope of the attacks. And now they are requiring ships to obtain a permit from what they call the Maritime Affairs Authority before entering Yemeni waters. And they have also announced the expansion of the geographical scope of their attacks to Israeli vessels sailing in the Indian Ocean. Well, uh, certainly for the Houthis there is a relationship between the attacks they are performing and the war in Gaza. From our side, we just want to ensure freedom and security of navigation. And we hope that uh, we could control the situation and this will not expand to a wider geographical zone. So about the misfortunate incidents that happened uh, previously, so just uh, bear in mind that those ships were not escorted or protected by uh, Aspides. Uh, no, or by any uh, other ship. So, of course, uh, the incident uh, you mentioned about the FTS session that uh, took place on the 23rd of February was uh, just in the first of uh, the first days of uh, the action of, of the operation. The frigate, as you are aware, uh, act, acted as it's supposed and uh, with the orders in hand. We have a better coordination so far with Operation Prosperity Guardian, and we have a common operational understanding on the whole area. So this is the way in order to deal with any conflict. And that's how we are able to deal with these uh, conditions so far. Thank you. Thank you very much. This closes our press conference today. Thank you very much, Harold. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. So that press conference wrapping up out there in Brussels, Belgium, regarding maritime security in the Red Sea. And on the right side of your screen, following other top stories this morning, as it relates to that total solar eclipse, that top right box, a live look at our XRAD system, as some cloud cover could impact views of the solar eclipse today. And then that bottom box, some of you wondering, what is the path of totality? Well, there you have it there in that bottom right box. The time now, 7.31 on the East Coast. I'm Gina Francine. Let's go to our first two-minute commercial break of the hour. And when we come back, more on today's total solar eclipse. We'll be right back in just two quick minutes.
Welcome back to Live Now from Fox and good morning to you. If you're just now tuning in, I'm Jeanne Francine, continuing with top stories and headlines of the day. And for many of you, that total solar eclipse is top of mind. As we continue to look ahead to the 1 p.m. hour here on Live Now from Fox for our detailed coverage. Right now, we want to check in with consumer strategist Lisa Miller. Miss Lisa, good morning to you. Thank you so much for being here. Good morning, today. So today, an exciting day. The first thing I want to ask you, what is that anticipation like in Texas where you are? What is your anticipation like for you and your family as you all are only hours away from experiencing this total solar eclipse? Well, in Texas, as you know, it is one of the peak areas of totality at four minutes and 23 seconds. And it definitely has been crazy at, you know, the airport's been crazy, the traffic is picking up, and, and people are pretty excited. Now, in Texas, you probably have heard the weather's not great, but uh, hopefully people will still have patience and, and just will enjoy being uh, spending time together. You talk about all of the people flocking to the Texas area to take part in this anticipated event. And with you being a consumer strategist, I want to ask you, how does all of that boost the economy when you think about the restaurants, the hotels, uh, people making a whole weekend out of this? Well, I will say, I'll just have to say, it will eclipse the Taylor Swift Eras tour, potentially. <laughs> And the reason is, is that people are trying to make moments and memories out of this event. People are traveling. Texas, Dallas alone is supposed to have half a million extra people. Texas could have an extra over 1 million people. So when people are paying for gasoline, restaurants, airlines, even there's a small town uh, just north of Austin, they're doing a music festival, festival, Janae, and it's $350 just to get in to pop up your tent. And so there's just lots of different ways to make moments and memories, and that will definitely be a boost for the economy overall. And that's very smart how um, local um, chamber of commerces and other government entities have decided to make actual events surrounding this. Um, could you share some of the ones, I know you just mentioned one, but other ones that many people are going to experience. I've even heard some people say they're going to go to their, locust, uh, their local uh, and closest Bucky's and just park there and sit outside and make it a Bucky's event to try to see it. Well, and it's funny, even I think uh, so absolutely, there's a couple things that are going on because, you know, you want to be able to be in a place where you can spread out and have some fun. And I will say even like Nebraska Furniture Mart, I've seen so many commercials here, Janae, where go out to Nebraska Furniture Mart and, you know, on their rooftop, they're going to have an event. So yes, everybody's having them. They are free events, um, most of the ones that I've seen. But you think about if you get all of these people, they're going to go in and buy things, whether, you know, it's going to be a beverage or some glasses or some snacks. So they are just trying to make it as, you know, as fun. But from a safe safety perspective, you know, some of the small towns, uh, there are small towns like Hillsboro and Ennis that are just small. They've had to really, they've been planning for years and they've got to be able to have the safety protocols and things like that. So I think there's a lot of joy. And I I, I think that people are, there. you've got to be smart though and be prepared if you're going to get stuck in traffic and have gasoline and have snacks and water, things like that. But hopefully it'll be a very joyful day. And for many, uh, this is a family event. They're trying to turn this moment in time into a memory of a lifetime. And you actually held up the uh, total solar eclipse uh, swag there with the glasses. Uh, some of the tokens that people will be keeping uh, as momentums of this occasion. Um, what are you seeing on your end of how people are turning this moment into a memory? For sure. And as you know, I've been measuring joy since the beginning of the pandemic and only 59% of Americans are actually fully back to their activities. And you think about, yes, maybe you're back to going to restaurants, but are you going to restaurants the most frequently as that you used to? And the answer is no. And so, yes, um, families of all ages, friends, you know, people are making a big deal of it in the swag 
that what the data that I showed is that definitely there could be hundreds of millions of dollars made just on the t-shirts alone in Dallas as I was driving around my neighborhood uh, yesterday on Sunday I already saw a couple of those pop-up you know tents pop-up shops that they were selling shirts so it is pretty crazy uh, in a small town called Mineola there they have an RV rally that's happening and a friend of mine is down there and she's been sending me pictures and again just a lot of camaraderie and it's a special time I mean for many it's going to be the one it truly I know it's kind of a crazy saying but truly a once in a lifetime so people do want to remember it without a doubt and it brings people joy to gather and again the weather's not supposed to be great here in Texas in fact the storms are coming at about three o'clock four o'clock so hopefully it'll still be enough to to be exciting I think on my end, Miss Lisa, that uh, memory will be having to try to uh, make my own type of makeshift glasses. Uh, I don't have any. So, you know, you've been seeing the videos of people trying to make them from the cereal boxes. So I think that might be me. And then I'll have to go to the local eye doctor after to make sure I don't have an issue with my eyes because Lord knows uh, I'm not a carpenter or anything in the least. But uh, have you seen uh, families talking about just the fun leading up to like the pregame per se of making uh, different uh, coloring books and putting together their own different uh, solar eclipse menu and their I solar think, eclipse yes. playlist, those type of things. Uh, the, the thing that is really crazy, I would say, is the menu. Um, when you think about what all, of, even the grocery stores, right? So there's the blackout cookies, there's the blackout coffee drinks and across texas i just in my inbox today got an email from from chili's um the, you know they have a solar eclipse uh, appetizer that they're promoting so it is it's just all of these little little moments and that cereal box i definitely did that when i was a kid i remember uh, making those cereal boxes, but I've never had a, I've never seen a total eclipse, so it'll be good. But I will say, Janae, one, the underside, okay, we have to talk a little bit about that for a moment. So in Texas, because the weather is not bad, um, there are articles now that are coming out about people trying to cancel their reservations and that type of thing. So it will be interesting to see you know, are, are there going to be some people that just bail because the weather's not great? And that's an interesting point, especially since many people have come from out of town for this. So imagine spending all of this money trekking across the U.S. and then arriving in an area where there's a lot of cloud cover or yeah. even uh, rain in the forecast. So, so glad you mentioned that point. Well, Miss Lisa, you know, I always enjoy speaking with you. You're one of my favorite people. Thank you so much for waking Thank up with you. me right and early here on Live Now from Fox. Before I let you go, is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, I would just say, as you know, for anybody that's in that path of totality or making the effort, the trek to do it, just enjoy the moments and memories, whether rain or shine, just make the most out of being time together with your family and friends and be patient and be kind. So those are my closing thoughts. Some great advice there. I've even heard people saying, you know what, my, uh, today might be the time night to pick up the phone and try to record. Just live in the moment and observe right. it for yourself. Great advice there. Again, Miss Lisa, thank you so much for joining us here on Live Now from Fox. You enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Thank you so much. And as we talk about that path of totality that Miss Lisa just mentioned, I want to uh, show you our own live now from Fox, America's total eclipse path of totality. And you can see the uh, Texas area highlighted there on your screen, Dallas and Eagle Pass uh, specifically. Those are areas where this total eclipse will be able to be seen in totality. And don't forget, right here on live now from Fox, we are looking ahead as to Today's coverage starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Time presented by Nissan. Our own Josh Breslow will be in the hosting chair giving you all things total solar eclipse. He says you can expect some pretty cool images that he has to share with you as well as some exclusive interviews, something that you wouldn't really get on an everyday basis. So that is something you can look forward to starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And of course, myself and other hosts this morning will be doing all of that pre game coverage, getting you excited as we are talking about today's total solar eclipse. The time now 743 on the East Coast. Let's go to a quick two minute commercial break. And when we come back, more coverage of today's total solar eclipse. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Live Now from Fox. I'm Jeanne Francine. Weather is top of mind for many of you all who are making trips and even planning to do something in your local neck of the woods, giving you a live look at our x rad system. And we see some showers and cloud cover in several parts of the U.S. today. So just wanting to show you all that as you all are looking ahead as we are talking about today's total solar eclipse. However, that's not keeping many people from continuing their plans. As we know, we are just hours away from the highly anticipated solar solar eclipse and millions of Americans are in a prime spot to see it. And many more have taken time off and traveled just to catch a glimpse of what could be a once in a lifetime event. Fox Weather's Max Gordon joins us now with more. We're now just hours away from the must-see celestial event that's been on everyone's radar the past few weeks. On Monday afternoon, the moon will block out the sun, a total solar eclipse. It's incredible. It's everything people say it is. Um, it's just an entirely different experience. This is the path of totality, starting in Texas and cutting northeast across the country. If you're not in that zone, it will still be worth seeing. It just won't be a total eclipse. People traveling far and wide to the cities and towns expected to get the best view. But fueling some concern for those who came all this way is the potential for clouds in the forecast. One person we talked to in Cleveland says he booked a last minute Airbnb in Quebec just in case conditions aren't ideal. I want to experience it unobstructed as much as possible. I already drove about 10 and a half hours just to get here and I'm willing to drive another nine and a half hours just to see it a more certain, clear version. Others say they're excited no matter what the weather has in store. We'll still see like it turn dark, I think, so I think it'll still be cool regardless. When the moon completely blocks out the sun, it essentially looks like it turns night for a bit, and I'm just really excited to see that. But don't forget to wear proper eye protection. Looking directly at the sun before and after totality can damage your eyes. And there's good reason people don't want to miss out. The next total solar eclipse seen in the U.S., won't happen for another 20 years. In Cleveland, Ohio, Max Gordon, Fox Weather. All right, Max, thank you so much. And again, giving you a live look at our x rad system. As for some, weather is a concern, but for others, you might not care. It doesn't matter if there's cloud cover or even rain. You're still going to get out there and try to see what you can see. The time now, 748 on the East Coast. Let's go to our third two-minute commercial break of the hour. And when we come back, more live events, top stories, and headlines of the day.
Welcome back to Live Now from Fox. I'm Jeanne Francine. Looking at the live feeds, I see some excitement going on with the crew out at Fox 29 Philadelphia as they have their own preparations underway for today's total solar eclipse. Let's listen in. It is so charming. Oh my gosh. Uh, a lot of great little eateries. And yeah. can you show houses like, oh, pardon the lunar module, but on the other side of the lunar module, uh, just an example of the big homes. I guess there was a lot of money back here in the day. Kodak. When, you know, Eastman Kodak was here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And All a that. lot of trade, you know, on the Ontario, Lake Ontario, a lot of boats used to come up here. So it's just really charming. A lot of great little eateries. We went out to, where were we last night? Silver Iguana. Yeah. And then we went over to a place called Lucky's. Yeah. Both places packed, packed with humans. Yeah, soon it's uh, gonna be packed right great. there. All right, we'll let you get your Eclipse you coffee. We'll check back in just okay. a couple of minutes here, Mike. Let's get out to the cherry blossoms. Jen, showing them off already. Good morning, Jen. Okay, guys, so we are here in one of Philadelphia's shining stars. Susan Slauson's here. Good morning. Good morning. You Jen. have a new title. I do. Commissioner of Parks and Rec for the City of Philadelphia. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you, Jen. So what's going on here this weekend? And so it's the Subaru Cherry Blossom Festival. This is a wonderful event here in the beautiful Fairmont Park, and it takes place at our Horticultural Center. Last year, we brought 40,000 people in wow. for the weekend. And so this Saturday and Sunday, Saturday from 10 until 5, and Sunday from 10 until 4. Please come out. It's family friendly, dog friendly, whatever you want. And it's free. <laughs> so come out and check us out this, this weekend. You know how it is. If it's free, it's for me. It's <laughs> <laughs> um, and then it, you can walk and walk and walk. There's just so many parts of the park. You know, and that's what's wonderful about, one of the wonderful things about the city of Philadelphia, talk, and talking about green doesn't get any better than this. You're, we're out here this time of morning with these beautiful trees, and there are miles and miles of trails throughout the city of Philadelphia, not just here where we're standing in West Fairmont Park, but throughout the Northeast, with Sahicken, wherever you want to find a trail, you can find one here in Philadelphia. The other thing that you had said is that this is the beginning of the festival season, yes. right? It kind of is a bit of a kickoff. Mm -hmm. This is the beginning. And so uh, the Japanese American Society, they're holding this festival this weekend. They're starting it at the Harder Cultural Center. They're going to have music. They're going to have dancing. They're going to have calligraphy. We really want you to come out and enjoy and be a part of what's going on here. The um, Shofosu will take place right down here. I don't know if you've been at the Japanese yeah, house really down pretty. there. It is beautiful. This is your opportunity to come and visit, to get on the grounds. If you've never been here, people come from all across the country. And it, the bulk of the festival happens on the weekend, but there's stuff that happening each and every day. There's going to be beer in that Hort Center. I like to call it by its cool name. Yes, <laughs> it is. That is the cool name. The, the, there's a beer garden. Yeah. Who doesn't love a beer garden yeah, on the weekend? For sure. Come on out. Drink your beer. Bring your family. Bring your kids. Get to see the beauty. And guess what? No rain. I love it. Thank you. Thank and congratulations. you. Congratulations. Uh, just if you're keeping score, she's now had 80% of the leadership positions in the city of Philadelphia. <laughs> Fair? Oh, Jen. <laughs> it's the truth. Wait, a pleasure to deal with each yeah. and every time. Thank you, Jen. It's been quite a path. Speaking of path, a path of totality. Let's check back in real quick with Mike in Rochester. See, now, I think it you up. guys are getting the feeling I'm just horsing around, but <laughs> oh, no. You stallion. We're going to do another glasses segment. <laughs> Woo! -hoo -hoo. Uh, with a guy that's kind of studied this inside and out because we don't want to get hurt. So come on back and we'll talk with him. He knows all about the proper eyewear. Okay? Okay. I kind of learned this when I was working with Ronda Rousey that I can take an ass kicking really well. <laughs> the man. All right, so pretty cool coverage there from our content partners over at Fox 29 Philadelphia as we continue to preview today's anticipated event of that total solar eclipse. The time now 7.54 on the East Coast. Let's go to our final two-minute commercial break of the hour. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Live Now from Fox and good morning to you if you are just now tuning in. Now at 7.57 on the East Coast, we do have some breaking news we want to share with you. Now at this hour, we're being told by content partners at Fox News that Morgan Wallen is reportedly facing multiple felonies after being arrested early Monday morning this morning. The country music superstar was arrested on three felony charges in Nashville, Tennessee after allegedly throwing a chair off the sixth floor of Eric Church's Chiefs Bar. That coming from content partners there in Nashville with News Channel 5 Nashville. Now, the chair landed within a few feet of police officers on the ground. We're told staff informed police that Wallen was responsible and he was arrested after videos show the neon eye singer lunging and throwing an object over the roof. That comes from that same report. Now, police were informed by witnesses that Wallen was allegedly laughing after the fact of all of this happening. We're told he now faces three counts of reckless endangerment and had a bond of $15,250. Wallen was released from custody a few hours after being arrested. That information coming from the local jail's website. But now at 7.58 on the East Coast is breaking news coming into our live now from Fox Studios as we are learning that country music star Morgan Wallen was arrested early this morning on felony charges. Again, this happening after uh, he's being accused of throwing a chair off the sixth floor of Eric Church's Chiefs Bar. And we're being told that um, he faces three counts of reckless endangerment. And he did have a bond a little over $15,000. But we're told he has since been released from custody. He was only in custody a few hours after being arrested. This is preliminary information we are getting into our live now from Fox Studios. And of course, as we get more information, you will be the first to know. And this happening uh, just months after his tour and many people um, follow Morgan Wallen and listen to his music as he is more of a contemporary country music artist, uh, his music spanning across the uh, country music lines in two other genres. So as we get more information on this breaking news, you will be the first to know right here on Live Now from Fox. Uh, switching gears now to other top stories we are following here on Live Now from Fox as it relates to today's um, total solar eclipse. Right now we want to check in with our content partners over at Fox 4 Dallas as many people are flocking to the Texas area to get in on the action. Let's listen in. is just before Ooh, the morning hits in the next 24 hours and there's another risk for big rain and storms tomorrow so three events that doesn't even count the eclipse so as we look at this morning we'll talk about the eclipse because obviously that's the first thing on everyone's mind number one as expected here come the high clouds they're rolling in as we speak we can live with high clouds they'll filter the sun a bit they're not the worst the low clouds are now up to Corsicana you can see them they look just a little bit different on this. They're kind of splotchy. In about an hour, we'll get a better visible, visible satellite picture. I can tell you by late morning and noon, these low clouds indicated in this forecast map by the orange, the dark orange, you're going to cover a really big chunk of real estate, and you're going to be sitting there at 11, 12 o'clock going, oh, this is going to be rough. And you can also see the high clouds giving good visibility north and west, but 1130 isn't the eclipse time. We're concerned about 140 and about that time between one o'clock and maybe two o'clock these low clouds are going to start scattering out and you're going to get more and more sun. Will it be that way at your house? I can't tell you that. When low clouds break they break in chunks so some folks are going to end up with sunshine for the eclipse. Others are going to be stuck in the clouds. It is just the luck of the draw on this one. What isn't the luck is after five o'clock, there's going to be storms east of Dallas with a severe risk only for about 
maybe 50, 60 percent of us. And then another area overnight after 10, 11 o'clock through the overnight hours, another risk for severe weather. And we'll discuss the severe weather factors. They do include large hailstones, though, and for some in our southeastern counties, even a tornado risk. So by noon, low clouds are expanding in. Otherwise, there'll be hazy sun, and then the clouds will be breaking up this afternoon. Again, you know, if you feel lucky, what did uh, Clint say? Do you feel lucky, punk? Um, <laughs> just hoping that the clouds break over your house this afternoon. May the force be with you, Eric. Sure. And by the way, for those folks, right. no. Eric's here in, in for traffic this morning, and but Chip will be here. Yes. We have a special good day coverage mm -hmm. or it's special eclipse coverage from 10 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Dan Henry will be here. Chip will be here. Allie will be here. The gang's all here. Yes, and well, it's a right Monday. Right now, the traffic's all here. Yeah, the Monday traffic woes are definitely really piling on, all kind of in the same area. Let me just kind of step out of the way here and show you that we have three major problems all very close to each other. First of all, on the northbound side of Loop 12 Walton Walker, approaching the 35E merge, two left lanes are blocked. Then if you want to continue and go east on 635, then you're going to run into a backup at 35E because of an accident where first the left lane is blocked, then the right lane is blocked. Look like It looks like there's a fluid spill. And if not to be outdone, on the southbound side of 75, approaching Spring Valley and Mid Park, HOV and one left lane are blocked. That's why you have a backup well in through Richardson. Uh, Lauren and... All right, you can track storms as they arrive in North Texas on the Fox 4 weather app. WAP has live radar, gives you information on the watches and warnings. It's free to download. You just scan that code right there on your screen. of planning will pay off today for a lot of communities uh, across North Texas as hundreds of thousands of people from around the world are expected to come here to experience the total eclipse. Okay, probably the coolest place is going to be the town of uh, Ennis in Ellis County, south of Dallas. They're expecting 200,000 um, for that four minutes of totality and Paige Ellenberger is already there. Downtown Ennis yes. set for the day. Good morning, Paige. Hey, Brandon and Lauren, good morning. And with all of those people, of course, brings awareness to the city and, of course, dollars as well. And usually the city of Ennis is used to blue bonnets being the economic proponent that is driving really the entire month of April. But the solar eclipse is only added to that hype. And Jeffrey Williams is the president of the Chamber of Commerce here in the city. And it's been an incredible month for you all already. And a lot of it comes to a point this afternoon. Hi, good morning. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yes, ma'am. Um, you know, Ennis has being, been prepared for the eclipse for several, several months. In the middle of all this is April, which is traditionally Blue Bonnet, and Ennis is the Blue Bonnet capital of Texas, and it drives a, an economic force here that benefits locals, it benefits our retail, our hotels, all of that in general. And uh, we like the exposure because those that are coming into town give us an opportunity to give back to the infrastructure and the benefits to our local uh, businesses and communities. So. And you mentioned hotels, and from what I'm understanding, those have been a little busy leading up to today as well. Just a little bit, <laughs> yes. We uh, all of our hotels have been booked out several months uh, in advance of the eclipse, and uh, you know that is great. We love to see that. We have great festivals, we have great attractions, but it's always nice to see when things are full. And, and you all are no strangers to festivals. The Blue Bonnet Festival of course coming up on April 19th of course that brings so much awareness what has today meant in addition to all of that yeah so what it means in addition is is that you know Ennis is progressing Ennis is growing but we still have a country hometown feel to all this we welcome everybody we want people to come in but are also this is supporting anything that we may do for our local establishments our local business community and our local people um, it's kind of a nice formula of work and play and where to live. And very, very quickly, uh, what has been the outlook from the small businesses here in the city leading up to today? 
Yeah, so we have lots of people. The hotels are sold out. We have restaurants that are doing really, really well. We have boutiques that are doing really well with the influx of people. Those dollars help everything that we do here in uh, Ennis. Awesome. Jeffrey, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, I mean, of course, events like today, events like the Blue Bonnet Festival just bring so much attention to towns like Ennis. And it's going to be important come this afternoon when everyone's eyes are in the sky looking at the total solar eclipse. Brandon and Lauren, it's just going to be such a good event. So much excitement. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Paige. A sign in the window of a business in downtown Waxahachie offers some hope for the weather today. Shows a newspaper story from July 29th, 1878, when the previous total eclipse was seen in North Texas. Cloudy skies that day. And apparently, yeah. the clouds parted just in time for the eclipse. Wouldn't that be a beautiful thing? That's what we'd like <laughs> to does. see. Walks the Hatchie wrapping up three days of celebrations for the total eclipse today with a watch party in uh, downtown at the Rail Yard Park. It's, it's interesting to see how all the different cities and towns yeah. have decided to celebrate this big event. And there's going to be a big uh, uh, crowd event at Clyde Warren Park today on the north side of downtown Dallas. A big old watch party there, too. Yeah, Fox Force Hannah Bata there live with a look at what to expect. Good morning. Good morning, you guys, and we are in for such a treat because Dallas is the largest city that's in the path of totality for today's eclipse. So as you can imagine, downtown Dallas has several events, but one that's super exciting, really an all-day event, is the one here at Clyde Warren Park. This morning, we're talking to the president, Kit Sars, about the event today that really is something that's going to be taking place from sunup to sundown. What do you guys have planned? Well, we're really excited. There's so many people from out of town here as well. The hotels have all been booked for weeks now, um, and we've got a band who's going to be performing all day, eclipse-related music. We've partnered with the Perot Museum. They've sent over 35,000 pairs of eclipse glasses and an astronomer panel, which will be set up right behind us, where people can really learn what they're about to see. Yes, so we're right in front of the main stage. That setup has been happening even before we got here at about 6.30. But I just noticed a couple of guests, some visitors have already showed up. You guys were so busy throughout the entire weekend. What do you think the turnout's going to look like today? Well, we've had close to 35 5,000 for our Independence Day event, our tree lighting, and we're expecting about that um, today as well, which is why we have so many glasses. But there's plenty of room. You're right. People have already started setting up their blankets, um, and we're really expecting a great turnout today. Yeah, so for, for people coming out, what's your recommendation as far as just parking, getting here, just those logistics? I think I went to an eclipse in 2017, and I experienced no parking problems in Nashville or no traffic problems. I really think if you avoid traveling during that total eclipse time period and you get yourself situated, situated by 11 and then you know give yourself plenty of time after the eclipse you'll be fine getting out in and out of this part of town the department of transportation within the city is all over it so just give yourself time and come and relax and enjoy that's really reassuring to hear that you didn't have too too much of an issue just getting around because i know that's been a big concern for especially a lot of the locals as far as your experience when you when you were a part of the total eclipse what was that like for you it was amazing i mean it's really pulling the community together and you know it's a shared experience for all of us from for around the country and so and that's really as you know what Clyde Warren Park is all about so we're delighted to be welcoming all these people to Dallas all of our typical communities who come in from around the city plus all these people coming from the UK and Germany it's really terrific to all be together for this yeah I was gonna say where where is the furthest you've heard visitors coming from um, we've got some have come from Asia um, okay. so a long travel time for a four minute total eclipse but there are a lot of buffs out there for astronomy so they're here now I, I'm excited you guys will have the astronomers here. It'll be a really fun experience. Thank you so much, Kit. We appreciate it. Thank you. Happy Eclipse Day to everybody. Yeah. Happy Eclipse Day. I'm going to send it back to you guys, Brandon and Lauren. I mean, several minutes of that totality here at Clyde Warren Park. So come on out. Like she said, get here early, get your spot. But they have so many things for, for all of the visitors that, that include not even just the eclipse, but the performances, the speakers, all that sort of thing. So you really don't have to go anywhere else, which I'm a big fan of. I'm going to send it back to you guys. But for now, reporting live in Dallas. I'm Hannah Batop. A good day. All right. Yeah, hopefully it won't be like an end of a baseball game where everybody at the end gets in their cars and tries to head out. It might be. You may you may <laughs> want to oh you may want to just hang back. Well, drivers heading into downtown Dallas around the time of the eclipse will notice some traffic changes. Police are closing some downtown ramps during the hour of totality. So exits off of I-35 E, uh, I-30 downtown, mm -hmm. Central Expressway.
Even Woodall Rogers Freeway will all be closed from 1 to 2 p.m. All exits out of downtown, though, will remain open. Dallas police are urging drivers to keep their eyes on the road, <laughs> not the sky. Oh, come on, folks, uh, during the eclipse. The oh, fact boy. that they even have to say <laughs> that. We have is... to say that, yeah. <laughs> uh, Please just keep <laughs> yeah. driving. Uh, Fox 4, of course, here at Solar Eclipse Headquarters. We've got everything you need to know about the eclipse all morning long and continuing through totality this afternoon. You can also learn more about the eclipse on our website, fox4news.com, or even on our streaming channel, Fox Local. That's like when they're like, please you view your glasses, make sure you have your glasses during the eclipse, but if you're driving, don't put the, put glasses, the glasses on. on. Thanks. Oh, boy. Appreciate it. <laughs> 12 minutes after 7 o'clock, coming up on Good Day, a Southwest Airlines Boeing 737 had to make an emergency landing after, after a piece of the plane actually fell off. I'll hear what the pilot had to say coming up. Yeah, all eyes to the sky today for that eclipse. So later for the chance for storms. Evan has all the details coming up. Weather in a snap. Trust the weather. We appreciate Fox 4 Dallas for their very detailed coverage. And don't forget, live now from Fox's total solar eclipse coverage today, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, presented by Nissan. My colleague Josh Breslow, very excited to host these festivities for you. He tells me you can expect some exclusive interviews and some great live pictures from around the U.S. You don't want to miss out on the action starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. The time now, 8.13 on the East Coast. Let's go ahead and go to our first two-minute commercial break of the hour. And and when we come back, uh, hitting some other top stories and headlines of your Monday morning. We'll be right back in just two quick minutes. Welcome back to Live Now from Fox. I'm Jean A. Francine. As we continue our coverage of live events, top stories, and headlines on this Monday morning, right now we head out to Brussels, Belgium. On your screen, you see the NATO Secretary General Jan Stoltenberg. He's meeting with the Chairman of the Presidency of Bosnia, giving an update. Let's listen in. Denis Bacirovic. Chairman of the Presidency of uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, Denis, uh, it's great to have you here. Uh, welcome to uh, NATO. It's great to see you again. 
and actually welcome back to the NATO headquarters. Uh, we last met during my visit to Bosnia and Herzegovina in November, and the Deputy Secretary General led the visit of the North Atlantic Council to Sarajevo earlier this year. Your visit today is a chance to take stock of our partnership and discuss what more we can do together. Bosnia and Herzegovina is a long-standing NATO partner. We strongly support your sovereignty and territorial integrity. We continue to support the EU-led Operation Althea under the Berlin Plus arrangements to maintain a safe and secure environment. And we commend Bosnia and Herzegovina for your recent progress on the path towards uh, membership in the European uh, Union. But we remain deeply concerned by continued secessionist policies and divisive rhetoric. This is reckless and dangerous. It undermines hard-won progress and hampers reforms which would benefit your people. All political leaders must work together to preserve unity and safeguard national uh, institutions. This is key for peace and security in the country and for stability in the Western Balkans. NATO has been committed to our partnership for many years. We support your security reforms uh, efforts through our headquarters in Sarajevo and through our defense ca uh, capability, uh, capacity building package. We are now helping you to strengthen your capabilities further. In areas including crisis management, cyber defense and countering terrorism. We also appreciate Bosnia and Herzegovina's contributions to our common security. And I welcome your efforts to upgrade your armed forces to work even more closely with NATO, including through the certification of a light infantry battalion to NATO standards of combat readiness. NATO's commitment to Bosnia and Herzegovina is firm, and we stand ready to continue our political dialogue and strengthen our practical cooperation for the benefit of our shared security. So, Chairman, thank you again for being here today. Please, you have the floor. Welcome. Thank you. Poštovani predstavnici medija, uvaženi generalni sekretaru NATO-a, dozvolite mi da kao predsedavajući predsjedništva Bosne i Hercegovine iskažem zahvalnost NATO-u na cijelokupnoj pomoći državi Bosne i Hercegovine. Thank you for the overall assistance you have provided to Bosne i Hercegovine. NATO is one of the key factors ensuring peace and security in Bosne i Hercegovine. Citizens of Bosne i Hercegovine truly appreciate that. That is why it is not a coincidence that the vast majority of citizens of Bosne i Hercegovine support the NATO future of Bosnia and Herzegovina. I would like to thank you particularly, um, you personally, Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg, for the assistance you have provided to Bosnia and Herzegovina for maintaining a peace and security in Bosnia and Herzegovina. It is very important what you have been saying and what you said right now, that you and NATO fully support the independence, sovereignty and territorial integrity of Bosnia and Herzegovina. The role of NATO in Bosnia and Herzegovina is multiple. Annex 1 of the Dayton Peace Agreement gives NATO the mandate to establish the forces functioning following the authorizations and under the auspices of NATO through the NATO chain of command in case of any jeopardy for peace and security in Bosnia and Herzegovina. NATO has a clear international basis for action. Therefore, I wish to support this uh, proactive action uh, and proactive activities of NATO, including uh, any necessary deterrence and including the presence of NATO forces in military bases throughout Bosnia and Herzegovina. Full membership in NATO is one of strategic foreign policy goals of Bosnia and Herzegovina. That is what has been decided by the uh, state authorities of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, this vote was made by um, having the votes of the representatives of both entities in Bosnia and Herzegovina and all nations in Bosnia and Herzegovina. That creates a very clear legal framework. Specifically, state institutions of Bosnia and Herzegovina have adopted all necessary legal, strategic and conceptual document in area of defense.
Um, further evidence of this is the alone defense of Bosnia and Herzegovina, as well as the review of defense of Bosnia and Herzegovina, defense politics of Bosnia and Herzegovina, security politics of Bosnia and Herzegovina. We have adopted the presidency of Bosnia and Herzegovina, the statement uh, that our goal is Bosnia and Herzegovina entering NATO, and finally the resolution of the parliament of Bosnia and Herzegovina, also stating that our goal is Bosnia and Herzegovina joining NATO. I wish to specifically emphasize the importance of Article 84 of the law on defense. That particular article um, says the following. Presidency of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Parliament of Bosnia and Herzegovina, the Council of Ministers of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and all defense subjects will, I quote, implement any necessary activities for Bosnia and Herzegovina being um, joining NATO. So this is our legal obligation as well. Our path has now lasted for almost 20 years. We have done a lot. We have passed a sizable part of this path, and we have achieved some important results. Bosnia and Herzegovina cannot turn back at this point. We are knocking at the door of NATO, and this is an opportunity that we have to use for the sake of all the people and all the nations in Bosnia and Herzegovina. We have shown that Bosnia and Herzegovina is a reliable part partner to NATO, and this is very important. We have also achieved some specific results in the last years. Specifically, I will mention some of them. We have adopted three IMPs, which have been submitted to Brussels. After that, NATO officially confirmed that MAP was activated for Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, this uh, particular mandate of Presidency of Bosnia and Herzegovina adopted over 40 decisions in the area of defense. We have also adopted the uh, defense budget in 2023. Also, the new structure of general code for Bosnia and Herzegovina following two years of blockades. We have appointed new generals for the armed forces of Bosnia and Herzegovina after two years of blockades that we had to face. Uh, during the sessions of the presidency of Bosnia and Herzegovina, we have approved the uh, military missions being sent abroad, as well as participation of the armed forces of Bosnia and Herzegovina in the uh, peace-building operations, uh, thus providing our contribution to our collective security. We have activated the uh, Battalion Strike Force Light Infantry, our forces of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which has been evaluated um, um, uh, positively by NATO. Bosnia and Herzegovina, for the first time, was invited to provide contribution to NATO Response Force, which is basically high readiness force able to quickly deploy. We have met all formal conditions um, for Bosnia and Herzegovina being sent a formal invitation to join NATO. We have adopted all legal acts, all political acts, defining the aspirations of Bosnia and Herzegovina regarding our NATO membership. We have reached a high level of interoperability between the uh, defense and the security sector in the country. Bosnia and Herzegovina is ready for joint action in line with NATO standards. Finally, I would like to say that this encouraging and very important meeting for us, meeting with Secretary General, was an opportunity for me uh, to suggest some specific um, suggestions, and hopefully the uh, leaders uh, of NATO will consider my suggestions. I suggested, to be more specific, that NATO, through more comprehensive implementation of the action plan for membership, Bosnia and Herzegovina, define a higher level and more specific level of integrity um, and a connectivity between NATO and Bosnia and Herzegovina, which would include uh, more specific security safeguards, hopefully to be confirmed by NATO decision during the next summit to take place in Washington. I also suggested that Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is an aspiring country for membership in NATO, that NATO uh, confirms NAC plus Bosnia and Herzegovina format future meetings, uh, and that would additionally intensify the uh, NATO path of 
Bosnia and Herzegovina also suggested that NATO um, um, affirms uh, proactive engagement, including any necessary deterrence, and strengthen the presence of NATO in military bases in Bosnia and Herzegovina in order to prevent any jeopardy against peace and security in the country. We are all aware that lately, unfortunately, there has been the influence of anti-Dayton forces, which have been jeopardizing both Dayton peace agreement and peace in Bosnia and Herzegovina. I also suggested that NATO in the future make an additional step forward, very important for Bosnia and Herzegovina, but also for NATO, which would be the invitation to Bosnia and Herzegovina to join NATO. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a question from Nerma Ainadic uh, from Sveni Avaz. So that press conference wrapping up out in Brussels, Belgium, with the NATO Secretary General speaking with the chairman of the presidency of Bosnia. Right now, they're taking questions from uh, media there in the audience. And on the right side of your screen, we are following other top stories of the day. And you guessed it as it relates to that total solar eclipse. That top right box, a live look at our x rad system as weather could impact views of the solar eclipse. We have a lot of cloud cover and some rain in certain states. And then also giving you the path of totality in that bottom box. The time now 827 on the East Coast. We're going to a quick two minute commercial break. And when we come back, more on today's total solar eclipse. We'll be right back in just two quick minutes. Welcome back to Live Now from Fox, and good morning to you if you are just now tuning in. I'm Jeanne Francine. We know now we are just hours away from a celestial event that will have millions of us gazing toward the heavens. Part of the country is about to experience a total eclipse of the sun. As Doug Luzader joins us from Washington this morning, just about all of us will be able to see it at least part of it firsthand. Doug, good morning to you. Good morning here in Washington. We'll see about an 89% eclipse. This really all depends on where you are and how the weather is. On the left also and probably on the bottom. With telescopes already pointed skyward, amateur and professional astronomers in Mexico will be the first on the continent today to see the big show. This is the first place on the continent where the moon's shadow will touch. So the moon's shadow will first touch down in the Pacific Ocean. It'll come racing from that direction. It'll come washing over us. 
and the first view will be from here. And from there, the path of the total eclipse, which is only about 115 miles wide, will travel northeast, crossing a heavily populated part of the U.S., where about 32 million people live and millions of others have made the trek. I already drove about 10 and a half hours just to get here, and I'm willing to drive another nine and a half hours just to see a, a more certain, clear version. If the weather cooperates, what they're gonna see in those final five minutes before totality is the street lights come up, Venus starting to make an appearance, then Jupiter, then we'll see the diamond ring effect where that last speck of moon or sunlight is coming through the moon's valleys, and then we're thrust into twilight. That's if the weather cooperates, and cloud cover today is the real question. And most of the rest of the country will see just a partial eclipse. But either way, doctors say do not under any circumstances look at the sun with your naked eyes. And that makes these special eclipse glasses a very hot commodity. A very hot commodity, and they're even cautioned about using your phone to directly take a picture of the sun if you're in an area of partial eclipse, which is most of the country today. Back to you guys. Doug Luzader there with Fox News Channel. Doug, thank you so much for joining us on this anticipated day. You enjoy the rest of yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. And as we continue to give you top stories and headlines right now, we want to preview what we are looking ahead to later today. Live now from Fox's Total Solar Eclipse live coverage presented by Nissan starting at 1 p.m. Eastern time. My colleague Josh Breslow will be giving you all of those cool images and exclusive interviews. The time now 832 on the East Coast and looking at our feeds, we do see that there are um, some of our content partners giving some weather forecasts as it relates uh, to today's total solar eclipse. Right now, let's check in with Fox 29 Philadelphia as they continue their coverage. Grab a pen and watch this. It's so easy. Boom. You make a little tiny hole. I'm coming right up to the camera. See that little tiny hole right there? That's all you want to do. And next up, this is the sun. Pretend the sun is behind you because you never look through this to see the sun. The sun's behind you. The light shines through and then you get a second plate. And here's what's cool. The sunlight goes through that little pinhole and it projects onto something white like that or maybe say a piece of computer paper just like that. And it shows you what the sun is looking at like as the eclipse happens. In other words, you'll see that crescent sun projected onto your plate through a little pinhole. So just look around your kitchen for things with little circles and you'll be able to see the eclipse safely with that sun behind you shining through whatever you got. We have all the instructions and much more for these at home items. Here's what you do. You go to fox29.com. You click right on this on the home page. We have all these tutorials, including this cereal box we did last Friday right at fox29.com. Back over to you. Pretty cool. That's great. Thanks, Drew. We really appreciate those. Those are great yeah. to do with the kids in case they are, when they do get home, if they're getting home, you can all do that together. And they can have the Cheez-Its at the same yeah. time. <laughs> a Cheez-It honestly works too. It's the same idea. This little pinhole in the Cheez-It, the light goes through it and it'll project what the sun looks like onto a plate. A Cheez-It of all things. And then when it's over, you have a snack. Good idea. <laughs> Thanks, Drew. Speaking of food, we're always eating on Good Day. Um, how would you like hash browns on your cheesesteak? Mike says you gotta try Shea Steaks. All right, and we appreciate Fox 29 Philadelphia. Pretty cool to see how you can make your own makeshift glasses with some uh, boxes, some cereal boxes, or in that case, uh, boxes of Cheez-Its that you have at the house so you can properly and safely watch the anticipated total solar eclipse. The time now, 834 on the East Coast. Let's go to a quick two-minute commercial break, and when we come back, more preview coverage of this anticipated event. We'll be right back in just two quick minutes.
Welcome back to Live Now from Fox. I'm Gina Francine. Looking at our content partners, I see that Fox 4 Dallas is hitting their uh, preview coverage of the total solar eclipse. Uh, let's listen in. Of Mazatlan in Mexico, residents and tourists in the towns, uh, the uh, town on the Mexico's west coast, gathered yesterday to get ready for today's big event. Many amateur astronomers are there, hoping to see the eclipse. But of course, just like in our area, they are expecting clouds today for totality. Well, Fox 4 is your solar eclipse headquarters. We've got everything you need to know about uh, the eclipse all morning long, and we will continue our coverage through totality this afternoon. You can also learn more about the eclipse on our website, fox4news.com, or even on our streaming channel, Fox Local. 7.38 on this Monday morning while the Dallas Stars face a division rival in a late night game as they try to lock down the top playoff spot in the West. We'll have highlights coming up. So a quick hit there from Fox 4 Dallas as they are about to go to a quick two minute commercial break. But looking over at our other content partners, I do see that Fox 29 Philadelphia, they are discussing an eclipse watch party. Uh, let's check in now to see. I'm trying to see if they're about to go to break. And just as I said that they did go to break, but that's OK. Uh, let's see if our content partners over at Fox Weather have anything that we can check in with now. Game time radar, decision. What we're tracking Total audible satellite. at the line, uh, Omaha, Omaha, right? So that's what we're <laughs> looking at. It's just a visible imagery. And we're starting to see the clouds come in, and they are rolling out there from the west to the east, Cleveland through Buffalo. They're not in the Rochester yet. They're not into Syracuse either or Watertown. Uh, Burlington, Upstate Maine New York looks, looks good. awesome. Doesn't it look nice? Maine looks incredible. And notice Maine. Northern looks Vermont. Like, looked like it was clouds. No, that's that's snow. Fresh snow on the ground. Yes. On yeah, the visible, with visible, so. you're going to no see everything. If it's there. not moving, it's snowpack. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a look at Rochester's forecast. Looking pretty cloudy. Temperatures generally around 60 degrees. The path to totality begins at 320. It's disheartening when you see 90% right there. But again, what we see, at least on the visible imagery, High thin stuff. And even if you get clouded out, folks, it's still going to get dark. You are still going to have a temperature difference. It's still an experience, yeah. even with the cloud no, it's cover. It's going to be great. Place. I mean, there's no question. And again, this could be waffling in and out. Right now, is it in the poor? We've got a board up there, good and poor viewing. It's not on any of them. And we've so seen a couple cities waffle between the poor and the good. Yeah, we, so. took, we took Dallas out of the poor and put it into the good viewing area. So, I mean, it, it could still change, and it probably will. But here is Buffalo. Again, overcast, guys. It, right now, Buffalo does not look great but you get over towards uh, Rochester and Syracuse begin to thin out we'll see again game time decision we got several hours left to go well we're going to continue our trek here coming up yeah let's take a look at Dallas we're going to Dallas where and we appreciate our content partners over at Fox Weather giving us that quick forecast as many of you all are concerned about cloudy size and even some potential rain in certain parts of the U.S. today. And don't forget, as we are looking ahead this morning to the very latest coverage, we do want to keep you informed right here on Live Now from Fox. Looking ahead to the 1 p.m. Eastern Time Hour for Live Now from Fox's total solar eclipse coverage presented by Nissan. Again, that live coverage starting at 1 p.m. Eastern time with my colleague Josh Breslow. The time now 840 on the East Coast. Let's go to a quick two minute commercial break. And when we come back, more live events, top stories and headlines of the day.
Welcome back to Live Now from Fox, and good morning to you if you're just now tuning in. I'm Gina Francine. We are just hours away from this anticipated event, the total solar eclipse. Right now, we're going to check in with Fox weather correspondent Max Gordon. He's live out there in Cleveland. Max, good morning to you. What can people out in that area expect? Hey, good morning, Gina. Well, I've got kind of some bad news for folks here in Cleveland, but if you're here in Cleveland, you already know it. It's been raining this morning. Luckily, the rain showers are going to be tapering off and the clouds, unfortunately, they'll be sticking around. We should have about 60% cloud cover uh, as we hit this total solar eclipse today. Uh, the eclipse will begin at around 1.59 local time, and then we'll have totality at 3.13 p.m. That'll last for three minutes and 49 seconds. That's when the moon will travel in front of the sun, blocking out the light. It should be a really cool experience. That is if we can see it. It's still going to get dark even if there's cloud cover, but it won't be as spectacular of a sight. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of folks in town here for it. Uh, there's been a lot of tourists walking around. A lot of excitement has been building. And during the eclipse, there's going to be a very Cleveland thing going on. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame based here in Cleveland. They're going to be DJing the eclipse. And during totality, they'll be playing none other than Pink Floyd's Eclipse. Very fitting. Now we talked to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame CEO about what he's looking forward to. Take a listen. I want to feel the temperature drop. Uh, it's my understanding when I've seen it before, we all get a little circumspect, a little more mellow. Uh, there's some emotion involved. And uh, I can't wait to do that with a ton of people out here together. It's going to be very um, magical. Yeah, and there's going to be a lot of people out here. Between 140 and 200,000 people are going to be flocking to Cleveland specifically for the eclipse. We talked to a few people, though, who said that they had made alternate plans in other locations in case it was going to be cloudy here in Cleveland today. I uh, you know, haven't caught up with any of those folks. I don't know if they moved locations. We even talked to one guy who said that he uh, booked an Airbnb in Quebec Canada in case it was going to be cloudy. It actually looks like uh, the chances for less cloud cover should be pretty good up in Maine and potentially up in Canada as well. But, you know, a lot of people here in Cleveland who have stuck around, they will be crossing their fingers that the clouds will part by the time of totality, because if they do, it should be a pretty cool sight. Gina? Max Gordon there with Fox Weather. Max, I'm crossing my fingers for them as well. I mean, my goodness. Uh, many people, <laughs> this is their first <laughs> time seeing one. I haven't ever seen one. I don't know if I was taking a nap, working the morning shift or something uh, during the last one, but I'm really hoping for the folks out there in Cleveland uh, <laughs> that they are able to take part. And I want to ask you, you know, I saw you this weekend out there in Cleveland doing some things uh, mm -hmm. with the Guardians. Are there any events that people can possibly go to if they can't get out and see it because of the cloud cover so they can still have a great day despite the rain? Oh, yeah. Well, there's going to be events going on all across okay. the city. You mentioned it there. The Guardians, they will be having their home opener today, 5, 10 p.m. local time. They're going to be actually opening the stadium up a little bit early so folks can get on in there and they can experience the solar eclipse from inside the stadium. There are also going to be events at the Great Lakes Science Center. NASA is going to be at the Great Lakes Science Center uh, doing presentations. Uh, there's going to be a street fair. There's also going to be events going on at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Really, uh, Cleveland is is going to be rocking and rolling uh, for this eclipse. We've also had the women's final four in town. Uh, so there have been a lot of stuff happening here uh, in, in Cleveland. But yeah, I think, you know, there's no real way to, I guess, I don't know, uh, mitigate the fact that, that the clouds might be there. Uh, you know, there's, there's no way to make this thing look better here in Cleveland. So it really all has to do with what Mother Nature has in store for us. And so, again, I think a lot of people here are just hoping that the clouds will, I guess, part at eclipse time because we are going to have that 60% cloud cover. So we'll just have to wait and see what Mother Nature has in store. Absolutely. And look, if not, maybe use your imagination. I know for a quick minute, it gets really eerie, kind of spooky, <laughs> and it gets dark anyway. So just imagine the cloud cover yeah. is the darkness of the sun being covered. Maybe we can use our imagination out there. there you go. Max Gordon, you know, I always enjoy speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning on Live Now from Fox. You enjoy the rest Thank of your you. day. Thank you.
And as we continue to talk about today's anticipated event, we want to appreciate and thank Fox Weather. Don't forget they are our weather headquarters. Just search Watch Fox Weather on any web browser. And again, as we continue to look ahead to today's event, giving you a look ahead to 1 p.m. Eastern time for Live Now from Fox's total solar eclipse coverage presented by Nissan. My colleague Josh Breslow will be in the host seat giving you everything related to today's coverage, some pretty cool images from around the world, and also some exclusive interviews. He wouldn't tell me who he's speaking with because he said you have to tune in to find out. So I did try to find out for you guys, but he wouldn't uh, give me the preview. So make sure you're tuning in at 1 p.m. Eastern time for all of the latest total solar eclipse coverage. The time now 848 on the East Coast. And right now we're going to transition to another top story we are following here on Live Now from Fox, giving you a live look out in Gaza as we continue to give you the very latest of the Israel Hamas war. We know the Israeli military says it has withdrawn its ground forces from Khan Yunis in southern Gaza. This has Sunday marked six months since the October 7th massacre. Fox News correspondent Trey Yinks joins us now with the very latest. In six months since the October 7th massacre, we sat down with one woman who was released as part of the November ceasefire deal. She describes what life was like as a hostage. I am Chen Almog Goldstein, and for the past three years, I've lived in Kibbutz Kfar Aza. Nadav, my husband, they shot him at point blank range in the chest. There were two or three gunshot wounds, I remember. And he was lying on the floor like that quietly. I remember him with his legs folded and lying quietly. And straight away, there were five terrorists inside the Mamad, the safe rooms, with weapons opening the closet there and telling us to get dressed. We were naked, we were in our pajamas, and they demanded that we dress up. What's going through your mind in that moment? Terrible fear, fright and shock. We got out in a line, the boys were already going out, and then Yam followed. Before that, one of the terrorists saw Yam's uniform shirt. He opened it like that. I remember his big green eyes, and he screamed at me in Arabic, and I don't understand what he's asking me. So you're, you're driven into Gaza uh, with your children. What are those first few hours and days like? It took us seven minutes to get to Gaza and seven weeks to return. When we came back from Gaza, the unbearable ease of how it all happened was unbearable. At first, when we arrived, we reached the tunnel. We were there for two days. What were the interactions with Hamas like when you were held in these locations? Actually, in an absurd way, they guarded us, protected us, sometimes even with their bodies, from the Israeli Air Force strikes. We talked about this absurdity. We talked about this absurdity several times. And they also made sure to point it out, like, we protect you from the Air Force attack. That is the word absurdity. The reason Hamas wanted to keep these hostages safe is to exchange them as part of a larger ceasefire deal for Palestinian prisoners. In Tel Aviv, Trey Yankst, Fox News. All right, Trey, thank you so much for that detailed report. Now at 851 on the East Coast, giving you a live look at a cloudy and hazy Gaza. All of this as those missile strikes continue amid the war. And speaking of the war, we actually did hear yesterday from Chuck Schumer, who gave an update on Iran. And he also spoke about some concerns he had about some credit card mergers and how it could affect your pocket. Let's listen in. Body. Whose is this? This ours? But what's this little thing? Got it? What's this? Oh, that's just the microphone. Okay, I don't mind. <clears throat> just curious. Okay, good morning, everybody. First, we'll talk about credit cards and then about Iran. Okay, well, we're here today because two major credit cards that millions of New Yorkers carry each day, Capital One and Discover, 
could soon become one company in a multi-billion dollar merger with really bad po potential consequences for consumers. It's the, people have been pretty yeah, people have been pretty quiet about it. But if these two companies merge, if these two companies merge, this is Capital One and Discover. It could mean higher interest rates, bigger fees, less competition for tens of millions of customers and millions in New York and Long Island. So this would be the largest credit card merger on record. And usually when there's consolidation, the consumer pays the price. So we're asking a whole lot of questions about this merger because we're very worried about it in terms of raising prices. Today, I'm demanding answers on this merger before any green light is given. And I've sent a letter to the heads of the two. I've sent a letter, I'll do it on this side, to the heads of the credit card companies asking a whole lot of questions. Because again, mergers usually mean trouble for consumers. I have written the companies asking a litany of questions regarding antitrust and consumer protections. Look, when, we, when it comes to credit card companies, we know one thing is for certain. Their bread and butter is a myriad of fees and sometimes eye-popping interest rates. That's why the proposed merger of Capital One and Discover is of such great concern. Consumers are fed up already with their credit card interest rates. More consolidation in the industry could very well mean even higher rates and higher fees. And many credit card, many credit, many cardholders are unaware of this merger. It's been kept relatively quiet. And so they won't even know when their rates go up why, if the merger were to occur. And they won't have the opportunity to switch to another company before the rates go up. Less competition in the credit card marketplace could very well mean higher interest rates for the cardholders, bigger fees, and higher penalties. I just like this. I got to give it to Angelo and Page. Look how they put these two cards together. Very good. Okay. So let me just say this. What are the kinds of fees that could go up? Annual fees, interest charges, late payment fees and the history has shown oh more wait let me start over there are more of them what could go up if this merger occurs the your annual fee your interest charge your late payment fee in addition foreign transaction fees balance transfer fees and cash advance fees could go up Fees, fees, fees. You get it. And consumers are tired of it. We've all had enough. And the credit card companies are anything but broke. According to Investopedia, quote, if Capital One's $35.3 billion purchase of Discover goes through, the deal would create the nation's largest credit card lender by balance owed affecting which credit cards are offered, on what terms, and where you can use them. It could shake up the overall market for credit cards at a time when plastic is an increasingly important part of household U.S. household finances. According to the public, the deal comes as the use of credit cards and credit card debt is growing fast. And the CFPB, that's our Consumer Protection Board, They've warned us. The CF, C, CFPB says bigger banks tend to charge higher interest rates. Let me give you one example. According to the CFPB, large institutions charge customers with good credit scores an average of 28% on late fees, while smaller banks only charge 18%. So there's a rule here that often occurs. The larger the company, the higher your rates. And this is going to create the largest company on record. Bigger banks charge consumers more, plain and simple. Overall credit card debt, as you know, has been breaking records. It's $1.3 trillion right now.
The average consumer owed $6,000 on their credit card in the third quarter of 2023, according to TransUnion, which keeps these records. So we need to get answers, and we need to make consumers aware of these answers. And we will shine a light on so if that you have one... Whoops, sorry about that. We will shine a light on this so that if you have one of these cards, you're going to know what's going on before you risk paying even more. We want to know about potential increase in fees. We want to know what this will do to the marketplace. We want to know how consumers are being are made aware. Right now, from these credit card companies, we have more questions than answers. Okay. Now let me just say a word on Iran. So, Iran and its proxies are the most destabilizing force in the Middle East. We see this every day in Yemen, in the Red Sea, in Lebanon, Iraq, Syria. They have little regard for peace and little regard for their fellow citizens of the Middle East. So here's the question I've been asked by some of you, and that is, what are we doing to prepare? I know the president and his team are working hard to prevent escalation and are pre prepared to defend any attack and respond swiftly if, if necessary. Look, overall, tensions are high across the Middle East, and that's why we want to pass. We've been working on this all weekend. That's why we want to pass the bipartisan Senate infrastructure bill, because, sorry, sorry, tensions in the Middle East are very high. That's why we want to pass the National Security Supplemental. It's critical, and we are all urging Speaker Johnson to put it on the floor of the House. It passed the Senate in a large bipartisan majority with 70 votes. Okay? We'll take questions on these two subjects. First, on credit cards. Any questions? Okay. Then on Iran. Okay. Have a nice yes. Mayor Orcas, how are you going to handle? How's the Senate going to handle? Well, as I've said, I think the charges are absurd. There's no evidence, zero evidence, that he's committed an impeachable offense. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. So, a brief press conference out in New York City from U.S. Senator Chuck Schumer, sharing some concerns of credit card mergers and Iran on the right side of your screen. Following top stories this morning here on Live Now from Fox as it relates to that anticipated event, the total solar eclipse, that top right box giving you a live look at our x rad system. And actually, I'm going to bring that full if you don't mind so you can get a closer look. Our x rad system there on your screen as weather is top of mind for many. Uh, some are concerned that cloud cover and even rain could damper their total solar eclipse parade. But nevertheless, um, you're getting getting a live look at the XRAD system to see how it could be impacted. We're also following our content partners with Fox News Channel as we continue to bring you preview coverage of the total solar eclipse. So right now we're going to head out to Dallas, checking in with Fox 4 Dallas as they are previewing coverage that area and neck of the woods, one of the prominent places where you can catch the action in totality. Let's check in with them now. News at 8 a.m. Thanks for watching Good Day on Fox 4. Well, good morning. It's Monday, April 8th. I'm Brandon Todd. I'm Lauren Principal. Thanks for being with us. We turn straight to Evan today, not just for clips, but also for some severe weather later today. So at least the two aren't at the same time. I'm just very happy because we're going to have several events after the eclipse. I'm going to have one, two, three count them in the next 24 hours, starting around say afternoon three events that could all have severe weather associated with it let's start with this morning where the high clouds are flying in this morning what you're looking at you can see them racing if they're racing they're blowing with the upper level winds and they are the cirrus clouds and you can see them out there you have no choice they're definitely out here's the first visible satellite shot of the morning it's kind of waiting for that. It takes a little while after the sun comes up. But these are the low clouds. These are now taking over the sky.
dry from Dallas on to the south and east. As expected, they're really starting to cover a good chunk of real estate. And by late this morning, I would say everywhere from the Metroplex east and south will be on the mostly cloudy to cloudy side. And you're going to be sitting there getting ready for your eclipse party, 11, 11, 30, 12 o'clock going, ugh, this isn't what I wanted. And areas north and west actually will have actually pretty decent conditions with just high clouds. As we go through the afternoon, these clouds are going to begin to scatter out about the time that the eclipse starts, not the total, just the eclipse, the partial, and then the total, which is about 140 to 144. Notice how that dark orange area just gets less and less. Now, it doesn't mean you're guaranteed to see a sunny sky, and it doesn't mean you're guaranteed a cloudy sky. The clouds will just scatter out during the afternoon, which is fairly typical. This has nothing to do with everybody saying, oh, the atmosphere is going to cool and we're going to break up the clouds magically. The these aren't the kind of clouds that break like that, but we are going to get the breaks this afternoon. More and more of them as the day goes on. So once you get past two and three o'clock, the odds of getting breaks are better. Now we turn to the severe weather, five to 11 o'clock. Storms, especially from the Metroplex East overnight is about 10 or 11 o'clock and then overnight from the Dallas Fort Worth area north. And each batch may have its own severe kind of weather. We're going to discuss that in a few minutes, but the low clouds are expanding and then the low clouds really expand as we go through noon and then the clouds start to break up this afternoon. Again, the time for the total eclipse from 140 to 144 in Dallas. And by the way, that is the only time you can take your glasses off when it is at the total maximum. You must wear the glasses the entire time prior and after. I've got somebody wearing glasses here and he sees the traffic very clearly. <laughs> And it's not looking good. No, it's not, uh, especially in Dallas County. But let's start off with good news in Tarrant County. On the eastbound side of 20, as you approach that Bowman Springs area, it looks like they've moved everything off to the shoulder. And traffic is unwinding, but it's still pretty thick in that area. Further down the road on I-20 eastbound, past 67. This was originally called in as a stall. Looks like it's an accident now. And the right lane is blocked. You got a sizable backup in through that area, trying to get into downtown Dallas on northbound 45, just past Pennsylvania. They got this accident where the right lane is blocked, and that is really tying up traffic in through that stretch. And guess what, folks? We still have that problem on 75 southbound, approaching 635, you know, just around, around the mid park area. HOV and two left lanes are blocked. You have a sizable backup all the way in through Plano, so good luck. And Brandon and Lauren, back to you. All right, you can track the storms as they arrive in North Texas. It's always good, especially if you're going to be outside, to be weather aware. That WAP's got live radar. It's got the watches, the warnings. It's what we all use around here. It's free to download. You can scan the QR code on your screen. Well, we are ready. Communities across North Texas are ready uh, to host thousands of people from around the world for today's total eclipse. The town of Ennis in Ellis County, south of Dallas, hosting a huge watch party to experience the more than four minutes of totality, which is you know, Paige Ellenberger live in downtown Ennis. And it's funny because we think of Ennis, yes. it's not one of the bigger cities, but boy, it's big today. And it's probably the talk of the town. <laughs> Oh my goodness. No, you're absolutely right, Lauren. And all morning long, we've been talking about that Blue Bonnet Festival and how many people that truly brings in. And I'm with Marty Nelson. And just a few minutes ago, he's the city manager here in Ennis. Just a few minutes ago, I said, you know, how many people come in for the Blue Bonnet Festival? You told me just over 10,000 people, around 12. Today, though, is going to be a much different story. How many folks are you expecting and how do you prepare for that? So it's a completely different order of magnitude for the solar eclipse. The low estimate is about 50,000 people. So to put that in context, that's an extra 25,000 vehicles will be coming to Ennis today to have this once in a lifetime experience. You told me if you were to put every festival together that Ennis holds throughout the year, 
it wouldn't even come close to the total number of people you're expecting today. That's correct. You put them all together and it's a lo lower number than what we're going to have today for the eclipse. A lot of planning, of course, has gone into this. I know a few weeks ago we talked about uh, you guys reaching out to other cities that experienced the 2017 solar eclipse. Can you give us a little bit of insight into what those conversations looked like in preparation for today? You bet. So um, the planning team reached out to other cities that had gone through this. Kind of the consensus is that people will begin driving in today, beginning with the forecast of the weather. And as we're standing here, I can <laughs> see blue sky yeah. beginning to peek through. So the clouds are going to dissipate. We would expect people to start driving in this morning throughout the entire day to be here for the eclipse during the early afternoon. And then everybody wants to go home at the same time. And so it's after the eclipse that the traffic congestion is going to be its worst. Well, it's going to be quite a party today. What is the hope throughout the afternoon heading into the evening? That everybody has a great experience. We've got the downtown watch party. Of course, the entire month of April is Blue Bonnet Trails. And so we've got thousands of people every day coming to Ennis just to go out on the 40 miles of Blue Bonnet Trails. Awesome. Marty, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Brendan and Lauren, I'm going to put on these solar eclipse glasses and uh I know you can see me. I can't see you guys whatsoever, but Marty mentioned it. Standing here, there was a lot of cloud coverage this morning. There are some blue skies peeking through. I don't even know if I'm looking at the camera anymore. Uh, so fingers crossed that a lot of those clouds dissipate and it turns out to be a really, really good day here in Ennis because a lot of people will be here looking for that just under four and a half minutes of totality. Guys? Yeah, kind of in the it's dark right now. Yeah, office. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you're gonna need them, so hang yeah. on to them. Hang on. Definitely. Yeah, a, a crowd of 30,000 expected at Clyde Warren Park on the north side of downtown Dallas to watch the eclipse. And Fox 4's Hannah Batai is there this morning. Good morning. Good morning, you guys. Yeah, it's been a while since there's been a total solar eclipse in Dallas. Last time it happened was back in 1878. So yeah, the anticipation's really been building up. Even over the weekend, we saw so many people come to Clyde Warren Park, like you mentioned today. It's gonna look more like tens of thousands of people. Some people we saw putting out their blankets as early as about 6.30, even 7 this morning, and for good reason, because today's events here is a full day worth of activity. They have the food trucks out already. They're going to have a band performing and they're going to actually partner with the, the Perot Museum to have Carnegie scientists out here doing a panel discussion about the solar eclipse and, and what this means bigger picture wise in the science community. We uh, spoke about all the family fun activities this morning to the president of Clyde Warren Park. She also wanted to note that they're going to be passing out free solar eclipse glasses that are ISO certified for anyone who wants to come out here to view the event and you best believe they have had people come from all over for today's events. The response has been overwhelming. We've been receiving calls from the UK and Germany and all these different places for weeks and weeks now. People are traveling from all around the world to come to Dallas for a natural event, which is really exciting. And they're coming to our green space, which is also really exciting for Dallas. So our food trucks yesterday said that they serve people from every other city in the country. They couldn't even believe it. Um, so really, we're, it's a big day for Dallas, um, and we're glad that everyone's here. Yeah, and when I spoke to Kit earlier this morning, she said that she just recommends people get out here early to get their spot, but also to figure out the parking situation. She said, as long as you are where you want to be, whether it's in downtown Dallas or somewhere else around North Texas for the eclipse, just get there before the start of the eclipse, not totality, uh, an hour before the start of the eclipse itself. The next time it's expected to hit Dallas, by the way, is going to be in the year 2317. And, and for here, we'll see that totality for about four minutes later today. For now, reporting live at Clyde Warren Park. I'm Hannah Batoff for a good day. I think that's the perfect place to see it because you're going to be like yeah. in downtown. You're like in the yeah. middle of downtown with all the buildings. And so yep. it's going to be really, I mean, it's really going to change yeah. things just to see how dark it's going to be in the middle of the city. So be pretty cool. Awesome. Enjoy, Hannah. So many North Texas students will actually be watching the solar eclipse at school today. Yeah, I'm going to be surrounded yeah. by little kids later yeah. today, so I'm excited about that. Medical professionals talked to Grand Prairie ISD students Friday. All the kids in all the schools getting a lesson on, you know, proper eye care, proper eclipse uh, 
viewing Etiquette, the protocols, yes. yes, just how to avoid any eye damage. Students will be wearing protective certified glasses when they look at the sun, even when it's partially covered. We want to be very adamant about the safety ahead of time. So the days after the eclipse, we're not having an influx of patients having problems because they look too long at the eclipse. Many student, uh, many school districts, I should say, are, are keeping campuses closed to visitors during the outdoor eclipse viewing, which is 12:30 to 2:30 this afternoon. Some school districts, including NSISD, just closed today because there's just so many people in that area, and they just want kids to be with their parents. Well, stick with us. Fox 4 is your solar eclipse headquarters. We've got everything you need to know about the eclipse all morning long and also continuing through totality this afternoon. We're live all the way through. You can also learn more about the eclipse on our website, fox4news.com, and even on our streaming channel, Fox Local. 13 minutes after 8. And we appreciate Fox 4 Dallas for their extensive coverage. And don't forget, right here on Live Now from Fox, we have extensive coverage. The total solar eclipse live coverage presented by Nissan starting at 1 p.m. Eastern today. My colleague Josh Breslow will be hosting the festivities for you, giving you a look at uh, some pretty cool camera shots and also some exclusive interviews. You guys, I did try to ask him uh, who will he be speaking with. He says he doesn't want to give up the goods just yet, so you have to actually tune in to find out and looking at some total solar eclipse tips let's check in now with our content partners over at fox 29 philadelphia we'll show you what the sun looks like as the eclipse starts at 208 and wraps up around 4 30 but wait there's more you got any snacks around the house like some cheese it's or some cheerios things like that they work too. You're looking for anything with a circle, like a little pinhole. Check this out. Here's the little cheese it. Yep, there's a little hole right there. And then let me use my hands. We'll make kind of like, you ever make like animals out of your hands? See that little circle right there? That'll show you what the sun looks like during the clips. I love that. And it works with the Cheerio too. I feel we always have Cheerio or different circle cereals at home. It'll show you what the sun looks like. So it's a sunny circle right now, but during the eclipse, it'll look a lot different. And then on Friday, on Good Day Philadelphia, we made Eclipse viewers. If you really want to do something with the kids, we have the instructions at fox29.com. Get a little piece of tinfoil, another little tiny hole I poked with a pen. And it's the same idea. The sun gets projected in, and it's tough to see from my vantage point. Here, I'll swing it around. Let me know if I need to turn this or not. I don't know. Can you see it, Tom? Tom's running the camera for me. Let me know if I need to kind of tweak things a little bit more for you. Can't see it in there, but I'll take my word for it. You get that in there and you can kind of see it. You put a little piece of white paper and it's so neat how all these things work and we're just getting started. I went around my house this morning. I went around the garage. I found a lot more items that you probably have right in your home that you can use to see the eclipse safely just in case you don't happen to have the eclipse glasses. And by the way, I tried out some welder's glass. Welder's glass doesn't block out the sun as much. This is cool. Right now I'm looking at the sun and I see a perfect circle right through the eclipse glasses. I can't see anything else. So cool. That is a check from the rooftop and at all the at-home items you can make. Mike, it's all yours. Put it over Back that can of beer. Beer? I'm in. Here, 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 here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found it. I found the beer. <laughs> yeah, what's your name? John Rulo. And the name of the brewery? Rohrbach Brewing Company. I love this Rochester, shirt. Rochester, New York. Yeah, yeah. Woo! This is a collaboration um, we did with the three breweries. Strangeburg, Three Heads, and Rohrbach. Um, so I hear it sold out. It sold out really quickly. Much faster than we thought. And you know, it takes a while to make beer. So and we why do more. people like it so much? Wow, because it's a great beer. But also, it, it's the, the eclipse is a once in a lifetime event. Yeah. So I think some of it is they're just trying to make sure that people, they get their hands on it and want to save it. He made thousands of cans. There's only one left. <laughs> and let's go take a look at it. We're shining it with spotlights. All right, well, camera lights anyway. Sergio, thank you for the lighting. I appreciate it. Remember him? Yeah. So this is it. All black can, isn't that cool? All black can. Yeah, and that's the totality. We had a lighter side and a darker side, and that is a, a black this Czechoslovakian This is water. the only one left. It's the only one that may, I know of. May I? <laughs> sure. Are you sure? Yes. Are you sure? I'm positive. Where's the glass? All right, I guess you could drink out of the... It, it, you know, Mike, i got to tell you. It looks creamy. Anything... You're a diehard, because it's early in the morning. 
but not too shabby, right? It's not that early for me. I get up in the middle of the night. <laughs> I love it. Oh, that's really good. Cheers. Uh, cheers. cheers. Cheers to the eclipse. To and the I eclipse. think it's clearing up again. It is. Woo! It is. Look at the sun is shining. The sun is out. Well, at least for now it's shining. Yeah. Pretty soon yeah, we won't be able know. to see it, right? Thank you. All right, so looking like an exciting time out there in Philadelphia as they are gearing up towards the total solar eclipse. The time now, 9.18 on the East Coast. Let's go to our first two-minute commercial break of the hour, and when we come back, continuing with those live events, top stories, and headlines of your Monday morning. Welcome back to Live Now from Fox. I'm Gina Francine, and good morning to you. If you are just now tuning in, uh, you are in for a special treat. Uh, taking a look at the feeds out at Fox 29 Philadelphia again, I see they are making some Eclipse snacks. Yes, you heard that correctly. Let's take a look together. This one, because okay. it couldn't be any easier. Okay. I got some Thin Mint Girl Scout cookies and some cupcakes with lemon icing on them. Take a look at the picture of what we're going for. You can also do it with an Oreo. There's your Eclipse cupcake. You just drop that cookie right on. Look at that. Da -da -da -da. Instant Eclipse. Oh, let me do it again. Hold on. We didn't get that okay. one. Okay. Here it comes. It comes in. Here it's <laughs> <laughs> Totality. There we go. So could this be an easier? And for bonus points, I got croissants because they're crescent shape for the crescent moon. And I got vanilla wafers. You could put the black icing on the vanilla wafers. Oh. And then you can make your own Eclipse. Ooh. You can even. Uh, yeah. I don't know. And you can put them on there, too. So, mm. so this is all last-minute, easy-peasy stuff. Better than Pinterest, right? And that we get a little great. breakfast. Yes. And fun. Thank you. Oh, no, I broke them. These are breakable. They're defective Oreos. They're the breaky kind. See, it wasn't me. <laughs> I even bought the My Oreo My baby brand. arms live up. <laughs> Coming up, show. it's a total eclipse of the closet. <laughs> We're having an eclipse-inspired fashion show and telling you what colors you should wear today to see and experience the eclipse even better. We're back right after this. Mm -hmm. So pretty cool to see those snacks, um, an eclipse cheese plate, and even cupcakes showing the different phases of the eclipse. So if you're thinking of something cool to do with the kids today to put things into perspective for them and do a cool science experiment, that might be the thing to do, make some cupcakes. Right now, I want to give you a live look at our XRAD system as we continue to discuss today's anticipated event. And for many, weather is a concern. I know earlier when I spoke with uh, Fox Weather's Max Gordon, 
Gordon. And he said out in the Cleveland area, people are a little sad because they were hoping to be able to see some remnants of uh, what the eclipse will look like today. But out in that area, there is a lot of cloud cover and there have even been some showers. I'm also checking in with uh, Dallas. They were kind of saying the same thing. So as we continue to give you these top stories and headlines throughout the day, just know we are keeping you weather ready as well so you can be prepared. And speaking of later today, right now, I want to give you a preview so you continue to look ahead. Live now from Fox's total solar eclipse coverage today presented by Nissan. Live coverage starting at 1 p.m. Eastern time with my colleague Josh Breslow. He says you will get some pretty cool pictures from around the U.S. and also some pretty compelling and exclusive interviews. So as we continue to give you all things Eclipse, make sure you are tuning in right here to Live Now from Fox. I'm Jeanne Francine joining you on this Monday morning. It is April 8th. It's been my pleasure to be here with you the past few hours, giving you all of those live events, top stories and headlines of the day. But we have to go to a quick two minute commercial break. When we come back, my colleague Mike Page taking over, continuing with your pregame coverage of today's anticipated event, the Total Solar Eclipse, also giving you other top stories and headlines of your Monday morning. We'll be right back in just two quick minutes. And welcome back, everyone, here to Live Now from Fox. Beautiful shot of New York City on this Monday. Ah, oh, but it's not a normal Monday. It's not a normal start to the week. It is Eclipse Day. Welcome. I'm your host, Mike Page. I'll be gearing you up for the next three and a half hours as we get you ready for our coverage starting at 1 p.m. Eastern. You're not going to want to miss it, but we're going to gear you up as uh, we get you ready for uh, the Eclipse. It is going to be a show of more than 32 million people in this country will be able and will be participating and watching it in some capacity. And we thank all our viewers watching along with us right now, as always. I want to kick it off with uh, NASA putting out some tips on how to get the best photographs and also be safe at the same time. Let's listen right here on Live Now. <laughs>
All right there. Looking forward to that and uh, excited to see all the great video and pics to come a little bit later here on Live Now from Fox. Let's keep things going. Let's go out to Fox for Dallas uh, where they are getting ready. Their morning show has been doing such a great job. Let's uh, listen into some of their coverage as uh, they get ready for uh, the totality moment coming to them. Let's listen on Live Now from Fox. All right, five hours, 12 minutes, 50 seconds. But away, who's counting? Who's counting? Yeah. Away from the total solar <laughs> eclipse. Thankfully, we've got the countdown there. I mean, hundreds of thousands of people are going to be planning to witness this celestial event. Yeah, and you have plenty of time to attend these free viewing parties all across the Metroplex. Fox Force TC Mazinga joining us in studio with a look. TC. Yeah, good morning, guys. Pretty exciting. So there are several free viewing events happening across North Texas. So let's go ahead and start here in downtown Dallas. The Ron Kirk Bridge and if Felix Lozada Gateway in downtown Dallas is welcoming thousands of people. There will be music and hands-on STEM activities as well. Plus, the first 3,000 people will get free solar eclipse glasses. Heading north, the total eclipse of the park is at the Addison Circle Park. Again, you can expect live music, food trucks, and outdoor activities from 10 a.m. until 4 this afternoon. Now, there are two parks in Plano to watch the eclipse as well. People are invited to both Wind Haven Meadows Park and Oak Point Park in Nature Preserve in McKinney, Gabe Nesbitt Community Park and Sports Complex is open to the public from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And people can gather at Exchange Lawn at the Fort Worth Stockyards. The viewing party is from 1 to 3 p.m. today. And we also have other free events in the Metroplex on our website at fox4news.com. Have a good day. I'm TCM Muzinga. Yeah, and, you know, some people like to be with the crowd and, yeah. and, and celebrate. Others like to just stay home, maybe yeah, just watch from their backyard. Right. Yeah. If you do take some pictures, share with us on social media, because oh, it is great. fun to see how everyone's, um, you know, I, I say celebrating together. It is kind of a celebration, all of us doing it together. Pretty unique. All right, 828 on this Monday. And we'll be checking in with Vox 4 Dallas uh, throughout the morning and afternoon right here on Live Now from Fox, everyone. Let's continue on and uh, continuing uh, to showcase you this big eclipse preview from NASA. You're watching on Live Now from Fox. Welcome to NASA Science Live. This is your chance to interact with NASA experts and have your questions answered in real time. I'm your host, Tahira Allen. Today, we're diving into the excitement surrounding the upcoming total solar eclipse that will cross North America, passing over Mexico, the United States, and Canada. If you have questions throughout the show, you can send them in using the hashtag AskNASA on social media or drop them directly into the comment box wherever you're watching. Now, this eclipse isn't just any ordinary celestial event. It is a rare opportunity for millions to witness the moon completely block out the sun, turning day into dusk for those in the path of totality. And get this. This will be the last total solar eclipse to cross the contiguous United States for the next 20 years. What makes this even more special is that an estimated 31.6 million people live within the path of totality. And if you're not in the path of totality, no worries. Everyone in the contiguous United States will have the chance to see at least a partial solar eclipse. Now picture this a collective pause as people across the U.S. gaze upward to experience the wonder of the cosmos together. I can't wait. And today I'm joined by Dr. Gina DiBraccio, a sun expert who's going to walk us through how to prepare for the April 8th event. Gina, welcome. Hi, dear. Thanks for having me. And thank you so much for being here. Now, can you kick off by telling our viewers a little bit about your role here at NASA? Sure, so I'm the Deputy Director of the Heliophysics Science Division at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. That means I'm helping to oversee an organization of scientists that are studying heliophysics, which is the study of the sun and its influence on everything. So we're looking at the physics of the sun, but also how it impacts the Earth's magnetic field, the upper atmosphere, and really just understanding how the whole system works together. That is great, and Gina, 
I'm so happy to be here with you again today. Hey, yes. Gina and I had a blast hosting last year's annular solar eclipse, and I think it's safe to say we are thrilled to be back again for the total solar eclipse. Now, before we dive into some details, Gina, can you help clear something up for me? Sure. What exactly sets an annular solar eclipse apart from a total solar eclipse like this year? Okay. So when a solar eclipse happens, the moon is going to cross in between the Earth and the sun. And when that happens, the moon's shadow is cast on the, on the Earth, and we can look up in the sky and see it. Now, for an annular eclipse, the moon is going to be just a little bit farther away so that it doesn't completely block out the sun. And that's what you can see on the screen here. You're left with a ring of fire in the sky. Cool. Now, for a total solar eclipse, the moon is going to be closer to the Earth so that the sun is completely blocked. And that way, we can see the solar corona. It's that hot upper atmosphere of the sun that we can't see with our visible eyes on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's really good to know that difference because, you know, it's my understanding that in total solar eclipse, the safety tips then are a little bit different than an annular. Right, exactly. And so for our viewers at home, we have a special guest, someone you might recognize, who's here to let us know how to safely view the April 8th event. Hi, Eclipse enthusiasts. Lance Bass here, and I want to tell you how to protect those eyes and stay safe during a solar eclipse. During these celestial events, the sun, earth, and moon are in sync, creating solar eclipses. You can look directly at the sun during a total solar eclipse, but only when it's completely covered by the moon for a brief period known as totality. This is a really special moment. At all other times, you should wear eclipse glasses so that you don't say bye 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 to your vision. Seriously. And eclipse glasses are not the same as regular sunglasses. No, they're not. Safe solar viewers are thousands of times darker and will have a specific certification that you should look for right here. Don't be a space cowboy and try to look directly at the sun. If you don't have eclipse glasses, you can use an indirect viewing method, like a pinhole projector. You can make one of these with something as simple as an index card with a hole, or a colander, or even your hands. With the sun at your back, you can safely project an image of the sun through the hole onto a nearby surface like the ground. It's going to be me who is wearing my eclipse glasses, and so are you. Okay, we are already seeing a lot of questions pouring in online from our viewers watching, so let's jump right into this Q&A. Now remember, if you're watching live, you can submit your own questions for Gina using the hashtag AskNASA or by posting them in the comments wherever you're watching today. Alrighty, Gina, our first question is from... Oh, it actually looks like, so we've got kind of a group question here. Okay. It looks like a lot of people watching are asking about notices that may have been issued in certain areas with guidance on how to prepare for crowds and um, preventative measures uh, meant to reduce traffic. Could you give us a little bit more info on how to best prepare for April 8th? Sure. So as you said earlier to hear it, uh, along the path of totality, we have about 31 have million people. We have a lot people. of people, which right. is so cool to so think about. So it's already crowded to begin yeah. with. And of course, we'll have people traveling into that area to make it even more crowded. So, you know, just think of the preventative measures that you can take in case you get stuck in traffic. So make sure you have gas in the tank. Make sure if uh, you have a battery operated car, you, you've charged up, you have some extra food and water with you. Uh, if there are traffic lines, you know, just be prepared to have patience and wait a little bit for that. Thank you, Gina. And so we have an, our next question is from a user on Facebook who wants to know what science will be done during the total solar eclipse? Right. The, one of the things that we're most excited for at NASA is actually performing different science experiments during the eclipse. Now, a favorite that I like to talk about is that we're using NASA's WB-57 high altitude research jet to perform some experiments. So the so jet, cool. yeah, the <laughs> jet's going to fly across the path of totality so that it gets a little bit longer in totality than if you were just standing on the ground. And what that means is that the instruments on board are going to look up at the solar corona and take images so that we can study the composition of the corona, understand how particles are accelerated and charged, mm -hmm. and also be able to study dust that is around the sun that we can't really understand when we look at just on a day-to-day -day basis either. And so, and this is only an experiment that can be done during a total solar eclipse? Is that right? 
Right. So, so we do have instruments called coronagraphs that mm -hmm. are essentially artificial eclipses, and they will block out the sun so that we can study the corona. But the way that the light bends around these coronagraphs, we can't actually get deep down into the corona itself in that lower part of it. So for the total solar eclipse that happens naturally, it allows us to get down into the, the lower part of the corona, which means this is one of the only times that we can you know, study this area of the sun. That is amazing. And so we have our next question on Jordan, uh, from Jordan on YouTube, who wants to know, why is it bad to view a solar eclipse directly? Okay, thanks for that question, Jordan. Yeah. So, so we want to be really careful about eye safety mm -hmm. during any eclipse or, or even on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't want to look at the sun so that you're not causing any permanent damage to your eyes. Now, the way that it works for a total solar eclipse is that during the partial phases, you need to have the proper safety viewing that we just heard about. Um, you can have the eclipse viewing glasses. You can make a pinhole projector. And you need to use that to see the partial eclipse. Mm -hmm. If you're in the path of totality, during totality, you don't need to have those glasses. You can look directly up at the sky and see the sun because it will be blocked. So you're just looking at that corona. You're not actually going to be looking at the sun, but only for totality. And I have a great follow-up from Mouse757 on YouTube who wants to know, where is the path of totality for this event? Okay, you can go to the NASA website, go.nasa.gov slash Eclipse Explorer, and it will show you the map so that you can actually see where totality is located. But across the U.S., it will stretch beginning down in Texas, all the way through Ohio, we'll have a station in Cleveland doing mm -hmm. the broadcast too, and then up Arkansas, through Maine as well. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And thank you for that. Uh, and then our next question is from Matthew Hinson on YouTube, who asks, what happens to the moon and the sun as seen from Earth? During the eclipse, so we have the sun in the sky, mm -hmm. and the moon will be crossing in front of the sun. So when you're when you're looking up at the sky with your proper safety gear, what you'll see is that the sun slowly becomes covered by the moon, and that's the that's our perspective from the surface of the Earth. Basically, is that we're going to see the sun kind of disappear as the moon moves in front of it. That is so cool too that the moon is just the right size, you know, to cover the sun yes. during this event. And so we have Alana Franklin on YouTube who wants to know how long will the eclipse last? So if you're in the path of totality, maximum totality will be around four and a half minutes long. It depends, though, where you even fall within that path. If you're mm -hmm. on the edges, it could be a little shorter. You want to be kind of as deep within it as you can, and then you'll get that maximum totality. But I will say that this eclipse that we're having coming up in April, totality is lasting longer than it did in 2017 when we had oh. the eclipse across America as well. Do you know why? So it just has to do with kind of where the moon is in its orbit, how far it is away from the sun. And uh, for that one in 2017, maximum totality was only about two minutes, a little bit more than that. So, so we're almost doubled. doubled. Oh yeah. man, that's so, that is so cool to know. So our next question is from a viewer on X who wants to know what tips do you have of taking pictures of eclipses? Okay, well, if you are taking pictures of eclipses during totality, you can use your phone. That's fine. The mm -hmm. same way that we can look at the eclipse with our eyes during totality only, you can also use your phone to take pictures. Now, at any other part, you need to have a proper solar filter mm -hmm. in order to take those photographs. So not during a partial eclipse. Correct. Yeah, yep. anytime. Okay. So our next... All right, we'll check back in with NASA in just a little bit here on Live Now from Fox. We are going to take a two-minute break. And when we come back, uh, we will continue uh, to bring you the latest on our total, total solar eclipse 2024 coverage presented by Nissan. Again, we will officially kick things off at 1, p 1 p.m. Eastern, but uh, we will continue to showcase uh we are just hours away from uh, this event from starting so we are going to take a two minute break when we come back everyone we'll continue to bring you the latest and also check in with school children that are gearing up for today's big event <laughs>
are you ready, everyone? We are getting excited just hours away from the big event, Total Solar Eclipse. I'm your host, Mike Page. Thanks again for joining us here today as we gear you up uh, for today's big events. But I'm not the only one excited. Millions of people aren't the only ones excited. We have school children that are definitely excited about all of this right now. So let's go out to the Houston area. Fox 26 is Chelsea Edwards joining us here with the latest and you got a lot of eager uh, uh, students ready for this Chelsea. Yes, indeed, Michael. We're here in Crosby ISD at Barrett Elementary where we've got an array of students ready for the solar eclipse, right? All right, we've got a lot of smarty pants in this group for tier two. Let's first take it to Miss Smith, third grade science teacher. Tell me how you helped get your students ready for the eclipse today. Um, so we have been doing a lot of projects over the solar system, and then it just so happened to be that it led up to the solar eclipse. And we've done some reading comprehension questions um, just to get them prepared as to what's exactly going to happen today and then they were able to make some cool little masks to protect their eyes whenever they look up at the solar eclipse today. So just like the sun and the moon, everything just lined up when it came to the curriculum here. Yes. <laughs> nice. Okay, all right. Let's talk to some students about how ready you are. I see so many moon faces, alien faces, all sorts of things. Okay, who can tell me what they've learned about the eclipse for today? All right, let's start right here. What's your name? Mia. Mia, what grade are you in? Third. Third grade. Okay, what have you learned about the eclipse? Um, I learned that um, the... That uh, um, that the moon goes in front of the sun for a few minutes. Oh yeah, had you ever seen anything like that before? Yeah. Yeah, you have. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your project here. Um, so we worked on it for like a couple of days, and and uh, like we had three classes, so. So when we look up to the sun, it don't hurt our eyes. Oh, that's right. You've got some protective glasses. Okay, who else? I can see somebody's hand back here. Oh, well, let me work my way around. Okay, can I, what do you call this work of art? Is it a moon? Yes, it's it's the moon. It is the moon, Indy. It is the moon, and you can see the United States flag. Ah. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, because you can't see all the stripes. Uh, it's nice though. I can tell that's the U.S. flag. Okay, so how excited are you for the eclipse today? I am really excited. It's yeah. like a one of a kind experience you can see in your life. Oh, absolutely. Have you learned anything while getting ready about the moon and the sun and all this? Yes. The moon blocks the sunlight from the Earth. Yes. That's going to make the, the Earth seem dark and gloomy. Ah, okay. Ooh, dark and gloomy. Okay, who else is ready for the dark and gloomy? Who, who do we have over here? Grace. Okay, what grade? I'm in third grade. <laughs> third grade. Okay, what have you learned? We learned about total and partial eclipses. Ooh, that is very smart. What's a total or partial eclipse? A partial eclipse is when the moon almost blocks the whole sun and then a total eclipse is when it totally blocks the sun. Oh, wow. There are a lot of adults who don't even know that yet. Can you believe that? <laughs> and we're going to see it for the first time for a lot of you today. Okay, what else have you learned? So we learned that there was one in 2017 and they only happen every 400 years. Oh, uh, yeah, that was a while ago. So we are so excited for this to happen again. And especially here in Texas, not something we see, right? Okay, let's, where's the principal? Where'd she go? There you go. Okay, Principal Arne has, okay, tell me a little bit about how you all have gotten the whole school ready. So throughout, like Ms. Smith was saying, throughout the whole year, we have different curriculum that touches about the eclipse during science. But, you know, this is a great experience for our kids to learn about it, to read about it, to do projects. And really that solar eclipse, hopefully we can see it today. Yes. Um, but it really brings it to life. So the, it brings those ticks to life. So we're really excited that they'll have that opportunity. Yeah, yeah, we got some hanging around. But either way, through these projects, everything that they've learned, what do you hope the students take away from the experience today? We just hope that they also have a, a love for science and understanding of what science is, that it's around us, it's real life, it's not just in the classroom, it really translates to what we live in the real world. Yeah. <laughs> Who loves science? Me. Yes, I love to see it. Okay, let's take a couple more before we send it back. Let me work my way around here. Okay, who else we got? I, I saw your hand a long time ago, so you definitely have to tell us your name. My name is Logan. 
Logan, what grade are you in? Third. Third grade. What did you draw here on your protective eyewear? A cat that's blue and purple with solar eclipse tattoos and with an alien. And that I learned mm -hmm. is when these glasses blocks off all the light except the solar eclipse light, mm -hmm. aka the solar light, because without the glasses, your eyes will get damaged and you might get blind. Ah, I love a solar eclipse alien cat that is going to help protect our eyes. Okay, one more. Let's do one more before we go. Right here, what's your name? My name is Taryn. Taryn, what grade? Fifth grade. Fifth grade, are you ready for today? Yes, ma'am, I am. <laughs> what have you learned to get ready? Um, we've learned that the moon uh, on solar eclipses, the apparent diameter of it is actually larger than the sun, which actually blocks it. What? You just blew my mind with that science fact. <laughs> How cool is that? Or do you really love science? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah? Is it your favorite subject? No. No, <laughs> we won't tell your science teacher that. <laughs> Okay, Michael, I'm going to send it back to you. But as you can tell, the kids here are definitely ready for today's once-in-a-lifetime event. Yeah, they really are. They are smart and yet brutally honest. you got to love it. Uh, they are ready for this event there. Chelsea, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us on Live Now from Fox. We always are appreciate it. Bye-bye, kids. Take care. All right, everyone, we are going to take our final break of the hour. Stay right here with us, everyone, as we get you ready hours away from the total solar eclipse here. We are getting excited. Stay right here with us. More to come on Live Now from Fox, everyone. And you can see people are already gearing up and getting their favorite spots right now. And we are awaiting this moment as well. We'll be back with more to come in just moments. Live Now from Fox, back in two. Welcome back, everyone, to Live Now from Fox. We are getting you ramped up for the big total solar eclipse 2024. We are very, very excited for this moment. Before the break, uh, we showed you this great shot. Uh, this is coming from Mexico, uh, where we have many, many people already getting their spots ready for this eclipse there. And remember uh, that this is the last one in the century that will impact Mexico, the United States and Canada, all three 
This is the last one that will have all three featured here for this total solar eclipse next time uh, uh, in another hundred years there. But in the U.S., uh, after this one, we could expect uh, another one in about 20 years. So we'll be keeping an eye on it all for you, as always, on Live Now from Fox. We want to continue to keep things rolling right here. Let's go back out to Fox 4 Dallas as they gear up for the eclipse sold out watch party that's at the Perot Museum. I think that's the hot place to be today. Yeah, indeed it is. Fox Sports Dan Godwin is there this morning live with a look. Good morning. Good morning, Brandon and Lauren. Total solar eclipses are pretty unusual. The last one visible anywhere in the contiguous United States, 2017. Before that, it was 1979. And after today, the next one will be visible uh, from part of the contiguous United States in 2045. So we are lucky that the path of totality runs through North Texas for this one. Want to say hello to Dr. Solange Ramirez, a Carnegie science astronomer. And Solange, uh, this last October, we were able to experience a partial solar eclipse. I watched it from my driveway in Dallas, but what's happening today will be of a whole different magnitude. Yes, absolutely. Like today is going to be completely dark during the day for a period of four minutes where the moon is going to cover the sun and actually make it a little bit dark as well as a little bit cold. Yes, the temperature drops and we're talking quite quite dark for that for that four minute period the public is obviously fascinated by this but a total solar eclipse for scientists those in your community it's it's quite an opportunity to learn about the sun absolutely uh, during a total eclipse is the only time where we can actually see and study the corona of the sun which is the outer part of the atmosphere where we can also study what is called the solar wind and this kind of detail cannot be done in the studies of other stars because the sun is the closest that we have. It's our, of course, it's our, it's our closest star. And uh, perhaps the most remarkable aspect of all of this, this would not be possible if, the, if our moon and the sun were it not in perfect proportion. In other words, the moon is precisely, you know, one four hundredth the size of the sun. A, 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 an amazing coincidence. That is a that is one of the amazing coincidences that actually make a total solar eclipse possible because the apparent sizes of the moon and the sun are the same, even though the moon is 400 times smaller than the sun, but the sun is 400 times farther away. <laughs> okay. Yes, indeed. And and we're all fortunate because of it. Absolutely. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Solange Ramirez. Uh, yeah, Lauren and Brandon, we're talking about the sold out events today here at the Perot Museum of, uh, of Science. It's uh, Those are underway and they will continue. They're all sold out. However, there is a big event at nearby Clyde Warren Park, a watch party. They're expecting maybe 30,000 people there. The Cotton Bowl, thousands more. And the museum has arranged to bring in lots of different uh, scientists and astronomers from around the country to share their expertise. They're fanning out across the city, uh, including at many, many schools today to help everyone, and especially students, fully appreciate uh, what is going to occur. Reporting live, Dan Godwin on Good Day. All right, that was Dan Godwin from Fox 4 Dallas a little bit ago. We continue on right here on Live Now from Fox. I'm your host, Mike Page, gearing up for at the top of the hour here, almost. Uh, we are 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. on the West Coast. Hope everyone is having a great day, not a normal Monday by any means right now. We are gearing you up for the total solar eclipse as always right here on Live Now from Fox. Let's check back in with NASA as they gear up for this big event. Sun, and it makes the sky darker. So 
we have the opportunity, as you see on the screen here, to see Jupiter, um, wow. also Venus. Those are going to be two of the brightest planets in the sky, but then right along there, Mercury, Saturn, Mars, those are all faintly visible. And then even more exciting, there's a comet that can be visible too. That's Comet 12P. It's it's faint, but depending on, you know, how dark your area is and, and whether you can see it in the sky, take a look and, and this will be an interesting planetary alignment. Absolutely. And I mean, as if this day wasn't, you know, rare, exciting enough. Now yeah. we've got this planetary alignment, we've got a comet. Right. And so fingers crossed on clear skies. Now we have some more questions coming in. Okay. Let's get to a few of them. Sounds good. All right, we have Twilight Linkable on YouTube who asks, I heard that some eclipse glasses don't have the right specifications to protect your eyes properly. Uh, when shopping for glasses, what specifications do I need that will protect the eyes? Sure. When you're, when you're buying those glasses, of course, you always want to get them from a credible source. Mm -hmm. One way to check is there's a, a standardized number. It's called the ISO. You want to look for a number one two three one two two and i think we have some people from my nasa team here that can input that in the chat so that you can make sure that you're getting those uh glasses with the right safety specs as well okay great thank you thank you for that and so our next question is from antonio rabid on youtube who asks do we need to know what do we know what the weather will be like during the eclipse Right, so the weather will depend on whatever location, Your location. you're in. Okay. Yeah, but, but we just heard about that Eclipse Explorer map, and that mm -hmm. actually has real-time weather information in it where you go to your location and you can find out what the weather will be during the eclipse there. I have a, a I'd say, a good follow-up to that. Halloween Hool, 31 on YouTube, asks, will temperature change during totality? Oh, yes. So this is something that is one of the most fun things to experience. Yeah. And, and we experienced this during the annual I know, it, eclipse, too. I know. It completely blew my mind. Right. So. We're shivering up on stage a little bit. Yeah, the temperature will drop. Uh, you know, the sun is blocked, and, and the energy, the heat coming from the sun into the atmosphere, it changes the atmosphere. And that's also why we have this Globe Observer uh, public project that we were talking about to measure those temperature changes. So, you know, there's there's different things that will affect how much the temperature will change. Mm -hmm. For instance, how humid it is in your location, but you will feel that temperature drop and it can be as large as 10 to 15 degrees. Yeah, I mean, even just for what we experienced with annual, like you said, yeah. I mean, we're like shivering on stage and then right. for totality, what we expect it to be even a little bit more. Yeah, probably a little bit more than what we had for annular. But, but even for the annular eclipse, a, a majority of the sun was blocked. So, uh, you know, get chillier in both of those instances. So I know we touched on this earlier, but for those of us who are just tuning in and watching, can you explain again, what is the key difference between an annular solar eclipse and a total solar eclipse? Right, and so basically a solar eclipse happens when the moon crosses in front of the earth, in between the earth and the sun. Now for annular eclipse, the moon will not be blocking the sun completely. It's going to leave a ring of fire because the moon is just a little bit farther from the earth in this case. For the total solar eclipse, the moon will be slightly closer to the, to the earth and it will block out the sun so that we can see that upper atmosphere of the sun, the corona as the sun is obstructed during that totality. So, so the viewing here that you see on the screen, that's the main difference in the effects, whether you get to see the solar corona or if you're looking at the ring of fire in the sky. And so we've been touching a lot about, you know, the path of totality and being in totality for a total solar eclipse. Sure. And so we've got a few viewers who want to know, you know, what if I'm not in the path of totality? What can I expect on April 8th? Yeah. And, you know, it's just as exciting and spectacular if you're not in the path of totality. You won't get to see the corona because the sun won't be completely covered, but you'll still get to experience a partial eclipse. And depending on where you are, the amount of that partial eclipse will vary. You can go to the Eclipse Explorer map to see just what coverage you have. But viewing a partial eclipse is really exciting too, and you'll still get some of those temperature changes and, and the changes around you as well. Um, so whether you're in totality or seeing that partial eclipse, it's that still cool. exciting. Yeah. yeah. So we have uh, Mayor Usman on YouTube who wants to know, will a cell phone disruption expected? You know, will this affect any of our communications during the eclipse? Oh, that's a, that's a great question. And so, you know, 
There is space weather activity that can disrupt our cell phones when the sun is sending harmful radiation out into space. Um, you know, it can impact the Earth's upper atmosphere and cause minor blips in, in cell phone. However, um, first of all, we have different things in place to avoid that mm -hmm. and specifically during the eclipse that's not really something that we have to be worried about but I'm glad that people are thinking in that direction that's great yeah and you know you mentioned studying space weather things like that we have another uh, viewer who wants to know what missions does NASA have that study the Sun and what mysteries are we hoping to solve okay well right now NASA in the Heliophysics Science Division, we have the Parker Solar Probe mission. And this mission is actually flying into the upper atmosphere of the sun. So that solar corona that we're talking about viewing during the eclipse, Parker actually flies through it and touches it. And this is the first spacecraft to ever get this close to the sun. In fact, on December 24th of this wow. year, it will have its closest approach flying nine solar radii close to the sun. And that, that might sound far, but it's actually the closest that a spacecraft has ever gotten so that we can really figure out how the physics operates in this region. Okay, now nine solar radii. Can you give us an idea? Oh, yeah. So I'm going to ask my team here to give us some stats on that and put it in the chat just so we can get it maybe into miles for people to understand. Yes, but, but it is much closer to the sun than we are so that we can touch the atmosphere there. Awesome. And so our next question actually again has to deal, you know, with the sun and its activity. It's from Fox McCloud on YouTube who wants to know, will we see solar flares during the eclipse? That could very well happen. Now, the sun has an 11 year activity cycle where the activity is ramping up and down. And when it ramps up, we see more of those solar flares, we see coronal mass ejections and more. And right now, we are gearing towards solar maximum, which means we have more of this solar activity happening and you can see the explosive flares occurring. So if we were ever to see some of this activity during the eclipse, this would be the time because we have tons of activity happening. So fingers crossed um, with your, your solar telescopes or your, your viewing that we can see some solar flares erupting. Is there any certain science we can only conduct during it? You're watching live now from Fox, everyone. We appreciate you continuing to be uh, with us. I'm your host, Mike Beach. Always great. Again, it's you uh, be uh, with you. Well, we'll get back out to NASA in a little bit. But since we are live now from Fox with live being in the name, we try to bring you all of the events that are happening live right now. So let's go out to Fox 4 Dallas. They are doing a great preview of today's big event as well. Well, let's continue to listen in on a Live Now from Fox. Years of planning. It's all going to pay off today for many communities across North Texas as hundreds of thousands of people from around the world are coming here to experience the eclipse. Oh, the town of Ennis. How it has uh, made this in the spotlight. It's Ellis County, south of Dallas. They're expecting 200,000 to experience the more than four minutes of totality. That's the area where they're going to see, should see, the of, longest yeah. uh, this, you know, period of darkness. Paige Ellenberger live in downtown Ennis. Good morning. Hey, Brandon and Lauren, good morning. And I know in my last live shot, I was speaking to Marty, the city manager, who said that hotels here in Ennis have been booked out for months. I actually found somebody who booked his hotel room a year and a half ago. Spencer Rakeley, thanks for joining us this morning. And um, I know your name is Spencer, but you introduced yourself to me as the astro nerd. Talk to me a little bit about what you do and what you've been doing since 1970. Okay, the first eclipse I ever saw was 1970. I was a senior in high school. Uh, me and a bunch of buddies got in a car, drove from Lancaster, South Carolina, down to Florence, South Carolina, and saw the most wonderful thing that we had ever seen in our lives. And that is what hooked me. And you said it hooked you, and I said why. And can you explain if I have never seen a total solar eclipse? I know some people that will be here in Ennis haven't either. What is that experience like? A big black hole in the sky. It's the blackest stuff you've ever seen with white, fuzzy, cotton-looking thing. And, and it's, it's dark from horizon to horizon. And there's a sunrise all the way around, 360 degrees. Stars come out. And let me tell you what, it is a religious type of experience. It's kind of like seeing God. And 
we spoke a little bit earlier. The cloud coverage here in Texas specifically, it's not looking good. I know some sunbeams are shining down on us right now. You've been in a similar experience in France. Yes. There's a little bit of optimism there. What do you want folks to know about today's eclipse? Well, uh, when we were in France, we were on the coast at the channel and it was socked in. It was socked in. People were crying. You know, everybody was, some of them were even packing up and leaving. And uh, right about the time totality was due to start, uh, the clouds broke a little bit and we saw totality and it opened up and we saw great totality and then it got socked in again after <laughs> totality was over. But there is some hope there and I know yes. we, we don't have too much time left. You take photos of these eclipses Yes. as well and I don't know if we're in video right now on live but I do want to bring it out if we are and show Spencer's t-shirt this is one of the photos he took can you explain to me why this is so special to you and why this is your seventh did you mention eclipse yeah. fifth eclipse this will be the sixth and uh, this t-shirt I, I snuck down to <laughs> Aruba I stayed like 12 hours. I didn't have a hotel, didn't have anything. I just set my equipment up, shot the pictures, got back on the plane and came home. And that is one of the pictures and I am proud of it. And as you can see, it's old and it is kind of, kind of crinkling up and stuff, you know, but I wore it today for this special occasion. Spencer, thank you so much for joining us. It was truly a pleasure getting to know a little bit of your story. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. I love Spencer's France story, Brandon and Lauren, about how the cloud coverage was so immense when he was spending time in the channel. And then right when totality hit, the skies part and they were able to see it. Fingers crossed it's happening today. The sun is shining on me this morning. So hopefully mm -hmm. come the time of totality, it will be just like this. Fingers crossed. It's a good sign. It's a good sign. All right, that's what everyone hopes. Thank you so much, Paige. There's also a big watch party at the lawn at Clyde Warren Park on the north side of downtown Dallas. Tens of thousands of people expected to attend that. Fox Force Hannah Bata there live with a look at what we can expect. Good morning. Good morning, Brandon Lorne, and happy total solar eclipse day to the both of you. Yeah, here at Clyde Warren Park, people actually started coming out as early as 7 o'clock, but they're expecting up to 30,000 people coming out here. The program that's set to start at 11, but I mean, as you can see, it really hasn't stopped anyone. They're going to have so many fun things, and that includes a panel of scientists from Carnegie and this morning we're really in for a treat because we have one of the astronomers Peter here with us to talk about today's events first let's let's talk about the eclipse just in general give us a little overview of what we can expect today yeah absolutely so we're really lucky that we've got uh, you know a moon that's about the same size as the Sun and a moon that is spinning around us in a way where occasionally it'll line up and perfectly block the Sun um, so at around 1230 we're gonna start seeing a partial eclipse many people have probably seen those where you get the moon slowly moving over the disk of the Sun and uh, slowly, though, that will transition to more and more coverage. And eventually at around 1.40 p.m. in Dallas, it's going to get fully dark for about three minutes. Um, and that three minutes is when the, the disk of the moon is perfectly covering the sun. You're, like, in the middle of, like, your 360-degree sunset. Uh, it gets really cool. You know, you're fully in the shadow. Um, you can see, because they're perfectly the same size, you can actually see the outer corona of the sun, the outer very hot atmosphere, um, outer atmosphere of the, of the sun. Which you can never see normally. Um, we'll be able to see planets like it's fully dark to, you know, well, fully twilight at least, uh, if we're lucky on weather. But the great thing about a total eclipse, though, is even if we have a few clouds, uh, it's still going to get dark. Like that's, uh, you know, <laughs> that's uh, going to still be very dramatic, even if we can't quite see all of this. But, you know, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll finger, we're fingers crossed that uh, right. the clouds clear up a little bit. And we'll cross that bridge when it comes. And I know you said most importantly, when, when we see that full corona, that's when it's safe to take off your glasses. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, yeah, very important in this whole lead up uh, to have these um, these eclipse glasses on that are allowing you to look at the disk of the sun. Because even if there's just a tiny sliver visible, that tiny sliver is still the same surface brightness as the rest of the sun. So it's still very damaging to your eyes. But you'll actually see through your eclipse glasses 
that sliver getting smaller and smaller, it disappears. You can't, see, like, during totality, you won't be able to see anything through those glasses. So um, very important to also know when the sun will pop back out the other side. But for those moments of totality, um, just enjoy the, you know, your surroundings and, and don't be scared to, you know, try to catch a glimpse of this corona for those, uh, those three minutes. Um, very exciting. Well, Peter, thank you so much for being here and being a part of today's panel. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we're very excited. And, and, and I should mention, too, Brandon and Lauren, it's, it's Peter's first total solar eclipse. He's a part of this team of scientists that's been traveling around DFW, going to different schools. Obviously, today we'll be a part of this panel, um, speaking to all of the attendees here. But it just goes to show the excitement for so many people, from us novices like me to, to those experts that have been studying this their entire lives, to really take this whole moment in. We're really lucky to have this in our backyards. Reporting live in Claiborne Park, I'm Hannah Batop for yeah. Pretty cool that we can anticipate its arrival, yeah. huh? Fox Warriors Solar Eclipse Headquarters. All right. Thanks to, to Fox 4 Dallas uh, for uh, giving us another preview this morning as we get you ready. Here is again the path of totality, what we will be looking at all afternoon long right here and gearing up for that moment. But before the U.S. gets to experience it, Mexico does a first there and we already have a lot of people along with the media uh, getting their spots ready for this moment in history. The total solar eclipse. Our coverage continues next on Live Now from Fox. Let's continue right now as we gear you up for today's solar eclipse. Our coverage continues. Occurred. We were all just kind of looking at the sky and kind of screaming and getting excited, ooing and eyeing. It was, it's just something that until you experience it, it's really hard to imagine, but it's so great. So it's, it's different than looking at a photo of it or something like yes, that. Yes, because as, as we talked about earlier, it is kind of all the senses, right? So you're seeing the eclipse, but you're also hearing changes in nature. You're feeling the temperature drop and maybe the winds pick up a little bit. In fact, uh, during the, the 2017 eclipse, in my experience, we had some clouds start to cover the mm -hmm. sky just before totality. And then as soon as totality hit, those clouds dissipated and, and went away. So we got to see the changes on the atmosphere with our eyes as well. And we covered this a little bit before, but can you tell us about some of the experiments that NASA is running and can only run during a total solar eclipse? Yes. Uh, so, so let's talk about the sounding rockets. That's actually something that we haven't hit on yet. 
So we have three sounding rockets that we'll be launching from our Wallops Flight Facility, which is in Chincoteague, Virginia. And these three rockets will be launching, one will take off 35 minutes before totality, one will take off during totality, and then finally 35 minutes after. And what we're trying to study here is basically measuring directly the changes in the upper atmosphere where the, where the rockets are going to reach. And we're doing it before, during, and after so we can see the change kind of in how it propagates. Now, where these rockets are launching, it's not actually going to be within the path, mm -hmm. but as the moon and its shadow, as the shadow of the moon is moving across that path, it's having changes in the local atmosphere and they kind of propagate out, almost like a boat going through the water and making Lake, a wake. Like, yeah, uh, it's the, kind of the same thing. So we're trying to see how those changes propagate out in the atmosphere. So we've got a plane, yep. we've got rockets. We've got rockets. <laughs> is there any other, you know, instrument that NASA is planning mm. to use to study uh, the solar eclipse? I know last year for the annular, we had balloons. Is right. there anything like that? There are balloon projects, in fact, um, led by various schools. We have a ton of balloons that we'll be launching, science balloons measuring all over. Um, and so that's something that you see on the screen here. Some of the students getting ready for those balloon experiments. Um, there's also radio telescopes in California that will be kind of measuring those radio waves coming from the sun because any active regions that are occurring on the sun at that time, they're going to be covered up by the moon. So as, as the radio telescope is just looking at the sun and these active regions are covered, we can see it's turning them on and off. So we can see where the waves are coming from. And, and where they are and so to understand what the sources are basically. So we're studying this from, you know, every single angle. Everything that we can possibly do. Yes. That is great. So our next question is from uh, Happy Thumbs Gaming on YouTube who wants to know, for the solar eclipse, will all of the United States be able to view it? All of the 48 contiguous states will view some sort of eclipse. If you're in the path of totality, you'll have the opportunity to view that total solar eclipse. If you're not in the path of totality, then that's where you'll see a partial eclipse. So as long as you're within those contiguous 48 states, then yes, you can see it. And you hit on this a little bit earlier, but why does this eclipse have totality for such a longer duration? You know, you mentioned that this year is almost double from 2017. Right. Why is that? Right. The moon's orbit actually isn't circular around the sun. It's an, it's elliptical. So it all depends on where the moon is in its orbit and really how close the moon is or how far it is from, uh, from the earth. And so for this one compared to 2017, we're going to get that shadow, uh, just cast a little bit. The, the path will be a little bit wider. The shadow is going to really make that eclipse last a little bit longer just based on where the earth is with respect to the sun. And Bert on YouTube who wants to know, being so close to the equinox, why is the path of totality at such an angle with the equator? Yeah, so it depends. Uh, the The moon's orbit is tilted by mm -hmm. five degrees. And of course, at, with Earth, we have seasons as well. So there's kind of this game that you have to play between, yeah, you know, the, the, the orbit, right, of the Earth and the moon and, and how the Earth is tilted, how the moon's orbit is tilted. And it, it changes kind of the, the geometry of where the eclipse occurs and, and how long and everything. So earlier, you know, we spoke a little bit about photographing a total eclipse with a cell phone. Now we have a viewer on YouTube who wants to know if pointing a telescope to the sun will damage the telescope uh, during this event. Right. We have filters for telescopes as well, solar filters that you, you put on your telescope so that you can safely view the eclipse. Um, so that's what I would recommend, especially uh, if you're in that partial uh, you know, partial eclipse area. Now for the, the total eclipse, that's when with our own eyes, we don't need to have the glasses on and you don't need to have a filter uh, for your eclipse. But it also depends on, on what you're trying to see. If you're trying to see that corona in a certain light, you might want a filter for that too that allows you to take different types of images and, and different science as well. Okay. For those just joining us, we have another question from Scientific Potato on YouTube who wants to know, Will animals under the total, will animals under the total solar eclipse be acting weird? 
They will be, yes. yes. Nature changes during the eclipses. Um, it gets confused. They, mm -hmm. Nature basically thinks that the sun is setting and that it's nighttime and, and that's where we kind of have animals getting ready to go to sleep, birds going to the trees, crickets that, that come out and chirp. So that is part of the whole eclipse viewing experience is to really kind of see and hear nature around you as well. You mentioned something too, I remember from the annular eclipse, something about spiders? And their oh, webs. there is something with spiders. I can't remember yes. it off the top of my head, but it, I think it has to do with, yeah, their, their spiders coming up and, and mm -hmm. their webs coming up and down too. That's right. And so our next question is, um, is actually from a viewer on, on YouTube who wants to know, what advice do you have for anybody who might be experiencing this solar eclipse for the first time? Oh, I love this question. I would say really take a moment to embrace it and you know experience it with as few distractions as possible i mean i know that we're all excited to take pictures mm -hmm. of the eclipse to be able to share the experience we're lucky that totality lasts for four and a half minutes because you can you know have a few moments of quiet to kind of see and feel and look around but then you can also take the photo that you yeah. want as well so i would just say you know make sure you you put down all your things and try to enjoy it yeah exactly well gina unfortunately that is all the time that we have for today okay but thank you so much for just joining us and for answering so many questions from our viewers i am so excited to be sharing nasa's stage in kerrville texas with you in just a few weeks yeah thanks to hear it it was great being here today and i'm really looking forward to our broadcast in kerrville and thank you to everyone who joined that was just NASA previewing a couple of weeks ago about the big event happening today. We'll check back in with NASA when they are live with their coverage. And again, we will bring you the latest, as always, on Live Now from Fox as we gear up for the total solar eclipse. You're watching Live Now from Fox, everyone. Welcome back everyone here to Live Now from Fox as we continue to bring you the latest here and take a look at this event happening uh, uh, just moments away from the big event coming up as we bring you uh, the eclipse coverage only uh, you can expect right here on Live Now from Fox as it is uh, setting up to be a spectacular day as well as an historic one as well. But let's continue our coverage here. I want to bring in another guest here on Live Now from Fox. This is uh, John Percy. 
Garcia, CEO of Destination Niagara. And you guys are gearing up uh, for this moment as well. Let's all talk about it. Uh, John, happy Eclipse Day. Happy Eclipse Day, finally. It's hard to believe it's here after we've talked about it for multiple years, multiple years. What, and let's talk about the planning phase uh, that you guys had for this event. What was the lead up uh, for this big day? Well, believe it or not, we even talked about this morning. We um, began this process, believe it or not, pre-COVID in 2019. We even purchased our glassware or the glasses that people are wearing here in Niagara Falls. Um, back in 2019, we were fearful that they would run out. And so uh, began back that far, five years ago. And so we've been in that planning process. It really has heated up the last six months to a year um, in getting uh, city officials and, and our fire and police and everyone on board um, and state parks police, everyone in preparing for today. And here's a great shot right now of uh, people getting ready at Niagara Falls. And uh, what a moment this is going to be here in the making. And just how many people uh, do you think are uh, coming uh, to your area to uh, take part of this history? Well, it, and I wish we had a playbook. It's so hard to tell. The weekend was very strong. I have to say the weekend leading up um, was very strong, was very like a very strong 4th of July weekend. 4th of July is probably our busiest weekend of the year, um, being in the summer here in Niagara Falls. Um, and so the weekend was a good indicator of how busy we'll be today, but uh, very strong with people staying in hotels, joining us for the weekend. Weather was spectacular. I wish the weather today was as spectacular as Saturday or Sunday. Um, we're even hoping there's some light cloud cover now. We're hoping uh, those clouds are saying possibly with our fingers crossed um, that it will dissipate um, hopefully by between two and four. Uh, you can see in the photograph there that there is some light cloud cover. Um, if it's real light and high clouds, people will still be able to witness the eclipse. And of course, we'll go into total darkness at 318 p.m. today, Eastern Standard Time here in Niagara Falls. Yeah, and that is the moment that everybody is waiting for where it's it's going to be spectacular where, where it's going to get dim to total darkness and then reverse course on that. And Right, uh, it starts at 2.05 for us, starts that, you know, it starts to dim, 3.18 for three hours and um, I get them all, make it three hours 18 or 3.38 and then we'll go back and be full light again at 4.32. Um, so it's a, it's a good two and a half hour period that we'll have an eclipse period, if you will. Yeah, so true, so so true. And how will you be viewing it as far as uh, where will you be really positioned at? Uh, it's a, a good question. Uh, trying to talk to staff. I mean, I may even just walk out the door here uh, of our offices. I'm hoping though. Believe the governor is here uh, and some dignitaries. Uh, so hope to be over with uh, our governor uh, Kathy Hochul. Uh, in a tent that's right there as you, in this window here, almost where that camera situation is where situated is where the governor has her VIP tent. Uh, so hope to get over a witness uh, this historical moment uh, with our governor and many other um, elected officials and so forth. Uh, but it's great just to be, uh, you know, with the crowds and to see the crowds. Uh, it really is starting to, to uh, people are, are gathering now. I knew it was gonna happen between nine and 12 today. Uh, the mass of people that will be arriving. Uh, it's been gradual, which has been nice. So there hasn't been a complete lockdown of our roadways. Uh, downtown Niagara Falls is very small and so is the state park. Uh, so it's hard to fit in the thousands that we are expecting um, for this period this afternoon. And wow, New York really has been busy these last couple of days, haven't they? I mean, it started off with Friday with, with the earthquake and now we're rolling right into it on Monday. Oh, let's hope there's not any, you know, e equation there, earthquakes and eclipses and, and hope not. Um, uh, you know, I, I really looking forward to a good day and, and the families, our visitor center here um, has been very busy even since 6 a.m. We had people uh, here as early as 6 a.m. We opened up at 6 a.m. Um, so it's nice to see families, you know, schools being closed, uh, that families can really enjoy this together. One in a iconic wonder of Niagara Falls and a uh, historical moment uh, in our time, especially for young kids uh, that they'll witness multiple times, hopefully in their lifetime.
Um, yeah, so, so it true. is great, you know. So true, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see that schools were letting out early or taking the day off. And I, I also like that businesses, like you, you see like grocery stores that are, you know, uh, stopping for about an hour so that their employees can take part in that. I thought that was really Wonderful. great as well to uh, really Agreed. showcase that. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of businesses said stay home, work from home, or I, I know some other businesses um, planned parties and, and, and food. I had to make sure that we had food here because we couldn't get you know food delivered for lunch at 12 or one o'clock so uh i you know flooded our kitchen here with food even this morning uh, to make sure that we could feed our staff and, and since our staff all had to be present but it is great to see companies having parties or allowing people to stay home a lot of family parties and a lot of street parties uh in our community in western new york here which is fantastic to see so it is a great day for um for our community and for the and for Niagara Falls it, specifically, it re really, really is. Well, John, uh, congrats on all the hard work today. It's all going to pay off, and uh, I know you're looking forward to it as well as millions of others. But uh, thanks so much, much. For, for taking a little time here. We appreciate it as always on live now from Fox. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. Yep. Take care. And we will continue to bring you the coverage on Live Now from Fox and some of the sights and sounds from all over the country that are participating in this event. We are going to take a two minute break coming up here in moments. But again, our official coverage is starting at 1 p.m. Eastern. It is presented by Nissan, our great friends over there and uh, the total solar eclipse 2024. Oh, it is eclipse day and we are just getting started. Stay right here with us. More to come in moments on live now.
are gearing up for the moment here on Live Now from Fox, the total solar eclipse. Looking forward to it as always. Great shot there of Niagara Falls. Many people continuing to come there, get their spots. We're hoping that the clouds will pass uh, so that they'll be really able to experience that moment of totality. We are going to take another two minute break and continue to showcase some more live events as well. All right here on Live Now from Vox, everyone. More coverage from NASA on this Tolar Solar Eclipse Day. Now picture this, a collective pause as people across the U.S. gaze upward to experience the wonder of the cosmos together. I can't wait. And today I'm joined by Dr. Gina DiBraccio, a sun expert who's going to walk us through how to prepare for the April 8th event. Gina, welcome. Hi, Tara. Thanks for having me. And thank you so much for being here. Now, can you kick off by telling our viewers a little bit about your role here at NASA? Sure. So I'm the deputy director of the Heliophysics Science Division at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. That means I'm helping to oversee an organization of scientists that are studying heliophysics, which is the study of the sun and its influence on everything. So we're looking at the physics of the sun, but also how it impacts the Earth's magnetic field, the upper atmosphere, and really just understanding how the whole system works together. That is great. And Gina, I'm so happy to be here with you again today. Hey, yes. Gina and I had a blast hosting last year's annular solar eclipse, and I think it's safe to say we are thrilled to be back again for the total solar eclipse. Now, before we dive into some details, Gina, can you help clear something up for me? Sure. What exactly sets an annular solar eclipse apart from a total solar eclipse like this year? Okay. So when a solar eclipse happens, the moon is going to cross in between the Earth and the sun. And when that happens, the moon's shadow is cast on the, on the Earth, and we can look up in the sky and see it. Now, for an annular eclipse, the moon is going to be just a little bit farther away so that it doesn't completely block out the sun. And that's what you can see on the screen here. You're left with a ring of fire in the sky. Cool. Now, for a total solar eclipse, the moon is going to be closer to the Earth so that the sun is completely blocked. And that way, we can see the solar corona. It's that hot upper atmosphere of the sun that we can't see with our visible eyes on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's really good to know that difference because, you know, it's my understanding that in total solar eclipse, the safety tips then are a little bit different than an annular. Right, exactly. And so for our viewers at home, we have a special guest, someone you might recognize, who's here to let us know how to safely view the April 8th event. 
Hi, Eclipse enthusiasts. Lance Bass here, and I want to tell you how to protect those eyes and stay safe during a solar eclipse. During these celestial events, the sun, earth, and moon are in sync, creating solar eclipses. You can look directly at the sun during a total solar eclipse, but only when it's completely covered by the moon for a brief period known as totality. This is a really special moment. At all other times, you should wear eclipse glasses so that you don't say bye 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 to your vision. Seriously. And eclipse glasses are not the same as regular sunglasses. No, they're not. Safe solar viewers are thousands of times darker and will have a specific certification that you should look for right here. Don't be a space cowboy and try to look directly at the sun. If you don't have eclipse glasses, you can use an indirect viewing method, like a pinhole projector. You can make one of these with something as simple as an index card with a hole, or a colander, or even your hands. With the sun at your back, you can safely project an image of the sun through the hole onto a nearby surface like the ground. It's going to be me who is wearing my eclipse glasses, and so are you. Okay, we are already seeing a lot of questions pouring in online from our viewers watching, so let's jump right into this Q&A. Now remember, if you're watching live, you can submit your own questions for Gina using the hashtag AskNASA or by posting them in the comments wherever you're watching today. Alrighty, Gina, our first question is from... Oh, it actually looks like, so we've got kind of a group question here. Okay. It looks like a lot of people watching are asking about notices that may have been issued in certain areas with guidance on how to prepare for crowds and um, preventative measures uh, meant to reduce traffic. Could you give us a little bit more info on how to best prepare for April 8th? Sure. So, as you said earlier, to hear it uh, along the path of totality, we have about 31 have million people. A lot people. of people, which right. is so cool to so think about. So it's already crowded to begin yeah. with, and of course, we'll have people traveling into that area to make it even more crowded. So, you know, just think of the preventative measures that you can take in case you get stuck in traffic. So, make sure you have gas in the tank. Make sure if uh, you have a battery-operated car, you you've charged up. You have some extra food and water with you. Uh, if there are traffic lines, you know, just be prepared to have patience and wait a little bit for that. Thank you, Gina. And so we have an, our next question is from a user on Facebook who wants to know what science will be done during the total solar eclipse? Right. The, one of the things that we're most excited for at NASA is actually performing different science experiments during the eclipse. Now, a favorite that I like to talk about is that we're using NASA's WB-57 high altitude research jet to perform some experiments. So the so cool. jet, yeah, the <laughs> jet's going to fly across the path of totality so that it gets a little bit longer in totality than if you were just standing on the ground. And what that means is that the instruments on board are going to look up at the solar corona and take images so that we can study the composition of the corona, understand how particles are accelerated and charged, mm -hmm. and also be able to study dust that is around the sun that we can't really understand when we look at just on a day-to-day -day basis either. And so, and this is only an experiment that can be done during a total solar eclipse? Is that right? Right. So, so we do have instruments called coronagraphs that mm -hmm. are essentially artificial eclipses, and they will block out the sun so that we can study the corona. But the way that the light bends around these coronagraphs, we can't actually get deep down into the corona itself in that lower part of it. So for the total solar eclipse that happens naturally, it allows us to get down into the, the lower part of the corona, which means this is one of the only times that we can you know, study this area of the sun. That is amazing. And so we have our next question on Jordan, uh, from Jordan on YouTube, who wants to know, why is it bad to view a solar eclipse directly? Okay, thanks for that question, Jordan. Yeah. So, so we want to be really careful about eye safety mm -hmm. during any eclipse or, or even on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't want to look at the sun so that you're not causing any permanent damage to your eyes. Now, the way that it works for a total solar eclipse is that during the partial phases, you need to have the proper safety viewing that we just heard about. Um, you can have the eclipse viewing glasses. You can make a pinhole projector, and you need to use that to see the partial eclipse. All right, everyone, you are watching live now from Fox. We want to continue our coverage here. We have a live event uh, covering the eclipse today, so let's go to that right here on Live Now. On the moon 
and the earth to cooperate. Still, today is a special occasion, a truly awesome solar event that each of you will remember for years to come. I remember watching the 2017 eclipse. I remember to this day all the detail, but it's also part of a broader story about the elegance, the power, the wonder of nature, and the ingenuity of science and the scientists who seek to understand it for our mutual benefit. I hope what you see and what you hear today inspires you. Listen, listen during the eclipse. Don't just look, listen. See how quiet it gets, see what the birds do. And I wouldn't be surprised if by the 2044 solar eclipse, one of the many, many school children here is actually running an agency like NOAA or the National Science Foundation or NASA, not to mention serving here as a scientist or engineer or more. I can only imagine the technology and tools that you school kids will be able to apply to understand solar eclipses in the future. With that, thank you for listening to me for a few minutes, and I'm delighted to turn it back over to Meredith. Thank you. Wow, how fun, right? And we are just getting this party started. Yes, I love your enthusiasm because, all right, let's get some more energy. Come on, the sun needs to wake up. Wake up, sun! We want a show right here in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, so we can kick the totality path off. Oh yeah, look, it's working. So we're gonna keep that energy all the way up to the path of totality. But we have so many great speakers to get to before we can start the official countdown. So I am very excited to announce our next speaker, Tim Patton, who is the National Science Foundation Deputy Assistant Director, Geosciences Directorate. Tim, welcome to the stage. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Good morning. So I am so thrilled to be here today as a representative of the U.S. National Science Foundation. It's a federal agency that plays a really pivotal role in expanding our understanding of the universe and promoting the progress of science. NSF is grateful for its continuous collaboration and partnership with NOAA and NASA. This day of learning and fun is a prime example of interagency cooperation showcasing our collective commitment to enhancing public understanding and appreciation of science. So I have a video for the next section if that can be shown. So moving on to the hot topic of the sun, which is the star attraction of this event, let me share a couple of cool examples of how NSF is leading solar research. NSF runs the D NSF Daniel K. Anui Solar Telescope. This is the world's most powerful tool for studying the sun. This telescope improves our understanding of solar phenomena that impacts and affects our, day, our planet and our daily lives. So in fact, almost a year ago, this telescope produced this image, one of the highest resolution images ever taken of the sun, revealing this turbulent boiling plasma within Texas-sized cell-like structures all across the surface of the sun. During the time of totality of the eclipse, this telescope will be observing the solar corona. And that's not all. So the eclipse presents many other unique scientific opportunities for NSF-supported research. For example, the Airborne Coronal Emission Surveyor, or ACES, will fly along the eclipse path on the NSF National Center for Atmospheric Research Goldstream 5 aircraft, which will be studying the infrared emissions of the sun's corona. And the Goldstream 5 will be flying over Dallas around noon today. So not only that, but also roughly 40 citizen scientists teams from Southwest Research Institute will be making observations of the sun's corona as the eclipse crosses the country. Our work at NSF and with our partners at NOAA and NASA exemplifies the power of cooperating and furthering scientific discovery and education. By supporting projects like the NSF Anue Solar Telescope and ACES, and by organizing public events like today's viewing event, we aim to connect you directly with the world of science. 
We're happy to have you, your friends, and your families here to experience the mar marvels of the cosmos together. Let, let this eclipse be an inspiration to continue to explore the unknown, making science a journey for everyone to share. And thank you so much, and have a great time today. Thank you so much. Well, I've been seeing a lot more sun than this whole morning, so our kids are doing a great job with the energy. The sun has heard us. Yes. And we are not done just yet because we still have so many guests for this event here at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. And I can tell you as a meteorologist, it has been such hard work to get this forecast put together. Our friends at the National Weather Service here in Dallas-Fort Worth have been working so hard. In fact, I saw them at the media event yesterday and they are just fine tuning that forecast but also putting that positive energy, right? Because we have such a historic event happening here in Dallas. And I know for the longest time that forecast wasn't looking good. But as we know, we call them the magic. All right, everyone, we'll get back, we'll get you back out to Dallas here in just a little bit as school children getting ready. They are getting pumped uh, with this uh, pre solar eclipse event happening uh, there in uh, Dallas. So we'll be keeping an eye on that for you as always. We do want to go to some breaking news, though, that we are following uh, for you uh, regarding actor Jonathan Majors. He has. Uh, uh, been sentenced to probation for assaulting his ex-girlfriend, but he is uh, not going to jail here. So here is uh, the update. As after uh, Jonathan Majors uh, sentenced to probation in order to complete a year-long counseling program, but avoided jail time today for assaulting his ex-girlfriend in a high-profile case that derailed the once promising star's career. The 34-year-old star of Creed 3 and other films had faced up to a year behind bars after he was convicted of misdemeanor assault by a Manhattan jury back in December. The judge also ordered majors to, co co to complete an in-person batterer's intervention program. He also asked to continue with his mental health therapy. Following the guilty verdict, Majors was immediately dropped by Marvel Studios, which had him cast as Kang the Conqueror, a role envisioned as the main villain in the entertainment empire's movies and television shows for years to come there. So that was denied, but not jail time for Majors. The conviction stemmed from an altercation last March in which Majors' then-girlfriend accused him of attacking her in the backseat of a chauffeured car, saying he hit her head with his open hand, twisted her arm behind her back and squeezed her middle finger until it fractured there. So we'll again continue to uh, track this story for you on Live Now from Fox. Stay right here with us. More coverage of the total solar eclipse coming up next on Live Now.
Welcome back to Live Now from Fox. I want to continue to update you on the breaking news regarding actor Jonathan Majors sentenced to probation but avoiding jail uh, this morning for assaulting his ex-girlfriend in a high-profile case that derailed the once promising star's career. The 34-year-old star of Creed III and other films had faced up to a year behind bars after he was convicted of misdemeanor assault by a Manhattan jury back in December, the judge also ordered majors to complete a 52 week in person batterers intervention program. He also has to continue with his mental health therapy following the guilty verdict. Majors was immediately dropped by Marvel Studios, which had him cast as Kang the Conqueror, a role envisioned as the main villain in the entertainment empire's movies and television shows for years to come. The conviction stemmed from an altercation last March in which Majors' then girlfriend accused him of attacking her in the back seat of a chauffeured car, saying he hit her head with his open hand, twisted her arm behind her back, and squeezed her middle finger until it fractured. Majors claimed the 31-year-old British dancer was the aggressor, flying into a jealous rage after reading a text message from another woman on his phone. He maintained he was only trying to regain his phone and get it away from his girlfriend there. So again, uh, we'll continue to follow the story here for you, as always, on Live Now from Fox. And uh, we are setting uh, for a new hour right here, as always, on Live Now. It is 11 o'clock out on the East Coast, 8 a.m. on the West Coast, and we continue to uh, bring you uh, the sights and sounds from Eclipse coverage uh, going to be impacting Mexico, U.S., and Canada. And remember uh, that this is the last time this century that Mexico, the U.S., and Canada all together will be taking part in this moment here. So what a truly uh, spectacular uh, way to start uh, this Monday. Start uh, the work week off and it uh, comes uh, with uh, history in the making. So looking forward to, to it all. Do you want to go back out to Fox 4 Dallas? They continue to showcase everything Eclipse coverage. Of the Fox 4 studios in downtown Dallas. The views up here are absolutely spectacular. I know it's a little overcast right now, but we're going to check in with our weather folks because they say well, there's a pretty good chance we should have a pretty spectacular day. So, did you have much traffic getting in or did you come in early enough? You know what? I came in early enough. This weekend, I was out in Athens with our son on a Boy Scout camping yes. trip, and you could see people starting already because that's one of those cities, you know, that, that's in the path of totality. The road signs warning people please don't stop on the street. Yes. The eclipse is coming, you know, make sure you find uh, a good spot. And we've got spots all across town today. Uh, I believe we have 10 different uh, remote locations where we've got crews out that are kind of monitoring the day as it goes on. All along that path of totality. Now, right to our right is the Perot Museum, and that's where we're going to catch up with Dan Henry and Blake Hansen. Good morning. Hey, good morning, good morning guys. guys. How's it going? <laughs> so far, uh, so good. We've got... Uh, 7,000 people who are uh, just beginning to uh, stream in uh, any minute now. Uh, looks like they've already been lining up uh, about an hour or so that they've, they've been out here. They're ready to go. Uh, programming really happening all day here. Uh, food trucks. They got vendors. They've got bounce houses. Music. <laughs> You're going to hear the music too and they're going to be doing some presentations as well to get people ready for the science uh, side of things here to, to get them interested and ready for the eclipse. Uh, uh, not that you really need to force people to get excited about something like this, Dan. Um, and, and we're excited to see, uh, hopefully see a good <laughs> look at what is in the sky today. Yeah, I've got one eye here on the uh, satellite loop, and I'm hoping that time is our ally in this case, because obviously if you woke up early this morning, uh, we had some low clouds. It's what we feared that some of these low clouds would push in here. Now, we're hoping with time over the next two to three hours that the sun does its job and scours those out. Uh, Evan's been talking about that all morning long on good day and working some drier down. Uh, all right, this is, a, this is a cool timeline. That's the moon's shadow. It is going to be moving at over 1,600 miles an hour. That's twice the speed of sound. We pause it right here. That's when the uh, shadow is just entering the Dallas-Fort Worth area at 140. That's the time of totality, and it'll last about four minutes to 144, and then you see the moon shadow rocketing northeastward up through Missouri, Illinois, Indiana. 
There are over 30 million people in the path of totality stretching from Texas all the way up into northern New England. Uh, and it's going to be quite a treat. Uh, this is something that is happening in our backyard and will not happen again for about 300 years, I think 2345. So this truly is a once in a lifetime event, Blake. <laughs> yeah, and we're gonna be talking with scientists uh, all throughout our coverage this afternoon. They'll be kind of breaking down what we can look for. So if you're watching from home, uh, if you're going to one of those events, you can kind of get a primer uh, before you leave and also stream us uh, on your phone as well. And we'll uh, kind of walk you through what we can expect and also the latest weather conditions, which everyone wants to keep an eye on. Uh, Stephen Heather, we'll send it back to you on the roof. All right. Thank you much. I got to tell you, the people at the Pro are so fantastic. They've got a great event yes. for the folks there this morning, which includes thousands of people. But they have been planning for this day for five years and have given out a million pair of Eclipse glasses to people. You know, when we talk about this event, and you heard Dan kind of allude to this, you know, back yeah, in 2017 that, during yeah, the uh, Eclipse second, here, uh, you know, uh, certainly it was during uh, in the continental United States. But because of the way the path carves through the U.S. this year, more people are actually in the path of totality yes. than ever before. So we've got kind of two things at play here. One, the number of people, but when it comes to duration of totality, there is no better spot than Ennis, Texas. That's where uh, Peyton Yeager is. Uh, and by the way, some of the best pictures I have to say, Peyton, out of Ennis, were you in the car on Facebook Live doing your makeup <laughs> this morning. Big fan. Big oh, fan. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> he was telling me I'm not usually about that up thing. this early. <laughs> I will, I will. I'm not usually up this early. My shift usually starts at 2.30, but I had to come in. I was like, please put me on Ennis because this is the spot where I want to be. It really is the epicenter of this eclipse. You know, the longest time of totality is going to be in Ennis. So I was like, I have to be here. Four minutes and 23 seconds. That is the time that it is going to be dark here in downtown Ennis. And we have really the best spot. We are downtown on top of a rooftop, beautiful weather, beautiful temperature behind me. You know, there's a stage. They're going to have live music, already food trucks. You know, we've been here since 7 a.m. and we're just now on air, but we've kind of seen this, you know, people start waking up, people start making their way out here, but you know, Ennis is really, again, the epicenter. So thousands of people are expected to be here and I brought my nifty glasses that are so we're going to do this an amazing zoom on my face that I'm sure is just absolutely stunning on TV. Um, so here's my Ennis glasses. They're super stylish. So I've kind of just been looking up. Oh, right now I can see the sun. So it's been going in and out. It's a little cloudy here. I know that we have um, been having our fingers crossed for this weather, but it's going in and out. And before I go, I mean, we're just up here hanging out. I brought my little NASA mug. I don't know if you guys can see this. So my mom worked at NASA for 35 years, so I know she's watching at home, and she's so excited to watch this. They're actually in Dallas to witness this, but I wanted to give her a little shout out. But we're going to keep you updated all day from here in Ennis. Back to you guys. That's awesome. Hi, Peyton's mom. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, she's watching. <laughs> yeah, she's got a rooftop spot just like we do, but I'll tell you, one of the best spots in town as well is going to be the Dallas Arboretum. Right. I was just out there on Thursday. I was emceeing the, the launch of their what cool Thursdays. Boy Scout events. <laughs> busy. I gotta keep up with you, Heather Hayes. <laughs> oh, Come please. on. Uh, I was out there for their Cool Thursdays uh, concert series at yeah, the Arboretum that they great. do, which is like the coolest thing you could do in the right. spring and summer. And they had everyone out on the lawn. I know they've got a lot of national media out there, but they also have Fox Force Davidson Tendry, who is live standing by for us. Hey, Steve. Yeah, I know you said that you were emceeing that event last week. The concerts here typically happen on the lawn. There's a stage at the bottom, but today the show is not on the lawn. It's really in the sky. You're going to have about 8,000 people on this lawn filling it up this afternoon. The funny thing is, while they have this beautiful view of White Rock Lake behind us, you can probably see that everyone's starting to face this direction. That's because the sun is actually facing this way. It's starting to peek out right now as we speak. So we've been seeing people rolling in and out throughout the morning. So some people local, some people from out of state, some people from out of the country. We spoke with a woman just a few minutes ago who flew in all the way from Paris, not Paris, Texas, Paris, France. Quickly, I want to bring in the CEO, Sabina Carr of Dallas Arboretum. So I know you're going to have your hands full today with all these people, but are you going to have four minutes to really just breathe and take it all in when this actually happens? Yes. Well, welcome to the Dallas Arboretum. And I do hope to have at least that time to be able to see it like everyone else around the world. It's exciting. 
And obviously the sun is peeking out right now, oh, so... Would you Everyone get that? your glasses ready. <laughs> so we're hoping for the best over here. You've seen people coming from all over the place. You think this is the best spot in Dallas to see it, right? Well, it's definitely the most beautiful spot in Dallas at the Dallas Arboretum. And now that the sun is coming out, you never know. The clouds could roll out just as quickly as they rolled in this morning. So let's cross our fingers. You never know. You never know. But like we said, 8,000 people, unfortunately, it is sold out right now. But plenty of other places, obviously, to see it. Send it back to you guys right now in the studio. Yes, no direct flights from Paris, Texas <laughs> no. uh, to the Arbor to uh, Dallas, <laughs> but certainly from Paris, France. Okay, so we've got crews all over the yeah. place, uh, but the probably the most the woman of the hour here is going to be Ali Turiano. Right. So, Ali, we've really seen it. it was much cooler. Steve and I were having this conversation when we first got on the roof here. I was like, oh, it's so cold. He's like, it's warm. I'm like, it's cold. So we had the back and forth. But I do feel like temperatures are warming up a bit now. Uh, they are, but it's because of that south wind. And the south wind is also bringing in this low cloud cover that we were afraid of. Now, there are some spots on our Fox 4 views that have some breaks in the clouds. There was a little, little bit more blue up in Lantana just a few minutes ago. But notice it's a little patchy in a few spots. Spots. So the big question will be, does this cloud cover scour out in time for the eclipse? Now, for some of us, yes, I think that's going to happen. The question is, will we be able to say exactly where? Probably not. So it's pretty much a coin flip for you. Now, I will tell you, the high clouds that have been off to the north and west, that's all that's there. So that actually is a, a better visibility of this eclipse. But you see the thicker cloud cover hanging out across at Collin, move through Dallas County, Rockwall, also into uh, Ellis County. Those are the spots that we are just dealing with this over these overcast conditions. There is some movement here, so that is great. And as mentioned, as we heat things up, yes, there will be some breaks, but I still think we're going to average a partly to mostly cloudy sky for a lot of North Texas through the day. This is one of our high resolution computer models as we begin seeing that eclipse. Of course, here is our area of totality. So conditions may start out decent, but then as the afternoon goes on, more cloud cover will be a possibility. It's just very tough to say exactly where that thicker cloud cover is going to be. Now, I will tell you, once we finish the eclipse, then all eyes will turn to our threat for strong to severe storms. So we've got to talk about that too. Yes. All right, that is Fox 4 Dallas doing a great job of getting things started this morning as we gear up for the total solar eclipse. Let's take another two minute break here on Live Now from Fox. Stay right here with us. Always more to come.
Thanks so much to all our great viewers continuing to watch with us on Live Now from Fox as today is Eclipse Day. So happy Eclipse Day to all of you that are watching. Do you want to continue to show you uh, more coverage? And look at this right now, uh, getting a good reminder of to wear Eclipse glasses and viewers for today. Put the glasses up. on, look up at the sun, then look, please down. look back down again before Ooh. you take those so glasses down, off. Up, so down. just remember the do down, down, up, down. Up, down. Everybody say it for me. Down, down up, down. Up, down. We can do it all down. Okay. Hey, where's my kids? Are they having a snack or something? Down. He's doing up, an interpretive down. dance for down, down, up, down. Down, up, down. We Good got job, this. Man. Down, <laughs> up, down. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. you. He knows what to do. It. Follow him. <laughs> so if you Woo, also, up. for those of you at home, if you don't have eclipse glasses, if you got uh, if you happen to know a welder, you can get Shade 14 welder's class, and that makes a perfectly fine uh, way to look at the sun. We've got a pair of uh, welder's class in the end of a cereal box, so that's the other thing you can use the cereal box for is you take the lens in, and uh, then it makes a little viewer for you to look through, just like that. Awesome. Yeah, when the sun comes back out, then we can see it. Oh. See, I can't work this any better than I can my plant here. <laughs> so uh, the sun's been peeking in and out. Uh, hopefully we'll get to see it uh, here in just a little bit. But if we don't, the good news is it's not the last eclipse ever. <laughs> the bad news is you'll have to wait until, what does it say, 20? Well, no, we're, this is just 2021 yeah. to 2030. I don't okay. see it in the U.S. We yeah, there'll actually more. be some partial eclipses visible uh, up until then. But let's go to the next one. So uh, around 2045. I don't see there. Yeah, we go. there's there's the one that's going to go directly. It's going to go a little bit north of where we are today. So yep. it's going to go pretty close to us. So it'll so be another a while before you can see the next eclipse. So it's not your last chance. But I think uh, we need to send a little positive energy up into the sky and try to blow Got away this. the clouds. So let's all try to blow, blow away. Blow it away. The so look, blow you know, away. Generally blow looks, away. All right, we want to go back out to Fox 4 Dallas coverage of the big total solar eclipse today. Starting to file in already. You they can are, tell. People they, are excited. They are filing in. And I want to say, when Dan saw the sun uh, about five minutes ago. <laughs> I nearly jumped out of my seat. <laughs> it, it's saw gonna, another glimpse of it, too. It, it's going to be that way all day. We're yeah. going to be looking at the skies and, and hoping for the best. Uh, we, we've mentioned we've got crews all throughout the area covering this. And uh, we want to cover Tarrant County as well. want to get to our Dion England, who's at the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History. Dion, how's it going out there? She's in the sunshine there. <laughs> Hey there, Blake and Dan. It is going great here in Fort Worth. I'm at the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History. And the courtyard here, I can tell you, we can show you, is already starting to get busy. We've got people that are showing up with their kids uh, already. And they are checking out what uh, was going to be uh, possible here. And I'll tell you, activities galore. We've got educational opportunities galore. There's a full day on tap here planned at the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History. This is also you. U.S. Navy Week in Fort Worth, and so the U.S. Navy Band will be here um, pretty soon. They'll be playing music up until uh, about maybe a half hour before totality, and then they'll take a break, of course. They'll come back and wrap up uh, with uh, more music for the folks here. There is um, so you can see the food trucks in the in the distance there. There's just a, a lot going on already. There's a, a mad scramble just to make sure that they have everything in place, and they're welcoming folks already. I can see just off in the distance, people are still starting to arrive. They're being uh, handed uh, pamphlets and uh, kind of an agenda of what to uh, uh, look forward to today. And cloudiness, we're not going to worry about it. Uh, I'm pretty much, we've had a little bit of cloudiness, but as you mentioned, it is very sunny right now. And if we do happen to have any issues, you might already be able to tell. I've tried with my outfit to give the sun a little bit of help. So we're just going to uh, we're going to leave it there and just uh, we're optimistic. That's the very latest live. Back to you guys. I love right. that positive attitude Thanks, there. Dion. You have to be. You have to be. You know, will and hope the sun to, to stay with us, participate with us today. Yeah, is it, you know, it's going to take a while for people to filter in here to get through security, but we are expecting 7,000 people here at the Perot. Among those 7,000, there have gathered at least a couple dozen world-renowned astronomers, and we're going to be talking to a few of those throughout the course of our live coverage here. They're going to tell you some, some incredible things, the science, the 
numbers. I, I love that kind of stuff when you really get into delve into that in terms of the uh, eclipse itself. So we're looking forward to those interviews as well coming up. And speaking of one of the places that the scientists have gathered, uh, one of those places is the UTA, UT Arlington's Planetarium, and that's where we find our own Alex Boyer, who's going to be speaking with them and some of the folks that are gathered there today. Alex, how's it going? Hey guys, it's going good, especially now. I mean, what a difference a few minutes make. You know, I had my hoodie on just a few minutes ago. Now it's come off. The sun is starting to peak out here in Arlington, and we're hoping that the good vibes continue. You know, it's pretty quiet right now out on the quad here in front of the UT Arlington Planetarium, but that's all going to change in just a couple of hours. Right now, what you're looking at is some of those high-powered telescopes that are being set up in the quad here where folks can get an up-close look at the eclipse and also there, there are some astronomers and other scientists who will be walking around able to chat with onlookers about what we'll be experiencing throughout the day. Also here, you can see in the distance there, we have the student campus radio station. They're going to be broadcasting live here all day. So even if you're walking around campus, not right here in front of the planetarium, you can still get a feel for what's going on. There's also 10-minute tours at the planetarium. So if you want to come out here and enjoy the day, you'll be able to check that out as well. We, of course, will be here throughout the day and let you know how it goes. Back to you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So one of the things that's interesting to point out, you know, obviously, listen, weather is the big story of the day. If not for eclipse, it would be the biggest story of the day and certainly will be after the eclipse is over. But it's important to know, I mean, you saw Dion's live shot, sunshine and shadows, Alex's live shot. Sun. So really, depending on where you are, just because it's sunny now or just because it's cloudy now, doesn't necessarily mean those conditions are going to be sustained. So the advice today is don't try to chase the sun. If you've got a spot, stay where you are. Let Mother Nature do her thing. Well, and two things to add to that. Number one, wherever you are, you need your glasses. You've got to have your solar clip glasses yes. and your point about stay where you are we heard from dan and blake seven thousand people at the perot right, they're just, expected just over here and yeah. then clyde warren park is right there and you've got the arboretum as well so there are thousands of people who are now on their way to their spots to stay yeah you know i was actually surprised by how little traffic we had this morning well, when it was it, like know, 7 a.m well so. and, and even all through good day when we were covering traffic right there wasn't right. really anything major right but listen folks as we kind of now get into the meat of we're less than two hours away from from kind of the beginning stages of all this happening. Right. If you're in your spot or not in your spot, get to it and stay there. You don't want to be out on the roads. We're going to be back on the other side of the break uh, with a close. All right, everyone. We will continue to check in with Fox 4 Dallas and so much more coming up on uh, the total solar eclipse pre-coverage right here on Live Now from Fox, everyone.
Welcome back, everyone, uh, to Live Now from Fox. We do have some new video. Uh, this was Jonathan Majors uh, leaving uh, the courtroom uh, moments ago after actor Jonathan Majors has been ordered to complete a year-long counseling program but avoided jail time today for assaulting his ex-girlfriend in a high-profile case that derailed the once-promising star's career. The 34-year-old star of Creed 3 and other films had faced up to a year behind bars after he was convicted of misdemeanor assault by a Manhattan jury in December, but the judge not granting jail time, just probation. He said majors must complete a 52-week in-person batterers in intervention program in Los Angeles where the actor lives. He also has to continue with the mental health therapy his lawyers say he's been participating in. Majors faces a year in jail if found uh, in violation of those terms, which also included a no contact order with his former girlfriend. Majors dressed in all black and accompanied by his Girlfriend actor Megan Good declined to address the court and left the courthouse without speaking to reporters, but his lawyer said he will abide by the judge's sentence but maintains his innocence and plans to appeal there. So we'll keep an eye on that for you, as always, on Live Now from Fox. I'm your host, Mike Pache. Thank you again for joining us on Live Now. We do want to continue our solar eclipse coverage as we get you ready for the big event. And let's go back out to our friends over at Fox 4 Dallas, always doing such a great job of previewing today's big day. that we're working with a thousand in the Dallas Independent School District kids. We have um, a NASA advisor, Dr. Nicholas Gross from um, Boston University that will be here as well. A lot of giveaways, giveaways from our friends from the Mavericks, um, a lot of education content, but what an opportunity to witness here on the future home of Harold Simmons Park on the Ronald Kirk Bridge. It's going to be awesome. It is going to be a great day, not just for looking, but also learning with our DISD students. Absolutely. You know, this, this doesn't come around every day, and so we have a special opportunity to celebrate this with our school kids from a STEM education point of view. But yeah, you know, we're just hoping the sun comes out. The word is that the sun will be out at 12 o'clock, so fingers are crossed. Well, we're looking for a lot of cosmic miracles today, including the sun peeping through the clouds. That right? is correct. Tony, that is correct. Tony Moore is the CEO of Trinity Park. Again, a lot of students are going to be here today. People are coming and marking their spots, and everybody's got an eye to the sky, hoping that the sun does break through and that we get to see, you know, what's going to happen total. Uh, darkness uh, right here in the path of totality this afternoon. We'll be here. At, we might post up here. We might move around to other locations, but it's going to be a great, memorable day for everyone. Back to you. All right, Sean, thanks so much. And uh, one of the great things about us being here at the Pro is that we're going to have scientists we're going to be talking with all day. We've got Dr. Jeff Rich. Uh, he was the outreach coordinator at Carnegie Science. A lot of members from Carnegie Science are down here today to kind of help teach us about what we're seeing and, and get everyone excited. Um, so first of all, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, first of all, I wanted to ask you, you have actually seen a couple total solar eclipses. Uh, I've, I've talked with some people coming to town and everyone describes it kind of as this visceral experience. How would you describe kind of being able to witness that? Um, it really is. Uh, that's one of the things I'm most excited about is for all of the people who've never seen a solar eclipse before. I'm just jazzed because it's so hard to describe, so hard to put into words. Um, I saw one person just last week trying to tell people what's it going to be like. They said it's like the sky is broken. It's <laughs> it's it's such an unusual but like beautiful and uh, natural wonder, really. Yeah. yeah, obviously it's it's weather dependent, so we are keeping our fingers crossed that at least these low clouds scatter out. What do you think we're going to see if there's high clouds partially obscuring it? If there's high clouds, it depends on the thickness, so it will get dark. The eclipse still happens whether there's clouds there or not. Um, I'm hoping for clouds poking through, especially those high clouds when it's a little lighter, you'll be able to see the sun through them. Someone said um, to me, I, I haven't seen a cloudy eclipse, uh, but that you can actually maybe see the, sun, the moon's shadow moving across the clouds as it approaches, um, which would be really interesting. I've never seen that before. Awesome. And, and there's so much great science that happens during these eclipses. Um, you know, it's important high, it's, you know, scientific discoveries in the history, but there's so much still to learn, and people post it up all over the country. Can you kind of put into perspective of just how important this is as a moment to capture that brief window in time and learn? 
So, um, I mean, I love solar uh, something like a solar eclipse because it kind of brings us all together. It's a shared experience. Scientifically, it's an opportunity for um, astronomers to learn about a part of the sun that's really hard to observe, the corona, the outermost layer, that when the moon completely blocks the sun, you can observe it in a way that is only possible during a solar eclipse. Um, one of the really cool things is there's a lot of citizen science around eclipses, so they're asking people uh, to collect photos all along the eclipse path. Uh, this is a NASA project. Um, you'd, have, you'd have to look it up, but it's really cool. So they're going to see how things change as the eclipse moves along the United States. All right. Dr. Jeff Rich, thanks so much for joining us thanks, and sir. sharing your expertise. The sun has peaked out while you've been talking. It's <laughs> beautiful. So we'll take that as a sign of good, good luck. luck. Charm. <laughs> and uh, we'll set it back to, I believe we're going to be uh, setting it back to uh, Steve and Heather for now. Yeah. Fingers crossed. You know, well, and you can see, I can see it right, right up above us. The clouds are starting to part a little bit. They're certainly moving. Let's just hope new clouds are not moving in to replace them. There is going to be some traffic, though, moving yes. in uh, onto our roads. Chip Wagner joining us. It's not very often you have the morning off on Good Day, Chip. Right. But now the real work begins. What are we looking at? Most certainly. And right now, the good news is, Stephen Heather, to get to your destination, wherever it is that you've decided to, you're going to view this event, it's pretty easy to at least get there. Ennis, for example, down where Peyton is, it's okay on I-45 right now in all directions. Highway 287 coming over from the Waxahachie area. Area. We're just staying over in Waxahachie on I-35E in that part of Ellis County is pretty easy right now. There was an earlier incident along I-20 that I have circled in the westbound direction around Lancaster Road, but the remnants of that activity is over on the right shoulder of the roadway. You can make out that one vehicle there, uh, and that's it. No real big delays. You'll see signs all over the place like this one that happens to be on this ca uh, camera shot. No stopping on the roadway to take a look at the eclipse. That's against the law and I'm that's my biggest concern no doubt about it right now is that somebody stops on the roadway causes a slowdown and then you have an 18 wheeler coming up hauling 80,000 pounds worth of whatever and can't stop in a timely manner so again uh, no stopping on any roadway. Get to where you need to be. You have some time right now to do it. Over in downtown Dallas, trying to move over around the Woodall Rogers Interchange, where uh, Blake and Dan are. It's easy to get into that area right now, but it's going to get worse before it gets uh, better, obviously, in the next hour to an hour and a half. So now's a good time to go do that. I 30, if you're going to be in the Rockwall area, thought maybe around the Lake Ray Hubbard Bridge might be a pretty place to see something. And right now, it's pretty easy to get over into that area, and there's not really any time delays right now going through that construction zones because it's uh, obviously inactive and for drivers up in Collin County haven't seen anything unusual around 75 Central and the George Bush Turnpike. All right, Chip, thank you. So that's one of the things that we were talking about when I came in this morning. Chip's like, I'm so worried about people just stopping because they do it for fireworks or bad weather or the eclipse. Well, and we've seen that actually in other areas where uh, the total eclipse has happened. Where yeah. I, I believe last time there was a 13-hour uh, um, delay. Right. In because think about it. If all lanes of traffic just stop yeah. for five minutes, the chain reaction of the buildup of that, and then you've got to unwind that. a lot that. to get through that. Well, and also, again, we should really point out that there are two big stories today. First of all, of course, our eclipse coverage, but there's also going to be the chance for significant uh, weather after right. this is all over. So if you're going somewhere, make sure it's somewhere that you can either stay or that you can easily get back from right. when it's all done. All good points. Okay, and so we're going to be out here with you until 3 o'clock this afternoon yep. through totality. We're going to go to a break, but we want to look at the Ron Kirk Bridge. This is where Sean Rabb is talking to folks. He has talked to people already from all over the country. That was just some of the coverage from Fox 4. Let's continue with more coverage here on live now from Fox. Overall, we'll have new, we'll have new and diverse vantage points uh, uh, forward. And, and, and then, but you can visit, uh, you can visit, you can be part of any of these three launches. You can watch virtually. Um, a, a, each one of you has a unique opportunity for this. And you can find out how to participate on the NOAA website, or you can come to the launch. We'd love to have you in uh, Florida and, and where we're launching the two NOAA missions and be, be on the lookout for the ESA mission. Beyond these three missions, we are working on our next generation satellite constellation, the Space Weather Observatory. All right, it looks like this event is uh, going to other uh, space adventures that are coming up. So well, let's take a two-minute break. Stay right here with us. More coverage coming up in moments.
back to all our great viewers watching with us right here on live now from Fox as we get you ready for the big total solar eclipse. Do you want to go back out to Fox 4 Dallas coverage here on live now? Shout out to the folks joining us on Fox Local at fox4news.com and of course right here uh, on Fox 4. So I said hi to Peyton's mom earlier. My mom's in Houston. So hi mom. <laughs> is My she mom, watching on Fox yes, Local? Yes, she is. There you go. It's super glad to you know be able to say hi to my mom this morning. Okay, so Peyton Yeager is in Ennis and Peyton there are a lot of reasons for folks to come to Ennis in April. The Blue Bonnet Festival is one of them, but I tell you what between the Blue Bonnet Festival and the Eclipse, great time to be there today. Yeah, April is really a big month for the city of Ennis, but I have been talking to families, you know, for months now, the weeks leading up to today, and I was, you know, I was lucky enough to be in contact with a family from New Zealand. They came all the way here to Ennis just for this total solar eclipse. I also spoke with a couple from England. They came over here. They're staying with family in McKinney, so I want you guys to take a look at this story right here really close. We've been waiting over a year for this. The Sharp family from New Zealand is flying 14 hours to see a once in a lifetime moment that will last a little more than four minutes. Fingers crossing that it's all going to be like perfect. <laughs> The plan began back in 2019. During a layover in Houston, the couple met a man from Ennis at a hotel bar. A few beers later, the families clicked and kept in touch. Ellie and John just stayed in touch for, well, you know, for the next five, five years. years. <laughs> just on and off, send a message and be like, hey, how's it going? What are you up to? The Sharps always longed to see a total solar eclipse, so they booked their trip to Texas. Now the couple, along with their 15-year-old son, Ben, will be staying with the Ennis family in April, where the total eclipse will last nearly four and a half minutes. Ben will miss a week and a half of school for his first time to the U.S. We asked him how his classmates are feeling. Are they jealous or do they like care? Yeah, they're really jealous. <laughs> Everybody wants to go out of New Zealand and go and experience like the world. While the Sharps will witness their first eclipse, this will be the third for Jill and Stephen G of England. Most recently, they traveled to Idaho back in 2017 for the total solar eclipse. On April 8th, the G's plan is to stay with family in McKinney. The feeling is, it's like magical. You can't understand it if you've not experienced it. Um, and it was just so powerful, the, the way that the whole world goes kind of quiet and still. But it wasn't as long totality as you're going to have this time. It wasn't as long, so... This will be an even better one. We hope if the weather's okay. We wanted to know if there's anything they will do differently this time around. I think I spent too long looking through the camera and taking pictures. And I just want, you know, having, having got pictures from the last time, I just want to experience the, that, that aura of stillness, of, of, the, of, of the whole, of, of the temperature dropping. You know, it, and that that was that was yeah. Yeah, because it just go cold. It, it was it a just whole, go cold. Just, to, to the atmosphere connected with with this very infrequent event. So I am joined by the Sharp family all the way here from New Zealand. They, we just showed, they just showed the story that we did and now you're here and I saw them down below from the balcony. I was like, wave and then come up here. So how has your time in Texas been? Amazing, absolutely friendly people. Everyone's super welcoming and it's just, it's been absolutely incredible. Um, so right before we went on, she was like, it's so hot here. <laughs> this is nothing. <laughs> this is breezy. <laughs> what has been the coolest thing you've seen so far? In Ennis, Dallas, wherever? I saw you went to Bucky's. Uh, we did go to Bucky's. So we don't have that in New Zealand. We don't have a lot of things that you guys have here. So it's quite cool to see all the different things. All right. So that is just some of the coverage from a Fox 4 in Dallas. Let's keep things moving right now on live now. Let's go out see some of the coverage Fox 29 in Philadelphia. They're actually in New York right now. So let's uh, give a little a look to their coverage here. As always, you're watching live now from Fox.
have coming up there later, yeah. um, they have a famous lilac festival that goes on for 10 days. We used to cover oh. that when I worked up there for like almost... Maybe I'll stay. <laughs> it's in May. <laughs> It'd be uh, lovely. I can send you back. It's still awesome. Did I It'll tell be you um, <laughs> that those glasses are not just for show? You can walk under there I during they the might. eclipse and be safe. I thought that they were the real deal. I thought that that might be the case. Yeah. That's really cool. We'll get a picture with that. That's your Instagrammable moment right there um, with Absolutely. the big glasses. Absolutely. All right, Mike, you've been well, doing a great job. in. All right, it is filling no, in. thank you. All right, what are we going to go to um, at 11.40? I think uh, we're having a lot of fun streaming. Um, let's check in with Hank Flynn. Hi, Hank. And you're at Hi. our world-famous Franklin Institute. You couldn't pick a better place to be, honestly, in the weather, Karen. Honestly, it just gets better and better. We're on 95, 96th percentile for weather out here today. Whatever eclipse there is to see, we're going to get every ounce of it here in Philadelphia. And how are we going to know? We're going to be with a man that everybody wants to talk to, Derek Pitts, the chief astronomer here at Franklin Institute and the Fields Planetarium. Welcome, and thank you so much. He and I have been talking for 10 minutes about this. What do we hope to learn from this eclipse that we've never learned before, and how will we get there with it? Our tech is so much better now. Visually, we're going to see this in a way we've never seen it. Well, between the visual information that we'll pick up and the other scientific data we'll pick up, we'll learn a little bit more about how our atmosphere reacts to a situation where there's less sunlight coming in, in this case, during an eclipse. The other thing we'll uh, be able to learn more about is how the sun's atmosphere, the corona, behaves at different points in the sun's 11-year cycle of activity. Now, the corona, it's not just for our own scientific interest. The corona of the sun, we talk about things like sun flares and sun spots. These have direct impacts on the weather that we feel here on planet Earth. Well, we, we, know, know. we know that the sun is a direct influence on the Earth's weather. To what degree we can pick out whether it's flares or prominences or sunspots, and even the activity in the corona, we still have more parts of the puzzle to try to figure out, and satellites like the ones that are being launched today are going to help us understand that. It's amazing, and guys, 2024 being what it is, Derek tells me that millions of pictures are going to be taken from this, most of them databased in different ways and different things happening with those. From that, we will learn. But also, I, the curiosity with me, we're going to get pictures from space of Earth during the eclipse. What will Earth look like from space? This is a really interesting view when you look at an eclipse from space. What it's going to look like is it's going to look like a brown dot on the surface of the planet. But really, I should say a brown circle, because it's not going to look like a little dot. It's going to be look like a large, diffuse circle covering the area where the eclipse is passing. It won't look like a band. It'll just be the circle no. where the shadow is for that moon. Right. That's right. That's right. So don't expect it to look like a black dot moving along a narrow strip. It'll look like a wide circle. And you'll see these pictures probably tomorrow, immediately. Guys, it's this expertise that makes him the busiest man in Philadelphia today. I'm going to hog him while I can. T tell us from your expert standpoint, we've got three NASA rockets, not just one, but three of them. And I've seen them. They're smaller, faster. They're missiles, really, uh, filled with sensors uh, and, and, and instruments on them. What do we hope to learn from them? I think we did this the last time they went up. But again, the tech has changed so much. Well, the thing is that the more data Data we can collect about how the atmosphere behaves under changing conditions, the better we can understand our own environment and our own atmosphere. And this is really important for us today to be able to understand our atmosphere because there's so many different things that are affecting the atmosphere. Our understanding of it will allow us to better take care of the atmosphere. So all of the rocketry stuff that's happening to get sensors into the atmosphere, even to study the corona, all help us to better understand our atmosphere. Guys, we're always smarter for conversation with Derek Pence. Last quick question to yeah. you. The child inside of you must be flipping out, man. Today's game day. What a great day. You must be really jacked hey, up. Hey, look, this is an <laughs> awesome experience. Sure. No matter how you look at it, no matter whether it's 90% or 100% or 50%, it's an awesome science experience that's happening like the mechanics of our universe. We can see it right here in front of us. So everybody ought to take part in this. It's awesome. And we're all going to participate in it today, whether we like it or not. Philly's going to be part of this whole eclipse experiment today. We'll see how it goes. Thanks, Derek. Thanks, Hank. Wait, hey, it. don't let him go. I have a question. So I've seen okay, conflicting go, information. Can we take, we all want to take pictures on our smartphones. Is there a way to do that right. safely? What's your advice for smartphone photography here? What's a safe way to do it? filter over the lenses. 
you have to have a filter over the lenses. You can't take a photograph like a selfie with the camera pointed at the sun and you're back to the sun. you got to have a filter over your camera lenses. Can you get a pair of Eclipse glasses and hold them over your iPhone? You certainly can do that. Yep. There you go, Kerr. I, I knew he'd have a solution. He always has, like, the, the easy solution. Exactly. Thank you, guys. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Also, if you have questions for us, you can use our hashtag. Um, we'll go with ha uh, Fox29. Good day. After show. Yeah. G good day. So we'll look for those because we'd love to answer your questions because I know you have a lot. We certainly have a lot. And we have so much more in store. We're going to go around the country and take a look as people get ready for this eclipse. We'll be right back. All right. So Fox 29 is definitely gearing up and uh, we will have the coverage again with more uh, from uh, Dallas as well as Philadelphia coming up here in moments. Stay right here with us. A great shot of Niagara Falls right now as people continue to line up to take their spots. We are just getting started for you. Total solar eclipse 2024. Stay right here with us. More to come in moments. Welcome back, everyone, to Live Now from Fox. I'm your host, Mike Pace, gearing you up for the total solar eclipse. Millions and millions of people from across the country, they have traveled their way to the areas of totality. And coming up in just a little bit, uh, we'll continue to feature some of those cities as well. But uh, again, we want to continue to showcase uh, the many, many people that have geared up for this event and continuing uh, to come out really in droves. So what we are going to do is uh, talk a little bit uh, about the weather situation coming up in in just a little bit as well. We'll be getting updates from our teams across the country as well to see uh, just, you know, some areas are just going to be so cloudy that pesky weather on this eclipse day. We'll be keeping an eye on all of that for you as well. But let's go back out to our friends over uh, Fox 29 Philadelphia. They are doing some coverage and they have Robert Ray in Indiana right now with Fox Weather gearing up for today. Way to experience uh, this total solar eclipse that will happen at 3.06 p.m. this afternoon, and we're, we're lucky. Uh, these skies, as you see, and all the people are just gorgeous. Temps about, uh, we have almost 70 degrees by the time this eclipse occurs uh, in the path of totality. And you know what? If you want to tune in to some pretty cool, immersive coverage, let me tell you why you should into Fox Weather. Uh, we 
have got this camera, okay? Uh, Lloyd Alford is behind uh, the camera shooting me. During the eclipse, I'm going to have my eye trained up into uh, the eclipse as the moon passes between the Earth and the sun, and that's what creates that uh, total eclipse, the totality. We've got a solar filter on here, and I mean to tell you, uh, the shot is as tight as it's going to get. It'll take up your entire screen, and you'll be able to experience it as I'm sort of giving you a play-by-play -play like a sports announcer would uh, of the actual eclipse, and you'll have many people looking up into the sky. Hopefully, they'll have protective glasses like this on, and they can look up so they don't damage their eyes, and they can see uh, this celestial event. Darkness will fall. Uh, the birds may kind of quiet down, and there will be just a sense of peace. Uh, if it's anything like 2017, uh, the previous total solar eclipse, uh, that will be the aura and the feeling here. Amazing when you think about it. 15 states that will be in the totality, over 30 million people. Uh, we'll see this about 115 miles wide is the totality. And the great news is all lower 48 states will experience some of this phenomenon. The total solar eclipse. Won't see it again in the U.S. for another 20 years. Look up and be safe. What a day. Good way. Good way to start off the week for a Monday, right? All right I have questions. So, <laughs> Robert, where are you from? I'm originally from Chi-Town, uh, grew up in uh, Connecticut as well, but live down in Atlanta. There you go, all over. And so have you seen the eclipse back in 2017, last time around? I did. I was in Hopkinsville, Kentucky uh, for that, for that total solar eclipse, and then covered the annular eclipse in San Antonio uh, this past October. So, yeah, I think in total this is my fifth eclipse uh, as a uh, professional uh, TV crazy man. Can you rate them? How about that? Let me have you rate them. Which ones were the best and why? I, I think Hopkinsville was was pretty amazing. I wasn't expecting at that point the darkness uh, that, that, that fell upon where I was in the totality. And I was shocked at how still everything became. And the sky almost like a grayish bluish uh, tint, was not expecting that kind of feel. And, and I got to tell you this, too. Uh, people get very, very emotional during this. I, I wasn't one of those people. I was just in awe of, you know, our atmosphere and the moon and the sun. Uh, but there are people that this becomes uh, kind of a zen moment for them. And I think that's why we're seeing, you know, so many people here at the Indianapolis Speedway. Uh, really amazing that there are spots all over the country like this uh, that people will be able to see. I mean, you guys are going to get a great glimpse of this as well. In Philly. Heck yeah, we will. We're looking forward to it. Robert, thanks a lot, and thanks for answering my questions. I'm a very, you know, curious person. So thank you, <laughs> and we'll probably check back with you um, of course, uh, over the course of this day. Let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back. All right, some of the coverage there from Fox 29, always doing such a great job as well. Let's go out right now to Fox 4 Dallas as they continue to give uh, the updates and preview of today's big event as well. From Alaska to Hawaii to see one of these. Let's go ahead and roll his interview. He's got a fantastic perspective on these. Obviously, um, weather is hugely critical uh, for us to see this. Talk a little bit about, um, you know, how a clear sky might compare maybe to a partly cloudy sky um, in, in terms of how that would impact the eclipse itself for, for watchers. So. I, I will tell you that unless it's solidly overcast, like we had in Antarctica, if you have a light cloud cover, if you have like a cirriform cloud cover or even a mid-deck cloud cover, you're still going to see something special. In fact, the clouds will act as a screen. You will actually be able to see the front and the back edge of the, of the shadow of the moon moving in, over, and past you. Uh, during the uh, during the total phase of the eclipse. In 2016, you actually boarded a flight from Alaska to Hawaii to uh, intercept the uh, total solar eclipse in that year. Talk about that adventure, because that's quite a story. Well, a lot of my eclipse chasing buddies were kind of uh, upset about the fact that, and these are people who go to every eclipse. They said, oh my God, we have to go to Indonesia. The path oh. of totality was passing over New Guinea and uh, Sumatra. And then I looked at the eclipse track and I, I noted that the end of the track was passing between Alaska and Hawaii. And so I uh, went online. I found a flight, Flight 870, Alaska Airlines Flight 870, contacted the hierarchy there and said, you know, if you delay that flight by about 25 minutes, 
on the way down from Anchorage to Hawaii, <laughs> there's a chance that we could intercept the shadow of the moon and you could give your passengers and crew a chance to see a total solar eclipse. Bottom line was, they liked the idea, they did it. And it was, it was, it was an amazing spectacle for all of us to get a chance to see a solar eclipse. Is there a favorite? I mean, is, is there, of all the eclipses that you've seen, is there one that just, for whatever reason, stands out above all the rest? The very first time I ever experienced totality, as a 16-year-old, my grandfather, who had seen the 1925 eclipse in New York when he was 16, promised me that he would take me to see a total eclipse. And he uh, took my grandmother, my mom, my sister on a leisurely 900-mile drive up to the Gaspé Peninsula in, uh, in Quebec, where we experienced a total solar eclipse. That was my first. That was in 1972. And right after that, I became hooked. It, it sounds awe-inspiring. Uh, we are looking forward to it for sure here. Uh, Joe, I really appreciate your time. Good luck to all. I'm, I've got my fingers <laughs> crossed down in Texas. If I don't make it down there, I still hope that all of you get a chance to see it because this is an event, as I said, you will remember and take to your grave. You will remember this for the rest of your life. It is an amazing, amazing sight. That is what we are looking sight. forward to, no doubt about it, of course, right here on Live Now from Fox. Let's continue our coverage. Now going out, back out to Philadelphia for some of their pre-coverage as well. Society, that's the American Astronomical Society, and they went and they raided glasses from different folks that made them that be the most safe. There's a certain code on some of these glasses that we have online at Fox 29, but I would also double check to see if it's on that list, just to make sure you got the most safe glasses. And Karen, you were talking about juggling it. I don't know if I can juggle some of these eclipse glasses. Let's see here. No, I don't think it works up here with me. I think I need to learn that skill a little bit more. But here's what you can do if you don't have any of those Eclipse glasses. You can still view the Eclipse safely with some things you might have around the house. First of all, if you got a plate just like this, we did this earlier on Good Day Philadelphia. We have the instructions at fox29.com. You get another paper plate, and what you do is with the pen, you poke a little hole through it. So here, I'll do it live with you guys. Here's a pen, here's a plate, and what you want to do is you want to have a tiny little hole, just like that, boom. And what's going to happen is the sun will come through that. You're not looking up at the sun through it. No, no, no. The sun's at your back. You let that little hole shine a tiny bit of light. See that very tiny circle? And that will show you what the sun will look like during the eclipse. Right now it's a circle because our sun's a circle. But during the eclipse, we'll see the sun get blocked out. And you'll see a crescent a little bit of light shining onto the plate. And there's some other things you might have in your pantry that you can use. I love this. So here's what I got. I got a box of knockoff Cheez-Its, because they were cheaper. And I got in a box of some knockoff Cheerios as well, and they both work. I think this is so cool. First, let's get the Cheez-It, because if you haven't had Cheez-Its in a while, they have a little hole right there in the center. It'll do the same thing. This little hole will project a little spot, and I could even make maybe some animals with my hand right there. We're gonna be talking about animals in just a second, how they react to the eclipse. And look at that little hole through the Cheez-It. It's another way that you can see the eclipse safely, because look, we're never looking at the sun. You know, your sunglasses won't work. Welder's glass, I was testing it out. Doesn't seem to be dark enough. How about a Cheerio, just since we got them right there? Who doesn't have a Cheerio in the pantry? It does the same little effect, just like that. Oh, first there's the okay side. It's tough for me to get the Cheerio and the light at the right angle. There it is. I just think that is the coolest thing. And you know, it's not just the pantry items that you have as well. Maybe you do some smoking, talking some barbecue. We found this in our backyard because we love doing some grilling on Good Day Philadelphia. And this right here will do the same thing. This can project some circles of what the sun looks like. So cool to see that. So while we can look at it, how do animals react? Even though the eclipse puts a smile on our face, not all animals act the same. When I saw the total solar eclipse back in Tennessee, all of a sudden, the birds stopped chirping when it got as dark as dusk. So let's see what else animals did during the 2017 eclipse. When the eclipse happens, we'll be looking up. But how will animals react? Back in 2017, when we had the last total solar eclipse, scientists studied how zoo animals reacted in South Carolina when the skies went dark. They say Galapagos tortoises started breeding during the peak. 
giraffes started to gallop, and other animals displayed behaviors connected with dusk. Some of the animals behaved as if evening had come, so they went into their nighttime routine. Some of the animals made strange calls, the siamangs. They made a type of vocalization that we had never heard before. I was in Tennessee for the full eclipse, and the birds stopped singing when it got dark. Back in South Carolina, the flamingos at the zoo did something interesting. The flamingos all gathered around their chicks during the eclipse, like they were trying to protect the chicks. And it'd be really interesting to see if other flamingos do that or if other flocking birds do the same type of behavior. This time, researchers are going to study how the eclipse impacts animals in Texas. They want to see if the behaviors they witnessed before in South Carolina point toward larger patterns. This time around, we're going to look at some of the same types of animals. Texas is the first place in the United States that the eclipse will be passing through. There are other really exciting places that these types of observations could be done. And to that point, what about your pets? Are you taking your dog out to chill with you? How will your dogs react? Essentially everything we know about animal behavior during the eclipse could reasonably be regarded as anecdotal because there's so little information about it. Well, this gives us another opportunity to see how your pets react and how all the animals react. And we want to know. Let us know. Send it to us on our socials. I'll be safely clips with your cell phone and what your animals do either your pets or around you so share it with us and we'll share in our five o'clock news that is the latest from the gorgeous rooftop with these perfectly blue skies karen we'll send it back over to you true thank you all right let's head up to cloudy rochester to mike jerick so mike did you hear that the animals their behavior that they do that the what the galapagos turtles do during the eclipse what do they do get, get it on oh they get it on now, see, I think it might be interesting to do that in that three and a half minutes. You know what I mean? I, I think so. Obviously, you know what I mean. that's what the turn, that's, you know, it's, that's, they yeah. get frisky. It's a good thing. I, you have to have a little view outside. I, and I believe there's plenty of people in America or around the world, they're going to do just that, time it just right that three and a half minutes. We had to move away from the band. There's a, a very good band, but they are loud. But I just, we can give you some of the atmosphere around here. I mean, people are starting to get more excited. Did, uh, did Drew say reporting live from the crystal clear skies of Philadelphia <laughs> on the roof? I didn't want to rub it in, but that was exactly how he oh, threw God. it. <laughs> and it's very clear in Indianapolis. No, you've never heard of Channel 29? We're out of Philadelphia. We came all the way from Philadelphia to Rochester. Well, I came all the way from California. Oh, you beat us then. You get the prize. What what city? My name is uh, Simi Valley, California. I know where that's uh, part of, uh, outside of Los Angeles. Yes. Calabasas. Yes. It, Thousand Oaks. You, come and visit me when you're, okay. were you from there? No, I lived in uh, L.A. for a while, oh, okay. about 10 years. Well, my story is that I came up here to be a, a school counselor, and uh, after I retired, I volunteered. No husband, no dogs, no cats, no kids. My passion was travel. I've been to over 75 countries. But I then moved to California because I did not want to be found dead in bed. And so out there, I continued a meeting here with these uh uh, with this committee, and so I said I have to come back. So I flew back here, and I've been doing everything. I just finished my volunteer shift, and you know what? Even if it's cloudy, whatever it is, it's going to be great because I think positive and say it's great. Just seeing all these people meeting. Can you believe meeting people coming from Philadelphia to record this? Fantastic. And I think you all should have a good time, and I love it. Thank God. And when you know what the Californians say, how could you handle that snow? You know what I say? What do you say? I say, that is love sent from the angels. Yes, And love. they say, okay, we'll accept it. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. Stay well. God bless you. You know, we have so much in common. We both have such a positive attitude about everything. It's good to meet listen. somebody like myself. I could listen to her Should I all tell day. them my age? No, 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 you say whatever you want. I'm going to be 84 on September 8th. Wish September me a 8th. happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> so... You came here for the eclipse, though? Yes. 3,000 miles. 2,500. Yeah. Why? Because the eclipse is memorable. It's important. And not only that, but I knew, I knew coming to the eclipse, I would be able to run into a lot of people who I had known. And you know what? They're all doing well and Good. healthy. 
good. Well, I'm glad I met you. Yes, you are? Yeah, yeah I am, actually. Your name? Mike. Mike, I'm Josephine. Josephine, let's hug. Mike, ask Josephine you, after, after those, I can't believe, 84 years old. I what feel a, better about things now. I feel better because she, like you said, the sun is, we can kind of see the sun. Yeah. It's just a little cloudy. Yeah. And you know what? It, what, what does it matter? It's just it the idea matter. that you're here with the experience. That's right. And I would never think of staying home watching this by myself. No. I want to be out here with all these people. Exactly. Well, and I happening. have met connections. I made connections with people from Simi Valley that are actually living there. Yeah. And I have, do you know that, there, that uh, Cornell sent up eight buses? I just saw that. And a bunch of buses came up from Princeton, from our area, too. Right. I just haven't been able to find them. Well, good talking to okay, you. Okay, stay well. Is you this should... all? Uh, yeah, we're done. All right, get it on. Uh, Let me tell you about New Jersey. Uh, hold on. <laughs> okay, Mike, she's going to tell you some the real scoop now. Watch it. She might have some choice words right there. Or feisty, saucy language. That's, Sue, how about... Uh, that was, I think that's when I was going to be uh, getting into the good part there of the interview. Uh, you are watching live now from Fox, everyone. We appreciate you continuing to join us here as uh, we are just taking you market to market here as showcasing the latest and previews of the total, total solar eclipse. More people continuing to uh, come out from all over the country and really around the world. Uh, we want to continue to always uh, continue to bring you the latest on live now from Fox Worldwide. We'll be back in just two minutes. I was going to take you to Fox 5 New York. but It appears that shot is off right now, so we will wait and see for more coming up on Live Now. A live look right now in Indianapolis as people are gearing up uh, for today's a big solar eclipse. It is Eclipse Day and welcome everyone to Live Now from Fox as we continue to showcase it all to you, bringing you, uh, the, uh, again, the top stories of the day. And really, this is the top story and uh, we're just going to stick with it. Uh, we have more coverage again uh, starting in less than an hour from now. Uh, we will be bringing it to you thanks to our friends over at Nissan. Oh, I got to take down everything when I hit this one. All right. Total Solar Eclipse 2024 coverage. Again, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern, presented by our friends over at Nissan. Another live look. Now, let me bring back everything. Another live look right here of Niagara Falls as more people continuing uh, to come out, get their spot. They will be uh, in the path there 
of totality as well. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. Let's go out now and see some of our friends over Fox for Dallas as uh, they are showcasing and we're hoping that uh, clouds stay away. Stay away clouds. Let's listen right now on Live Now. Northwest and areas like Lantana, Possum Kingdom Lake, and a little different as you head to Plano, as well as Cedar Creek Reservoir. That strong south wind is pumping in the moisture. You can feel it outside. Something's about to take place. Well, our first round, as Dan mentioned, will begin around 5 p.m. in our far southeastern zones. Those strong to severe storms are going to lift northward, capable of very large hail, damaging winds, and even a low tornado risk. That activity gets closer to the metroplex through the evening but we have a second round expected after 10 p.m. and continuing to your overnight that will mainly be a large hail and wind threat bottom line we all have a risk for strong to severe storms today but about 60 percent coverage so not everyone receiving these storms with hail being the greatest threat and it's going to get large now we needed at least quarter size for a severe thunderstorm warning but i'll tell you a few of these could produce tennis ball sized hail as well as winds anywhere from 60 to 70 miles an hour. Now, compared to previous tornado threats, this one is just a little bit higher than what we've seen recently. So all eyes will be on the radar as we go through your evening. Okay. All right, Allie, thanks so much. Uh, so much excitement pouring in here at the Pro as the crowd continues to grow here. Uh, we Hopefully we'll be able to show you a little bit later the some matching Eclipse wow, look at that. dresses. And, <laughs> hey, look, here's Clyde Warren Park from Sky 4. As you see, the, uh, the crowd continue awesome. to grow there. Uh, it is going to be much more packed as we get closer to the hour of totality. Uh, we've been mentioning that we've got some scientists that we're going to have a chance to speak to throughout our coverage, learn a little bit about not just what we're going to see, but what scientists can learn um, through all of this. And we're going to be speaking with one of them in just a moment. For now, though, you're watching Fox 4's coverage of the total solar eclipse. Welcome to Fox 4 as always, and uh, we'll check back in with them in just a little bit as well. Let's go back out now to Philadelphia. You're watching live now from Fox, everyone. Eclipse. Sometimes it can be influenced by the clouds. It can be influenced if you're visually impaired. There's a lot of reasons why you can't see things, but there's this really cool machine and a group of folks who have this set up so that you can actually experience the eclipse if it's cloudy, if you're visually impaired, all of these things. I'm gonna get out of the way. They're gonna demonstrate it for us. Uh, first, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Kathy Person. I'm the head, head of education programs at the American Philosophical Society. Um, and we are demonstrating the light sound device. Uh, we actually borrowed it from our colleagues at the Science History Institute. They were very generous in loaning it to us. Um, this device was actually created by a collaboration at Harvard. So if you're interested in learning more of the Light Sound Project, you want to check out their website. Very Let cool. Me... We're going to demonstrate it, but first, we didn't introduce you. Oh, that's you fine. Are. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Adriana Link. I'm the Assistant Director of Library and Museum Programming at the American Philosophical Society. So there's a whole plan for all of this. A whole plan for the day. Okay, so this machine, explain to us what it actually does. So this machine uh, reads light levels and translates them into sound. So I'm gonna show you um, or demonstrate the different sounds that happen as the, the bright light disappears, gets dim, just like what would happen in the eclipse. Um, and so we're gonna have this outside later today to absorb the light levels of the eclipse and be able to sonify the experience for everyone. So it's the, the eclipse in sound and visual on the screen. Exactly, exactly. All right, this is cool. So let's see. So explain to us as you're doing it. So I'm going to turn, the, I'm going to turn this on. Okay. All right, and we can hear the humming. And I'm, going right. to, and I'm going to turn on the software. So we've got the visual component here. Now I'm going to make it super sunny and bright. So that and was... so that was the light getting darker. And actually now you can hear a little clicking. It's very faint.
So the clicking is what? The clicking is when the eclipse will be at its darkest. So then the town, let's try it. Can we do it one more time? So the, the bright light is when it's sunny. So this right now, let's leave it there for a second. Let's get the bright light. So, so this is at its brightest. This is when it's sunny outside. So you can hear that. And then as it starts to get darker, And then eclipse. That's cool. And that will all be set up here. We're going to get on the conversation also. So that will all be set up here so that people can experience. Yeah, so we're right across the street, right from Independence Mall at the American Philosophical Society. So we'll have the garden will be open, the Jefferson Garden. We'll have uh, the light sound device will be ready so you can experience it in person. We'll also have activities. We'll have some black and white cookies to kind of mirror the, uh, the shadow effect. And, uh, you know, we hope that folks uh, will, will come by and check us out and see some of the other activities we've got going on throughout the week. So one of the cool things going on, just right up the street, you can come here, you can get your glasses, you can draw, you can experience it here, and then just walk right up the street That's right. and experience more as well. What has the response been to people who have kind of, like this is a cool way for people who may not be able to see everything to experience? Um, well, uh, we're getting some positive feedback about our event. People are excited to, to come over. Um, had a few inquiries about it, so... Yeah, please come and join us and come experience it yourself in person. Very cool. I appreciate you both doing this. So this is a way, Karen, if it's cloudy, no problem. If you are visually impaired, this would be a good way to experience it. They've got you covered. A lot of cool stuff going on throughout this process. This is another one of them. I have three questions. We go to a lot of okay. places and museums here on Fox 29 and Good Day. What do they do at the Philosophical Society? This is a question for them. Do they like ponder the meaning of life or what happens there? <laughs> Garrett is asking specifically, what do you do at the Philosophical Society? Like pondering the meaning of life, what goes on there? <laughs> uh, so we were founded in 1743 by Benjamin Franklin and the term philosophical at that point actually refers to science. So we do science. In fact, we've been uh, observing astronomical phenomenon since our founding. Um, uh, David Rittenhouse, one of our early members, actually uh, observed the transit of Venus in 1769 and recorded it all and published it in our publication. So, That's so they've been doing this for a minute, Karen. Yeah. Okay. No, no worries. So we're the oldest learned society in the United States, founded by Benjamin Franklin in 1743. So in addition to a lot of great programming, including today's, uh, we do have uh, grants and fellowships. We have conferences. We have a publications division. We have a museum that's opening this Friday. So um, please come and, and check out all the things that we're doing at the APS. It's right in the middle of Philadelphia. Yeah. Thank All you. right. Perfect. Other questions? Now I have to. I'll have to come back to those because I have to get to Connor, who's up in Buffalo, and I'm dying to see <laughs> if it's sunnier in Buffalo than it is in Rochester. Bill, thank you, Connor. Um, mm -hmm. Good afternoon. Now at 12:17. So we have a reporter in Rochester, and he's complaining it's a little cloudy. Set the scene for us there. Where are you? What's it like? Hi, Karen. We're right in the heart of Buffalo right now, and people are on their toes with the weather here. We saw the sun poke out just a little bit. We even had a few raindrops at one point. It's a little bit cloudy right now, but we've still got a couple more hours to go before that eclipse starts, so people have their fingers crossed here that things will clear up a little bit. It'll still be an interesting day no matter what. When that sun becomes fully blocked by the moon, you'll still be able to tell when it happens. It'll go dark. It'll still be a very interesting experience. Uh, we've heard when that happens you can even hear the birds go quiet thinking it's nighttime uh, a variety of different reactions from the people watching too so we're in a beautiful park right here where people are setting up already they have been since the morning trying to get a front row seat hoping they'll have a clear view of this you know and that's the case uh, like you mentioned in Rochester and in areas all across the country in this path of totality that have brought millions of people out including in the state of New York they're expecting upwards of a million people they've been warning people about the traffic issues, telling people to top off their gas tanks, have extra cash. They say cell service could be strained. So it'll be really interesting to see um, how even some of the larger cities in that belt are able to handle all of these crowds. But so far, things have been pretty calm here. So how far are you away from the stadium? 
the Bills stadium? Uh, we're, st <laughs> we're still a little ways uh, from there. That's outside the uh, downtown area a little bit. So um, they might have a little bit of a different view, but I do think it is a little bit cloudy all over the city. We know Niagara Falls is also a very popular spot for this. Uh, the Canadian side of Niagara Falls, that area actually declared a state of emergency so they could get resources faster. You know, a lot of these officials and agencies are treating this almost as if there's a major uh, weather event coming. They want to be ready just in case because they're really not sure what to expect. Um, you know, if these total solar eclipses only hit the same spots every so often. Uh, the last time we had one in the United States was 2017 and the next one for most of the country, not till 2044. So I think that's the reason you're seeing this become such a big deal this year is we're most for the most part, we're not going to see one in the U.S. for another 20 years. And kind of the state of emergency because so many people are coming. Is that the issue? It's not because we're, we, we know that like life is going to go on. Yes. Right? Yeah. Just so yes, people. that's okay. exactly right. Yeah. Kind they're worried about traffic congestion and, and all sorts of things. Connor, thank you. We appreciate it. And hopefully we'll get a glimpse there. Let's bop down um, a little bit. Was it 80 up there? Is that the big road that you go on? Whatever. Is the New York Thruway up that neck of the woods to Mike Whatever Jarek? Whatever road it is. Whatever road. Yes. I, it's, you're gonna, I, I think you're going to get about the same report you got from him because there's, you know, how close Buffalo is to 100%. Rochester. Hour. But, but at least I mean, there is light up there. You do see the sun. You know what I mean? I it, think it's, it's going to be fine. It's not raining or anything. Yeah, it's going to be fine. I think fine. it's going to be fine, too. And it's going to get dark. Uh, these folks came all the way from uh, Maryland. What's your name? I'm Anna. And who are the girls? Uh, I'm this, boy. Oh, you're a boy. This is Enzo and Alice. Uh, Alice? Yes. Alice? Can I have a... Um, my uh, grandson, Jack, has long hair like this. He wants to be a YouTuber. Does he want to be a YouTuber? Uh, I don't know. What do you want to be when you grow up? Um, a geologist. A geologist? Well, how perfect. Yeah. So you came a long way from Maryland. Yep. Why? Uh, because uh, I knew this was happening right after my birthday, and I thought this was uh, our Happy trip. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I looked into it seven years ago, and I saw it was happening, and I made a promise that we would try to oh, do she. it. She is five. Okay. He is seven, so he was a baby. Seven, the last a baby. One. Oh, and you got somebody else? <laughs> oh, there's somebody else back here. Yeah. Who's that? This is, Noah. This is Noah. He needs to take a nap. How old is Noah? Noah. One and a half. One and a half. Okay, Noah, I want to crawl in there with you. I need to take a nap, too. <laughs> have fun. Thank you. Awesome. Do you think they'll remember? Yeah, they will. They will, yeah. yeah. That's why you're here. Hi, what did you have to say? Uh, why, why are you here? To watch the eclipse. Why is it important for, for you? Because it, it's been like 99 years since there's been one eclipse. Yeah. And this is a total solar eclipse. And in 2017, there was a partial. Right. So this is the first time I'm ever seeing a total solar. So this solar. is the total one, yeah. yeah. The total solar. Um, well, you can kind of see it. Oh, you, yeah. we, we, can see, we can see enough of the sun, Mom, that uh, I think we'll be all right. And we have a little less than two hours. Yeah. Enjoy. Thank you. Where are you Bye. from? Uh, all right, that was the coverage from Fox 29 in Philadelphia. We'll continue to check in with them as we are just, you know, hours uh, away, getting very close to that moment of totality uh, for so many. And we talk about just the amount of people that are going to be watching this all happening in real time. About 32 million people, and they have traveled for all over the country and really some around the world to see this moment. So let's head out to the Show Me State. Go out to uh, Cape Girardo, and that is where we find our next hit right here on Live Now from Fox's Fox News' Liviana Calmes. Thank you for joining us on Live Now, and tell me, are the people ready for this? Mike, they really are. You said this is the show me state. I mean, people are showing up for this. People from, I've met people from Colorado, Florida, Georgia. I mean, seriously, every time I speak with someone, it seems like they're from another corner of the country. And I want to say the t-shirts I'm seeing today are very funny as well. There's a lot of fun uh, shirts, fun different, different things here as people begin to prep for the totality. Here in Cape Girardeau, we get four minutes of it, just about four minutes. That's happening at 158 local time, 258 Eastern Town, and these crowds you can see behind me are filling in. There's a block party coming up here. Um, they say they chose 
Cape Girardeau specifically, again, because of those four minutes of complete darkness, one guy I spoke with said he just finished driving 14 hours overnight, and he said it was a last-minute decision. I was going to do it, and then last minute I said, you know what, it's a 14-hour drive, I'm going to come out and see this. I saw the 2017 eclipse, and it was outstanding. I've been following the weather nonstop, and I could tell that this was probably the best spot for the weather. So now the parking lots are pretty much filled here. People have got their lawn chairs ready to go. They're staking out their spots and they're hoping for clear weather. Right now the weather is awesome here in Cape Girardeau. Back to you. Yeah, that looks like the best spot. I know uh, Missouri and Illinois look like they are going to have perfect weather. We've been looking at other parts in the country. New York, Philadelphia, a little bit cloudy as well as Texas. But you guys, you guys have the right idea of being there in Missouri and Illinois, no doubt about it there so uh, we appreciate uh, the input as always and uh, happy looking up to the sky coming up in just a little bit oliviana yeah i'm excited thanks you take care and we will continue our coverage here in moments stay right here with us always more to come live look at niagara falls as well as people claiming their spots ahead of the total solar eclipse <laughs> We're gearing up here for you on live now from Fox moments away from the total solar eclipse coverage that you will be seeing right here on live now from Fox. We appreciate all our viewers continuing to watch with us all in real time. We want to go out now to our friends over at Fox 29 Philadelphia. They continue their coverage, getting us ready for the total solar eclipse. I guess, right? Yes, Is that yes, what it was? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, good to meet you. What's your name? Jeffrey Rogers. Awesome. Yeah, you live here in, in Rochester, Rochester, New York. Enjoy the eclipse. Yes, sir. Get that sun to come out. Come on. Your goals have been realized, Mike. You've been trying to become TikTok famous. Did you also see at I WrestleMania know. one of the people, what's his name? Smoke something. Uh, he was a famous YouTuber. He came out. He helped. Um, Logan Paul come out of the ring anyway. So every all the streamers, my kids are like, oh my God, he gets ten million dollars yeah. a month. So I'm you're TikTok halfway famous. on your way. Really? Yeah, yeah. Where are you from? We we came from Ithaca. Oh, that's not far. No. Yeah, Ithaca as well. Yeah. yeah. Cornell. Cornell yeah. yeah. Also Cornellian over here. Nicely done. Intelligent people. <laughs> Very smart people. Thanks yep. Guys. Are you upset? Yeah. yeah, a little bit. You know, I saw the one in 2017, so this isn't I so bad, it. but you know, 
we're maybe out yeah we're holding out hope we're holding out hope here in rochester come on son we're under two hours to go now, Mike, so we're beginning to get yeah. into that window. We've got our countdown clock on, so we're Good under night. two hours. Yes. Hello. I was like, wait, I recognize this guy. Are you from Philly? Well, from the Limerick area, so close enough. Oh, yeah, Limerick. That's where all that white stuff comes out. Limerick. <laughs> yep. Cool why, does say, uh, uh, why does it say anus on your shirt? Well, because my, oh, lovely, it's your anus. my it's your... lovely three-year-old daughter has, for the last couple months, has been giving us planet names, and my husband is Jupiter wearing a Jupiter shirt, and she's Mars, and she chose Uranus for me, and my dad <laughs> thought it was so funny, he thought, let's buy him t-shirts. I love it. <laughs> Good to meet you. What's your Good name? Good to meet you, Missy. <laughs> Missy. So you're back in Limerick. All right, Mike. So, of course, our coverage, as I said, we're under two hours. So we're going to be here. You can keep it right here. So from 2 to 4, we're going to be on TV on Fox 29. And always we're streaming on Fox Local as well, just like we are now. Then from 4 to 5, we'll be back here exclusively on Fox Local. And then you know what happens at 5 o'clock. we got the 5 o'clock news right here on Fox 29. So be sure to keep it and watch us however you do, whether you should two hours. Yes. Hello. I was like, wait, I recognize this guy. Are you from Philly? Well, from the Limerick area, so close oh, enough. Oh, yeah, Limerick. That's where all that white stuff comes out. Limerick. <laughs> yep. Cool. Why, does say, uh, uh, why does it say anus on your shirt? Well, because my oh, lovely, your... lovely three-year-old daughter has, for the last couple months, has been giving us planet names, and my husband is Jupiter wearing a Jupiter shirt, and she's Mars, and she chose Uranus for me, and my dad <laughs> thought it was so funny, he thought, let's buy him T-shirts. I love it. <laughs> Good to meet you. What's your Good name? Good to meet you, Missy. Missy. So you're back in Limerick. All right, Mike. So, of course, our coverage, as I said, we're under two hours. So we're going to be here. You can keep it right here. So from 2 to 4, we're going to be on TV on Fox 29. And always we're streaming on Fox Local as well, just like we are now. Then from 4 to 5, we'll be back here exclusively on Fox Local. And then you know what happens at 5 o'clock. we got the 5 o'clock news right here on Fox 29. So be sure to keep it and watch us however you do, whether you should two hours. Yes. Hello. I was like, wait, I recognize this guy. Are you from Philly? Well, from the Limerick area, so close oh, enough. Yeah, Limerick. To count. That's where all that white stuff comes out. Limerick. <laughs> yep. Cool. Why, does say, uh, uh, why does it say anus on your shirt? Well, because my oh, lovely, your anus. My your... lovely three-year-old daughter has, for the last couple months, has been giving us planet names, and my husband is Jupiter wearing a Jupiter shirt and she's Mars and she we are going to continue our coverage here on Live Now from Fox. It will take you back into some of the sights and sounds there from uh, Philadelphia as well as New York. Stay right with us. More to come. I do want to show you this shot here. A great looking shot in Indianapolis right now as they continue to track what we will all be seeing in just a couple of hours. More to come on Live Now from Fox.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're back for you on live now from Fox, getting you ready for the total solar eclipse. It is going to be one for the history books. And remember, this will be the last one this century where Mexico, U.S. and Canada will all be participating in this one. The next one uh, for the U.S. Uh, will be in about 20 years here, so still a long time uh, to wait here. That is why we have had people from all over the country and really around the world travel to these uh, totality spots to, to get a glimpse of this moment that it will take, you know, anywhere from uh, two and a half to four minutes maximum of that 100% totality of darkness. So that is going to be neat to see, no doubt about it, everyone. We want to continue our showcase here on the live now from Fox. Let's go out to our friends over at Fox for Dallas doing a great job to preview. And it still looks like, unfortunately, some cloudy skies out there in Dallas. 140 to 144, and then it comes to an end at 302. And I'll tell you, Blake, I mean, obviously, we want people to enjoy this. It's a, it's a once-in-a-lifetime event. Soak it in. Uh, enjoy it. But keep in mind that later this afternoon into tonight and again tomorrow, we've got a potential for a couple rounds of rough weather to deal with. And so we want you to, to remember that. And, uh, you know, my colleague, Ali Turiano, has been in the Fox 4 studio in the Weather Center, keeping a very close eye on things here. And I think we're going to get an update from her now on where we stand and what we're looking forward to later today. Allie? Yeah, Dan, you know, I think a big concern... Uh us North Texans, we get it. We know severe weather. We deal with it all year round sometimes. But a lot of folks visiting from other places across the country, even the world, not used to what we get here. So uh, it's going to be a very rough go for some this starting this evening. Luckily, the severe weather threat holds off till after the eclipse. And really is, it's a luck of the draw here. Texas Motor Speedway, that is a fair amount of sunshine, but socked in with those clouds around Dallas. Cedar Creek Reservoir, same thing. Strong south winds continue to usher in lots of low-level moisture. And as you move north and west, that's where it's generally clear. But from, say, Dallas, Collin counties to the east and south, that's where the clouds have been pretty stable here. Yes, you'll get some breaks here and there. The question is, will we have those breaks exactly between 12:23 and 3 o'clock this afternoon. Some folks will, and it's really just a very fluid situation with this cloud cover continuing to come in from the south. So this is during totality. Yes, I think there will be some breaks, but we'll average partly to mostly cloudy skies. And then once we get to 5, 6 o'clock, that is when our thunderstorm threat starts to increase for areas south and east of the Metroplex. At this point, all modes of severe weather possible. So what does that mean? Well, damage winds, very large hail, and even an isolated tornado cannot be ruled out. This is our first round approaching the Metroplex by 8, 9, 10 o'clock tonight and continuing. Highest coverage I-35 corridor eastward through the late evening hours. And then as we go overnight, we've got more activity coming in from the west. Those as well will pose a severe threat with wind and hail potential. So at this point, the damaging hail threat is is our greatest chance for your county 30 percent so out of the 60 percent coverage of rain 30 percent chance in your county for that very large hail could be as large as tennis balls damaging wind threat is at 15 percent for your county and our tornado threat is at five percent yes that's low but it's not zero and our atmosphere is really prime for a spin up or two so that is something we will pay very close attention to for you throughout the evening and late night hours so we'll continue to monitor that and of course keeping an eye on those satellite conditions as well yeah, we're certainly getting a lot of questions about the severe weather that's moving into the area. A lot of folks also asking about uh, the eclipse itself and, you know, why this is such a big deal. Certainly the spectacle of it all uh, is a huge deal for us yes. folks here in the path of totality. And they were saying because of the way that this runs across the midsection of the United States, everybody in the country will have at least some sort of experience. It certainly won't be complete darkness and right. totality, but no matter where you are, you'll get a glimpse of some sort of change. But in that path of totality, tens of 
millions of people. It's really extraordinary. Yeah, in 2017, when we saw this, uh, certainly it was a, a similar experience for those folks, but it didn't run through as many major cities. The right. population of the path of totality, you know, is going to be huge. And then, of course, there's the scientific, uh, you know, side of it as well. You know, you've got to remember that the corona, that, that outer layer of the sun, is so bright and so hot, about a million degrees uh, Celsius, that it's nearly impossible to study. But if you block out the rest of the sun, now yeah. suddenly scientists have really a, an unprecedented look uh, at what that's all about. So I also really love, speaking of the scientists, how much the students and NASA is incorporating curriculum within this, the classrooms yeah. and giving students an opportunity to say, hey, this is your chance to study temperature drops, mm -hmm. to release balloons and to see what yeah. happens. I'm going to brag on you for one second. Let me show y'all. So we got to work 7 o'clock this morning. I'm going to give me this. <laughs> and Steve says, hey, look what I happened to do over the weekend. Can we come back to this? I know we have this great shot, but look at this. Stop so that. this is so, so he went on a Boy Scout camp out <laughs> and did that and then put together this whole notebook of, hey, Heather, we, I brought crafts for us to make. So if we need to make some <laughs> eclipse boxes, there's a freebie section of things to do. And I'm like, okay, well, I have a couple of sheets of paper here, but it's just, you're just, it's <laughs> well, what, fantastic. One of us is used to sitting in on a six hour newscast. And, you that's know, right. That's we, you. You're prepared. Time. We've got some time to fill. All right. But we can do crafts if we need to. Anyway, it's just, it's fascinating, all of this and, and how much everybody is so, no, now I'm being serious and how much, you know, the schools and, and we yes. get to experience this together with the rest of our Fox 4 family up here on the roof that you can't see. So it's just great to be part of it. All right. Plenty more to experience on the other side of the break. Uh, we want you to continue to watch a live look outside right now. That's, that's our roof cam right. looking up at the sky they where the clouds thing are starting to part. To bring you the coverage, Fox 4, but this is a great live look here at Niagara Falls as you got more and more people uh, coming, taking their spots, getting ready for the big moment to happen for them in the eastern part of the country. Do want to show you a live look right now. Indianapolis, a great train shot here of the sun, and we'll continue to uh, watch this as it slowly will slowly disappear in a little bit. You're watching live now from Fox, everyone. Welcome back, everyone, to Live Now from Fox, gearing up for our big-time coverage coming up 
at 1 p.m. Eastern. So in just a little bit here, total solar eclipse 2024 presented by our friends over at Nissan. And this is really showcasing what we are seeing now across the country. This is a great look in Indianapolis right now of the sun. And uh, we'll continue to look at it as it'll get smaller and smaller for us coming up in moments. I do want to continue to showcase other events as well. Those high latitudes. So this is something that you're safe. Airlines are... <laughs> if Noah Noah is doing its job warning the airlines when we have uh, space weather events. Yes, absolutely. Amy, you're principal investigator of the satellite that's checking for asteroids that could get Earth. Yes, that's right, yeah. Is that exactly orbit around the Earth? Yeah, so we have a satellite that's looking, watching for asteroids and comets that get close to the Earth. And we're going round and round the Earth in the Earth's atmosphere. And you think, oh, we're, you know, we're, we're high enough up that there's not much air left. It's not a problem. Well, the satellite's pretty old now. And it's starting to, you know, come down a little bit. And what's happening? All right, everyone. Can you feel it? It is Eclipse Day, and we've been providing you the coverage all morning long and afternoon right here on Live Now from Fox. Let's continue to do that, and uh, let's go out to the Houston area right now. That is where we find Fox 26's Melissa Wilson joining us now with the latest as we are getting so close, Melissa. <laughs> we are so close and let me tell you I usually am in Houston but today I have made my way to Waco. I'm on Baylor's campus right now and I apologize for the really loud music. Hopefully it's not too overwhelming for you. So you got to take a look what's happening behind me right now. Look at all the students at Baylor University piling in here because this is going to be the place where they experience this history. Most of the students I've talked to have never experienced a solar eclipse and they are beside themselves excited. There are expected to be 10,000 students here. I want to go over here and see if we can find one and see what they're thinking about that. Hello, welcome Hi. to Fox News. You got to tell me how you're feeling about the solar eclipse. Yes. What's your name? My name is Jack. I'm currently an aviation sciences student at Baylor University uh -huh. and I'm a sophomore. And tell me how you're feeling about this and what it's like to be out here with all of these people. Yeah, it's an absolute awesome experience to be out here today. It's a great opportunity that our university allows us to have this day off from classes. And I'm really blessed to have this opportunity to experience this live here. And Waco is a great spot for this. Yeah, so do. You enjoy every second. I'm yes. so happy to talk to you. Now, what's a big deal here in Waco is that Baylor University has teamed up with NASA, with the Loyal Observatory, and they are all meeting here. So they're just about a mile away at McLean Stadium, and that's where people are coming from all over the country to witness this. While this is mostly going to be students, all the other people are just down the street, and they are so fired up about it. I've been talking to astrophysicists all morning long, and they are telling me that they can't believe that everybody is as passionate as they are about this, and it is just a time for us to all stop and cherish. I also have to tell you, we were ex expecting there to be so much cloud cover here. I've actually had to wear my shades all day, and we had to find tree coverage so that we would have a sh not have quite so many shadows. So we are hoping that will be the case when it all comes about in just a little while. Back to you in the studio. Yeah, Melissa, the clouds could come tomorrow, right? Let's get them out of the way. Let's enjoy it right here. <laughs> Everyone look up to the yes. sky. That's what we are sure hoping for. Yes, all right. Melissa Wilson uh, reporting for us in Waco, ge gearing up. We appreciate it here on Live Now, as always, everyone. All right. We are going to take a two-minute break here in just moments, but do want to continue to showcase uh, the latest on what we are seeing right now with the sun. This is a live look here in Indianapolis, and uh, I just want to give you uh, just some perspective on just how unique this really is, and uh, uh, so much has to happen for this total solar eclipse to actually take part. So scientists tell us that the sun sun is 390 times larger than the moon, but it is also 390 times farther away. Every 18 months or so, they align perfectly so that the moon's shadow passes over the Earth and those in the path of that shadow see a solar eclipse. This is oft often described as one of the great 
coincidences of our solar system. Astronomers tell us that there are 295 moons in our solar system, and yet ours is the only moon with the exact size and distance to perfectly match the sun and produce the amazing spectacle we see somewhere on our planet every 18 months or so. If our moon was any smaller, uh, the sky would not turn dark. And if it was any larger, we would never see that brilliant moment. For many, it is a source of wonder and truly a moment to uh, really showcase as well. And we've been providing you that coverage really all day long here, and we'll continue on into the afternoon hours as we get close to the moment of totality when so many from across the country and around the world will be taking part in this spectacle that is truly uh, going to take over social media with video, uh, with photos. Last time we saw this happen in the U.S. was back in 2017. The next time we'll see it won't be for another 20 years. The next time that both Mexico, U.S. and Canada will see it, yeah, it's not going to happen for another century. So this is really history in the making. So many people coming out wanting to see that moment of totality. We're going to have 32 million Americans take part in the totality area there that will re really be seeing something truly amazing where you will go from light all the way to dark and then come back to light in moments there. So it will be something to definitely see. Want to show you a live look right now of uh, uh, Niagara Falls right now. So you see the clouds are clearing. That is a good, good sign because uh, we saw uh, about an hour ago, it didn't look too promising there in Niagara Falls, but we were talking to uh, officials there that have been gearing up for the last three years uh, for this moment and to have these different watch sites all over. So it will be uh, something really, really interesting to see and to uh, take part of. And again, I do want to uh, showcase that coming up in moments will be our full total solar eclipse 2024 show presented by Nissan. Again, that live coverage starting at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. for our folks out on the West Coast here. But uh, before we go to a two-minute break, do want to, again, show you this look here from Indianapolis of the sun as they have a very, very powerful camera showcasing this as we are coming uh, down to the home stretch here of when uh, things will really start to get put into place there and we'll have uh, so uh, many people continuing uh, to showcase it on social media calling their friends uh, messaging uh, it is going to be uh, really the talk of the day and it's been our top story uh, obviously for the day as well well that is going to do it for my time here on the desk we are going to take a two minute break and when we come back you are going to see my uh, colleague Josh Breslow, he will be uh, at the controls and giving you a perspective like you have never seen before. So stay right with us. More to come in moments. Live now from Fox, back in two.
Welcome in here on Live Now from Fox. The time is 12.55 over on the East Coast, and it is 9.55 on the West Coast. My name is Josh Breslow, and I'm here to bring you all of the coverage, hours and hours of it, as we take a look at that total solar eclipse. Now, you can see off to the right side of your screen there a lot of different cameras. You're looking over at the Pacific Coast of Mexico, and down at the bottom right-hand side of your screen, that is a shot out of Indianapolis. I do want to zoom in just a little bit closer so you can get a better look. Take a look there. And this is, of course, our live coverage of the 2024 total solar eclipse that is presented by Nissan. Over the next several hours there, we're going to have these live views from our cameras all along the path of totality. Now, those cameras are in the more than a dozen states where at least some will experience a few minutes of complete darkness. Indianapolis isn't quite there, but it looks like they moved their camera. So all you're seeing right now is some complete darkness. Let's pop back over to that other camera that we do have that is over in Mexico. You can see folks are gathered in large numbers because it does appear in just about an hour or so we will see totality over there on the Pacific coast of Mexico. Do want to bring in a guest now to help uh, take a look at conditions over in Buffalo, New York. We do have Elizabeth Carey with AAA out there for us. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Yeah, happy to join you. There's a lot of excitement right here along the shores of Lake Erie. Uh, there's some eclipse chasers that are here setting up photographic equipment. I talked to them. They're up from Florida, so came all the way up here to, to view this. And uh, there's a little restaurant called Hoax here that's right on the water, famous for people to come and watch snowstorms here in Buffalo. Well, now people are starting to arrive to hopefully see the eclipse, but we do have some cloud cover, hoping that moves out. Yeah, and that's what I was going to ask you. So is there kind of a backup plan? Because I know that there are so many different events that are going on there in Buffalo. It's still, what, about two hours away from totality there. But what happens if that cloud cover is still there? Yeah, unfortunately, we won't have the view that everyone was hoping for if the clouds do stay in place. But there is a chance that they could start moving out. I talked to a friend in Cleveland a little while ago from a Fox station, actually, and uh, they said the clouds just moved out there, clear skies. And there are some patches of blue behind me, so depending on the location, you might have a better view. A lot of people are lined up in Niagara Falls today, uh, checking the view from there, so people got there bright and early to get a good spot. And you can see right behind me the city of Buffalo, and that's where you mentioned there's a lot of activities going on. Rooftop parties at bars, at hotels at the baseball stadium, uh, Buffalo Bill Stadium out in Orchard Park. There's a lot of people there as well today, too. How much preparation went into this? How far in advance were people there in Buffalo preparing for the eclipse? Because you find out that you're in the path of totality years prior to this, so you have to really get in gear, get in shape, and get everything ready to go. Yeah, Buffalo is in Erie County, and they started planning over a year in advance uh, just for traffic safety preparations and things like that. And then all of a sudden, all the different hotels and restaurants started jumping on board when they saw that path and realized Buffalo is right there in the center of it. So we're sure hoping that everyone can have an enjoyable time today. And I do want to ask you, because we talked about this the other day, but there's been a lot of concerns regarding people who are driving during the eclipse. Tell me about some of those concerns and why people may want to stay off the road. Yeah, AAA is reminding people to get to your destination, uh, get your spot. Don't try and pull over on the highway or on the side of the road to try and view the eclipse. It's not safe. You want to make sure that you're in a safe parking spot. And also making sure that you take those eclipse glasses off before you do start to drive again. You should never try to drive with them on. And don't try and take pictures while you're behind the wheel. We want to make sure that everyone does stay safe. And again, there's a lot of visitors in town um, for coming from airplanes and driving up as well. In downtown Buffalo yesterday, of course, there were perfectly clear skies yesterday. Uh, but there are a lot of people down at City Hall taking pictures, uh, lining up the local restaurants, trying to get some chicken wings to enjoy the whole Buffalo experience. Yes, yeah, a lot of excitement there. Elizabeth Carey with AAA of Western and Central New York. Thank you so much, as always, for taking the time to be here with us and give us kind of a view of what's going on. Anything else you want to add here about this before I let you go? You no, know, just a reminder to everyone to have a good time, enjoy it, keep those glasses on, and hopefully we get to experience the eclipse in totality right here on the shores of Lake Erie. Hey, that's what we're all hoping for. Thank you again for taking the time to be here with us. Thank you. All right, everybody, do want to take you out to some of the other live images that we do have here at this hour. This is a beautiful shot coming in from Niagara Falls. You can see not too far from where Elizabeth Carey was joining us from, but 
I mean, that's a beautiful sight. You can really see just how many people have turned out for this. We did talk about the skies a short time ago. We are going to have uh, folks with the FAA joining us in a matter of minutes to break all this down. But for now, I actually want to check in with uh, one of our crews out there in the field. We do have coverage from Dallas as well as Houston and Austin. Let's pop up the audio here on our Austin affiliate uh, with some of their coverage here as we get closer and closer to totality. This solar eclipse, but we've noticed in the last hour the clouds are trying to thin out. We've had some breaks in the cloud cover with rays of sunshine here and there in the capital city. Looking live now, overlooking Lake Travis, a few more boats out there. People trying to get a glimpse of the solar eclipse while being on Lake Travis. And then a few more rays of sunshine. That's promising. Out near Augusta Bend in Fredericksburg, we'll switch over to the visible satellite. This is taking a snapshot from space. What kind of clouds we have out there? It's clear in Mason, San Saba, Lake passes so far you'd have a great view and a few holes in the cloud cover even out in the hill country but the clouds are really thickening up to our south the eclipse bear get here in a hurry before that cloud deck moves on in about a 15 percent chance that we'll have some clearing here in austin during the solar eclipse uh, about a 10 to 20 percent chance out in fredericksburg not only do we have the eclipse happening today but some storms later on. Showers are bubbling up along I-10. Slight risk for severe weather between 3 and 7 from I-35 eastward. The number one threat being large hail could be a preview of what's to come as the main storm system comes to town. We'll talk more about the increasing rain and storm chances coming up in just a few moments. And because of that, the Texas Eclipse Festival in Burnett is canceled this afternoon, again due to the severe weather that it will be happening later on here in Central Texas. Organizers say with the support of Burnett County officials and local safety agencies, safety remains a top priority and they've agreed to end the festival early. They are asking guests to leave a bit early to beat traffic. Inbound shuttles to the venue will be canceled and no additional guests will be allowed into the venue. Organizers say guests can still stay for the eclipse as long as they're packed up and ready to leave after totality. A partial refund will be sent via email. The Hill Country is one of the hottest spots in the country to see the eclipse. Yeah, in the heart of the totality zone. Some areas will be without sunlight for several minutes. Fox 7 Austin's Rudy Koski joins us live from Lake Buchanan with a look at the eclipse viewing out there. Hey, Rudy. Hey guys, yeah, we're about 15 minutes away from the start of the eclipse here at this location at Black Rock Park, which is operated by LCRA. You know, anticipation has been building all morning long. Everyone hoping that Mother Nature is going to cooperate after teasing us all day Sunday with some clear skies and then earlier today with skies that would be clear and then would cloud up. And then now we're starting to see those clouds that Zach was talking about. Now the sun's back out. Hey, it's great, right? Now LCRA has 40 parks like this one, nine are west of Austin, uh, Black Rock Park among the, the nine, uh, in the path of the total eclipse. All are booked up and have been booked up for some time now. That includes those parks to the east of Austin around Bastrop, those day-only parks. They're also booked up. No vacancy sign there. But we're seeing a lot of folks along the rim of Lake Buch uh, Buchanan right now. Uh, people here at the park, not just from Texas, many have traveled from some very um, out-of-state uh, faraway states like uh, Utah, Idaho, and some even coming as far away as South Africa, England, and Australia. Now, I asked several folks here at the park if they're worried that their trip will become a cloudy bust. I never in a thousand years would have dreamed I'd be here, and here we are. So you saw the forecast. With the clouds tentatively being here. Right. Yep. A little worried? Nah, it'll be amazing no matter what. What were you doing just a few days ago? <laughs> I was shoveling snow. It was 20-something uh, degrees, and it snowed on us right before we had to leave for the airport. So I had to shovel snow to get our you know, car out of the driveway and so we can get to the airport yesterday. So if we're socked in with clouds, this is still a win-win, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, we're, you know, meeting college friends here, you know, escape from the cold weather and the snow for the weekend. What do you think about this road trip? Definitely good. 
<laughs> Definitely good. You bet. Now, taking a live look using our solar camera that we have here on site. And you can see the sun is fighting, trying to fight through the clouds, and it's been doing that all morning long. It uh, clouds up, and then it clears up, and then it clouds up. Now, our start of the eclipse starts at 1217, and then uh, the total eclipse starts here at 134, runs until about 138, and then the sun returns full force, or full cloud cover, one or the other, depending on what Zach says, right, uh, around 3 o'clock. Now, behind me, you can see me that a lot of folks are uh, uh, taking advantage of some of the modified telescopes and uh, cameras that have uh, been set up. They have special uh, filters on the on their lenses so people can watch the event as it happens. Uh, but be sure, if you're looking up uh, before the to totality, make sure that you use your, uh, your special glasses. You don't want to hurt your eyes. Uh, we'll talk to you a little bit later. Now back to you in the studio. All right, that was our Fox 7 Austin team, just some of their solar eclipse coverage. As I mentioned, we do have our Fox 4 Dallas team, Fox 7 Austin. We also have our Fox Houston team, and really these affiliates that are all along the path of totality. We'll be checking in with them over the next little bit. This is actually a live image coming in via NASA, and this is over in Mexico along the Pacific coast. You can see that partial eclipse has already gotten underway, and this camera is kind of shifting all over the place, so we are seeing several different shots. We're going to be uh, keeping an eye on this as well over the coming hours. Now, I do want to bring in a guest to talk a little bit more about those friendly skies out there. Kevin Morris is a senior technical advisor and aviation safety expert over at the FAA. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pretty exciting day. So first off, I just want to ask you a little bit about what happens in the sky. So my question here is when you have flights that are happening during the eclipse, do you still see as many flights happening? Do things have to have to change up? Well, that's a great question. I, I think as millions of people across, uh, well, at least half our country are looking up to the skies, our air traffic control professionals are also looking at the skies, but maybe for just a bit of a different reason. They're making sure that the number of aircraft operating international airspace system operates at safe levels so that we can ensure the safety and efficiency of those aircraft and the passengers aboard them. So what we're seeing is a slight increase in the number of aircraft operating across the eclipse path, especially the areas of totality where there are clear skies. And so we're monitoring that a minute by minute basis here to see if there's anything else we need to do, any special procedures we may need to incorporate. Any airspaces, I guess, that are specifically closed right now, does everything kind of operate for the most part as usual? Yeah, that's really the interesting part is that as far as the, the eclipse is concerned, we're operating as usual. There are certain parts of the country, of course, that are having some adverse weather that might affect aircraft and flight paths or delays. But in terms of the eclipse, we're not closing any airspace and we don't have any uh, restrictions currently going on that might affect aircraft in that area. All right. And for people who are planning to fly, do you see a lot of cancellations and delays that do happen? Do we have a lot of them as of right now? I would say no more than sort of your normal amount, and that's primarily weather related. I don't believe we have any cancellations or delays related to the eclipse itself. However, my best piece of advice that I give any passenger traveling any time of the year is call your airline or check with your airline before you leave for the airport to make sure your flight isn't delayed or canceled. Hey, that's always good advice pretty much whenever you're going to an airport. All right, Kevin Morris, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today and help break down what's going on in the friendly skies. Anything else you want to add at all before I let you go? I think that's about it. Really just for folks, if they are flying on an aircraft, as we mentioned, a passenger aircraft, check with the airline before leaving for the airport. And if you're flying your own aircraft, make sure you check notices to air missions. Those are our messaging system to pilots to make sure that there are no special procedures or restrictions along your route. All right, Kevin, thank you again for being here with us. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. Sit, fly safe if you're up there and enjoy the eclipse. For sure. All right, you are taking a live look here at one of our many cameras. This one is actually coming in out of Texas here via NASA. I want to pull it up so you can get a better look. This is actually over in Junction, Texas, where, you know, totality is going to be happening in a matter of an hour or so. We'll make sure to bring you more of those images as we get them. NASA kind of circulating through these images right now, so they keep kind of changing the location. But it looks like we did have another one uh, that popped up and then... 
went away. Time now is 109 over on the East Coast and 1009 on the West Coast. My name is Josh Breslow and I'm here for the next several hours to bring you all of your coverage here during our total solar eclipse 2024 coverage. You're watching live now from Fox. We'll be right back. Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox. You are taking a live look at one of the many cameras that we have along the path of totality there. This one looks very dark and cloudy. That is actually coming in out of Dallas, Texas. I want to go over some of the times here as that partial eclipse did begin around 12.23 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, looks like totality will be about 1.40 p.m. Central Time. That's 2.40 Eastern Time. So we're going to keep an eye on all these different cameras and bring you all the updates here here as we do get them. Do you want to head over to Cleveland right now? That is where we have Fox Weather's Max Gordon joining us live with a look at what they are seeing. And I know there were some concerns about the weather, Max, but it looks like a lot of people have turned out. There's a lot of excitement. Yeah, absolutely. There were a lot of concerns about the weather. You know, the Fox Forecast Center was initially uh, counting on about 60% cloud cover uh, by the time of the eclipse. Things are looking pretty good right now, although looking up in the sky, it appears that we've got some high clouds moving in, but they're pretty thin right now, so hopefully they won't impact the eclipse viewing too much. Now, the eclipse here in Cleveland, it's going to kick off at around 1.59 p.m. local time. That's when the moon is going to start to cover the sun. Totality will begin at 3.13 p.m. local time. It'll last for about three minutes, 49 seconds. So a pretty good long uh, period of, of totality here in, in the Cleveland area. That's when we'll be plunged into the moon's shadow. It'll be pretty dark for a while, and uh, we'll be able to gaze up at where the sun uh, would normally be without any eclipse glasses on. But before and after totality, you still need to wear those glasses. As far as turnout's concerned, I think things are a little bit light compared to what city officials were predicting. They were saying between 140 and 200,000 people were gonna be downtown. I think that weather forecasts might have scared some folks away. Some people that I talked to over the past couple of days said that they had made alternate arrangements in other cities uh, just in case it was going to be cloudy here. And I think that the cloud forecast might have kind of scared some folks away. But as you can see behind me, we've de we've definitely got some people here at Total Eclipse Fest uh, filling out the lawn here outside of the Great Lakes Science Center. So it should still be a really great event. It's nice and warm temperatures right now in the 60s. That's a, a nice departure from what we've seen over the past couple of days where really temperatures 
Rangers haven't gotten above, uh, you know, out of the 40s. So it, it's been really nice today, nice and sunny, and uh, it'll be a great day to see this solar eclipse here in Cleveland. Yeah, fingers crossed that it all stays that way and everything stays awesome. Max Gordon there with Fox Weather. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you. And you are taking a live look right now from one of the cameras that we do have very zoomed in right now. That is Dallas, Texas, where uh, we have been checking in with our Fox 4 Dallas team for their live coverage. They've been going around the clock all throughout the day. Let's pop up the audio and listen in as they are live, raw and unfiltered. <laughs> one million of these glasses, which we then distributed to 575 schools around North Texas. So about 600,000 pairs went out to school children and to their teachers. They could go onto our little QR code here and download all kinds of activities so that they could be prepared for the eclipse. And then the others we sent out into community centers, retirement homes, first responders, so that everybody in North Texas would have uh, a, a chance to be able to participate and participate safely in this eclipse. That's awesome. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of Eclipse t-shirts. I've seen Eclipse dresses. Does anybody know where I could maybe find an, a, a, pet, a, a pair of uh, Eclipse boots? <laughs> there oh, they are. yes, only in Dallas. So we have this wonderful local boot maker, Myron Crosby, who created an Eclipse boot that was released just today. Wow. They're beautiful. They're going to be a hot commodity, I see. I hope so. <laughs> Only in Dallas. They will be. <laughs> That's Got, true. <laughs> Got to do a big here in Dallas. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Silver, for having us and joining us and uh, being part of this great experience here at the Pro for the uh, Total Solar Eclipse. Stephen Heather, we will send it back to y'all. Love the boots. So awesome. I'm seeing some shade on you. I was going to say, I, I, was, I was seeing if we have any uh, solar screens out here for us because it's about to get, at least my side of it, I, I seem to be the sun, the one attracting the sun more than you are, Heather Hayes. Back. It's because <laughs> the spotlight's on you. All right, a man who is always in the spotlight of the sun, Sean Rabb, live for us right now, probably enjoying some sunshine with himself, my friend. How are you? Hey, it is well, and we are having a great time here on the Ron Kirk Pedestrian Bridge, Trinity Grove area, just west side of downtown. Look, folk are really filling in now. It's starting to really pack with families and friends. Let me show you. Some people are getting ready to try to catch the moment. Look, they've got their camera here. Uh, at the camera, on the lens of the camera, the safe solar glass lens is there already. So they are ready. I want to introduce you to a couple of young men. I met a couple of brothers talking to Andrew and uh, Adrian Dantavon. They're from Wichita, Kansas. They were walking through and we started up a conversation. Uh, yep. Tell me, Andrew, what are you hoping to see, man? Hoping you see the eclipse, the solar eclipse. Pretty... How exciting is this for you? It's pretty exciting. I'm a, I love science and stuff like that. So I've been wanting to see this for a while. So Adrian, tell me, what are you hoping to see? You're hoping to see the skies clear like right now yeah, and see it all? Yeah, I'm hoping to see like the, the sun's glare around the moon. Like the totality of it, I'm hoping to see that. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting time. Let me ask you, though, is school out in Kansas today? It is not. Oh, so this is like a science experiment for you guys. Yes, sir. Right, that's what we'll tell the teacher when we get back, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you can see a lot of folk out here having a great time. It's going to be a great day, it's going to be a great memory made, and we're really hoping that what's happening above our heads right now continues because we see some sun here. Clouds are breaking right here, and we hope that continues. Maybe we'll get to see it all in the next hour or so. Back to you. All right, that's a great sight, Sean. The blue skies. Blue skies, even us, we, we just had to readjust our, our shade structure here because guess what? The sun is out right now. Uh, the sun starting to peek behind the moon shadow, though, in Mexico. These are live pictures right now. You can see that the eclipse has uh, certainly begun there. Mexico will also, much like Ennis, enjoy some of the longest durations of totality. Uh, to give you an idea, again, of how fast uh, this is going to move across the country, we're about at what hour and 21 away from totality here in Mexico. They've already started uh, the eclipse and it's going to fly right across Texas and of course right over North Texas as we all get to experience those moments of totality together. We're going to take a little break. We're going to be back in just a moment. Our coverage of the solar eclipse continues right here on Fox. This Saturday, Comerica Bank Shred Day.
All right, what you're watching right there was our Fox 4 Dallas coverage. We do have several different affiliates and stations that are located along that path of totality. We're going to have all this coverage for you all throughout the day here on Live Now from Fox. Do want to pull up a new feature here that we are going to be working with for the first time. This is called Megaphone, and I know a lot of you are going to be out and about here taking your photos of the eclipse. All you have to do is use your phone to scan that QR code that is right there over in the top right hand side of your screen that'll make it very easy to submit all of your photos your videos that you take and that means that we can play them and show them right here on live now from fox you can also go to livenowfox.com backslash vote it shows you that we are going to be using it for other features but today it is all about that total solar eclipse we're going to head to a quick break here at 120 on the east coast and 1020 on the west coast you're watching live now from fox much more to come Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox. You are taking a live look over in Kerrville, Texas. This is an image that is provided by NASA here. As we do get to the latest, you are watching our live coverage of the 2024 total solar eclipse presented by Nissan. Over the next several hours, we're going to have live views from our cameras along that path of totality. And those cameras in the more than a dozen states where at least some are going to experience a few minutes of complete darkness. We're going to check in with a lot of our Fox affiliates as we have been all throughout the day. We have those stations along the path of totality, including in Texas, Illinois, Michigan and New York. Fox Weather, NASA, and the Associated Press also part of this coverage. And speaking of NASA here, I do want to bring in Dr. Carolyn Mercer, the Chief Technologist for NASA's Science Mission Directorate, joining us now live. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. Hey, thank you for having me. It is a great day for science and a great day for those of us who live in the path of totality. I was going to say, of all the people I talk to, you're probably going to be a NASA one of the most excited. So first off, can you break down for me what an eclipse really is? Oh, sure. So an eclipse is when the Earth and the Moon and the Sun all line up exactly so that the Moon blocks the light from the Sun. Um, it just so happens that the Moon is exactly the right size so that when it is positioned correctly, we can get that totality of blockage. Um, the exciting thing, of course, is that once the moon has blocked the sun, 
we're going to be able to see the outer atmosphere of the sun, which we call the corona. And it is a wonderful thing to see. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, beautiful images right here on your screen that we're taking a look at at this hour here. Why is this so exciting for so many people who are out there, even if you're along the path of totality or not? So it's really the best along the path of totality because that's the only place where you can see that corona, the outer um, atmosphere of the sun. And, you know, at NASA, we take safety seriously, so everyone should wear their total solar eclipse glasses as they're watching the moon cross the sun, which is what you're starting to see in the images that you're showing. But once the moon completely blocks the sun, then you have to take the glasses off to see the corona. The corona is where the energetic particles that traverse all through space are born. And we are really interested in studying that corona because it influences what we call space weather. Just like we have weather here on Earth, we have weather on the sun. And it can influence our upper atmosphere, and it can influence our spacecraft and our electronics. So this is a really special time to get to learn more about that corona. What does NASA learn from all of this? As you mentioned, it's a time to learn about the corona and get some more information, but how does it work to, I guess, help with future missions and uh, things of that nature? Right, so we send up what's called sounding rockets to go up into the Earth's upper atmosphere. So we can study what's going on in the atmosphere before, during, and after the total solar eclipse. And the way that our atmosphere responds to those changes gives us a really dynamic insight into how our atmosphere works. That's really important to us as we understand the Earth as a system and understand how it's changing and make sure that we have really good, accurate models to predict both weather and climate. We also really care about making sure that our astronauts are safe. And so periods of maximum solar activity, we need to protect them when they're on the International Space Station. What do you say to people out there who they hear that this is happening, they've been watching the images and say, this isn't that exciting, it's not a big deal. What do you say to them? So, you know, in 2017, I kind of thought the same thing, but we drove down to Kentucky to see it. And the difference between totality and partial eclipse is just the difference between being truly awed by something and having something that's kind of fun to do. It's a full body sensation. You'll feel the changes, you'll hear the changes, you'll see the changes. And I don't know about you, but I don't get enough awe in my life. So it's really a spectacular event. And I clearly have kind of a crooked face right here, <laughs> but it's really important to note that you have to wear these glasses. So why is it so important to make sure that you are wearing the glasses? Right, you will damage your eyes if you look at the sun. Everybody learned that in kindergarten, right? So we don't want to look at the sun. Even though the moon may be blocking most of it, it's still too bright to look with your eyes. You have to wear the glasses until the moon entirely covers the sun. And then once the, the moon starts to pass through on the other side, you have to put those glasses back on. But during totality, you have to take the glasses off in order to see the corona. All right, Dr. Carolyn Mercer, Chief Technologist for NASA's Science Mission Directorate. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us and kind of break down all of these details here. Anything else you want to add about any of this before I let you go? Oh, well, just wishing for clear skies all along the path. It's looking pretty good so far here in Cleveland, so fingers crossed it's going to stay clear. That's what we're all hoping for. Thank you again for being here. Thank you. All right, and I talked a little bit earlier about this megaphone that we are using, and you can see we are starting to get some images in right now. This is from Luis Roman over in Odessa, Texas. It says, it is here by Odessa, Texas, and you can see that partial eclipse that is happening. We definitely want to get all of your photos, your videos here, so to send them to us, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is hold your phone up to that QR code that's right there at the top right-hand side of your screen, and you can easily submit those photos and videos. Just let us know your name and where you are located. Again, we're going to be showing these all throughout our coverage here 
over the next several hours. I do want to pop up some of the other images that we do have coming in via NASA right now. This is actually over on the Pacific coast of Mexico. You can see that partial eclipse is officially underway, and it's just going to be a matter of minutes, let's say, a few minutes, until we do see uh, the moon pass over the sun, and you'll get that full total solar eclipse. It is going to be taking place, of course, in Mexico. Then it's going to move up that path of totality, and we will see it in places like Texas, eventually over into New York, and then it will move over toward Canada. The time now, 129 on the East Coast and 1029 on the West Coast. My name is Josh Breslow, and I'm here for the next several hours to bring you all of your top stories and live events. You can see this is yet another shot coming in out of Dallas. And speaking of Dallas, we want to check in with our Fox 4 Dallas team for their live coverage. We will continue to keep a shot of the uh, sun. That uh, shot in particular from UT Arlington will have it up on your screen through totality. And it really has been so fun. In fact, I'd like to hear from Blake and Dan, the excitement level. You can really feel it from people as we get closer and closer and as we're showing shots like what we just saw, yeah. that it has begun. So Peyton Yeager has had the opportunity to talk to so many people from near and far. She's finished her kettle corn. So let's check in with Peyton in Hennes. Hey. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm here with Richard, all the way from Manchester. What brought you here to North Texas and specifically Ennis? The solar eclipse, of course. <laughs> So you have family in Houston. That's Talk to me about your travels. Yes, we flew into Houston on Wednesday, visited the uh, uncle and aunt there. We've then popped up to Austin to visit our cousin, and then we're now in Ennis for the eclipse. Texas tour, that's what you're doing. Um, so he went to the 2017 to total solar eclipse, yep. correct? Where were you? We were in the middle of Nebraska for that one. And now you're here for this one. Okay, let's look up a little bit at the partial. You know, we're already starting. Okay, yeah, we can see it. A little bit of blocked. Is this how this is how it started last time, correct? That's it, definitely. Less clouds though this time as well, so we can see more of it. Okay. How have you enjoyed Ennis? Had anything stuck out to you? Just how clean and friendly everyone is. The town's so beautiful and pretty with all the flowers. Everyone's so friendly, happy to help. It's just a great vibe. Are you around more people this time, or were you in a field last time, or how was it different? That's it. Last time we just pulled up uh, at a truck stop. It was uh, out on the grass out the front. So this time we parked up in town. We can walk around, go to the cafes and whatnot. Um, and you're spending the whole day here? Definitely. That's it. And he's going to New Orleans after this, right? To just have fun? Yeah. Well, we were over here. We thought we may as well travel to somewhere else. So, yeah, New Orleans it is tomorrow for a couple of days there. My last question is how fortunate for you to witness two sol total solar eclipses. I think that's it. And once you've seen one, you want to see another one. So the plans are for the next one as well, 2026. Where are you going to, where? Well, it's going over Iceland, Spain, so we don't know where yet. That is so fantastic. Thank you so much, Richard, for joining us on Fox 4. You have been fantastic. Back to you guys. Hey, thanks. Do you think we can get Fox Sport to send us to Iceland or Spain for the <laughs> I next one? I think so. I, you know, uh, but maybe northern Oklahoma and Kansas uh, were going to be visible in 2045, well, 21 years from now. Okay, we'll see about I'll be that. retired by then, though. So. Okay. <laughs> maybe not you. <laughs> we, uh, we're here at the Pro. 7,000 people uh, are here celebrating, uh, getting a chance to soak up uh, this experience here. Um, and not, is it a great, not only is it a great spot to, to watch, but also scientists here to learn from so many different activities for people to do inside and outside of the pro um, that is great uh, we're in that period where it's a little bit cloudy here it's um, peekaboo yeah. it, as Peyton was able to see it we're not able to see it it's going to be kind of like that as we we move on it's, it's going to require some luck I mean there are going to be some folks in North Texas during that critical four minute time period 140 to 144 that are going to see clear skies and others that are so kind of have to keep their fingers crossed that uh, and see you can see it here. This is a prime example of now we've got a clear view. But just a few seconds ago, we saw clouds moving across. So it's all about timing. And really, it kind of boils down to luck, too. And so we are, again, hoping that we get at least a part of that four minutes of totality without any cloud cover to interfere. But 
Uh, either way, it's it's already been <laughs> really exciting to see what's taking place right now. And of course, it's going to be an awesome experience for the kids, uh, many of whom their schools have events going on. They're going to get a chance to soak it up. Want to get out to uh, Richardson ISD, where our Lori Brown is, and she has some special guests with her, Lori. That's right, Blake. These are the most special interview guests I could ever have because they're my own children. So yes, I can be biased here. There is so much excitement right now because we see some blue sky. So I'm going to get right to McShane in fourth grade. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling pretty good about this weather. I mean, um, in the morning, it was better. It was really good. I think it's better now, but um, uh, then it started to get really cloudy while I was in the cafeteria. And then when I was in uh, PE, we were doing, um, we were about to go outside to see the solar eclipse. And I noticed that there was blue sky and I was so happy. And you've seen some of the eclipse start. Yes, I have seen some of the eclipse start. It, I, I've seen the sun get eaten up piece by piece. Just a little and, bit right now. Yes. Okay. But it's so cool. And right now, I yes, it's behind a cloud right now. So you can't really see it with your eclipse glasses. But, it, but if we look that way uh, from where I am, that's where all the clouds are moving and that's where the sun is moving so and there's a big open blue sky space right there Bella what are you looking forward to um, I'm excited to see the eclipse and um, and when we were doing IXL recommendations miss my teacher miss Morales she we have like lots of windows in our class and she said I see blue skies and we were all screaming I'm so excited. Great. Yay. Brooklyn, what are you looking forward to? This is Brooklyn in pre-K. Um, um, uh, um, that the solar eclipse are, that it, it turns to night and all, um, it, then. The bugs. The bugs, um, making sound. Yeah, the bugs might start the ninth song early, so we're going to see if it happens out here at Canyon Creek Elementary School. Back to you. Okay, I would like to point out, if anybody missed oh it, gosh. the moment, Lori, when your son stepped in for the assist oh with gosh. your youngest, I mean, so adorable. Those kids are raised right. I love that <laughs> Lori gets to be there with her children, and can I just say, they have grown up so sweet. Exactly. It's been fun watching. Okay, and just the way that they describe things, right? The, the bugs will start to sing their night song, the uh, sun is being eaten piece by piece if you have the opportunity again to just be in the moment as we experience right, this together put the phone down put the pictures down nasa will take care of all the photography i promise i'm sure we'll have a huge album on our website when it's all said and done but just be there and right. and, and experience the moment uh, because it really is going to be just truly phenomenal and we keep saying and that is our Fox 4 Dallas team. They do have their live coverage. We have been checking in with them over the past several hours and will continue to do so. But I do want to bring you back out to this live image we have. A beautiful one as that partial eclipse is getting underway over in Dallas. It's really zoomed in. That's why you're seeing uh, really just how close it is. And also it's kind of moving around a little bit, but just one of many shots that we have coming from that area. Do want to bring in a guest now. Steve Abel is the vice president of zoological operations for SeaWorld San Antonio, joining us live to talk more about how the animals respond here. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. Well, hi, Josh. We're all thrilled um, to, ha to be here with you. Um, the park is buzzing. You might say everybody's over the moon about what's going on today uh, here, in, here in San Antonio. Uh, it's an exciting time. Um, and we're really, really excited to see what our animals are going to do, if anything, um, with this solar eclipse. So good. Good to be here. So first off, I have to ask, what are you expecting from the animals? Because what do they do? I know that we were hearing from Fox 4 Dallas that uh, some of the animals, bugs specifically, make a certain sound. So what do we anticipate will be happening? Yeah, that's a great question. And you know, I asked that question uh, myself just recently. I was up at our orca show, uh, our orca presentation at 12 o'clock, and I wanted to see if there was any effect on the, on the, uh, the whales early on, and they were flawless. But I wound up talking with Dr. Kelly Miller. I'm not sure if most of you folks know, but 
we have uh, Dr. Kelly Millie Miller here, and she's from the Southwest Research Institute. She's actually actually a cosmochemist, so she studies this type of thing. She did an amazing presentation on what we were expecting to see with the with the science of what happens with um, with these solar eclipses. And I asked her that exact same question, and she kind of deferred it back to us, the animal experts. So what we have been doing here to answer that question is science, right? And that starts with us with observation. So the last three, four days, we've had our entire zoological team at almost every exhibit, our otter exhibit, right here at our sea lion exhibit, with our killer whales, with our dolphins, uh, with our flamingos, birds who can sometimes be impacted by um, by day and night cycles. And we've observed them for a baseline um, set of behavioral observations. Once we establish the baseline set of observations, we can then compare taking those same observations today and compare that with the baseline. We'll also take a couple sets of observations after the eclipse is finished. But frankly speaking, what we expect to see is behavior that um, represents them starting to change behavior as the evening approaches. What's going to change, what's going to change for these guys is that they're used to 8, 9, 10, 12 hours between light cycles. Well, here in the middle of the day, it's a sunny day here, a little cloudy, but in the middle of the day, they're not expecting all the things that happen when nighttime approaches. And nighttime is going to come earlier in the day, and it's also going to come much more quickly. So we expect they'll probably feel like there's a little bit of a change. It'll go dark very quickly, and then it'll get light very quickly. Those are the behavioral changes that we're expecting to see. Some of the animals may do absolutely nothing. Other animals, birds, for example, animals that are active in the morning and in the evening, dawn and dusk, they may start to believe that night is coming, let me hunker down, find a safe place for the evening. So those are the things that we're looking for, the behavioral changes that we're expecting to see. But the greatest thing about working at SeaWorld with our animals, the absolute greatest thing, the animals are our best teachers, always will surprise us. We're just looking forward, just like everybody else is, to seeing what they're going to do. We have our guesses. We're not exactly sure. We're going to know a lot more about a solar eclipse impacting animals in um in probably just about uh, i'd say about an hour right yeah well and then my question is what can you do with that information because that has to help in the future and really just for knowledge purposes but what can you take from that information that you find today and use in the future yeah it's a really good question um i, I learned today uh from listening to dr kelly miller from Southwest Research Institute that the last time San Antonio had a full solar eclipse was about 600 years ago. So we certainly won't use that, that information maybe for 600 years in the future. I'm joking. What we will learn is that we want our animals to be very well adjusted and flexible to the changes that happen in their environment. So if storms come through and it gets dark or lightning happens in, 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 um, in a day, or eclipse happens, we want these guys to be well adjusted so that they know they're still gonna be taken care of. They know their welfare is still gonna be outstanding. We were expecting to go dark, but we're also expecting temperatures to change. When these things happen, we want our animals to know they're okay, they're safe, and that's how we'll apply it. Animal welfare, making sure that um, the animals who live here know no matter what happens, they're gonna be well taken care of and their welfare comes first all the time. All right, Steve Abel there, Vice President over at the SeaWorld San Antonio. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us and help break down. We're excited to see what does happen with the animals. And like you said, we should know in a matter of an hour or so. Uh, anything else you want to add before I let you go? You know, I, I think the most important thing, um, and again, this is more of a service to our community here in San Antonio, these solar glasses are very important. Um, this is an event that is filled with excitement, especially here coming out to the park. Enjoy it with us. Um, there's so many things to see, but protect your eyes. Don't look up into the sun. Uh, the damage from looking into a uh, solar eclipse can be permanent. So we just want to do our part, you know, uh, uh, from SeaWorld side to make sure that everybody's safe. So wear your solar eclipse glasses and make sure that everybody enjoys this in a safe manner. Y'all have a great day, and we sure appreciate you uh, checking in with us.
You too, Steve. Thanks for being here. All right, everybody, and it's actually really hard to see with these on because the studio surprisingly is not that bright. But what you're looking at on your screen right there is over along the Pacific coast of Mexico. They're going to get that uh, totality here soonest. And then after that, it'll travel up toward Texas and then into New York and off over toward Canada. But we do have a lot of these shots coming in from NASA. If you want to pull this one up right here, this is actually a shot showing Dallas, Texas. You can see that partial eclipse is now underway. Do you want to head to a quick two minute commercial break right now at 144 on the East Coast and 1044 on the West Coast? You're watching live now from Fox. Much more coverage right ahead. Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox. We are continuing our total solar eclipse coverage here, 2024, presented by Nissan. I mentioned this a bit earlier, but we are trying out our new device here. It's called Megaphone, and it does allow you to submit your photos, your videos, anything related to the eclipse here. You can just kind of scan that QR code that is in the top right-hand side of your screen, and then we can show them right here on Live Now from Fox. This one out of Athens is from Rafael Landaverde. Hopefully I said your name right. Took this photo on my phone with the solar eclipse glasses on. I mean, that's pretty cool. That's hard to do because I can't even see in the studio when I'm wearing mine. This one from Luis over in El Paso, Texas, starting in the Sun City. And you can see it there from a distance. It's actually a pretty cool shot right there. Thank you to everyone who has submitted their photos so far. This is Rose over in Abingdon. Got those glasses ready to go, getting ready from Maryland. Again, thank you for sending these photos. You can scan that QR code that is right there on the top right-hand side of your screen and send us those photos. This is Jose Lopez from Corona. Not sure if he's just taking a photo of the Corona or maybe both, but it says from Corona, California. And this is out of Dallas. We have been watching the photos that have been coming in from our Fox 4 Dallas team, and that's one of them right there. And uh, that is, again, coming in from Dallas, Texas, to shot as we get closer and closer to that totality. That's it for now, but make sure you do scan those QR codes and send our, your photos and videos our way so we can show them on our web here. And I do want to take a look at one of the images we have coming in from NASA right now. This is actually out of Mexico, where they are getting closer and closer to totality. I mean, very close at this point. You can see 
Uh, that is the moon right there that is essentially about to block the sun in a matter of minutes. We're going to have all those images for you right here on Live Now from Fox as it does get underway. For now, I want to get another quick two-minute commercial break out of the way, but on the other side, we'll check right back in with our Fox 4 Dallas team for their live coverage of the total solar eclipse 2024. Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox, and we do have all of these different live views as we get closer and closer to totality there over in Mexico. This one along the Pacific coast, you can see the moon is getting closer and closer and closer. It's almost there. So once we get to totality, we'll have a beautiful image, and you can watch it right here on Live Now from Fox. Right now, I do want to head back to our Fox 4 Dallas team as we have been checking in with them all throughout the day for their live coverage. Well, thank you. You've done a great job, and we're all here and ready and, and waiting. The glasses, everybody's got them, and uh, I think it's going to be wonderful. Sure. Thank, thank you so much, much for joining us. Uh, and once again, you all, again, we, people are still arriving, just a, a few more uh, coming as I, as we uh, speak. Uh, but definitely just um, wanted to point out that I saw Lori, or I listened to Lori interviewing her children. I missed that age, and I must say that while my daughter daughter is now an adult. She is 24. She's in California. She did call me. She's watching online and she's a little bit jealous. She wishes that she were here, but uh, that just goes to show you we're so fortunate to have this opportunity and I think we're making the most of it, especially right here in Fort Worth. It's a very latest live. Back to you all. I love it. Dion, thank you. Yeah, I got a picture from one of my daughters at school um, that they posted on Instagram and all the girls are pointing at the sky saying, bring on totality. So, you know, so and as Dia mentioned, our daughter lives in California. That's the yeah. great thing about Fox Local, right? I mean, you can yeah. tune in from anywhere in the country, anywhere in, in the Houston. world, really, yeah. and watch the local coverage of a, a big event like this. So we want to remind folks that are watching on Fox Local, that are watching on Fox4News.com. I mean, this is really the place to be to get yeah. the full uh, Total Eclipse uh, coverage experience, no matter where you are in the world, because we will bring you to every place uh, that you need to be. Speaking of which, we're headed to Waco next, yeah. right? We're going to go to Melissa Wilson, actually, with our sister station in Houston who has traveled to Waco to check out what's going on there. Melissa. Well, hello there, 
Stephen, Heather, I tell you what, I'm in my element. I'm a Baylor grad, and so I'm happy to be home, so to speak. But it's great to be in Waco. And guess what? We have blue sky, and we have gotten to experience every moment of the partial eclipse so far. And that was so unlikely that it would happen. And so we are thrilled. It has been so exciting to see students here. They're all checking it out, and they're having so much fun. Are you having fun, guys? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Perfect day here at Baylor because it's Dia de Loso, so students don't have any classes. They are celebrating the Day of the Bear. But why we're on Baylor campus is they have teamed up with the city of Waco, with NASA, with the Lowell Observatory, and people from all over the country have traveled here because of it. So it's really exciting. I know you can hear the band in the background. I have a professor here, Robbie Rogers, professor of photography, and you have been capturing the moments today. What has that been like for you? Well, first off, welcome back to Baylor. Welcome Thank home. We love having everybody back here and dia is just a great day for the students to take a break to relax i know we have finals coming up but before then let's just recover and have a great day so we've got corn dogs and fair food and there's all sorts of activities to do and of course we've decided to host it on the day of the eclipse which is perfect we always love shining our light at baylor so we might as well enjoy this eclipse as well and we got some wobbling going on you think we can do this with them just a little bit. Just a little bit. Oh, you got it. Look at that. I feel like we got to celebrate today. This is a big day in history. You, you got to wobble with me, Steve and Heather. <laughs> <laughs> what I will do, if you can ask uh, on our behalf uh, to Robbie, we've got so many folks that are going to try and capture this moment really through their, uh, you know, cell phone camera. Any tips that he can give for our viewers uh, to try and get a better picture? Of course, the best stuff is going to come from the pros, but for the amateurs out there, what's his advice? Yeah. I am so glad you asked that. I didn't know if I would have time to ask, so I will do just that. The anchors back in the studio are wondering if you have advice for people to get that perfect picture because we know people might not have the right filter. How can they pull that off in the comforts of their own home or just outside? So one thing I would really encourage everybody to do is just enjoy the moment. I know you want to capture it too and if you wait to totality you don't need a filter but you have to wait right for the totality moment but up before that and afterward make sure that you're using approved filters things like that but even with the glasses over an iPhone that works out perfect but like everything in life I want you to sit back relax and enjoy the eclipse. Okay, so did you hear that? This is all you have to do, Steve. Get this, put it over your iPhone, point up, and you're good to and go. Shoot away. I actually did that just a few minutes ago. My photographer here has the, the, the fancy little lens that he put on it, the, the filter. Is he showing to you right there? I put my cell phone in front of that and got a perfect picture. I'll share it with you in a little while. We appreciate you. And I Love appreciate it. when people validate our advice. We were just that saying be in the, the best bet, leave it yeah. to the leave it to the professionals yeah. Yeah. and just enjoy the moment. They will get far better photos uh, than you can. We certainly appreciate you checking in with us from Waco. We've got plenty more to bring so you fun. here on Total Eclipse Live. It is on Fox and it is back in just a moment. A big thank you there to our Fox 4 Dallas team. We will continue to check in with them all throughout the day here as we get closer and closer to totality in so many different locations. Now, we have been showing you these through Megaphone. These are different uh, friends out there who are watching right now, and they are scanning that QR code at the top right-hand side of your screen and submitting your photos there. This is Zavi Balagniz. Hopefully, I said that right. And this is out of Buffalo, New York, where you can see uh, children making their own glasses and honestly that's pretty cool i wish my producers had got me glasses that cool they still got them for me but you know they don't look as great as those right there on your screen all right looking at some of the other photos this is zeke snow right here out of waco texas and it says eclipse homes you can see it in the distance a little bit of cloud cover but still pretty cool to see right there on your screen also have uh, Noheli Martinez out of North Hollywood. The anticipation is real all the way from North Hollywood, California. I love it. These are all photos of pretty cool glasses. And I just want to apologize to my photographers. You could see they got upset when I said I wish they got me better glasses. But, you know, still pretty cool. Thank you, guys. All right, this is from Chelsea Bailey. It says China, Maine. And it says the snow is bright, but the eclipse will be brighter. Uh, made a do-it-yourself cover for extra safety. Looks like that image is not loading right there, but thank you so much to Chelsea for sending that our way. All right, we also got this one, Adriana, over in Dallas, Texas. Thanks so much for watching. It says Eclipse 2024 ready. 
We're going to keep moving on to show more and more of these amazing photos again sent by simply scanning that QR code that is right at the top of your screen. Hit that QR code. It allows you to send in your own videos and photos here. This is from George and it says ready in Illinois. And speaking of Illinois, we are going to be checking in with our Fox 32 Chicago team for their live coverage just a little bit later. Also have Izzy over in Austin getting ready for totality in Austin, Texas. Again, thank you to everyone for uh, watching us here on Live Now from Fox, but also sending in all of your photos and videos. We'll show as many as we can right here on Live Now from Fox. Do want to pop up one of the live cameras that we do have. I mentioned that we are getting closer and closer, but this is over on the Pacific coast of Mexico, and that is a live image coming in via NASA, where you can see it is almost at totality. We are simply minutes away from that totality. I believe we did see that it would be just a few minutes after 2 p.m. Eastern time. So we will keep this camera up as we do check in with some of our different affiliates. For now, let's head right back over to Fox 4 Dallas. Clips has started across North Texas. We are just about 40 minutes away from totality uh, here in our area. So Steve Noviello, again, the man of everything, <laughs> brought cereal. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, listen, because you need the glasses, yes. right? And I know that there are some folks out there who think, oh, I'll be fine. I don't need the glasses. Or maybe you couldn't find any of the glasses. Right. So I just want to go over real quick here because we want you to be able to enjoy the moment here. And there is a way to view the eclipse without any glasses at all. So I brought some supplies here. Cereal box, which I know all of you have <laughs> you uh, in your home right now. Huge bag Super that you quick, brought. right? You're ready. All right, what do okay. I do? So what I want you to do, you're first going to trace on a white piece of paper uh, how how wide the box is, and I pre-cut here for you. So oh, there you thank go. Thank you, because okay. he knows how crafty I'm not. So <laughs> you're going to take like, the paper. It. What you're doing is think of it as a movie screen. So I want you to take it and put it in the bottom inside the bottom of the where, box, where right? You did it. Okay. Right, right where the bottom is. Okay. okay. And you're going to uh, seal the top here, and I've got you a little piece of tape for you too. I can't okay. get my hand in it. Oh, okay, come on wait. there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not crafty, but I'm trying. Super okay. easy to do. Okay, so go ahead and close the top. Here's your piece of tape. Oh, gosh. You really oh, did the on. tape for me, too? All right. Yep, okay. you got it. Same thing here with uh, the uh, with the tin foil that you're going to put on um, on just one side of okay. it. Right? You, you'll need Done. some tape, but we'll improvise. Okay. Okay. They're called pinhole camera, uh, pinhole viewers for a reason. Okay. What you're going to do is take a pin and a tiny little hole Look, in here, right? You can actually can use, use it. Yeah. There you go. Okay, okay. Perfect. That's all you need. Now think of this as a projector, right? You're going to stand with your back to the sun, okay. and what's going to happen is the sun will enter that little pinhole and it will project an image onto that movie screen that you just made. Then all you're doing is looking through here, and what you will oh see. Gosh. Just like playing in real time, the inside of the box will show the way that the moon is blocking out the sun. So you've got all of these things in your house right now. So again, please, if you want to go outside uh, and enjoy the eclipse and you just and don't, you don't have the have glasses, glasses. Yeah. I guarantee you've got a shoe box, a cereal box, an Amazon box, whatever it is that you right. need uh, to get the job done. That's a great tip. Yeah, I'll post a tutorial on social media as nice. well if you want to pass along. And thank you for pre-cutting my materials. <laughs> and we want to thank uh, Dan Henry and Blake Hansen who are sitting by live for us. I would imagine the crowds have grown exponentially over at the Pro since we first checked in with you a couple hours ago. They have. I feel um, I feel like we're not doing enough. We don't have any crafts <laughs> over here. We feel here. left out here, Steve. Uh, <laughs> there, there are food trucks galore. Uh, they have live music uh, as well. And uh, in about eight minutes or so, uh, the folks down in Mexico are going to have their ch chance to see uh, totality. And uh, we will not be much longer than them. 7,000 people here at the Pro. Yeah. I can tell you, every one of them has shown up based on the sight of it. <laughs> There are a lot of people that are inside, of course. All those people will make their way out uh, for their chance to, to see. And we've had some quite a few breaks in the clouds, hopefully. I tell you, yeah. <laughs> Again, we're hoping that in 37 minutes and 40 seconds from now, we get at least a few breaks during that four-minute stretch of totality here because it will be very, very special, I guarantee you. I'm so. feeling a lot more optimistic as we've uh, we've made our way through the morning, definitely from seeing what we've been able to see so far. Uh, for now, Steve and Heather will see Send it back to y'all on the roof. All right. Thank you both. So I love the craft. That's super fun. If somebody doesn't, well, and it's easy yep. and it doesn't cost much if you have the materials For sure. and it keeps people safe. But let's talk about the glasses too. Okay. So I know a lot of people, so we had the partial solar eclipse just a few years ago. Yes. A lot of people at the time took the glasses, popped them in the junk drawer, right? And said, okay.
okay, I'll pull them out again in 2024 when the big show happens. So listen, over time, they might get scratched, they might get damaged. If your glasses have any scratches on them, they're really not safe. So here's a quick way to make sure that the glasses that you have are first of all effective, uh, two, and then safe as well. The first thing you're gonna look for is that ISO certification, right? right? So the uh, special ISO, it's ISO 12312 is the number that you're looking okay. for. And listen, don't chance it. If you don't see it printed on the glasses, don't use them. It's not right. worth it. I mean, this staring at the sun could do permanent eye damage, right? right? But you can test it in your own home by walking up to any uh, light bulb. Which okay? we did with the yeah, light Yeah, which we did earlier. And you should not be able to see from far away uh, the light bulb, right? As you get closer and look directly at it, you should be able to kind of really kind of look past the glare of the light and see like the filament on the inside of the bulb if you've got an incandescent light bulb. That's how you know that the eclipse glasses are working properly. Okay, which one goes first? Okay, so if glasses you're wearing sunglasses, glasses? that's a great question, right? So you want to make sure, again, the idea here is to block out as much of the sun's light as possible. So eclipse glasses first so that they sit closest to your face okay. and then prescription and then glasses I need my, over that. Yeah. My CVS readers. Yeah, okay. because imagine if you put them on the outside. <laughs> I'm sure about that. I think I'll just stick with these. There you go. There. It'll be bright enough that you'll be able to see. Oh, uh, speaking of bright spots, uh, are we going to Peyton next? Yes. Okay, okay Peyton Yeager live in Ennis for us. I have to imagine as well the crowds there are getting pretty excited. We are just about a half hour away from totality. I know it's really awesome here and the energy is picking up. I'm joined by Ashley Kalunga. She's uh, with marketing for the city of Venice and she's really been planning this for years, correct? Yes, our whole team has been collaborating for over a year um, just to make sure that this is an awesome and safe experience for everyone. Um, so huge team effort across multi departments and multiple agencies within the city. What is it like seeing it come to life right behind you? It is amazing and everybody talks about how totality is so emotional, but I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of getting emotional already <laughs> know, right now it looks like a crescent I know we have it on the screen um, but we were just looking up at it and it looks it's really it cool. looks really amazing um, talk to me about where people are viewing it I know downtown block party but a lot of people are spread across yeah. Ennis correct so we created the Eclipse over Ennis website and Facebook so we could kind of gather all of the events together in one place so people are at all of our public parks um, they're at multiple businesses throughout the city tons of people downtown I feel like everybody wanted a different experience some people wanted to be near nature and in the park, some in the country, and some downtown where all the hustle and bustle is. Right, just wanting to be around people. Yeah. I mean, we already see people lined up, you know, on the barriers, people have their lawn chairs. So I'm so glad you got to see this come to life. I know this has been um, a lot of planning. It's incredible. And my kiddos are here. I'm like, this is once in a lifetime. I want to experience it with them. So I can't wait to go down there and grab them for totality. Thank you so much, Ashley. And she and you are watching there our Fox 4 Dallas team coverage as they are continuing to cover this eclipse all across uh, the world here. Now, I do want to bring you out to this live image from NASA as we are just about a minute away from totality over along the Pacific coast of Mexico. This is a live image here. I do want to leave it up on your screen so you can get that live look as again, we are just seconds away from that beautiful image of totality here on our 2024 total solar eclipse coverage presented by Nissan. Over the next several hours, I want to remind you that we are going to have these live views from our cameras along the path of totality. This is just one of them, and those cameras are in the more than a dozen states where at least some are going to experience a few minutes of complete darkness. We're going to be checking in with our different affiliates as well. We have seen our Fox 4 Dallas team and Fox 7 Austin team. Our Fox Houston team is also on this, so we'll bring you some of their coverage as well. And as we do continue along that path of totality, we'll also check in with Chicago as well as Detroit and Philadelphia. Now, the first cities in the U.S. to see that total eclipse, complete darkness there, will be about 2.40 p.m. Eastern time. That's going to be in Texas, so about 30 minutes from now. The last of them will be about 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. That is going to be in Maine. The path of the total solar eclipse does range from 108 to 122 miles wide, and NASA estimates nearly 32 million people live in that path of totality, but an additional 150 million people live within 200 miles 
of that path. Again, that is a beautiful image right now as we are seeing that totality happening over along the Pacific coast of Mexico. They are seeing this first and then in about 30 minutes, we'll see it move through Texas. And then, as I mentioned, a lot of different areas along that path will get to experience this, what you're seeing right there on your screen, courtesy NASA, one of many images that we do have and will have. Now, the longest length of totality today in the U.S. is actually going to be in Texas, and that'll last for about 4 minutes and 26 seconds at the center of the eclipse's path. Something that's interesting is that every U.S. state, including parts of Alaska and Hawaii, are going to see at least a partial solar eclipse. So just because you're not in that path of totality, do know that you are probably getting some kind of partial solar eclipse if you do walk outside, but make sure that you are wearing those special glasses. Never look right at the sun without those special glasses on. Again, a live look right now coming in from NASA TV. This is the solar eclipse 2024. It's countdown to totality. And for folks along the Pacific coast of Mexico, the first to see this, they are now in that moment of totality. It's beautiful here, so I just want to leave that up for you on your screen at this time so you can watch totality achieved there over in the Pacific coast of Mexico. Oh, beautiful to look at there. I just want to kind of leave it on your screen without me talking so much so you can get that view. Again, you are looking over in the Pacific coast of Mexico as totality has arrived. You're going to watch as it goes back into a partial solar eclipse because uh, totality here lasting for about four and a half minutes and then it kind of moves right on. But I do want to leave this image up for you on the screen while this totality is happening. If you are just joining us here at 210 on the East Coast and 1110 on the West Coast, you are looking at totality here over on the Pacific coast of Mexico. This is a view coming in from NASA TV as they do have cameras pointed at the sun pretty much all across not just Mexico and the U.S., Canada as well. So we're going to be checking in with those cameras all throughout the day as we do get those beautiful views over the next several hours. Now you're watching our live coverage of the 2024 total solar eclipse presented by Nissan. Uh, we are gonna have these live views from the cameras along the path of totality and check in with our different Fox affiliates. We do have crews that are along the path of totality there in Texas, Illinois, Michigan, and in New York. We're gonna be checking in with Fox Weather, NASA, and the Associated Press as part of our coverage as well. Now, the first cities in the U.S. are still minutes away from having that total eclipse, that totality, and complete darkness, the first of which will be in Texas, and that's going to be around 2.40 p.m. Eastern Time. The last will be about 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time over in Maine, and then from there, the path does continue over into Canada. Whew, there it goes right there on your screen. You did see... Uh, that totality existing there for about four and a half minutes and now moving on and we should get a view just like that coming up shortly over in uh, Dallas, Texas. But right there, what you're looking at is the Pacific coast of Mexico. And I do want to pop up this live image that is coming in from NASA. As you can actually see off to the right side of your screen, that is the image here that does show the sun as it was in totality. But also you can see just how many people are watching it 
off to the left hand side that shows as it did get completely dark. You hear these stories over and over again from people who say it's just dark, it's still, there's no wind, and you can kind of see that right there on your screen as folks are hugging, crying. They do become emotional as they watch this whole thing play out. And you can see on your screen right now as we do have the sun coming back out, the moon moving out of the way, and now you have folks clapping, cheering, and as I said, crying because once again, it is a very emotional thing to witness. I saw one over in 2017 in Cookville, Tennessee, and it was beautiful. Everyone around me just staring up at the sky as they were just trying to pretty much deal with the emotions that they were overcome by as they were watching that. All right, it is now 2.13 on the East Coast and 11.13 on the West Coast. We're going to head to a quick two-minute commercial break, but do remember that in a matter of 20 to 30 minutes, we expect totality to start in the U.S., and that will begin over in Dallas, Texas. You're watching live now from Fox. We'll be right back. Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox. And we've mentioned our megaphone app that we are using here to get your images and videos coming in. This one from Amber over in Midland. And it says it's in Midland, Texas. You can see that partial eclipse right there on your screen. And if you do want to send us our uh, your videos and photos, just scan that QR code that is right there on the top right hand side of your screen. And it makes it pretty easy. You can send it right over with your name, location, all of that. And we'll make sure to show it here here on air. This is from David and it's over in El Monte. You can see that partial eclipse in that photo as well. Hey, look, they have us on right there behind them. It says ready for the solar eclipse and it is over in Texas. I love those glasses and I was actually trying to figure out how to make them a bit earlier, but I appreciate the fact that other people could figure it out. I definitely was not able to, so I had to just buy the ones from the store. Uh, this is adorable here. My dog watching the eclipse over in Dallas, Texas. I love dog pictures as well. Uh, looks like Ryan over in Santa Paula sent us almost the best we get in SoCal, but the photo, unfortunately, not showing up here on your screen. For now, I do want to head back to our Fox 4 Dallas team as we dip into their live coverage here. 
we'll send it back to you. I'm over here taking pictures of myself for my son. <laughs> well, I'm getting I'm getting the live well, updates here, right? So, Kelly, you don't know this. I just took a picture of you. One of our, one of our evening producer it has her glasses on, her chair. She's just staring <laughs> she's got up. She's colander out there. <laughs> so, I mean, she's going to see this thing. <laughs> it's a great, it's a great photo. Sure. Yeah, you know, and, and again, we also want to remind you, the photos that you're sharing with us on social media, again, I was distracted by my sons at school, obviously, watching any of the, the glasses on. Um, the people that are showing us pictures of your families and you're your gathering, please continue to do so. We, we enjoy seeing you. The sun, the moon, we'll take care of that part. And how you're uh, we'll do the heavy lifting. It. Yeah, for sure. And so it's so great that Lori Brown is getting to experience. I mean, we're getting pictures of our children from the schools. <laughs> Lori Brown is actually with her children at school. And which the is, principal's children, and I that's understand, right? right? They can get a whole family affair at, at, at school today. Lori. That's right. So it is so fun to be here at Canyon Creek Elementary School. And now I'm joined by the principal, Ashley Baker, who is also here with her sons today, getting to experience this special phenomenon. So tell me about the learning opportunity and what have you done to try to help capture that for students here? Yeah, well, anytime we can get students excited about real world learning, that's the absolute best. So they've been running outside. They're like, look at the moon, look, it's starting, it's happening. So they excitement is just all through the hallways. But Leading up to this, the teachers are really talking with their classes about what does this mean? And of course, different levels from pre-K to sixth grade, but so that when they come out, they know what they're looking at. Um, so some classes have already been out here doing before, during, and after sketches. They're over there now. And um, so all of the fun and excitement has already started. The kids are super excited. Lunch was pretty loud today, <laughs> but we'll take it. We're, we love it. Yes, I love that everyone seems to really get how cool this opportunity is and how rare it is. So Ames is here with us also. So you're in second grade. So tell me about what are you looking forward to and what are you enjoying about this experience so far? Um, I'm excited for when it gets dark and um, I like that it the whole moon covers the sun. Yes, and now we can start to see we're seeing it happen. So this is Abbott and he's in pre-K. So what do you think about all of this? Um... I love it. The moon is gonna turn black. <laughs> that, and it'll be dark out? Yes. <laughs> that is so exciting. Well, thank you for talking with us and we will continue to be watching the experience from kids' eyes, which is really, I think, one of the most the exciting best. things yeah. to see, <laughs> for sure. All right, back to you. And you know what? That says it all. I love it. I love it. That's all you have to say. Yeah, live pictures of right now of really what looks like a crescent sun. Uh, we are 19 minutes away from totality here across North Texas. Our coverage continues right after this. A big thank you to our Fox 4 Dallas team as they have been covering this and we've been checking in on their different uh, programming all throughout the day. Do want to take you out to this live image coming in out of Mexico where totality has been reached in this area as well. Looks like uh, we saw that partial eclipse. Now we have totality and it's going back toward a uh, partial eclipse once again, but in a matter of about 20 minutes, that's when we expect that totality in Dallas, and it's gonna keep on going up until it gets past New York into Maine and then over toward Canada. So we'll make sure to bring you all of this as it does happen. For now, I do wanna talk a little bit more about the importance of wearing those glasses. We say it time and time again, but I mean, it's a big deal if you don't. You need to make sure you're wearing them. So let's bring in Ronald Benner, the president of the American Optometric Association to break all of it down and talk about the importance. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thanks for having me. Of course. Now, the big question, you have folks who say, I look at the sun all the time. It's no big deal. Tell us why that is not okay. Well, I hope they're really not doing that and staring at the sun. Um, our eyes are not designed to have that much intense ultraviolet and infrared radiation hitting it. When you stare at the sun or look towards the sun, it's fairly uncomfortable. And there's a reason for that. We can damage the ocular tissue around around the back of the eyeball. We think of sunburns on the skin or even a, a welding burn on the front of the eye. And that tissue hitting that surface of the epithelial skin on our uh, uh, the cells that tissue repairs itself in, oh, a day or two. A sunburn's hurt for a couple days, and then the skin completely repairs itself. Same with the very front of the eye. But the retinal or the neuro tissue in the back of the eye does not repair itself. So should you stare at the sun and take a good look at it, you may notice that your vision is a little bit odd for, oh, maybe an hour or two, and then it may come back. But 
six, eight hours from now, it may actually become even worse. By tomorrow morning, it may become even worse again. Those cells will try to try to recover and try to recover, but they may give up and just quit. Neuro damage on the retina is permanent and it can affect distortion to the vision, it can affect color vision, and it can even give you holes in your vision, much like looking through a large screen where the, where the wires are very big, where you see bits and pieces but not the entire image. Sometimes solar retinopathies or burns from looking at eclipses will never recover. You would have to live with this for the rest of your life. We want everybody to enjoy and experience eclipse as a, as a happy moment, something that they get to remember. We don't want them to have to be reminded of it every day as something they wish they would have taken more precaution with. So enjoy the eclipse, but make sure you're using approved eclipse glasses and make sure that they're stamped with that ISO number 12312-2. Two, to make sure that those uh, those glasses are the right ones. And yes, I've heard patients even say, I can't see anything when I look out of these glasses. That's the point. When you look at the eclipse, you will be able to see what you want to see. But looking at general lights around the room or just outside, you shouldn't see anything. That's for your protection and your eyes protection. And I know this is something that is important to bring up because a lot of people, they'll be wearing them and they don't realize that they can't really see out of them. So they'll actually put them on and, and start maybe driving with them. That's obviously not, not a good, a good idea. idea either. <laughs> not a good idea. In fact, have a plan. If you're going to go view the eclipse, make sure that you're looking down to the ground or you're not looking up to the, to the, to the uh, sun until you're ready to. Put the glasses on, then look up. And, and probably the most important thing is if you have kids that are with you, make sure that they're following the rules too. Um, because if you're busy enjoying watching the eclipse, watching it come to totality, um, but you're not paying attention to the kids, we don't want the children to take their glasses off and actually cause a damage that they'll have to live with the rest of their life. So parents, if you're out there, make sure that you're watching what the children are doing um, because they, they don't always understand those consequences. That's definitely very true. All right, Ronald Benner, thank you so much for taking the time to, to be here with us and explain the importance of those glasses. Anything else you want to add about anything before I let you go here? Right. If you do have a problem and you think, think that you may have damaged or caused some damage to the eye, make sure you get into your local optometrist. Make an appointment, get in, tell them what happened so that they can evaluate to say this is what this is what's going on. We don't want someone mistakenly think that thinking that they had a problem like looking at the eclipse and oh we'll just see if it gets better. We want to make sure we catch all eye problems and eye diseases as soon as possible. So if you feel there's a problem, make an appointment, get in as quick as possible. All right, Ronald, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, you are looking at a photo coming in from NASA right now. This is a live look, and as you can see, it just kind of disappeared, but that was over in Junction, Texas, and we are looking at just some of the other live images that we have. Not clear exactly where in Texas this one is, but again, these are all in the area of Dallas where they are getting that partial eclipse and should see totality in just about 15 minutes. Now, this is a shot from NASA that's pretty cool to look at because it's pretty red. That is over in Russellville, Arkansas, one of the cameras that we have along that path of totality. For now, I do want to head to a quick two-minute commercial break here at 226 on the East Coast and 1126 on the West Coast. You're watching our live, raw, and unfiltered coverage of the Total Solar Eclipse 2024 presented by Nissan. We'll be right back.
Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox, and you are watching our 2024 Total Solar Eclipse special coverage presented by Nissan. We have had those cameras that are all along that path of totality, and in just about 12 minutes, that is when we do expect to see totality in Dallas, Texas, and then it's going to move on up into areas like New York and Maine before it heads over to Canada. Now, we do have these cameras, as I mentioned, that are all over the country, so we're going to be checking in on those. But I do want to pop up this one right here, courtesy NASA, and it is coming in out of Dallas, Texas, where they have been dealing with that partial eclipse, and it is about to be totality in just 11 minutes here. I do want to check in with some of our folks over on Megaphone. That is what we are using to get your images and videos, and we have been pulling them up here, but if you do still want to send them to us, make sure that you scan that QR code up to the top right hand side of your screen. It'll take you to where you need to go to hit that submit button, but include your name, location, and maybe a little header there. But as you can see, this is from Gabe over in Jonesboro and says here in Arkansas with a beautiful site, can't wait until totality. Also have this one right here coming in from Paula in Oklahoma. It says solar eclipse at the moment over in Oklahoma. Take a look this one from Dawn over in Havana, Illinois, Mrs. Brady's classroom, ready for the eclipse, Havana Junior High. That's pretty cool to see as they all made their special glasses and are looking up. They're ready to go and they're still, you know, maybe about 45 minutes or so away from that totality, but it is going to be cool to see. Just like this person said, Jeremy says, cool. And that's, I mean, Pretty standard. It is very cool to look at. We also have this one from Rye Camp over in Glen Heights. It says, we in Glen Heights in back of F-150. It looks like it's not loading, though, unfortunately. All of these are coming in over the last little bit, so looks like that was the last of them. But if you do want to scan that QR code, you can send us your videos, your photos, all of it right here on Live Now from Fox. And you are taking a live look over at Dallas, Texas once again. That is where we are in that partial eclipse, but it does look like we're getting closer and closer to totality, which should be happening in a matter of minutes. We also have this image right here that just popped up on our screen. This is coming in from Indianapolis as folks are gathered to watch totality there as well. Do want to head over to our Fox 7 Austin team. They are at some of the watch parties uh, as they do get closer to totality. Let's pop up that audio and listen in. Howdy. People here, they're having fun. They've got their eclipse glasses. And every time you get a break of sun, you can actually sort of see the eclipse. You see that sliver of the sun uh, blocked out by the moon. People keep cheering here when they see that. And it's getting kind of dark here. So we're, we're, we're getting the feel of what the eclipse is here at the Long Center. We got a couple people we're talking to. This is Nancy right here. Oh, oh, there it is. There it is. You, what? I gotta put my glasses on. How cool is it? Well, you can't. I can't see it with my glasses, but I can see it just with my naked eye. I won't. I won't tell anyone. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we got Adrian over here, right? Um, what? Why'd you guys decide to come out here? We figured it would be, you know, once in a lifetime opportunity to see this. I mean, I don't think we've ever been in a total eclipse before, and the next one is until I don't know what is like 600 or 800 years. Yeah, yeah. You may not be here then. It definitely won't it's be possible. here. So definitely worth an opportunity. I mean, it's cloudy, which yeah. kind of sucks, but just seeing everything get dark. I think is a pretty good, uh, uh, pretty cool opportunity. Yeah, yeah. And, you, and you can actually kind of see it, right? You can see it a little bit. I mean, you just got to keep vigilant, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, people keep, cl uh, keep clapping and cheering every time they see a little sliver of the eclipse. Um, we've got some people over here, Aaron and Megan and John. Uh, tell me, why did you guys decide to, to check out the eclipse with all these people? Well, we're actually born and raised in Austin, so local, and we wanted the opportunity to come out and be with other local Austin nights and people who've traveled from all over really yeah 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 i'm just here with my sister and her boyfriend and just enjoying the eclipse <laughs> and you, you have a british accent but you're not actually see here for the eclipse right we got to clarify correct living in austin too um <laughs> hanging out with my girlfriend girlfriend's sister to come and enjoy once in a lifetime opportunity yeah yeah and it, and it really is it really is guys thank you so much um we're gonna have much more coming up throughout the day on the eclipse here but boy it is getting dark here it is like like nighttime here in South Austin at the Long Center. Uh, it's really just kind of a cool uh, communal experience. Everyone's just here having a good time getting along. And we'll have much more coming up at 5. For now, we're live in South Austin. Guys, back to you.
Ah, very cool. A lot of people showing up at the Long Center and looking up at the sky currently. Yeah. Need to see. Well, the moon shadow is hovering over the hill country. It's just about there. Let's go straight out to Rudy Koski out at Lake Buchanan, where we have been showing you our, our, our eclipse cam. There it is. And it's looking pretty dark Ooh, out there, Rudy. Dark. Yeah, guys, uh, we are just moments away. We've just got just a little bit of the sun that is left. And, of course, uh, we've got some clouds that are starting to move in right now uh, into the area. We had a clear view uh, just a moment ago. And and I, I'm not sure you can hear the folks cheering. We are really, really close now. You can just see a little bit. Boy, the sky is now dark, and there we are. We are at the moment right now. I'm looking up. Go, look up. You can look up. Can you take the camera up, Chris? I can see stars. There's stars that are shining through. We are at the moment right now here in Lake Buchanan. You can see the corona. The clouds are actually helping to enhance this moment, guys. It's really uh, uh, nice. Everyone's trying to get a little quiet. Boy, it has really, really gotten dark here. And here it is for the next four minutes. We are at total eclipse over Lake Buchanan. Some fireworks are starting to go off on the other side of the lake. Oh my God, fireworks! <laughs> I think the kids are excited about the fireworks too. Um, it looks like maybe 15 minutes after sunset here. That's the feeling that we're getting. Now we're starting to see some of the beating. We're able to look up without our protection. That may be a slight solar flare on the lower portion. Only one star I see hey, Rudy. Out right now. Yeah. You know, the shot yes, we guys. have on the air right now is spectacular. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and you, there's, you said there are stars out there. We're, we're kind of tight on the eclipse right now. But uh, the, you can see the stars too, right? Yeah. Um, can you pull out, Chris, just a little bit? They want to see if they can catch that star that's just to the lower right of the moon. Can you, can you catch that, guys, now? No, it's nope. a little hard to see. Yeah. When we first okay. showed it, when it was but a wide you, shot, you can see Can you see, see the bit. red flare? Can you see the red flare on yes. the lower portion yeah. of the moon? Yeah, right at the bottom there. Maybe that's a coronal burst or something. That looks great. Wow, what a shot we are looking at. And you're right, the clouds are actually helping this shot at least. I don't know for, from you guys out there, but it looks great. It's really amazing. Yeah, uh, Nicholas uh, Cowie was telling me yesterday how he, uh, back in October, um, he was catching the um, annular that took place, the Ring of Fire, and he uh, was disappointed that cloud cover was happening. And then he looked at his photographs in his video, and uh, the clouds actually enhanced the moment. And uh, and he's right. Uh, it's it's mm -hmm. pretty amazing. You know what I. Of course, stay with this shot because, yeah, you can really see, I don't know what that is, a coronal mass ejection or mm -hmm. something at the bottom. But uh, what about the horizon? Is it dark all the way to the horizon? Or I don't know if you got a horizon where you are there. But I heard yeah, that... It, um, uh it, uh, it's the, the, the cloud cover. I'm looking back toward the dam now. The lights are on at the dam um, and um, looking back east. And uh, it, it really does look like maybe 8 o'clock, 8.30 at night uh, now when, uh, when the sun has started to, to go down. Hmm. Rudy, talk I'm a little bit about the temperature. See Is if it... I can hear the frogs. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about the, the frogs earlier this afternoon. Uh, tell us a little bit about the, the temperature. Is it, is it cooler? Are you feeling cooler outside right now? 
Yeah, the temperature definitely dropped uh, just a few moments ago, and, and we've got a nice little breeze that's blowing through that, that's adding, adding to it, um, the, the feel, the sensation. Well, we're hearing lots of oohs and ahs yes. and yelps and stuff. A lot of kids um, excited. Oh, I, I think it's starting to, it's right, starting to come uh, out. Here, here it comes. It's starting to merge back out. Uh-huh. And oh. boom. All right. Glasses back on. <laughs> and that's it, folks. Wow. That's great. That's great. Okay. All right. Oof. That was amazing to watch. That was coming in from our Fox 7 Austin team. Now, we are about to be in totality over in Dallas, so I do want to pop up their live coverage right now. People are getting quieter um, and just kind of processing. You kind of need to let all your senses go. As Steve has been mentioning, don't have the phone out. Just take in this moment. And Dan, what, what are you? What are we going to kind of see as this happens? Well, I tell you what. I mean, it, if we get lucky, we might see you know that diamond ring effect. Uh, maybe Bailey's beads. Bailey's beads is as the sunlight is is actually passing through the deep lunar valleys, and we're able to see that um, that would be a bonus and a diamond ring effect is when you literally have just that that yeah, tiny moment awesome. before totality and you see uh, that uh, kind of pinhead of light on the outside of the sun so we are Blake we are just about here right now we're at 140 right now oh oh my god I think that's one of the Bailey's beads there. Oh my God. Solar flare. This is 
the moment of totality. We have just completed it here in downtown Dallas. And what an incredible sight this has been. Mother Nature certainly smiling down across North Texas for really near perfect conditions for viewing, at least here in downtown Dallas. Uh, Dan and Blake, what are you seeing over where you are? Dan, I've got to ask, I saw the little dot right to the kind of the lower right hand pan portion of the sun. You had mentioned you were hoping to see something. It, did we see it? Yeah, that was a solar flare, actually. Um, <laughs> remarkable. Um, but uh, yeah, now we are, we are actually coming out of totality. But Blake, that was absolutely incredible. I mean, you know, very few things in life live up to the hype in the billing. This one exceeds it. I mean, this was truly remarkable. Yeah, for a couple of people who talk a lot for a living and our job is to describe <laughs> what you see. Uh, Speechless. That's not easy to describe. Um, you know, the fact that you could see essentially the the corona of the sun around the outside, these wispy, wavy edges to what we were looking at. I didn't expect to see that. I, I, didn't, I didn't see that in the photos that I've seen in the past. And so to see that, it, you really realize, you know, the sun isn't just this bright orb in the sky. It is this morphic thing that is floating up there. We knew it would require some luck, and that's exactly what we got here, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes prior to totality. You know, we got a really nice break in the clouds over downtown Dallas, and we saw it in all of its glory, and it was magnificent. And the, truly magnificent. It, it, walk me through the diamond ring. We, we've heard that mentioned. What we're seeing there. It's that little, that's that, and it, it you see it twice. Mm -hmm. You see it right before totality, and that's that final, you know, pinhead of light mm -hmm. from the sun. And sometimes it'll last for up to 10 seconds, and then you'll also see that as we're just coming out of totality as well. And um, we were able to, especially in the backside, yeah. that diamond ring effect was spectacular. It was only visible for a few seconds, but... It was amazing. Yeah, I'm running I, out of adjectives. Yeah, I know. And I, I think I heard one of our photographers, Mark Gustafson, who we played an interview with him earlier because he had experienced a uh, past eclipse, saying that this was much darker than the one that he'd experienced in the past. I mean, it was it was pitch black um, here as well. And I think even though you expect it to get dark, it's still surprising when that moment hits how quick it goes from day to night. There was a gradual effect, and then just the lights cut out. And then you look at this. Ooh, it was beautiful to watch, and we do appreciate both our Fox 7 Austin team and Fox 4 Dallas teams for their coverage. Do you want to pull up this live image right now? It is courtesy NASA, and you can see that is out of Russellville, Arkansas, where the sun is very red, and they are in a partial eclipse almost there at totality. We have been checking in with our different Fox affiliates all over the country here, and I do want to bring in Bob Barnard. He is over in Washington, D.C. right now, where folks have gathered here, and uh, Bob, looks like a lot of people are out there right now. Yeah, Josh, we're here on the National Mall in the heart of Washington. You see the U.S. Capitol behind us. And just over the last few hours, the crowds have been growing here. And you see a lot of people already looking up because, uh, as you just showed that uh, image, live image from NASA, uh, the partial eclipse, which we'll see here, about an 87 uh, percent coverage of the sun by the moon, has already begun. And as we sweep along here, you'll see a lot of folks are out here just kind of filling up the National Mall. Uh, the Smithsonian, uh, NOAA, the National Ocean uh, Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and NASA were here giving out free shades. So uh, almost anybody who wanted one uh, has been able to get a pair of these shades. And as we look over here, I want to kind of, there's, I spoke to them earlier when we we're on our local news, uh, Josh. Uh, we got a couple of uh, high school students from nearby Montgomery County who uh, snuck out and are here. Hey, guys. <laughs> okay, sneak, sneak out. out. Yeah. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Written yeah. permission. Uh, tell me, what do you make of like this this grouping here of people together watching this cool event? It's really nice to uh, see your community get together to watch something that like is really special that you can only sometimes only see once in your lifetime. And it's great to see people coming out here. It's nice weather. It's a great time. Yeah. yeah. And, and why did you want to be here? Why not maybe just in your backyard 20 miles from here or, you know, in the back of the school or something? because that's what I did last year and it was pretty boring, um, but yeah. You're talking about 2017, 2017, you remember that? Yes, I remember the exact 
layout of everything that was going on. I was in my, well, not in my apartment building, obviously, but everybody was gathered outside, you know, wanting to watch it, see if anything would happen. Nothing happened. It was Nothing pretty happened. Because that was summertime, right? This yeah. is obviously the school. So, um, have you, you know, we've been able to show our viewers a, a live image from NASA coming from Arkansas here. It's tough for us to, with our news camera to kind of put the, the, the glasses on, the shades on, and look up there. But what do you see when you look up there right now? It's, it's starting to get covered. In, it's so cool. <laughs> It's really cool, yeah. It's really exciting. It's exciting. I keep looking up at it every, like, few minutes, and it's changing little by little, mm -hmm. and it's really funny. Because the shadow is coming from the bottom right, and it yeah. looks like it's going to, like, kind of moving northwest, kind mm -hmm. of almost, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, the, the, the uh, best advice is you do not look without these stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. Keep those glasses on. Yeah. You need them. You need to keep them on. You yeah. won't know for another few hours if, the, if you've gone blind. There's, like, yeah. <laughs> right. You go home and you start walking into walls, you know you uh, yeah. messed up, right? Maybe a little, little, little damage, just a little. <laughs> Thank you guys. Have fun, okay? Have good, good to see you. Um, so, hey, Josh, I'll just kind of leave you. Like, look here. You know, you got a lot of folks out here, and as you, we'll, we'll point our camera up to show. I mean, they were saying 20 to 40 percent cloud coverage. Yeah, there's some cloud coverage, but the sun is bright. With these glasses, you can see through the clouds and see the exact shape of the sun, uh, with it being partially covered on the bottom right by the moon's shadow, um, or you know, the moon blocking the view. Uh, we're hoping that over time here over the next 45 minutes or so, there'll be breaks in the clouds and everybody who's down here on the National Mall, thousands of folks, will be able to clearly, with their shades, see this uh, here, at least in the D.C. area, partial solar eclipse today. It's pretty exciting stuff, Josh. Very awesome stuff. All right, Bob Barnard there with our Fox 5 D.C. team. Thank you so much for always is joining us. We appreciate it. Our pleasure. And we do have this beautiful image coming in right now out of Russellville, Arkansas. We were showing it a bit ago, but they are now in totality. A beautiful image, one of many that we have, and we'll see for quite a bit over the next uh, 30 minutes or so. Let's head to a quick break, but we'll be right back with more of our live coverage here on the other side. Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox. Thank you so much for being with us here on our total solar eclipse 2024 coverage presented by Nissan. Right now you can see Russellville, Arkansas. It looks like that partial eclipse coming back after we saw totality just moments ago. This is a live image coming in out of Russellville powered by NASA. We have seen some beautiful images here 
over the past, I would say, hour or so, just kind of coming in. But it looks like that is now moving on to a partial eclipse, and they will move up another photo here to give us a look at some of the other images that we are seeing. It is now 254 on the East Coast and 1154 on the West Coast. We do have one more commercial break that we have to get in here. So we're going to head to that and then we'll have much more coverage here on the other side. You're watching live now from Fox. We'll be right back. Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox, and you are watching our total solar eclipse 2024 coverage presented by Nissan. And we're just getting going here because we saw a, a totality there over in Dallas. We've seen it in Austin, and we still have a ways to go as it heads down the line. Uh, the last stop will be over toward Niagara Falls. We're going to have a camera there. We also have one in Cleveland, and a live reporter will join us in just about 20 minutes over in Buffalo, New York. Again, this is a live image that does appear to be coming in out of Carbondale, Illinois. That is courtesy NASA TV, and it looks like they are possibly about to be in totality there. Uh, we do have our Fox Chicago team that is covering all of this as well, so we'll be checking in with them for their live coverage. But again, that is a live look over at Carbondale, Illinois, one of many areas that are going to see that totality uh, let's see what we got going on here with the Associated Press. They have some pretty cool coverage as well with a lot of different views. I'm going to pop that up just so we can listen in. And right here, these are those images coming in out of Carbondale, Illinois, where it looks like they are about to be in totality. You can see the very edge of the sun right there. We should see it any moment now. And you can see the crowds off to the left-hand side of your screen that are standing around. They are waiting for it to get completely dark. Darkness will fall on them for a matter of two, three minutes or so. Uh, for most folks, this is actually going to be a little bit longer as far as totality goes than what we saw 
uh, when we did actually see this all happening back in 2017. Now, it does look like our Fox 32 Chicago team is covering all of this, so let's pop up the audio here and get a better look. As we told you, another city right in the middle of the path of totality and um, full pictures here as we look live from NASA's viewpoint, which has been showing us these pictures throughout the morning. But to actually see this happening live is incredible. Um, massive crowds showing up everywhere to be able to witness this live and in person. For you and I watching it on television, it's so spectacular. Imagine being out there and seeing it with your own eyes live and in person. So many people have talked about the reaction they have after witnessing this, um, from excitement and cheers, which I'm sure are going on right now all over the place, to also people saying it's just an experience that uh, they will never forget. Here's another live picture for you as they are taking it in here with uh, their glasses on. This is from our live cameras in Indianapolis. This is where Mark Strell has been joining us. And um, imagine this viewpoint. Here you are, Indianapolis Speedway. Normally they're going to watch cars racing. Here they've all gathered together just to watch it in that location as we take another shot here of our NASA cameras. And I'm wondering, um, Emily, have you, as you look at these live pictures from NASA, um, have you actually ever witnessed this live I, and in person yourself? I have not. I have never been in the path of totality. So missing out on this one, but there is going to be another one in 2044. So of course we have to be patient for it. But wow, what a view, right? And it's hard to take in through a TV screen, right? It's hard to take in through a camera because what you're not seeing here from this view is just total darkness in the middle of the day. Can you imagine? Have you ever seen a total solar eclipse, Sylvia? Yeah, you know, um, I think that uh, it's still fascinating to see. And in 2017, when I saw the partial, I was taken aback by how spectacular this is. And now I'm, I'm sorry I didn't try to go to be with some of the 31.5 million people who are living <laughs> in this path of totality. But one of our buddies is out there right now, Mark Strell. Let's go back out live to him. Mark, tell us what you are experiencing. You know, I've got to tell you, not only is it getting darker right now, uh, as you might expect as we approach totality, but this is really just a true sensory experience. Now, the last time when my photographer, uh, Jeff, and I uh, were together again back in 2017, we were out in Shawnee National Forest. There were about 100 people around, and you could just hear the hush of the crowd. A little bit different experience. We're now at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. You can kind of hear, you know, maybe a little 2001 Space Odyssey music. You can. It's a little bit different tone but you can still uh, see, you know feel a palpable difference because the crowd is just you know just in anticipation as we're just really just a minute a couple minutes away um, I did hear someone shout out just a minute ago that we've lost four degrees already and you can feel it we are in pit row right now normally it's been very warm here with the uh, sun shining on the asphalt and I can just feel a cool breeze coming in right now as well so again a total sensory experience it's not just Losing the sun, which is pretty incredible in and of itself, but it's the temperature change. As Mike Kaplan was describing earlier, it's how that the uh, the temperature of the colors change. The color spectrum changes a little bit. You know, I'm looking up through some of these high clouds right now, and you know, they, the cirrus clouds, those ice crystals in the upper part of the atmosphere, kind of changing a little bit as well as they kind of prism out some of that light and kind of diffract uh, the light as well. So we're down four degrees here. Uh, in 2017, there were reports of the uh, temperatures dropping between five and as much as 10 degrees. Now that was a much warmer August day, but I'm glad that the temperatures today are well into the 70s because we can still feel that temperature drop. And the temperatures aren't the only thing. And as Mike talked about the, the uh, character of the the colors are changing as well. But we'll also quite often see um, the winds change as well. And so this is really a true weather phenomenon as this sun shadow marches across the earth, just fundamentally changing the environment. And you can feel that right now as we are just on the cusp of totality here in Indianapolis. You can hear the crowd. 
It's really a surreal experience. This is so, so cool. Yeah. Mark, I know you are taking this all in. So is it is it as if dust is falling? Is that what you're experiencing? You know, it's kind of like dusk on steroids. It's just everything is getting dark. And in just a few seconds here, as we totally go to darkness, it's going to be like the light shade, mm. the lampshade is just pulled down. And we go to darkness, not like a sunset, but darkness 360 degrees. You know, I'm watching somebody take off uh, from Indianapolis International Airport. And I can imagine oh, wow. what their experience is in that airplane right now. I love Just being it. able to see that shadow moving towards Indianapolis now at over 1,100 miles per hour. Here we are. Here we are. Wow. <laughs> you know, I've experienced this before in 2017, and it was worth the price of admission today as well. This is absolutely spectacular. This is really just so incredible to see how quickly the darkness is setting in as well. You can just hear that crowd going crazy. I love this. What does it feel like? It's it's just exhilarating. Wow. I mean, to be able to experience and, and understand. I mean, I you know, I could understand how, you know, native peoples in past centuries would be totally freaked by something like this, you know, something totally unexpected. But to uh, to actually have the science and know the science and, and know the miracle and the mystery behind this makes it all the more incredible. I'm this loving. is absolutely a beautiful, beautiful experience. I'm loving listening to the crowd cheering. It just gives me chills. You're making me feel like I'm actually there with you, Mark, And as it's getting darker and darker. Remind everybody how long the totality will last where you are. Well, we're a little bit over four minutes, and I'm going to have Jeff pan down the speedway here. And you can see, I think, in the camera's lens how it's perfectly dark over us. And as you look off to the north and off to the northeast, it's still daylight over there. It's still normal. But here in this little almost eye of the hurricane, it's absolutely surreal. Just so stunning. Yeah, the I, crowd. Oh, go ahead, Mark. I was just going to say the crowd is just amazed. Just amazed at this. They are as enthusiastic. You know, this has been a polite crowd. It's been an enthusiastic crowd. I mean, these are the kind of crowds you love to see when you go to an event. Uh, everyone's kind. They're polite. Uh, this is the way... America should be. I agree. That's what I that's what I said of earlier when I was talking to the Adler Planetarium is that's what really makes this special as we watch your area get even darker by the moment as we speak. Just everybody coming together as one. We have one interest and it is good and we're excited for each other and excited to be there and thank you Mark for bringing us this vantage point. I, I uh, it's incredible just to watch from television. I can't imagine how you're feeling. You are welcome. This is, it's, it's joy. It's pure, natural joy. And to look up at the sun and just see it just blotted out, except for that ring, that ring of fire. That ring of fire. <laughs> are you incredible. noticing, are you noticing that temperature drop that you guys have told us sometimes will come with this? Before we even got to this point, uh, we heard I heard someone, uh, one of the scientists over here in the crowd, shout out that we had a four degree temperature drop. Okay. I would say we're easily probably six, maybe seven degrees at this point. Um, but you can just you can just feel it, just change in the atmosphere, a change in the air. It's absolutely incredible. 
changed in the wind direction. Wow. And how lucky are we that this is even better than 2017, considering we're not going to see another one for a very long time. And someone needs to put a light on you. At I least can't another see you, Mark years. Strell. Where'd it go? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I'm hiding here. The sun will be putting a light on me here very oh. soon. Um, yeah, this is, this is so cool. It is. Um, I, I, I had so much more I wanted to tell you, but you know what? It, the the, uh, the emotion here is just, it just takes over. I know. And I... here comes the very first peak of sun again, and you can hear the crowd go wild. In fact, you probably can see me get illuminated yes, more yes. and more so by the second. Wow, this is absolutely beautiful. And yeah. We keep our camera yeah. here. We're watching you go from dark to light again. Um, and hearing the screams of the crowd, which just makes this even more special, doesn't it? You know, uh, that's one thing that is so cool. Uh, I mentioned before we had about 100 around us in the woods before. Now there are literally tens of thousands. And i got to tell you, it's that st the same raw human emotion that people are experiencing something that they... They really have never experienced before, for the most part. And uh, it's just such an incredible, out of the ordinary experience. Wow. And it, it's just, it, it's just that kind of, almost like a community, uh, a community, a communal shared experience at this point. Which is the best. That's something we all need and want at this time. Mark, stand by, because guess what? I'm heading out to Lake Michigan, where no, I'm not going to head out there. I'm going out there where my friend Tim McGill is. He's got an amazing seat. Tell us about your vantage point, Tim. Yeah, I'm on the Sea Dog. I don't know if you can hear me. They just kind of throttled it up here. We were cruising at the Peak Hotel, at least for Chicago, trying to take it all in, or about 94%. Very jealous of Mark Strell, especially when he said we're getting 60,000 times more sunlight here compared to Indianapolis, but still, it's pretty cool because it kind of appeared like dusk here for a little bit. Still does feel that way. The sun is definitely kind of dim. We've got about 73 people on board this boat, and we're cruising through Lake Michigan, checking out the eclipse, which just hit totality, at least for here in Chicago, just a couple minutes ago. It's cooled off here, but I think it's more because I'm on the cooler waters of Lake Michigan and now, especially since we're cruising along here, I'm guessing about 30 or 40 miles per hour enjoying it. But everybody was taking it all in. They all have their safety glasses, kind of reclining back in their seats, looking up at the sun. I got a glimpse of it with my safety glasses when we were close to that totality here. People seem to be enjoying it here. I've got the, I don't know if you can hear me, I've got Grace Fuller, who's the general manager of City Cruise in Chicago. So do people have to book this in advance? Yes, but we do take walk-ups every day. And this is just the start of our boating season, so we've really just started operating back with the sea dogs on the water again. But we're open Thursday through Sunday right now until the warmer weather hits. Sea Dog Extreme opens over Memorial Day weekend, and we are just thrilled to be back on the water. Thanks for being here today. So I love the idea of doing this cruise. I know you probably have no way of knowing this, but are a lot of these people tourists, or you think a lot of them are from Chicago? Are we going? <laughs> Any idea? Um, I'd have to get back to you on that. See, it's pretty fast. Getting a little wet here as well, so I'm feeling all the elements here. But uh, everybody seems to be having a good time as we're cruising just offshore. Or now we're coming up to Navy Pier. We're headed back home, guys. But enjoying what we can from this vantage point out at Lake Michigan, trying to stay dry and trying not to get too seasick. Back to you, Sylvia. <laughs> You know what, Tim, I'm thinking, though, people are going to say, where were you during the solar eclipse of 2024? And look what you get to say. <laughs> On a boat, which is the best place to be. That was awesome. Thanks so much, Tim. Keep having some fun. Well, as we showed you earlier, a whole lot of people are in Chicago uh, seeing the total eclipse from the Adler Planetarium in the Shed area. And we are joined once again by Dr. Laura Truil. She's an astronomer and VP of Science Engagement with the Adler Planetarium. Laura, I just want to know what this experience has been like. 
Uh, I am thrilled to be here at the Adler. It has been such a special moment where it got a little bit darker, it got a little bit colder. Uh, the light, the feel of the light very much changed. And there's this amazing, wonderful, warm crowd here enjoying the moment all together. So. A big thank you to our Fox 32 Chicago team. I do want to take you out to this live image that we have coming in from NASA and the Associated Press. You can see Cleveland, Ohio, now seeing that totality right there. I do want to leave that image up and turn up the audio because you can hear all the cheering and excitement there. Again, this is a live look over in Cleveland, Ohio. And we are here to bring you the sights and sounds from all over the U.S. as we see totality continue to creep up toward the north. Right now, you're looking at a beautiful image out of Cleveland, Ohio, where they are in totality. And as you can see, folks have gathered at the stadium there. They are looking up and dealing with complete darkness at this point. Uh, this is just one of several spots still left to experience that totality in the coming few minutes. And in a matter of minutes, we're going to go live over to Buffalo, New York, and we'll be joined by Connor Hansen. He is with Fox News, and they are experiencing totality over in Buffalo right now. Let's head to a quick two minute commercial break here at 317 on the East Coast and 1217 on the West Coast. You're watching live now from Fox. We'll be right back.
Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox, and you are taking a live look from NASA right now. That is a camera over in uh, Tupper Lake, New York. As you can see, it looks like they are about to be in totality. Still, though, a partial eclipse at this point. One area that is now in totality, that is Buffalo, New York. I do want to head over to Connor Hansen with Fox News joining us live. And Connor, you can see it is very dark around you right now. That's right, Josh. Just in the past few minutes, it went to daylight to complete darkness, and we're actually looking up at it right now, and we just saw the complete ring around the sun, the corona there, as we've gone into the totality of this eclipse. Uh, such a cool experience. Uh, you can't really tell behind me because it's now pitch black, but we're in a park full of people, hundreds of people. As soon as it happened, everyone was cheering, having a great time, uh, you know, even a religious experience for some people we've seen here. and. Uh, it has been cloudy, but we have been able to look up and see it. I can look at it right now. It'll be tough to show you on our camera, but I know uh, NASA is streaming it as well. Uh, we've been very lucky to get some breaks in the clouds at the perfect times so everybody here can enjoy it. We were getting a little bit nervous because it was very cloudy this morning up right until the eclipse happened. So uh, people have been waiting patiently, have their glasses on, have been able to see uh, it at different phases throughout. And luckily, we were able to see the full eclipse, which has been a very cool, very exciting experience uh, because this is the last time most people in the U.S. are are going to get to see this, Josh, for at least another 20 years, I should say. For sure, and that's quite a long time to wait. So question-wise, as far as those crowds, I know that a lot of people were expected to show up there. What are you seeing as far as the number of folks who have turned out? Is that pretty much what they expected? You know, we're at a we're at a very nice park right here in the heart of downtown Buffalo, and it's pretty full of people. <laughs> you have to take my word for it because I know it's dark behind me. But the state of New York uh, expecting upwards of a million people to visit, uh, especially in the western half of the state where that path of totality goes over. Um, so, you know, they have been preparing for this for years. There are warnings all over the highways saying expect delays, expect traffic uh, as people flood into these communities, even warning people to top off their gas tanks, get extra cash, uh, warning it could stretch the cell service. Um, I got to be careful when I look at that now. It might be uh, into the danger zone again. But it's just now, you can tell behind me, I think, uh, starting to lighten up again. So it's just crazy how fast that happens, uh, going from daylight to complete darkness. It's just a surreal, surreal experience. All right, Connor Hansen there with Fox News, joining us live from Buffalo, New York. Thank you so much for being here with us, Connor. Thank you so much. And you are taking a live look here from one of the cameras that we have over in these different locations. These are courtesy NASA, and you can see Tupper Lake, New York. It looks like they are about to be in totality any moment now, so I do want to leave this camera uh, up here on this image so you can watch it. I'm not going to be talking as much. I'm just going to leave it up here so you can get a better view. But you are watching our total solar eclipse 2024 coverage. This is presented by Nissan. And over the past several hours, we've had live views from our cameras along the path of totality. And there are still several areas that are yet to experience this, including folks who are over toward, let's say, Niagara Falls, as well as over in Maine. So still a lot more to see in our coverage presented by Nissan, but uh, over the last hour or so, we have seen totality happen in places like uh, Dallas, Austin. Uh, we saw it in Carbondale, Illinois a short time ago, and yeah, the images kind of all look the same, but it is one of those situations where you can be there and you have, as Connor was saying, almost a religious experience for some folks, and it just feels different. Everything gets kind of quiet and dark, uh, and that's what the folks there in Tupper Lake, New York, are about to be dealing with any moment now. As you can see, there is just a sliver left of the sun there as the moon is moving in. Uh, so we should see that totality happen in just a matter of seconds here. We've been checking in with our Fox 4 Dallas team, as well as Fox 7 Austin, Fox 32 Chicago. We're also going to be looking at our Fox 2 Detroit team as well, all having coverage as they do have locations that are all across this area impacted by the totality here. Looks almost like you're looking at nothing right there, but there you go. That is totality right now over in Tupper Lake, New York, just one of uh, several areas where we have seen these live images pop up over the last hour. I'm going to turn my mic down and just leave it on the shot so you can get a great view.
And what you're looking at is over in Tupper Lake, New York. That is on the right side of your screen, totality reached. And over on the left side, you're seeing folks that are gathered. And you can't really capture just how many are there, but this is over in Niagara Falls, New York, where we expect to see uh, totality any moment now. We know that tens of thousands of people are expected to show up there. If you look in the distance, you can see there are people everywhere just waiting for that moment of totality, and it is just minutes away here. Uh, I do want to pop this other image up right now so you can get a closer view of uh, totality there over in New York. Again, a beautiful view, and we've seen many images just like this over the past several hours. Again, popping this up so you can see Niagara Falls as they should be seeing totality any moment now. And while this is going on, our Fox Philadelphia station also in continuing coverage as they're covering areas of New York. So let's pop up the audio here and listen in to them. Yeah, I can see why you'd chase these things and you want know? to see them again. Ugh. Yeah, connection to a celestial event like that. Yeah, it's very special. We're all connected today. We're yeah. all going through this together. So that's very special. We'll be right back. Caught them right before a break, but again, you can see totality now over, over in Tupper Lake, New York, but it looks like any moment now we'll get a beautiful view of Niagara Falls. Let's head to a quick two-minute commercial break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox, and our coverage does continue of the 2024 total solar eclipse presented by Nissan. What you're looking at to the top right-hand side of your screen there that is over in Maine as they are about to see totality there. We have seen it pass through areas of Mexico into Texas. It's gone Carbondale, Illinois, Russellville, Arkansas, and up next is going to be Maine. But I wanted to call your attention to this image there on the bottom right, that is New York City, and it is much darker than you'd normally see, and that is because parts of New York are seeing that totality, or for New York City, that partial solar eclipse. Do you want to pull this up full so you can get a better view over in Maine? Let me take down that banner so you can see. Again, they are just moments away from that totality here.
Let's check in with our Fox Philadelphia team as they do cover the latest. 750 of these to give out and they gave them all away. So we're talking well over 750 people showing up to see uh, just what you're looking at here on this beautiful campus. We have people with their chairs. We have people all walks of life, all ages. Some of the kids got out of school so they can have their lunch on the lawn to see it. It's been pretty exciting and not just that. Of course, we've also had some experts here from Westchester uh, like Professor Karen, who has been with me all morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Oh, good, yeah, good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Listen, you have to forgive me. So good afternoon. Amazing day. Historic day. Talk to me about kind of what we're looking at. It's a little cloudy, but we're still getting some some action. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the clouds are working out well because the people that didn't have glasses, it's cutting down the light and they're able to actually see through the clouds. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we've got a great amount of people here. Everybody's sharing glasses. We were using the telescopes till these clouds rolled in and it's just been great. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I have to tell you, it got a little chilly once the is that normal? It does cause the temperature to drop a little bit, but I think more than that, the clouds are what's cooling it off around here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Professor Karen has been really great for me because she's been explaining a lot of this, and you've, you've had a special telescope. Folks have been checking it out, and there's a special filter on it to make sure that, of course, you don't damage uh, the telescope, but also you get to get a good, a good glimpse of what we're looking at for the eclipse. Absolutely, and we've been lucky today that there have been some sunspots to look at. So before the eclipse even started, everybody was checking out the sunspots, and then now we've been watching that moon slowly cover up the sun. 90%. I got to tell you, it's pretty fascinating. I know, she, I know Shiva and Jason, I'm not sure if you're, you got anything to see this, but my gosh, and this is on, this is 90%. I can't imagine what 100% would look like. I know we have Mike Jarek, our anchor up in Rochester, getting the full totality. Um, and the next time we see this is 20 years from now, he said? 2044. Gosh, okay. Yeah. So this is the time to see it, guys. I mean, Wow, it is something to behold. And I mean, people are excited. I'm excited. I've never seen anything like this, by the way. Thank you for the glasses, by the way. They, they are fantastic. <laughs> and guys, um, I'm really excited to be here. These kids have been, uh, I don't know if they're skipping class or not, but uh, <laughs> they've been here enjoying it too, taking their taking their time in. They didn't confirm or deny, so I told them to just do what they need to do. Hopefully they don't miss uh, too much class. I know they get two or three absences on excuse for a semester. Is that right, pa Professor Karen? How many, ca how many classes can they miss until they get in trouble? <laughs> it's up to the professor. Professor. Okay, something mm. professor. So hopefully mm. they got a, they got a lenient one for today, guys. But yeah, it's really really cool. I can still see it. It was on and off. I thought we were gonna have a dud, but I'm so glad you came <laughs> to me when you did because I had nothing to show you uh -huh. until you came to me. So I'm really excited. Hey, Shane, I actually have something to talk about. Peak time for us for our area was about 3:23. So that was about 10 minutes ago. Was there a darkening in the skies? I know it's only 90% for us. Nothing compared to what we saw in Rochester. Yeah. But can you just walk us through what was going on? just about 10 minutes ago. Yeah, just about 10 minutes ago. I mean, first of all, the, the crowd began to cheer like crazy just to see uh, what they were looking at. It also got really a uh, little bit more breezy, as you heard from Professor Karen, who explained uh, that temperature drop that tends to happen. We're also dealing with the clouds here, but it was really something to behold in terms of the darkness that we were able to see. And it was the darkness only happened for a quick second. I heard Mike Jarek talk out in Rochester that the, 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 the best look of it, if you will, only passed in a moment's time. And that's uh, what we saw here just about eight, eight minutes ago, I would say. So it's pretty cool. And with just what you explained, what Mike saw, we saw just at a little uh, less of that vantage point since we're only at 90%. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah. you know, we have clouds, but at least it's warmer out there. So it's, it's comfortable and it can spend, it's the nicest day we've had here in a while. So it could be yeah. worse. And uh, what a day. It and could be nobody, worse. Nobody should be in a classroom today. you got to be outside. Yeah, Professor, you, nature you, did is you have classroom. a class today? No, no. I didn't. You didn't have a class today. They got <laughs> Wawa sandwiches out here. Folks huh? bringing their Wawa sandwiches, yep. their hoagies, and their waters. I mean, they're doing it right. I mean, the kids are here. The grandkids are here. A lot of folks from the community. Of course, you know, Westchester University, uh, outside of it, it's re very residential. So we've seen neighbors come with their chairs and such. It really is a community event, and people are making their time to see it. So it's been, it's been pretty cool. That's the right. best part of this whole thing, I think. Yeah, and it, and it goes all the way through for the next hour, so till about 4.35. So you might have missed the peak, but you can still get your glasses, look up, and see everything that's happening with the sun and the moon. All right, Shana, thank and you. And if you don't much. have these glasses, by the way, remember, you guys, we have a whole bunch of how to's and a DIYs on our website, fox29.com. Drew Anderson was really good with it this morning. So if you have a cereal box, some paper plates, check out our website. There's a bunch if you can't get your hands on these. Apparently, they're hard to get. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And then you can.
And that is our Fox 29 Philadelphia coverage there. We have been checking in with our different affiliates over the last, I would say, several hours as we've seen that partial eclipse uh, move into totality for so many areas. We appreciate everyone who is watching our solar eclipse 2024 coverage presented by Nissan. And I do want to call your attention here to Megaphone. It's something new that we're using here that allows you to send us your pictures here of the eclipse that you've taken yourself. All you have to do is scan that QR code that is at the top right hand side of your screen. It makes it super easy. And then we can show your images right here on Live Now from Fox. And that one says, my chicken. It is from Ricky, and he is watching our live coverage here as he takes a photo of a chicken wearing glasses. So at least the chicken is keeping their eyes safe. That's important. Also, thank you to Jane over in Torrance. My dog and I enjoyed the partial eclipse. The video is a time elapsed picture of that partial eclipse. Jane, thank you so much for sending that our way. Lillian over in Dallas putting glasses on her dog, the same kind of situation that I would do. Josie watching the eclipse at Turtle Creek in Dallas. If you still want to send us your photos, just uh, do pull out your phone and scan that QR code up to the top right hand side of your screen. Archie enjoying the eclipse. That is from Emmy over in Florida. I am personally in Orlando, Florida. I have not left the studios, but some of my producers have, and they say it's pretty cool to see the partial eclipse here. It's important to note that just because you are not in the path of totality doesn't mean that you can't see at least a partial eclipse. However, if you are going outside to look at it, make sure that you do have those glasses just like this cow right here on your screen. John over in Northrop, Texas saying, are cows taking turns checking out the 2024 solar eclipse? Another look right here. This is coming in from Jalel. Hopefully I said your name right over in Brownsville, Texas. Here is Brownsville, Texas, with a shot of that partial eclipse, which did eventually become full totality. We are going to head to a quick two-minute commercial break now at 338 over on the East Coast and 1238 on the West Coast. You're watching live now from Fox. We have much more coverage to come as we see totality in several other parts of the U.S. <laughs>
Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox. We are in our total solar eclipse 2024 coverage here as we've seen totality in several areas across the U.S. Still just a couple that have yet to see it, but that partial eclipse going to last for a while for so many people out there. Do want to pop up this image right here coming in out of NASA, one of many images where that partial eclipse is still in full swing there. This is a live look over at Dallas, Texas. Uh, we do have some other cameras as well, but for the time being, I want to check in with our Fox Philadelphia team as they are still continuing their live coverage over in New York. Totality in a couple years, you know? All right. <laughs> I can do two more adventure. years. You're always up for an adventure. I know you That's are. That's right. All right. He's all, he's all, all of a sudden perked up, right? <laughs> Hold on, Brandy. All right, Mike. No. Oh, oh she's gone. She left. Go, go take your pick of the day. We're back after this. <laughs> All right, looks like we just caught the tail end of their coverage before they did go to a break. We do have several other affiliates that are covering all of the action. Throughout early this morning into this afternoon, we've been checking in with our Fox 4 Dallas team. They are still in their coverage for another 20 minutes or so. Looks like they are in that coverage, so let's pop up the audio and listen in. Uh, now as we transition into talking about <laughs> severe weather, don't want it so much. Uh, we will continue with our eclipse coverage, continuing to check in with our crews, show you some of the images of that, uh, that special moment as we experience totality in Texas. We'll be right back. Everyone's decided to go to a commercial break right now, so I think that's the perfect time to take our final two-minute commercial break of the hour. We'll be right back with more live coverage as we continue our coverage of the 2024 total solar eclipse presented by Nissan. You're watching live now from Fox. My name is Josh Breslow, and we'll be right back. Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox. Still taking a live look from our cameras that we have all over the country right now. This is in Carbondale, Illinois. We're about 30 minutes removed from them experiencing totality, but still that partial solar eclipse will be in effect for so many people for another hour or so. We have been taking a look at some of our different affiliates, including Fox 4 Dallas. They are back on the air right now, so let's pop up that audio. 
And here we come indeed. If you want to just run out there and catch one more glimpse uh, while totality uh, has long since been over, we still do have uh, just a little awesome. bit of a partial eclipse left. Uh, I know that all eyes are on the skies at UTA where uh, the planetarium folks uh, have been bringing us some really incredible pictures and Alex Boyer is out there uh, meeting some incredible folks too. What are you up to? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, guys, and of course, I don't think anybody could be more excited about the way that this ultimately turned out than the UTA planetarium director himself, Levent Gudemir. I know this has been a long time coming. You can breathe a little easier now, right? That that this has gone off really pretty incredibly. I think I think so, yeah, but everything was worth it, well worth it, because what we experienced was, to me, it was just a cosmic art. Yeah. Exactly. And, and how, how did you feel standing out here and feeling the energy of the students and staff? I mean, it almost felt like a pep rally to me. Well, I couldn't believe my eyes, actually. I've seen a lot of eclipse pictures. This is my first time experiencing it in person. Seen a lot of videos, uh, pictures. Uh, I, you know, heard uh, testimonies from a lot of people. But this is, uh, everybody needs to experience it. It's different. Yeah. You even talked about, you know, your young son, your six-year-old. You wanted him to experience it. What, what did he think? What did he tell dad? Well, he said it was amazing. <laughs> it, I mean, he was so excited. He didn't want to go to school today uh, <laughs> because he wanted to experience it with me. But, uh, yeah, it was all worth it. Yeah. As a scientist and as someone who this is what you do, this is uh, you know your your day to day. What is it like for you to see other people, maybe that aren't uh, really science minded, really blown away by something like this? Well, I think it's it's a great experience for everybody because this is something um, strange happening. This is not something we can experience t even time to time. It is just uh, for most of us, it's a once in a lifetime event. Otherwise, uh, we would like to chase eclipses for our entire life. Right. So uh, uh, it, it's. It's a great experience, uh, so everybody should experience this. I mean, I just uh, I cannot find other words. Yeah, isn't it pretty incredible? You and I were out here not even 30 minutes ago. This place was packed, exactly. and now I think I see the last of the wagons, uh, people leaving mm -hmm. uh, for today. But nonetheless, I'm sure yeah. uh, you would agree this is gonna gonna really live on yeah. in, in people's minds and hearts. Yeah, and especially this is you know nature. Uh, the, some, the nature is doing something differently today. Yeah. I mean, regardless if we have uh, you know we like science or we don't like science, doesn't matter. It, it is it is for everybody. Thank you so much for your perspective and thanks for hosting us today, guys. I'll send it back to you. Art. Yeah, you know, listen, again, this this is certainly something, uh, as you mentioned, it, that does not happen routinely for all of us. And the thing that I love about it is that there are people who are, will see this today who will be inspired to go on to pursue careers in science or yes. really to kind of dive deeper, um, you know, into what happens, uh, you know, in nature. I know Dion Anglin's been meeting a lot of those folks. And I will say, we, we've been giving a lot of credit to Allie for the weather. I think it was Dion Anglin's outfit. Oh, really yes. Called the sun, said, no, no. You're you're not going to upstage me with that outfit. Wait, I hope, I hope, I hope I helped. I hope it was a little <laughs> bit of inspiration for the sun. Uh, but uh, that is uh, just one of the many aspects of just how awesome this experience was. Breathtaking, jaw-dropping. I think I heard so many uh, ways that people uh, just described how it made them feel. And um, as you mentioned, we talked to people who were from right here in Fort Worth, and then even someone is from as far away as London and it's just amazing amazing at how uh, this experience was so moving for those here we're seeing the last of the folks trickle away and leave uh, this area they had over uh, let's say close to 2,000 folks uh, here who purchased uh, the tickets and that uh, showed up here was just uh, uh, the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History was an amazing host I uh, asked just a moment ago they told me nothing uh, there were no glitches everything went off without a hitch uh, we got to a uh, chance to view the eclipse I did all of my eclipse homework last night and uh, went over just as many you know facts and details as I could it was nothing in comparison to what it was actually like to be here to to be able to be in the moment and like you all have been describing just um, to just step back for a moment and take a few uh, seconds if you will just to really take it all in and I think that's what everybody here had a chance to do they were screaming uh, there were uh, just oohs and ahs like you all mentioned but uh, just a lot of people just really hard to put it into words and that was also a reaction but very latest live from here in Fort Worth back to you guys Dion thank you Gad. so crazy how we all did lots of homework over the weekend right. <laughs> and we're gonna prepare we know this and we know that and then the moment comes and we're like 
We're just going to stare. Well, you know, it's listen, even, even here on the back end, you know, I'm going through all, even the professional photography that we have right now posted mm -hmm. on our website. And you can see I'm looking at images that I know were taken just feet from where we are. And they compare not at all to what's in my mind's eye wow. from having sitting here having this experience. It was just wonderful. My children have both been texting me and sending pictures from school. Look at this. I'm like, you are going to remember this for the rest of your life. Absolutely. And share the stories. Absolutely. Our eclipse coverage continues. Uh, don't go away. We are back with more right after the break. A big thank you to our Fox 4 Dallas team as they continue to bring us their live coverage with a lot of different views. And what you're looking at on your screen now is over in Cleveland, Ohio. As I mentioned, we are essentially still having all of these partial eclipses that are taking place. Just because you didn't experience that totality doesn't mean you didn't get at least a pretty cool partial eclipse. And this is going to go on for another 30 minutes or so in most locations across the U.S. as the path of totality now moves over into Canada and yeah, pretty cool to see. Let's uh, pop up just another live image that we do have. Again, these are all coming in and kind of switching around. So I'm checking to see exactly where this camera is located right now. It looks like it's actually over in Washington, D.C. Now we did have Bob Barnard who was with us a short time ago, and he was talking about the large crowds that had gathered on the National Mall. Of course, we know that they're not getting full totality, but they did get a pretty cool view, just like so many people all across the country. Again, a live look here over in Cleveland, Ohio. This shot coming in via NASA TV. We're going to continue to check in with different stations. We've got uh, NASA, we have Fox Weather, we do have the Associated Press and our Fox 4 Dallas and Fox 7 Austin teams. Also Fox 2 Detroit. I'm trying to figure out which uh, feed this is that we're watching over in one here. This looks like NASA. This is NASA TV right here. So let's pop up the audio and listen in. So you guys to vote. We have the results of that poll right now. Let us bring it up. Whoa! Hey. All right, congrats, Sarah. Oh, Congrats. Thank you. Team Earth, Thank 26 percent. Team Thank Sun, 26 percent as well. But Team Moon, 48 percent. Congrats, Team Moon. Go, today. Team Moon. All right, again, thank you to everyone who participated. We were the real winners of today, though, those who got a show. But we're going to send it back over to Indianapolis for another really important interview. Thanks, Megan. We are back here in Indianapolis. It has been an incredible day, and it is not over yet. With me, I have Jake Bleacher, the Chief Exploration Scientist for NASA. Jake, welcome. I, I could not be happier to be How here. How was that eclipse for you? Really quickly. That was amazing. It's getting <laughs> warm again. I saw my fleece on from uh, when we were in totality. That was incredible. Well, today has been all about the eclipse, all about the sun's light. And I want to pivot a little bit here because you're getting astronauts ready to go back to the moon, live and work there for the first time in 50 years. How is how the sunlight shines on the moon also very crucial to what we're trying to do there? Yeah, well, just like this eclipse, it's the celestial dance between the sun, the earth, and the moon. And when we go to the moon, we'll actually have instances of eclipses where the earth will eclipse the sun. Wow. Uh, so it's something to think about. But uh, we're really uh, interested in the lighting in the South Pole. Our Artemis 3 mission will land astronauts at the South Pole. And uh, there, because the moon has almost no axial tilt, uh, the light, the sun is always right along the horizon. Wow. And so high peaks have sunlight more than normal amounts of time and low depressions have almost no sunlight or never see the sun. And so we think there might actually be water trapped there. Incredible. So one thing that we've talked a little bit about on the broadcast is space weather. And space weather is really important to understand, especially when it comes to the safety of our astronauts. Can you describe how the instruments URSA and Hermes are actually helping keep our astronauts safe? Yeah, URSA and Hermes, our payload science instruments that we'll have on our gateway. Gateway is going to be a station, a research station that orbits the moon um, and astronauts can stop there on their way to the surface of the moon. And these payloads or these science instruments will be there to basically detect what the, the solar weather is like, what we call space weather. So that radiation that our astronauts will live in when they're actually there. So understanding your weather is the best way to be prepared for it. Absolutely. Well, you've given us a lot to be excited about. Jake, thank you for being here on this incredible day. I would not have missed it. Well, folks, that is all we have from Indianapolis. Thank you for joining us. It has been a wild ride, pun absolutely intended, and we've had an amazing time. So from all of us here, back to you guys.
All right, a big thank you to NASA TV for their coverage. As I mentioned, we've been checking in with our different Fox affiliates all over the country, especially those who have been along that line of totality, the path of totality. We've also checked in with NASA, the Associated Press, Fox Weather, all of them. Our Fox 4 Dallas team continues their live coverage, so let's listen in. On TV, no doubt, because we've got some <laughs> severe weather moving in. But uh, I'll just say this as we leave: if you got a chance to see a uh, total solar eclipse, even if it means traveling, it is well worth uh, the trip after uh, experiencing it. Be cool if this was Groundhog Day and we could do it all over again. Yeah, tomorrow. I, don't, I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> Let's make that happen. All right, we'll send it out to break. Uh, Stephen Heather will be with you right after. And connect them with what we do. Yeah. yeah, you hosted this wonderful three-day event here and invited the community and all your visitors in to come and explore and learn a little bit about Glenn. Why was that important to you? It's important, but, well, as you know, having a total solar eclipse pass over your community is, for most people, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. But to have a total solar eclipse pass over a NASA community right. like Cleveland, right. that's even more rare. But what it does is it creates such a great opportunity to connect people with what we do. Mm -hmm. Everybody is here paying attention to our planet, paying attention to the moon and the sun and how all of these things work, our solar system and our universe. And, and, and that just gives us a great opportunity to say, this is what we do. Right. And connect people with that. And that's, you can't pass that kind of an opportunity up. Right. And speaking of all, like you said, the science, all this discovery that we're, we're uh, enabling today by the eclipse, you know, let's talk more about the science. You know, um, I know that nothing flies without Glenn. That's what you love to say, Jimmy. That's so right. So can you explain the center's critical role uh, within NASA? At NASA, Glenn, we work on aircraft propulsion, spacecraft propulsion, power for both aircraft and spacecraft, communications. Uh, we also work on materials and, and testing in extreme environments, but, but, but our core competencies of power, propulsion, communications. No aircraft and no spacecraft flies without those three things, and they never will. And so NASA, NASA Glenn is literally part of virtually every NASA mission. Well, Jimmy, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here and again hosting us. This was a wonderful event. I know so many people joined us here and really enjoyed it because we were watching. We were looking out at the crowd. <laughs> yeah. Lots of smiles. So yeah. really, thank you yes. so much. You and the Great Lakes Science Center. And thank you for being here and being part of this with us and, and really putting putting NASA and NASA Glenn on the map here for us. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Thanks thank so you. much. Have a great day. All right, and a big thank you to our whole team positioned across the path from our correspondents to our experts and our telescope operators we couldn't have done it without all of you and Sarah as we're taking again this aerial shot of the Great Lakes Science Center so beautiful such a wonderful way to experience my first total solar eclipse and I hope you had a good time too because I know this isn't your first total solar eclipse. No, this is my second but it was really great and special to, to be able to experience it with you and, and all the folks here. Yeah we did notice that people right after the people <laughs> yeah. were like Whoa! They were trying to get out. There's a lot of really fun events happening in Cleveland. So there's a lot of people in downtown. So I'm, I hope that they took some time to look up today and really enjoy what they saw. Yeah, and not only all of the great views that we had, but we also really did some cool science today, too. Yeah, really, really cool science. And actually, yeah, let, let's talk about that. You know, NASA's uh, heliophysics big year isn't over yet. You know, we had the annular eclipse, then we had the solar eclipse. And now talk to us about what's happening in December. Yeah, coming up new, on, on Christmas Eve, in fact, Parker Solar Probe will make its closest approach to the sun, 3.9 million miles, which still seems like a long way to me, but apparently <laughs> that's actually pretty close. Yeah, yeah, I can't believe that's happening. Again, just that it's all, we've been saying this all day, aligning. Everything is aligning for us <laughs> to have a beautiful show. And so, yeah, you know, Sarah, again, thank you so much. You know, we watch this together, race across Mexico to Maine in only an hour and 28 minutes. And again, we have so much more to look forward to. So we hope you all stay with us as we continue studying our sun and how it affects us from all of us here at NASA, where we make air and space available for everyone. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. NASA TV coverage there. We appreciate their live coverage as we once again take a live look over in Cleveland, Ohio. That is a shot as they are still dealing with that partial eclipse at this point. If you haven't been watching outdoors, you may have missed it. But yeah, that is a live image that we have right there on your screen. And another one here. As I mentioned, they've been kind of switching back and forth, but this appears to be over in Washington, D.C.
Do want to bring in a guest right now to break down all the details of the eclipse now that it has for the most part come and gone. Uh, Dr. Luke Willa is a professor of physics and the chair of the department over at Florida Atlantic University. Joining us now live. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. My pleasure. All right, so first off, I want to go back to basics. It's a question that we've asked quite a few times because you have folks that say, I understand what an eclipse is. Of course I understand. Break down for us what we saw today and what an eclipse really is. So in particular, this was a solar eclipse. There are also lunar eclipses. It's a different breed. Uh, in a solar eclipse, what's essentially happening is that the a moon moves in front of the sun in the middle of the day, blocks out the sunlight if you're in the path of totality. Now, in order to do that, things need to align just right. In a sense, this is the uh, original three-body problem. The Earth, the Moon, and the Sun all need to align, and then you need to be in the right location, and you look up in the sky, and where the Sun is supposed to be, the Moon is blocking out that view. And because this happens during a new moon, we don't actually see the moon. We see the dark side of the moon, which means we don't see it. Did everything kind of go, I guess, according to plan today? I know that there were a lot of questions about weather, but it sounds like a lot of the major cities got a perfect view of totality. It sounds indeed that, that uh, they got very lucky. Um, in South Florida, we only had a partial eclipse. Uh, but the clouds parted frequently enough that everybody who wanted to get a good view was was able to do so. And some people don't realize they see that path of totality and think that essentially you either see that totality or you see nothing. But a lot of folks across the U.S. did actually see a partial eclipse. That is correct. So if you're not in the path of totality, it never goes completely dark in the middle of the day, but you certainly have a portion of the sun blocked out. You can't see that with the naked eye. Even at something like 90%, it's hard to detect that change in intensity. Uh, but you, with the uh, uh, eclipse glasses, you are able to uh, see the sun partially covered, yes. Why is this so historic? I know I was excited. A lot of people across the U.S. very excited by this, including over in Mexico and Canada. So what is it about this that is so historic and so exciting to so many people? Well, it's a number of things. So in this particular case, a lot of the major cities in the U.S. were either in the path of totality or close to it, which means that a lot more people could see the eclipse. Uh, there's also something special, something very primitive and profound at the same time, the uh, looking celestial bodies doing a, a kind of a dance and, and realizing that we're witnessing something that humanity has been watching for several thousand years, if not more. There's there's something very profound about that. And I, it, I'm al always marveled when I see um, lay people looking through the telescopes or the sunglasses that we make available. And the first thing is usually, Oh wow! It it's it's very primitive. It's something deep in in humans, I believe. What can scientists learn from these eclipses? Because I imagine each of them is studied and they provide some information that maybe wasn't known years ago. What sort of information is collected, and how can that be helpful? So a lot of this is routine. We know very well when these eclipses are going to happen. We can look at the corona, the, the part of the sun that's still uh, visible uh, outside uh, the blocked out region. Uh, a lot of it is routine. It's always nice to check that things are still behaving the way they should be. And even with the most routine experiment in science, it's one of the exciting things about science. You never know that you'll discover something that you didn't realize previously. So there's always that possibility. And adding to the canon of human knowledge, that's a good thing right there. And it's going to be a while before we get another one of these in the U.S., right? That's correct. Some 21 years before we'll see another one. So uh, the clock is ticking, so to speak. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, 21 years is kind of a long time. But as you take a look at, you know, the eclipse itself, we were looking at a live image right now out of Burlington, Vermont. What goes through your mind as a scientist as you look at that image right there? 
it's well there's that wonder like it's really happening the the, the human mind is able and just imagine people figured this out very early astronomers figured out the timing of the eclipse and even what's what was happening some 2500 to 3000 years ago that i feel connected to the ancient scientists even though we have all the modern technology all right, Dr. Willa, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us and explain a little bit more about this eclipse. Anything else you wanna add about any of this before I let you go? Well, I'm hoping that this will stimulate some young and old observers of the eclipse to go into science. Any field of science, there's still an enormous amount of work to be done. Even the things that we think we may understand completely, there's surprises lurking that we don't even know about yet. So check out science. It's a pretty cool subject. All right, Dr. Willa, thank you again for being here with us. We appreciate it. My pleasure. And I do want to take you out to this live image that we do have. This is actually coming in from Burlington, Vermont. And as you can see there in the top left-hand side of your screen, that is courtesy time and date. They are still seeing a beautiful partial eclipse at this point, and there are some areas where that partial eclipse, especially down in Texas, no longer happening. But over in Vermont, eh, they're going to have it for just a few more minutes there. So if you can still look out your window, go outside, you can do that. Just make sure, of course, that you do have those glasses if you are going to be looking up to the sky. I want to take a look at more of those megaphone posts, as I'm calling them. They are coming in from folks out there who are watching us. All you have to do is scan that QR code right there at the top right-hand side of your screen, and you can submit pictures of what you've seen today and maybe what you still haven't taken a picture of, and, you know, you run outside and send it in here. But this is from Tex over in Milton in New Hampshire. It was taken at 2.56 p.m. local time, a beautiful shot there, of what appears to be a partial eclipse. Again, we do have a lot of these and anything that involves an animal I love. So this is Cookie and it says our dog Cookie can't wait. Obviously that total eclipse has gone through that area now, but Cookie had the glasses ready to go. I mean, I could look at these photos just about all day, but uh, this one was Scott over in Southwest Missouri. Unfortunately, it looks like that photo is not loading. This one pretty cool though, coming in from Zach over in Redding. Clouds have a cool effect. Some areas did have to deal with overcast skies, even some storms. Overall, the weather wasn't as significantly bad in most areas along the path of totality as previously expected, but again, still dealing with some cloud cover as you were looking at that partial eclipse. At this point, if you do have those photos of the eclipse and you do want to send them our way, still do that. Just take a photo there of the QR code at the top right hand side of your screen, open it in your camera app, click the button and you can hit that submit button to send us your photos. The time now 407 over on the East Coast and 107 on the West Coast. Thank you so much for watching our coverage here of the total solar eclipse 2024 presented by Nissan. We'll be right back with more live raw and unfiltered coverage on the other side. You're watching live now from Fox.
Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox, and you are once again taking a live look from one of our many cameras. This is courtesy Time and Date, where that partial solar eclipse is still ongoing, especially as you head out toward the northeast. This is a live look over in Burlington, Vermont. Now, a bit earlier today, we did get some reaction from folks over in Texas as they watched that eclipse happen. I want to play some of that for you right here. It is coming in from the Associated Press. There was something special about being kind of out here in the woods, up on a hill, watching it the way you might have watched it 10,000 or 100,000 years ago. There's a way in which the experience we just had is the exact same experience that people have been having since the dawn uh, of human beings. And so this felt like a good place to, to do that, you know? I don't want to be seeing it peeking out of my office window. I want to be somewhere you can really feel it. And uh, last one. Um, what about the, the kids that were in attendance today? And you know, I hope we'll be around to, to see the next one. They have, you know, bring their families to see it. So yeah. It's kind of that cycle of it. I, I think for kids of a certain age, you know, if you're over six, seven, this is going to loom large in your memory because it's going to be like, what even was that? And then if you're a little bit older and they got to see some of the science talks, I hope it just inspires them to appreciate the magic and joy in our natural world and the, and, the, and the sheer passion that all these people have about understanding it and studying it. And, you know, science isn't dry. Science isn't boring. Science is that. Science is a total solar eclipse. And just being able to appreciate what it takes in terms of cosmic convergence and coincidence to make that happen. So I hope I hope that we I hope we secretly produce an entire generation of astronomers and eclipse chasers and weird artists. I hope I hope we've uh, yes, that's what I hope comes out of it. That's your goal. That's my goal. That's my goal. A bunch of weirdo scientists out there running around and be like I don't know. I went to this crazy eclipse festival in Hot Springs, Arkansas when I was a kid, and here I am today. This is this is it. Yeah. Um, thanks for being here. Yeah, that that was it. Cool. All right, man. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank awesome. You, All right. So you can see just how excited folks are. That was over in Texas. We have seen people kind of gather over in different areas that were along that path of totality. We know that, of course, not everyone was there in the path of totality, but about 150 million people estimated by NASA were at least about 100 miles away from that line. That is where we saw that totality and, of course, the moon covering the sun, leading to that beautiful shot there. But again, so many people got that partial eclipse as well. Let's pop up this video once again, coming in from uh, time and date. And as I pull that down, you can see it is a live image of Burlington, Vermont, one of the last places that at this point are still dealing with that partial eclipse. So if you're in that area and didn't get to see it, simply walk outside, take a look, and it is a beautiful shot there. Going to head to a quick break here at 413 on the East Coast and 113 on the West Coast. You're watching Live Now from Fox. Much more to come.
Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox. What you're looking at is courtesy of the launch pad and NASA as they have been conducting several different uh, launches here throughout the day during the eclipse. Looks like it's buffering, but we do know that another uh, launch is expected to happen here any moment now. Looks like, again, it is still buffering, but we're going to load it up for you and listen in. PLC check 535. ACS check 538, 539. Our POT, are we counting straight through? Stand by. RC, DPM. RC, go. Requesting interrogation of transponder. In work. PLC check 536. PLC check 537. MNO, DPM. MNO. Record RF parameters and report TM lock. Stand by. TD, PM, we will be holding at T minus three minutes for no more than five. PM copies. Any copies. DPM, MNO. Our parameters recorded nominal. TM is locked. Copy that. Check 541542. RSO, this is PM. This is RSO, bud. We're going to hold a T minus three for not more than five minutes. How's that? Yeah, that hopefully should be no issue. Copy. Thank you. And TD programmer um, copies uh, three minutes. Hold. And DPMRC. Go ahead. Beacon is trackable. Good five code. Good lock. Thank you, sir. Check 543. As we listen in and hear the range, check through the Go No Go Go criteria uh, for the launch countdown. We passed seven minutes, 30 seconds and counting with an expected hold at T minus three minutes. From SRPO and the PI, SPLC something uh, the PO, PI would like to see probably science-wise. We're, we're experiencing no weather or range fouler uh, phenomena currently, so we're good to go for launch. We're just going to get to a spot where uh, Dr. Aro Rajadia, our PI, is happy with the science, and we will launch our third and final rocket today as part of NASA's atmospheric perturbations around. The Eclipse Path or APEP mission PLC, check five, from Wallops eight. Flight Facility here in Virginia. Check five, four, six. Again, at PLC, three minutes, six, five, we will hold seven, for no longer than five. So let's listen in and we'll target a new T zero. MNO, DPM, this is MNO. MNO, I can give you readout has a lock on swarms one through four. 6 TM, lock on one through three. Copy that, MNO, check 549. STM, check 550. EXP, check 551, good swarm data. All right, so it looks like that video coming in from NASA TV and the launch pad does keep freezing up. But again, NASA is doing some of those launches here during the eclipse time. I do want to pop up the uh, image right here that you can see that is coming in from time and date. That is a Burlington, Vermont, where at this point they are still seeing that partial eclipse. But as you can tell, it is almost over.
I do want to take you out to another live event that we do have right now. It actually looks like on the Senate floor, folks are discussing the bridge collapse over in Baltimore. So I do want to pop that up right now just so we can listen in. Madam President, we're still in a recovery mission to locate the remains so the families can bring full closure. The Port of Baltimore is so critical to our economy. The 50-foot channel uh, that is 700 feet long, which is totally blocked by the bridge collapse, basically shut down the Port of Baltimore. Now, the Port of Baltimore has been a port of commerce for, since the 1700s. It's the third largest port in the United States. It's the largest port for roll-on, roll-off of automobiles and farm equipment and equipment and construction equipment. It moves about $80 billion, $80 billion of import-export products a year. It's estimated that there's between 100 and $200 million of cargo moving every day through the port of Baltimore. It moves 1.1 million containers a year through the port of Baltimore. So as you can see, this catastrophic event, yes, it affected the people of Baltimore and our workers, but it also affected the entire nation. 20,000 workers are directly dependent upon the port of Baltimore, and their jobs have been put in at risk. But the supply chains of autos affect auto dealers throughout our nation. The farm equipment that comes through the Port of Baltimore affects farmers throughout the nation. The raw material, the coal, the steel, the aluminum, the iron, the list goes on and on and on, affect our entire country. In fact, 20% of the exported coal from the United States is exported through the Port of Baltimore. So yes, we have workers who are out of work. And one of our top priorities is to help them during this period of time. Uh, I met, for example, with uh, a truck driver. He has two employees. This is typical. Remember, we're moving 1.1 million containers. Many of those go by truck. Most of those trucking companies are small businesses. As the presiding officer knows in the Small Business Committee, we are very concerned about the strength of small businesses during these types of events. I'm very pleased that we were able to get the Small Business Administrator to Baltimore. An emergency declaration was made. But Madam President, it not only affects small businesses in Baltimore with this emergency, but also in Pennsylvania, also in Virginia, also in Delaware, also in West Virginia, also in DC. This is a national issue. Our next priority is to reopen the channel. This is a vessel that's almost a thousand feet long and is fully loaded. I'm going to show you a, a photo that shows you the challenges that we have. This is the dolly, as you can clearly see. This is the bridge that's lying on top of the dolly. It's actually trapping a lot of the containers. This is part of what came down. This is a 4,000 ton piece of the bridge that's on the bow of the ship. That's gonna to have to be removed. We've looked at underground photos of what's underneath the channel from the collapsed bridge and we see a real mess. Uh, we see uh, uh, concrete, rebar, steel, all mixed together. And, and here's the challenge. And I, I want to give a shout out to the Army Corps. I want to give a shout out to the divers who have been under very dangerous conditions, have been going down and taking a look at what's, under, what's in the channel. Once they remove a piece of the bridge, they're going to have to cut it, make it into smaller pieces to be able to remove it. We don't know whether that will cause a shift in the debris. Our first priority is the safety of the people performing this work. It's like cutting a spring. You could have a reaction. And we have to do surveys again after each one of the removals. This is very, very difficult work and it's being done by true professionals. And again, I thank 
the federal government for providing the experts who are all now in Baltimore figuring out how to get that channel open. And we're going to need a replacement bridge. Madam Pr President, this was a main corridor uh, along the I-95 east coast of the United States. 30,000 vehicles travel through it a, a day. So we need to replace that bridge. Uh, the bridge was built in 1977, uh, 1.6 um, uh, miles. Uh, it is an engineering marvel of its time as for a suspension bridge, and it took five years to build. So we have an enormous challenge. I had the chance to personally visit uh, the site. I was on the, actually, I think I took the, actually this photo from, from a, a Coast Guard vessel. Uh, it, it, you see it, it's, it's just a horrific sight to see the work that's being done. But I want to give a shout out to the Unified Command, headed by the Coast Guard. They started the day of the tragedy, and they've been there every day, 24-7, leading a unified command that includes the Army Corps of Engineers that do, do, will do most of, the dredge, most of the salvage work within the channel itself. The Coast Guard, of course, is keeping everyone safe. Uh, we also have the Department of Defense because we need some of their equipment in order to be able to move the, the, the debris. Uh, it includes the Department of Transportation. Secretary Buttigieg was there the day of the incident. I talked to him early in the morning. A few hours later, I was with him at the site, and his team's been there every day, and he's returned to provide the relief. I want to thank him for giving us the emergency relief funds, immediately approved so we could start doing the work in regards to the traffic problems that we had and starting to plan for the replacement of the bridge. I want to thank him for that. Those emergency funds of $60 million were desperately needed. We got it immediately, uh, thanks to the commitment of the Biden administration. I, I want to thank uh, Administrator Guzman, Small Business Administration. She was there. I talked to her, uh, I think, the day or two after the episode. She came to Baltimore, uh, had a roundtable discussion to talk to the small businesses as to what they need. They're doing idle loans. Uh, and they set up business recovery centers, one in, in Dundalk and one in Baltimore City, so the businesses can get the help they need on site. And uh, I was there. I met with a lot of small business owners. Uh, they have lots of questions. Uh, they impressed upon me the urgency of what they, uh, their needs and that we need to coordinate our response. Uh, I want to give a shout out also to the Department of Labor that have been there. They have provided us with displaced worker grants in order to help those that cannot get work so that we can uh, deal with those that have been directly impacted. Uh, Mayor Scott of Baltimore has been one of our true great leaders throughout this. Mayor uh, Johnny Osheski from Baltimore County, uh, County Exec uh, Johnny Osheski from Baltimore County and County Exec Stuart Pittman from Anne Arundel County all have been involved in this along with Senator Van Hollen and Congressman Mfume. I want to thank our colleagues Senator Schumer was right there in the beginning, saying he's there to help wherever, wherever the Senate can. I want to thank Senator McConnell for his comments, uh, in, where he said in situations like this, whether it's a hurricane or in Florida or an accident like this, the federal government will step up. Now, the results of this has been we have provided support for the families, the victims of the, that lost their lives. We have met with the workers, uh, the I, LA workers, and we're trying to make sure they can get through this period of time. We've met with the small business uh, owners. Uh, the channel, uh, the engineers here have been unbelievable. The Army Corps has been there 24-7. They've opened two alternative channels, one 14 feet, one 11 feet. That gets just a minimal amount of traffic through. But they are working on the northern part of the channel. That's not where the dolly is, the other side of the channel to open a 35-foot channel by the end of this month. If we can do that, that will return about 75% of the business to the Port of Baltimore, which would be extremely important for our economy. And by the end... What you were listening to was some of, some of that ongoing Senate discussion there on the Baltimore Bridge collapse. Now, if you were watching here, you did see 
Uh, in the corner of the screen, you can see what is still the remaining portion of that partial solar eclipse ongoing over in Burlington, Vermont, and areas uh, that are over there in the northeastern part of the country. Now, a lot of folks did see a partial eclipse, and even some saw that complete totality. It was amazing for a lot of people. We were on the air and showed you all of the different views. And one of the locations we were in was Dallas, Texas. I do want to bring in Carrie Stryber, the VP of Marketing and Communications at the Dallas Zoo, to talk a little bit more about what she saw there and how the animals responded. Thank you so much, Carrie, for taking the time to be here with us today. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so first off, just kind of break down your personal experience there as we did see totality at the Dallas Zoo. It was amazing. Um, the zoo was filled, which was great to see um, a lot of, uh, we know that we had um, well over 5,000 people in the zoo today um, from 46 different states and 16 different countries uh, came to join us here. Um, and had just some amazing moments um, as we moved into and and those four minutes of totality. Uh, there were sort of oohs and ahs and screams um, as we moved into darkness. And then a lot of folks turned their attention to the animals as well. Um, we saw animals doing um, probably a, actually a little more reactive than we they thought we we thought they were going to be, um, which was great. Um, but everybody, uh, you know, I think sort of did what we expected them to do. Um, most of the animals uh, huddled together. Uh, a lot of the, the um, uh, mammals and uh, elephants and uh, ostriches and giraffes um, kind of came together or moved as if they were going uh, to their behind the scenes areas during that totality. Makes sense, it's time for bed uh, in terms of what the lighting looks like. Um, birds uh, roosted and went quiet um, in a lot of places. And then we did hear some birds um, and some of the primates were calling to one another um, because they had kind of lost sight uh, at, a, at a strange time and quickly. So um, I think it was uh, uh, not out of the realm of expected, but it was an, an amazing phenomenon to experience. And kind of going in reverse a little bit, how do you prepare for all of this? Because you probably have to think, we don't necessarily know how the animals there at the zoo are going to react. So how do you go about making sure that the correct, I guess, preparations are underway? Yeah, so um, we're very fortunate in the zoo community that um, there's a lot of uh, collaboration among zoos. So we are aware of what other zoos have experienced, um, whether those were partial or, t or total eclipses in some cases. Um, and so the, the teams were ready um, again, we didn't expect a lot of extreme behavior, so we didn't make a lot of changes to habitat um, or anything that we would be doing. We kept to very normal schedules today. Uh, what we did do was have staff out, not only observing the, the eclipse themselves to enjoy it, um, but also doing observations of animals. So we wanted to keep a close eye on how the animals were reacting. Um, and so that's a little bit different. Uh, while we would normally have staff out and observing, uh, there were a lot more eyes on them today, on the animals today. And then we also asked guests um, to participate as well. We handed out uh, some research or kind of observation sheets to guests that are a simpler version of what our staff would typically look for. Um, they're called um, uh, the observation sheets that they use. And so um, we asked them to describe what animal they were watching, what the uh, description of the activity they saw, even draw a picture if they wanted to, especially for the younger ones, and then tell us what stage of the eclipse that that occurred in. And um, we're gonna collect those it's more for keeping the guests engaged and giving them something to do. It's not a formal research um, assignment, but great for us to kind of see and compare that to what our, our team saw as well. And kind of going uh, more talking about the animals in general, how exactly can uh, you learn from the experience? Because it's not like a uh, solar eclipse, especially a total solar eclipse is gonna happen that often, but you are able to learn from this and just kind of how the animals react and, and study that, right? Yeah, so we have uh, the, the zoologists that work with our animals every day know them very well and know their personalities very well. Uh, we also have a team that focuses on animal behavior. And what they focus on is working with the zoologists in those instances where we need to understand how animals are going to react to an environment change or to a change in something else that may be going on around them. Um, and all of the research and all of the observations that we can make throughout any different uh, situation that we observe uh, goes into helping understand better how to ensure that the animals 
uh, do respond well, that we can, uh, that we know what to look for um, when there may be a reaction that we need to be aware of. Uh, and so it's all a part of learning. And then what's great, again, about the zoo community is we do share that um, across zoos. So it, anything that we can take away from observing the animals, again, in this sort of unique and very different and once in a lifetime opportunity, um, it still does tell you about how different animals re may react, even within the same herd, a giraffe may react very differently um, than several of its its herd mates, which we saw today as well. So, um, you know, anything we can do that gives us further insight into how these animals move and react and uh, and respond to things is all is all good in our book. Today, a success, I would say, just based on what you were expecting and what you did witness. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the response from guests was amazing, um, and uh, and what we were able to kind of uh, feel together um, in those moments. You certainly saw the reactions from guests uh, as the as totality set in, um, and then animals, you know, kind of as we expected. But it was also really great to see some of that validated because we just didn't know we haven't had this happen in in well over a hundred years. Uh, so none of us were around the last time, and, uh, and so it was going to be a learning experience either way. But uh, a great day at the zoo, and the weather cooperated. We're so thankful. The clouds cleared out for us, uh, and we had a really great uh, a great day, afternoon here. And that's what I was going to ask as well, because I know there were concerns about weather pretty yep. much up until the very last moment. Were you worried at all that we were going to have some stormy weather, some cloudy weather, and you wouldn't get that perfect view? Yeah, so we were ready. Um, you know, we that's why we we had added some additional activities and we had some NASA the NASA live stream available on TVs just in case uh, because we saw what the forecast was. Uh, but fortunately, this morning the clouds were there, but you could still you could tell they were high clouds and they burned off, um, and it, it's turned into a lovely partly cloudy afternoon here. So we had we had some great moments. There were a couple of clouds that came over right before totality that made us a little bit nervous. But it cleared off, uh, clouds passed, and, and we had a great, great view of, uh, of totality. All right, Carrie, thank you so much for taking the time to join us and talk a little bit more about the eclipse. We're actually looking at a live image out of Burlington, Vermont, off to the left side of your screen where you can see the partial eclipse now over. It has moved out. Uh, it was amazing, though, for several hours that folks got to see it. Anything else that you want to add about any of this before I let you go? No, I think it's just we so appreciate, um, you know, the opportunity we had and as especially from Dallas being the largest city, uh, one of the largest cities in totality. We loved being able to host people from what we saw around the world uh, and, and give them an opportunity to see this this amazing event. All right. Thank you again for taking the time to be here with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. And as I mentioned, what you're looking at right there is an image out of Burlington, Vermont, where that partial eclipse is now officially over. They've zoomed in really close. You can see that no portion of the moon is covering the sun anymore. Uh, it was amazing, as I mentioned, for the past several hours as we saw that path of totality where folks had complete darkness. We joined so many of them, including our Fox 7 Austin team, Fox 4 Dallas. We were also with Connor Hansen over with Fox News in Buffalo, New York. As we hit that moment of totality, it's come and gone, but it's for many going to be a memory that doesn't leave anytime soon. I do want to pop up this image really quickly here so I can show it to you. We've been checking in what we call megaphone. That essentially means that you can scan that QR code at the top right hand side of your screen and submit your own pictures to us here. You include your name, location, and photo. And this one just popped up, so I had to show it. It says he's also watching, and it is from Liam there over in Annadale or Annandale, Virginia. Thank you to everyone who did submit those photos, especially if they were as cute as this one right here. Do remember that you can scan that QR code and still send us all of your images here on Live Now from Fox. We're going to head to a quick break now at 440 over on the East Coast and 140 on the West Coast. You're watching Live Now from Fox. Much more to come.
Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox. It is 442 over on the East Coast and 142 on the West Coast. My name is Josh Breslow, and I've been here for the last several hours to bring you all of your images from across that path of totality as the total solar eclipse has now come to an end. Our coverage, though, presented by Nissan. Do want to pop this one image that we still have up? It is zoomed in, but that right there is Burlington, Vermont, where moments ago we did see that partial eclipse come to an end. For so many folks that were watching us here, they saw quite a few highlights, and I do actually want to go to some of the coverage we didn't quite play. This is out of Mexico, and it is courtesy our Associated Press partners here. Let's pop up the audio and listen in as some of their reporters were out there in the field gathering details. Eclipses happen every few years or so, especially like where, um, you know, it's usually on somewhere else like the South Pacific. So this is a really special thing that we are hitting so many people. Um, around this this North America, this continent. Um, so you know what? We're going to head over to hear more from a citizen scientist setting up their solar eclipse experiments out in Carbondale, Illinois. Let's take a look. Broadcasting Initiative, and it's a joint venture between NASA and Southern Illinois University here in Carbondale, Illinois. And what is your role in this in the study? What are you doing as a citizen scientist? Well, you said it. I'm a citizen scientist. I was recruited. I'm an alumni here from Southern Illinois University, and they contacted me prior to the annular eclipse, which we had last October, uh, and asked me to record that from my home in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I kept the equipment, and then they asked if I might join them here in Carbondale. So I drove two and a half days from Santa Fe and ended up here with all of this gear that you see in front of me to capture data of the solar eclipse that's happening today. Your background is in the motion picture industry. You do not have a background as a scientist. How did you end up doing this? That's correct. I worked in the motion picture business for about 25 years. And so I know cameras, but I don't know telescopes. So when they sent all of this to me, I had never operated a telescope. I had never operated a mount like this. Certainly I've used a computer, but all of the software was new to me as well. So there was a bit of a learning curve. However, I think that my experience, and boy, the crowd is really getting into it right now. <laughs> I hope you can hear me. There's a countdown going on. But uh, all of my experience in the movie business did help, and it prepared me to really figure out how to work this gear and, and get the data that NASA needed. What is it about your experience capturing the annular eclipse in October that caught your imagination and made you want to continue? Well, it really was something else. I didn't know what to expect. I had never been through a total eclipse totality or annular. Annular, of course, is when the moon only covers a portion of the sun, not quite the entirety of the disk. And it still was a very interesting, some people say it's a magical time. Uh, the sky gets dark, obviously, but there in Santa Fe, a breeze came up. It got remarkably cooler. I had to put on a sweater. It was October anyway, but still, when the sun was covered up, it's amazing how much energy we lose here on the Earth when and it's darkened like that. And we saw the effect of that. So I'm really looking forward to experiencing that here when the entire disk is, is obscured by the moon. This should be really cool to see in another half an hour, 45 minutes from now. What exactly are you doing here? You're on the football sidelines. Um, you got a bunch of cameras and telescopes. What exactly are you measuring? <laughs> well, NASA is going to have to tell me what they're using my data for. I really don't quite know what they're doing with the uh, special files that I'm capturing using this material here, this small telescope. There's a mono camera here that records in black and white. I do have my other gear here, my DSLR over here. I've got one behind me that's shooting a wide angle. I've got the stadium in the background for that. And I'm capturing different phases of the eclipse as it happens to that camera. So when I get home, I'm going to take my images here, 
and from the other camera, and I'm going to put them through Photoshop, and I'm going to make a nice collage of that. And in addition to that, I'm going to download the data for NASA, send it back here to Bob Baer at SIU, who's overseeing the project for the university. And I'm going to have to rely on them to tell me what they find in the data that I collect. I'm not that smart. <laughs> What do you expect to experience during totality? I mean, this is new for all of us. Yeah, it really is. It's, I, I know it's going to get cold. I hope I can see my equipment to be able to operate it because it's going to get very, very dark very quickly. For four minutes, we're going to be, be experiencing that. I hope that we can hear the environment around us. I hope that we can hear the birds come out and start chirping and behaving differently. That happened when I was in Santa Fe with the annular eclipse a little bit. Um, so I'm expecting more of that only amped up because of the totality event today. Great, thank you so much, Robert Dennis, and let's enjoy some more pictures from the eclipse. Very good, thank you. And that right there was just some of the coverage that was provided by the Associated Press. Uh, they were out there talking to, well, a lot of people who were just waiting for the eclipse to happen. They were along that path of totality, and we checked in with them. But that was just one of the scientists they spoke to who is going to have his work looked at and used to help uh, further science, essentially. But he said he doesn't really know exactly what that is going to be used for. We have also been checking in with our friends over at Fox Weather. I do want to pop up the audio and listen into some of their coverage right now as they are following the latest on a storm system with a tornado watch that has now been issued for Texas and Louisiana. We're going to pop up that audio here and listen in within this storm, perhaps a touch more broad than last time we looked at it, but it's there. In fact, as we get zoomed in closely here, uh, that's the couplet with red and the pink. That's wind moving away from the radar, green moving toward. The rotation is evident, and it's moving off to the north and east at about 30 35 miles per hour. So this green shading here is where the Doppler radar has estimated at least some weak rotation over the last several radar scans. We're going to have to keep an eye on this one as it progresses across the interstate. If that rotation tightens up, that tornadic threat will be rising. It's going to be there, present in this part of Texas, Interstate 45, over to I-49 over in Louisiana, a tornado watch that runs until 8 p.m. local times. So we've got several hours to go with storms that could perhaps produce some tornadoes in addition uh, to some very large hail. Meanwhile, I'm going to head the other direction here. People in New York <laughs> City got about 90% totality uh, during today's eclipse. Juking them. <laughs> yeah, right. Little, little uh, Euro step, if you will. Uh, Fox Weathers, Nick Koser, he's been out on Fox Square. We've both been outside, Adam, over the last uh, several hours to get a glimpse of this. Nick, it was still pretty special, even though we didn't get the, the full experience. Yeah, Nick, you're dealing with a little yeah, bit of cloud cover bouncing around between buildings as well, I think. Yeah, that was tough. The, the buildings made visibility a little bit difficult. I got to tell you, though, when we first came out here earlier this morning, it was eerily quiet out here. I think a lot of people either took the day off for the eclipse or maybe their kids were home. And, and, and I think a lot of people actually also maybe drove upstate to see or get closer to the path of totality, right? So it was fairly calm. It was almost like a Sunday here in midtown Manhattan. But once the eclipse really got going, and especially during max coverage, at about 3:30 ish, uh, it was it was rocking and rolling. It was chaos on some of these corners, and now it's back to business as usual. These solar eclipse glasses were worth 50 bucks uh, a couple of hours ago. Now maybe not so much. Hey, have you got? Did you guys see the eclipse today? Yeah, we did. That we did. It was something special. Yeah, it was really cool. So you liked it? Yeah, it was, it was awesome. Where? Tell me about your experience. Where were you and how were you able to actually look up and see? We, and were, we were, where were we, 53rd, like 50th, 53rd and 7th, uh, right by Ray's Pizza. Uh -huh. And we were able to like stand on the sidewalk and view it, like perfect viewing right outside of the buildings. Yep. Um, it wasn't fun pushing through other crowds to get there, but <laughs> but it was great once we did. You had to throw some elbows out there? A lot of you excuse me's and don't, and don't touch me. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, you, you've got some size on yeah, you, so I'm sure. Left hook from this guy, left hook from me. 
So let me ask you this. Have you guys ever seen uh, an eclipse, partial or total? Uh, now we've seen both, actually. We saw one in Missouri in, like, 2017? 2017, yeah. the fall of 2017 in yeah. Columbia, Missouri. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So how was that experience? Oh, it was special. Not to degrade this one. Yeah. No better place to watch it than New York City. Yeah. But they're different in their own good way. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you guys rock. Thanks for yeah. chatting yeah. with me, and uh, enjoy the next one in 2044. Absolutely. We'll do. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy, yeah. All right, guys, we'll get it right back to you. Yeah, Nick, you got to sell high on Eclipse glasses yeah. because those values don't go up for like 19 more years, something like that. Nick's the man know, every day. He was especially them. the man earlier, though, because he was dishing those out. Everybody on Fox Square was loving it. <laughs> Nick, thank you. Hey, let's bring in A big thank you to our friends over at Fox Weather. We have been taking some of their reporters and showing you some of their live coverage as well. We had Max Gordon join us live from Cleveland, Ohio, as we did get some details out there. Of course, the weather did clear. There have been concerns in places like Dallas, Texas, as well as Cleveland, Ohio. Thankfully, though, the clouds cleared just long enough to get a beautiful view of that totality. What you're looking at right now on your screen is an image from time and date that is out of Burlington, Vermont, where as you can see, the partial eclipse is now over, even over in the northeast. We saw that totality move into Canada and now gone. But a beautiful sight, and we do appreciate you spending the last several hours with us here on Live Now from Fox for our total solar eclipse 2024 coverage presented by Nissan. My name is Josh Breslow, and I've been here for the last several hours sitting in the hot seat, but we're going to head to our final two-minute commercial break of the hour, and on the other side, our very own Andy Mack will take over with all your hosting, your live events, top stories, everything you need to know on this Monday, April 8th. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back in here to Live and Now from Fox on Manny Mac as we appreciate you joining us here. A live look there in Vermont as the solar eclipse crisscrossing the United States and of course the path of totality millions of Americans watching it thanks again for joining us here on live now from Fox I'm Andy back now in the anchor chair here as we are taking you into the evening hours as so many people took in that very majestic epic site so many adjectives to use when talking about the solar eclipse passing through Texas through uh, Arkansas Missouri Illinois Indiana 
Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, Maine, beyond that as well. So we're going to continue to follow all the latest developments on that and get some reaction coming up in a little bit from uh, some of the main sites in the path of totality. Of course, I do want to put up just some tweets right here on Live Now from Fox. A very funny one coming in from NASA's, their, uh, their Twitter account, their X account linked to the moon saying, oops, I did it again. Uh, as they blocked the sun, which is a, a, good, a good play on what happened there earlier on today with that path of totality around the country. And just so many different sites to see there coming in from across the country. Indiana, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Dallas, which was in the path of totality as well. And just so many people taking in this uh, throughout the country. Our Fox stations from coast to coast doing a great job covering all of this. Let's take you right now out to our Fox weather team as they continue to cover all that is with the total solar eclipse earlier on today. Americans look to the sky this afternoon to witness America's total solar eclipse. And while some areas saw clear skies along the path of totality, others uh, not so much, Adam. No, so let's take a look at our total winners and losers city by city working across. Let's start with our winners, which obviously, and we kind of knew this, well, Indianapolis yeah. was a big Get winner. Get out of the way of this one. It was a, a big time winner. This was what mostly clear skies. Kendall and yeah. Robert Ray, they were both out at, Indi out at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. That's going to be one of the coolest possible experiences. One of the coolest ones. My family's from this area. I got text and phone calls, and it seems like life changing for some of those folks. Yeah, clouds put a little bit of a damper on the moment of totality for folks in Rochester. Uh, take a listen to this. We've been waiting for this moment for a very long time, so we're excited. A little sad because of the clouds, yeah. but still, it's, it's amazing. It still looks like the middle of the night, Adam. It's still pretty cool. Still pretty cool, but finally, Dallas was forecast to see some cloud cover, so kind of a come behind wind here because it looked grim, and then our own Stephen. All right, you're just listening into our Fox weather team as they continue to live coverage there throughout the day. Let's take you right now out to live coverage from New York City as they detail some of this. Of course, just a little bit north of there was the path of totality. Let's listen in here live. The moon was in between the sun and the earth, and it cast a shadow over the earth. Um, and why is this so rare? Well, there are annual annular eclipses. You might think, oh, I remember one last year. Yes, there was one last year, but there was not complete coverage. So an annular eclipse, the moon covers the sun, but never reaches 100% totality. The outer edge still shines. That's often called the ring of fire. And then what we saw today, of course, was complete coverage. If you were outside, it got a little colder. Uh, we talked to some reporters earlier and they were noting how some animals thought that it was nighttime, the, the birds stopped chirping, all that stuff. And then here's just another example of how rare it is. So even when there is an eclipse, to be in the path and to be as close uh, to the path as we were today um, is just really rare. You see how uh, small they are compared to uh, the extent of our nation. So last year, the 2023 eclipse was on the west side. And actually, we just mentioned that there is going to be one in 2044, but it's going to be closer to this path that we saw in 2023. So. Today in New York, um, being able to see it, we won't really see one like that until 2079. So again, really a once in a lifetime experience for many. So here was the path today we saw go through Texas. Um, they actually had some cloud coverage. I watched some reporters uh, down there and uh, they were hoping that the sun would come out and uh, they didn't really get to see as much as they were hoping. So um, this again, this is the 2023 one. So just uh, reiterating, we only had about 20% coverage last time today we had about 90 percent and for the most part it was a gorgeous day i mean in new york city we had a high of 67 rochester saw a high about 59 60 but they had some clouds and actually in buffalo there were some sprinkles of showers um, but a high of 60 so still uh, pretty warm for them for this time of year there's those clouds that we saw roll through earlier thankfully we didn't get any rain and the clouds that we did have were very high up and very thin unfortunately up in upstate new york they were a little lower to the ground a little more dense, but I saw uh, I had some friends and family that were up there and uh, it still was an amazing view. We had really warm temperatures, 67 here in New York, like I said, and 66 in Philadelphia, 67 in Albany. It was a great day and we have more warm weather on the way. I'll tell you more about it later in the show. Well, all right, thanks a little. Well, regardless of whether they were in the path of totality, people came together to view today's eclipse. That's right. Our reporters had front row seats to witness the rare celestial event. Stephanie Bertini is at the Intrepid Museum on the West 
side of Manhattan. Teresa Priolo is at Liberty Science Center in Jersey City. But first we go to Robert Moses in Stowe, Vermont. Robert, you had the plum assignment there, arguably the best view. How was it? It was spectacular, Natasha and Steve. It's good to see you both. It's hard to put into words what we experienced here on Mount Mansfield, which is Vermont's highest peak. So did the eclipse live up to the hype? That would be an emphatic yes. Anticipation and excitement built all day leading up to the beginning of the eclipse at 2.14 this afternoon. But the crescendo came at totality from 3.26 to 3.29. Darkness descended on the mountain and it got cold, very cold. The skiers stopped to look up and the sun put on an amazing show. Nature was hushed, but what wasn't hushed was the cheers that emanated from the crowd. Solar flares shot out from the darkness and the sun briefly resembled an inverted diamond ring. We met up with a couple who came here from West Islip to ski. What they didn't know until they booked their Airbnb is that they were entering the path of totality and when they found out they did not miss the opportunity to watch. That was just phenomenal, phenomenal. Worth the 10 hour drive up here from Long Island. It was just epic. It's really just something that you have heard